Chapter 600 The Second Forgotten Star Landing Operation Certainly, Xu Ziwen waved his hand and turned off the holographic image in the conference room. But, you are an academician. Just in case, Xia Shou became anxious all of a sudden. You also said that the creatures on the Forgotten Star are very threatening. But you are not. Looking for death? Xu Ziwen laughed and patted Xia Zhou on the shoulder. Do you know who developed the second generation exoskeleton armor? Xia Zhou's eyes moved slightly, as if he realized something. But he said nothing. I led the team to develop it, Zhu Ziwen said with some pride. For it, do you know how much user feedback data I collected? Xia Zhou's mouth twitched slightly. You call this user feedback data? These feedback data, although there are a lot of them, are not very useful. Speaking of this, Zhu Ziwen shook his head with regret. In addition, I have never seen a real battlefield. So there will always be some flaws in the design. In order to complete the design drawings for the next generation of exoskeleton armor, I needed exact battlefield data. Looking at Zhu Ziwen's unusually energetic eyes, Xia Zhou clicked his tongue with a headache. Academician Zhu, does Professor Lu agree to this? Hearing this, the smile on Zhu Ziwen's face gradually grew stronger. Of course I agree. Xia Zhou, he looked at Zhu Ziwen who was a little excited, with a numb face. Are there really normal people here? He took a deep breath and said with an extremely solemn expression, Academician Ju, landing on an alien planet is not as easy as you think. If you insist on participating in the landing plan, I hope you can obey our arrangements by then. Otherwise, I may not be able to guarantee your safety. The excited smile on Ju Ziwen's face gradually disappeared. He stared into Xia Zhou's eyes and nodded seriously. Captain Xia, don't worry. A week later, as the engineering ship unfolded, the second generation exoskeleton armor soon came out of the drawings. The planetary explorers, who had been recovering in the gravity chamber for a week, also received a notice from Zero. The second forsaken star landing operation is about to begin. The Earth port hatch slowly opened. Ships of Zuin 2 loaded with supplies filed out of it. At the same time, the door of the ship base drone on the other side of Earth also opened. Densely packed ship-based drones were like locusts, whizzing past the Earth and taking the lead in flying towards the Forsaken Star. According to the landing plan, these carrier-based drones will clear a landing platform wide enough for Zuin 2 in the target area. One of them. Zuin number 2. Zhu Ziwen was tightly wrapped in a second-generation mechanical exoskeleton that was two meters high. Rather than saying it is a mechanical exoskeleton, it is better to say that this is already somewhat of a prototype of a single-soldier mecha. And this is exactly the research direction of Zhu Ziwen on the third generation mechanical exoskeleton. Zhu Ziwen turned his head curiously. And the head of the mechanical exoskeleton also turned. The images returned by the camera were displayed in real time on the miniature holographic projection in front of him. The data assistance provided by Zero is also appropriately presented on the screen. His consciousness moved slightly. And the palm of the mechanical exoskeleton also made a fist movement. Looking at the shiny SH. L. Zhu Ziwen felt a sense of power arise spontaneously in his body. Suddenly, Xia Zhou's video communication screen appeared next to Zhu Ziwen, perhaps because it was related to his own job. Xia Zhou's face was extremely serious. Seeing Xia Zhou's expression, Zhu Ziwen subconsciously loosened his clenched fists. Well behaved, JPG. Academician Zhu, let me remind you again. Once you land on the Forgotten Star, you must obey our arrangements unconditionally. Otherwise, I have the authority to remotely control and disable your exoskeleton armor. Zhu Ziwen's face fell. He nodded helplessly and said, Okay, okay, you are the captain. You have the final say. Xia Zhou chuckled and softened his tone slightly. Academician Zhu, this is an order personally issued by Professor Lu. For your safety, you are aggrieved. When he heard that it was Lu Yongchan who gave the order, the remaining awkwardness on Zhu Ziwen's face disappeared instantly. He smiled bitterly and nodded. Don't worry, Captain Xia. I won't cause any trouble for you. The words just fell. There was a slight recoil, pressing his body against the lining of the exoskeleton armor. Zuin number two sets off. The voyage is not long. It only took a few hours for Zhu Ziwen to see the extremely lucky planet from the side window. He stared at the planet silently. And after a long silence, he sighed silently. Dong, dong, dong. The slight sound of exoskeleton armor SH. LS clashing against each other caught his attention. He raised his head and looked in the direction of the sound. I saw the exoskeleton armor next to him raising his hand and saying H, low to him. The next second, 
A big smiling face appeared in the miniature holographic projection in front of him. Dude, what's wrong with you? It feels like you're not very happy. Juicy win. Who is this person from? Bang. A crisp sound came from beside him. The next moment, Xia Zhou's scolding sounded. Suduatsi. I say you are a fool. But you really are a fool. You're going to one side. Don't join in the fun from across the street. After saying that, Xia Zhou smiled sheepishly at Chu Ziwen. Academician Zhu. What a joke. I didn't manage the team members well. Zhu Ziwen glanced at Su Pengfei, who had an aggrieved face, and felt somewhat understanding. He smiled and waved his hand. Hey, what's the matter? Don't call me Academician Zhu. Just call me by my name. Hearing this, Su Pengfei's eyes lit up. Hey, buddy. I knew you were easy to get along with. Unlike Su Pengfei, Xia Zhou felt his eyes go dark. What a sin! Zhu Ziwen didn't care much and chatted happily with Su Pengfei. Didn't you just ask me why I was unhappy? See this planet? What a wonderful livable planet. But it's a pity, it's going to die soon. Xia Zhou was stunned for a moment, unable to suppress the curiosity in his heart, and asked softly, Why do you say that? It is lucky, but also unfortunate. Zhu Ziwen explained in a low voice as he looked at the lost star through the porthole. Its main star was captured by a black hole. But it is lucky enough to survive outside the black hole's accretion disk without being swallowed by the black hole. It can also maintain life on the surface with the help of light and heat generated by the accretion disk. Unfortunately, over time, the accretion disk gradually disappears. At that time, this planet will become a death star that has lost its energy source. Chapter 601 Giant Snake Zhu Ziwen's words echoed in the ears of Su Pengfei and Xia Zhou. Su Pengfei subconsciously turned his head and looked toward the porthole. The green planet glowed with crystal clear light under the light of the black hole's accretion disk. Like a drop of water on the edge of the desert. It exudes endless beauty. But there was no joy in Su Pengfei's eyes. And even the smile on his face was gradually dissipating. Why? 900 years ago. Without Professor Liu and the Academy of Sciences. We humans would probably be no different from the creatures on this planet. Right? He murmured in a low voice. I don't even know how I died. Xia Zhou on the side trembled and said in an extremely low voice. Maybe? Zhu Ziwen's eyes moved slightly. He noticed a strange atmosphere in the communication channel. Because he didn't know the specific reason, it was not convenient for him to interrupt. So he could only wait quietly for the next conversation between the two. Dear Planetary Explorers, The starship is about to enter the atmosphere of the Forsaken Star. Please prepare for landing. Zero's electronic synthesized sound sounded at just the right moment breaking the somewhat silent atmosphere in the team's voice channel. Call. Xia Zhou took a deep breath, calmed down his fluctuating emotions, and said in a deep voice, Everyone, be prepared. We are about to land. Earth. Professor. An abnormality was discovered. As Zero's voice sounded, a holographic image appeared on his side. In the image, a bare circular area suddenly appears among the lush forest. In the air, one ship after another, under the control of Zero, the ship-based drones were carrying out the final cleanup work they needed to move the larger tree fragments to a distant place to create a flat enough landing space for Zuin 2. Space. Looking at the extremely normal picture in the holographic projection, Li Yongchang frowned and asked in a low voice, What's wrong? Detectors placed in the surface area detected unusual shaking. The shaking lasted for more than 10 minutes. The intensity is not high. It is relatively weak. Lu Yongcheng's eyes suddenly became solemn. Exceptionally shocked? When did it happen? That's when the ship-based drone started clearing the landing area. Zero's answer gave Lu Yongcheng a bad thought. Is there something buried underground on this planet? If this is the case, the explorers who landed on the planet rashly may be afraid. Zero, tell all the explorers about this situation. In addition, the underground exploration and modeling work of the Forgotten Star has begun. Lu Yongcheng pondered for a moment. The exploration depth is 1,000 meters. Thinking of those giant trees with an average height of 100 meters and the behemoth tree with a height of 12,000 meters. Li Yongchan quickly changed his mind. No! The exploration depth is set at 10,000 meters and underground modeling in the Arctic region is prioritized. Receive. Time flies. Accompanied by a slightly strong recoil. The starship's descent speed quickly slowed down. The rapidly surging heavy clouds and fog gradually dispersed and the scenery outside the porthole gradually became clearer. This is a world full of life. 
Zhu Ziwen did not pay too much attention to the scene on the surface of the planet, but subconsciously raised his head and looked towards the sky. Just one glance showed deep shock in his eyes. The entire sky was covered by an extremely huge disk. The disk rotates slowly, spreading the energy necessary for life to the planet. A slight vibration came. Academician Zhu, we are here. Xia Zhou's voice and some unreal electronic synthesized sounds came from the communication channel. At this time, Zhu Ziwen was still immersed in the shocking scene of looking up at the sky. He turned his head and looked around in confusion, and followed the crowd down Zuin number 2 at a loss. When his feet stepped on the land with a faint green smoke, he gradually came back to his senses from this shocking scene. Dude, are you awake? Along with this familiar tone, the sound of the exoskeleton armor SH. Alkaliding came. Let me tell you, you scientists are too easily distracted by these bells and whistles. Su Pingfei pursed his lips and said with a bit of ridicule. Thankfully, the shipborne drone has completed the cleaning work. Otherwise, with the way you look just now, you might have disappeared as soon as you got off the starship. Facing Su Pingfei's teasing, Zhu Ziwen could only smile bitterly in return. Su Pingfei is right. Perhaps this is a common problem among scientists like them. He turned his head and looked around. Around, flat area suddenly appears amid the lush forest. From the smoky soil and the tree debris everywhere, it was not difficult to guess what had just happened. The ship-based drones used powerful firepower to directly level the forest in this area. Suddenly, Zhu Ziwen frowned slightly. There seemed to be a brown-black object in the soil. What's this? Strong doubts arose in his heart. Tree roots? With a slight movement of his mind, the exoskeleton armor started to act according to his wishes. Even if the surface gravity reaches 1.5 g, driven by the fusion engine, the heavy exoskeleton armor still appears to be extremely light. He opened his legs and walked forward quickly. The cleaned soil is not very soft and is even somewhat solid. But even so, the road he walked left deep footprints. Academician Zhu! Xia Zhou's face changed slightly when he discovered the scene. And he immediately spoke on the communication channel. Please follow us closely and don't move around at will. Before he finished speaking, Su Pingfei's shout was like thunder exploding in everyone's ears. Danger! Shu Ziwen was frightened by the shouting in his ears and trembled violently. At the same time, there was a series of harsh warning sounds. The blue holographic image in front of him turned into dazzling red in an instant. The bright red arrow points to the left side of the body. He didn't have time to think, and subconsciously turned his head to look in the direction of the arrow. Before he could completely twist his body, he stopped his unfinished action. A brown, giant snake nearly one meter in diameter suddenly emerged from the soil on the left side of his body. According to the auxiliary data provided by Zero, the exposed part of the giant snake has reached 12.6 meters, plus the part hidden in the soil. It's hard to imagine what a huge thing this is. The giant snake, which was more than 10 meters long, kept twisting its body in the air and attacked him at extremely fast speeds. Things happened so suddenly that Ju Ziwen, who had been living in a laboratory and had no relevant experience, could only stare blankly at the giant snake, dancing wildly in the air. Chapter 602 No. This is not a snake. Perhaps it was due to the massive secretion of adrenaline. But at this time, Zhu Ziwen felt that his concentration was constantly rising, coupled with the high precision holographic image provided by Zero. In less than a second, he discovered various details that he would not have noticed before. Looking at the charred soil stained on the giant snake, as well as the brown body with a large number of small tentacles. Only, he didn't seem to see the giant snake's sensory organs or feeding mouth. Could it be that because this kind of snake has lived underground for a long time, these functions have deteriorated? At the critical moment of life and death, he suddenly calmed down, and pieces of information obtained by the biological laboratory and detectors flashed in his mind. A message he received not long ago slowly emerged in his mind. At that time, they were still on the starship, which was preparing to enter the atmosphere of the Forsaken Star. At the moment of contact with the atmosphere, Professor Lu sent a message to everyone. The content of the information is not much, but it probably means that it is suspected that there may be large-scale man-made facilities hidden underground in the Forsaken Star, which can monitor abnormal movements on the surface. Therefore, Lu Yongchang issued an order. After the planetary exploration team lands on the surface, they will cooperate with the detector to conduct underground exploration modeling work on the Forgotten Star. At that time, this piece of information aroused the curiosity of many people including Zhu Ziwen, because he participated in the design of the planetary fortress in the Glee's 555 star system. 
he is also more inclined to this conjecture. But now, he has completely rejected his previous idea. The scene in front of him, coupled with this piece of information in his memory, was like a bolt of lightning piercing the fog in his mind. No, this is not a giant snake. He suddenly widened his eyes, with a look of horror on his face, and wanted to shout out his discovery, but found that his throat seemed to be blocked, and he could only make a gurgling sound. The mechanical exoskeleton has been taken over remotely. A line of faint bright red text floated before Zhu Ziwen's eyes. Get down! Su Pengfei and Xia Zhou's voices sounded together. Almost at the same time, an irresistible force was transmitted from the mechanical exoskeleton. Under the force guidance of this force, Xu Ziwen threw himself hard on the dirt in front of him. Boom! A loud bang sounded from overhead. With the help of the high-definition camera on the mechanical exoskeleton, Zhu Ziwen saw a ball of blue light with golden electric snakes dancing on its surface, and it hit the giant snake fiercely. Plasma cannon. A thought flashed through Zhu Ziwen's mind. The next second, the giant snake was intercepted at the waist. The back half of its body quickly retracted into the soil, leaving only the broken half of its body twitching slightly on the ground. The blue plasma splashed everywhere, and the high temperature it brought dried the water in half of the body in an instant. Then, under the gaze of everyone, it burned violently. Because of the high concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere, the combustion process is extremely violent. Not long after, it turned into a pile of ashes and lay quietly on the ground. With wisps of smoke rising up, the alarm has been cleared. You have regained control of the exoskeleton. Zhu Ziwen stared blankly at the line of text in front of him. It wasn't until the bright red holographic image returned to blue again that he realized what had happened. Aye. He moved his lips, and his voice was extremely hoarse. Am I still alive? Bang! Along with the sound of the exoskeletons colliding with each other, a huge force came from behind, making him stagger. Dude, what are you talking about? Su Pengfei's careless voice came. With the captain here, it will be difficult for you to die. Xu Ziwen controlled the mechanical exoskeleton and turned around, looking at Xia Zhou, who was walking slowly in front of him, and lowered his head to him with an extremely solemn expression. Thanks. He thanked her in a husky voice. How is your health? No injuries? Xia Zhou asked softly. No. It's okay. Xu Ziwen replied hurriedly. Xia Zhou shook his head helplessly. Academician Zhu, remember, this is on a foreign planet, and anything can kill you. Don't act without authorization. If you really find something, you can tell us first. Zhu Ziwen nodded repeatedly and said with a look of shame, I'm sorry. Looking back now, what I did just now was so stupid. Okay, just be more careful next time. Xia Zhou raised his hand, patted Zhu Ziwen's shoulder gently, and turned to look at the strip of ashes lying on the ground. Is this thing a snake? Why does it look a little wrong? Hearing this, Zhu Ziwen looked solemn and denied it without hesitation. No, it's not a snake. It's a tree root. What? Tree roots? Xia Zhou and Su Pengfei's confused voices sounded at the same time. Obviously, Zhu Ziwen's answer directly subverted the two people's cognition. I need to report this discovery to the professor immediately. Zhu Ziwen did not explain much and said in a hurried tone. If my guess is true, the danger of this planetary exploration operation may far exceed our expectations. Xia Zhou looked at the serious look on Zhu Ziwen's face and nodded seriously. Good. The exploration operation is suspended and we are on standby. Ziwen? Lu Yongchang's face appeared in the blue holographic image. As usual, he still had a plain, gentle smile on his face. What? Did you find anything new? Zhu Ziwen didn't say any nonsense and said bluntly. Professor, I was attacked just now. What? The gentle smile on Lu Yongchang's face gradually disappeared, and his expression became stern. What's going on? You're not injured. Are you? Where's Xia Zhou? You were attacked just after landing on Forsaken Star? What does he do for food? Ahem. Zhu Ziwen blushed and explained awkwardly. Professor, it's none of Captain Xia's business. It's my own problem. If it weren't for Captain Xia, I might have. Hearing what Zhu Ziwen said, Lu Yongchang's expression brightened a little, and his tone softened a little. Tell me, what exactly is going on? Zhu Ziwen didn't hesitate at all, and hurriedly explained everything, while pointing the camera at the pile of fully burned ashes in the distance. Chapter 603 Plant Civilization After a few minutes of explanation, Lu Yongchang looked at the video of the incident. Thoughtfully, you mean, 
The roots of these giant trees can attack living things like animals. Juzi Wen nodded quickly and affirmed. I'm afraid it's more than that. Professor, do you still remember the abnormal vibration during the first landing operation? At that time, detectors from various places detected abnormal vibrations almost at the same time. Lu Yongchang nodded slightly and frowned slightly. What do you want to say? I... Zhu Ziwen raised his hand and scratched his forehead anxiously. After all, he is not a biology major. When it comes to professional knowledge, he is a little blind. I feel that these giant trees may be alive. No, I can't say that. It should be said that they are conscious. They can pass. Tisk. Zhu Ziwen clicked his tongue irritably. Professor, I don't know how to express it. You mean... These giant trees are living beings with consciousness and thinking. And they can communicate with each other in real time. Right. A familiar voice sounded from the side. The next moment, academician Mao Jingji approached the camera. His eyes were filled with a faint light of excitement. Interesting. This is an interesting point of view. Plant civilization. I have imagined such a life form a long time ago. I didn't expect to meet you here. Lu Yongchang frowned. Civilized? Can these giant trees be called civilization? Professor, don't think so. Mao Jingzi flipped through the video data sent back by Zhu Ziwen and said with great excitement, What happened to the plants? Can't plants develop intelligent civilization? Wisdom has never been the privilege of animals. Think about it carefully. In the first landing operation, the detector started sampling after successfully landing because the specifics of each area are different. The sampling process is also different, but the abnormal vibration phenomenon occurred at the same time. What does it mean that these giant trees are causing these tremors? Communication network? Lu Yongchang's face changed slightly, and he asked in a low voice. No, 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 it's not just the communication network. Mao Jingji raised a finger and shook it slightly. The focus is not on the whole world, but on the same time. Upon hearing this, Lu Yongchang reacted instantly. He exclaimed, No delay communication? Quantum communication technology? That's right. Mao Jingji clapped his hands vigorously and said excitedly, They may have mastered quantum communication technology. Can't this still be called civilization? Lu Yongchang took a deep breath and suppressed the violent shock in his heart. According to the classification of the technology tree, quantum communication technology is at the top of the first level civilization technology tree. In other words, once this conjecture is confirmed, the giant tree on this lost star will be an intelligent creature that is about to enter a second level civilization. How to prove? Mao Jingzi's words aroused Lu Yongchang's curiosity. He couldn't imagine what these plants relied on to achieve quantum communication. Proof? Mao Jingzi raised his hand, gently touched his chin, and thought carefully. Suddenly, he shouted, Who is that? Zhu Ziwen. Right. Fortunately, you are in Forsaken Star. Tell those explorers not to mess around. If you offend these giant trees, the consequences may be disastrous. If that group of barbarians has done what they did in the past, who knows what trouble will happen in the end. The corners of Zhu Ziwen's mouth twitched slightly, and he nodded hastily, while sending a message to Xia Zhou and others. He turned to look at the huge apron. Is it possible that they have pissed off these giant trees? As for the proof method, Mao Jingji pouted towards the giant holographic projection in the distance. It will take a lot of time to model the entire planet's underground, but the underground modeling work in the Arctic region is almost completed. If I guess correctly, the root systems of these giant trees should be extremely developed. Moreover, many of their root systems are connected to each other. This should be their communication network. Time passes bit by bit. Without orders from Lu Yongchang and others, the planetary exploration team could only stay put. The day gradually passed and night fell. Inside Earth, Lu Yongchang and Mao Jingji stared at the giant holographic image in front of them with solemn expressions. As the huge holographic 3D model appeared bit by bit, an extremely complex world gradually appeared in front of the two people. On the surface, a giant tree with a height of 12,000 meters towers into the sky. At its feet, countless, saplings, hundreds of meters high form a lush forest around it. The camera gradually moves down, hundreds of meters underground. Here, there are intricate tree roots almost everywhere. Rather than saying that the soil is mixed with tree roots, it is better to say that the tree roots are mixed with a little soil. According to the detection data returned by the detector, the diameter of most tree roots is between 0.5 and 2 m. It is easy to judge that these, small, tree roots belong to those 100 meter level, saplings. Viewed from a distance, these dense tree roots look like a tangle. 
entangled with each other. But as the camera kept zooming in, Lu Yongchan was extremely surprised to find that these tree roots were arranged in a very high order. Yes, exactly the order. Just like planned highways, tree roots with thicker diameters are connected with each other to form a main road that runs through each sapling. The tree roots with a slightly smaller diameter are evenly distributed around these main roads. The thinner tree roots are slanted and distributed in the shallow surface area. Like hunters ready to go, waiting for the arrival of prey, the camera continues to move down. As depth decreases, the number of tiny tree roots decreases. They gradually converge and form large tree roots with a diameter of more than 3 meters, thousands of meters underground. There are a large number of tree roots with a diameter of 5 meters around them. It is difficult to see the shadows of those tiny tree roots. Unlike the near-surface area, these thick tree roots no longer intersect with each other, but extend directly underground. It's as if there is something underground that attracts them. There is nothing special here. The camera can only move down quickly. Unlike the first kilometer, the next journey seemed extremely boring. The increase in depth did not increase the diameter of the tree roots. It's like they've reached their limit. Until 10,000 meters underground. These straight, falling, tree roots are like water pipes. All flowing into the same destination. A tree root with a diameter of 100 meters. This section of tree roots comes from that 12,000 meter giant tree. It extends in an area of 10,000 meters underground. Although the underground modeling work of the entire planet has not been completed. Lu Yongchan can predict that this section of tree roots must surround the entire Law Star. Tisk! That's weird! Mao Jingji frowned slightly and clicked his tongue. I always feel that the distribution of this root system is a bit weird. Chapter 604 Planetary Life Strange! Hearing Mao Jingji's words, Lu Yongchan also frowned. To be honest, he felt the same way. The two stood in front of the holographic 3D projection and fell into silence together. Perhaps due to subtle reasons, the two people's movements are very similar. They all put their hands on their chins, frowned, and tilted their heads slightly to look at the 3D projection in front of them. A few minutes later, Mao Jingji changed his actions. He put down the right hand that was supporting his chin, raised it slightly, and made a gesture. Ling easily recognized what Mao Jingji meant. There is barely any lag, and the 3D projection zooms out quickly. A complete lost star appeared in front of the two people. The human fleet has currently only completed the modeling work of 10,000 meters underground on the surface of the Forgotten Star and the Arctic region. Compared with the entire planet, this amount of work is really insignificant. Therefore, in the holographic projection, the entire planet is extremely dim, with only a small area shining with a blue shimmer. Zero! Use the underground structure of the Arctic region of the Forgotten Star as a template to deduce the structure of the entire planet 10,000 meters underground. Academician Mao. The electronic synthesized voice sounded. A large amount of detection data is missing. And the final deduction result may be greatly different from the actual situation. Do you want to continue the deduction mission? Before Mao Jingji had time to speak, Lu Yongchang on the side gave him the order. Continue to execute. Receive. Relevant data are being analyzed. Analysis has been completed and deductive modeling work is in progress. In the holographic projection, text glowing with a faint white light appeared line by line. Deduction modeling completed. The moment the last line of text appeared, the outermost layer of the forgotten star was lit. The fine root systems all over the world gradually converged and merged into the huge root system of the 10,000 meter giant tree through thick rhizomes that fell straight into the ground. Nervous system? Mao Jingji murmured to himself. Professor, have you seen it? Lu Yongchang looked serious, did not speak, and just nodded slightly. Observed from the 3D model derived from zero. The roots of these 100-meter-long trees are like the peripheral nervous system in the human body spread throughout the body. And the thick rhizomes of that 10,000-meter giant tree are like the central nervous system of the human body. These peripheral nervous systems are connected to the central nervous system, one after another, forming a huge and complete nervous system. Things seem to be getting serious. An incredible thought came to Lu Yongchang's mind. Perhaps he was shocked by his own thoughts. He swallowed lightly, and his breathing became rapid. These, these trees, as if it belongs to a complete life? Lu Yongchang's pupils trembled slightly, and he murmured in a low voice. This, how is this possible? Yes, this is the conclusion Lu Yongchang drew from the 3D model in front of him. In his opinion, these tree roots buried deep in the soil are like the intricate nervous system inside the human body. As for the soil on the surface of the planet, it is the flesh and blood tissue 
that makes up the human body. Why? How could such a life form exist? Mao Xingji, who has always wanted to explore plant civilization, muttered to himself in a difficult tone. At this time, he was just like Mr. Yi who saw the real dragon. His heart was full of panic. Lu Yongchang did not respond to his words, but stared blankly at the holographic projection of the forgotten star holographic image with a faint blue color around it and a dim interior. Gradually, an extremely absurd and strange picture appeared in his eyes. In the vast universe, an extremely huge giant lay gently on a desolate rocky planet. The giant's body is very broad and can easily wrap around the entire rocky planet. His head landed at the north pole of the rocky planet, even lying on the ground. His huge head reached a height of 10,000 meters. This giant was lying quietly on the planet. Time flies. The giant never made any move. Gradually, his body became the earth and mountains. Blood becomes rivers and oceans. The hairs turned into small trees a hundred meters tall. The head became a towering giant tree. And the hair became the extremely huge crown of the giant tree. The nervous system in his body turned into the roots of these trees. Trees absorb oxygen and radiation, providing giants with the energy and materials needed to sustain life. Tree roots are interconnected and transmit various messages to the central nervous system. At this moment, an uninvited guest broke into this place. The starship, like flies, not only landed on the giant, but even used its poor weapons to clean the hair and nervous system of the giant. Professor? Professor? Next to my ears, there was a call that was not very real. The sound grew louder and louder, and at the same time, the extremely weird world in front of him began to sway. Professor? Mao Xingji shook Lu Yongchang's shoulders vigorously and shouted loudly. Professor, what's wrong with you? Lu Yongchang suddenly came back to his senses. Call! He panted hard and raised his hand, to wipe the fine beads of sweat on his forehead, looking at the forgotten star model in front of him. He subconsciously took a few steps back. Boom! His body hit the table behind him hard. Professor, are you okay? Mao Jingji looked at Lu Yongchang with worry in his eyes. Lu Yongchang's face was livid, and the piercing pain in his back stimulated his fragile nervous system, making his eyes go black for a while. But even so, he still raised his hand, waved it repeatedly, and said with difficulty, no, I'm fine. The expedition team. He took a deep breath to relieve his oxygen star brain. Let the exploration team immediately stop the exploration mission. Leave the forgotten star and return to the starship. Now! Mao Xingji looked at Li Yongchang with some confusion and asked softly. They just landed not long ago. The trees in the landing area have been cleared. There shouldn't be much danger. Otherwise, now! Stop probing immediately. Lu Yongchang suddenly raised his voice and roared, interrupting Mao Xingji's unfinished words. Mao Xingji took a breath and nodded with difficulty. Okay, I'll contact them right away. Looking at Mao Xingji's movements, Lu Yongchang slowly closed his eyes full of fatigue and fear, and continued to take deep breaths. Yes, return immediately. Exploration mission? All are suspended. Professor Lu ordered us to return immediately. Mao Xingji's voice came from the side. Forgotten star. Lu Yongchang opened his eyes and looked tiredly at Mao Xingji beside him. We are safe in space, but it would be dangerous if you stayed on the surface. That's my gut feeling. Lu Yongchang added softly. Chapter 605 Night. Hearing this, Mao Xingji's expression suddenly became serious. There is a saying that has been circulating among the older generations from the Earth Age. Never question Professor Lu's intuition, no matter how outrageous it may sound. Since the beginning of the Earth Age, whether it is the crisis of genocide again or again, or the nitrogen-accelerated technological development. At every critical moment, Liu Yongchang's intuition has pointed out the right direction for human civilization. The expedition has stopped, and they will start returning soon. Liu Yongchang turned to look at the vibrant planet in the holographic projection, with a look of deep fear in his eyes. I hope nothing happens. A shadow covered him from behind, blocking the light of the high-power searchlights. Zhu Ziwen who had experienced a life and death crisis, suddenly turned his head and controlled the exoskeleton armor to make an escape gesture. Dude, calm down. It's me. Su Pengfei's voice sounded in the team's communication channel. The underground detectors did not sound an alarm. So there is no need to worry about their attacks. Perhaps because he saw Zhu Ziwen's extremely violent movements. Su Pengfei's laughter contained a little ridicule. I said, buddy, when we are on the starship, are you not so timid? What? Aren't you going to have some hot dinner? Zhu Ziwen smiled bitterly and shook his head. 
Forget it. Professor Liu's analysis results haven't come out yet. So I don't have much appetite. Su Pengfei curled his lips. Is the result that important? If you ask me, they are just moving trees. If they really annoy us, we will burn them all down with a fire. Don't. Zhu Ziwen's expression suddenly changed. These trees are precious. If you want to burn them, Professor Liu will probably burn you too. Su Pengfei smiled, raised his hand and scratched the iron skull of the mechanical exoskeleton and said with an embarrassed look, Hey, I just said it casually. Buddy, don't take it seriously. Zhu Ziwen rolled his eyes angrily. Who knows if you are serious or joking? He finally discovered it. Academician Mao's evaluation of this group of people is indeed correct barbarians. He looked at the dark forest under the stars in the distance and sighed softly. This planet exploration is so different from what I imagined. Hey. Su Pengfei sighed softly. What's the point? They are just some creatures living on the planet. What is truly terrifying is actually the power of the planet itself. What do you mean? Zhu Ziwen asked curiously. Isn't this the first planet you have landed on in actual combat? The position of planetary explorer emerged from Glee's time. He has not existed for a long time. And there are no other living planets in the Glee's 555 star system. So these explorers do not actually have much experience in actually landing on planets. Train. Su Pengfei grinned and said, In order to train for landing exploration operations in various environments, we were thrown into the X area of Dawn Star. Hearing this, Zhu Ziwen had a look of surprise on his face. The Dawn Star X area is a product of the planetary climate control system and is filled with high-intensity extreme weather all year round. Compared to Area X, this place is simply paradise. Zhu Ziwen nodded silently. This is really true. Just when he was about to say something else, Xia Zhou's voice rang on the communication channel. Academician Zhu, it's time for us to retreat. Zhu Ziwen was stunned and subconsciously asked, Retreat? Where to? Return. Xia Zhou explained in concise language. A retreat order was issued from above to stop all exploration missions. The sound of exoskeleton armor moving came from the side. Su Pengfei controlled the huge exoskeleton armor and ran towards the starship. Brother, be smarter. Seeing this, Zhu Ziwen could only step forward and keep up with Su Pengfei's pace. In the communication channel, there was some pleasant discussion among the teammates. Obviously, the suspension of the exploration mission is excellent news for these planetary explorers. But unlike these investigators, Zhu Ziwen didn't have the slightest smile on his face. As a scientist, he immediately thought of the meaning behind this order. Could it be? The truth contained in this planet is more terrifying than he thought? Zhu Ziwen frowned and thought carefully about every clue he knew. The exoskeleton armor ran forward briskly with the assistance of Zero. Beep. Beep. As the piercing siren sounded, the blue miniature holographic image once again turned into blood red. Enemy attack. Enemy attack. Xia Zhou's roar sounded like thunder, instantly shattering Zhu Ziwen's thoughts. The scene of wildly dancing tree roots emerged from his mind again. His brain involuntarily issued commands to the mechanical exoskeleton armor. Boom. Boom. Driven by the abundant energy generated by the microfusion reactor, the mechanical exoskeleton's movement speed suddenly increased and Zhu Ziwen inside rushed towards the starship. The distance between the two is not that long. With the help of the mechanical exoskeleton, it took him less than five seconds to stand next to Xia Zhou. Looking at the huge starship behind him, Zhu Ziwen felt a faint sense of security in his heart. Su Pengfei's voice also came from the team's communication channel. Captain, is it underground? Different from his usual indifferent appearance. Su Pengfei's tone at this time had a strong iron-blooded tone. Zhu Ziwen subconsciously turned to look at Xia Zhou. Although he was wrapped in a mechanical exoskeleton, he could still identify the direction of Xia Zhou's gaze based on his familiarity with the mechanical exoskeleton. He's looking out at the forest at the edge of the tarmac. High power searchlights illuminated the entire apron and the forest surrounding the apron. But even these searchlights couldn't penetrate the lush forest. They can only dispel the darkness of the forest's surface. As for what lies deep in the forest, no one knows. The stars in the sky flashed across his mind like lightning. It's dark. Those five meter long arthropods are also about to take action. It's not underground. Xia Zhou's response sounded, confirming Zhu Ziwen's suspicion. The enemy attack comes from the forest. Radiation detectors detected a large number of fast moving unknown radioactive sources in the surrounding forest. It's the forsaken giant insect, Zhu Ziwen said in a deep voice. According to observational data some time ago, these giant insects become active at night. 
as he spoke, he used his authority to obtain the data from the radiation detector. A three-dimensional detection image quickly appeared in the miniature holographic projection in front of him. From the perspective of the radiation detector, the tarmac is a round, black area with a little fluorescent green, there is only a small amount of weak radiation here. And around the circular apron, there is a vast green world. This green is light green, just like new leaves that have just sprouted. There is a strong sense of vitality. This is the radiation emitted by the lost giant tree. Under normal circumstances, that is, during the day, the detector screen should be covered by this vast light green. But now, in these light green backgrounds, there are countless densely packed, fast-moving dark green dots. There is no doubt that these dark green dots are the radiation emitted by the lost giant insect. Chapter 606 You call this a watermelon bug? Looking at the group of abandoned giant insects that were rushing towards the tarmac, Zhu Ziwen's expression became distorted. This, this is impossible! His hands trembled slightly as he quickly adjusted the images in the holographic projection. In the image, there are more and more dark green light spots around the tarmac. It seems that these abandoned giant insects have been guided by something, and they have gathered in this unexpected area. There are no blind spots, and the entire apron is completely covered. According to the previous detection data, although these giant insects are more active at night, they are mainly concentrated around the water. Well, why did they come here? Hearing this, Xia Zhou's brows suddenly frowned, but the increasingly shrill alarm interrupted his thoughts. He raised his hand and pulled Ju Ziwen hard. Never mind the reasons. They will attack at any time. You go back to the starship first. Ju Ziwen was stunned and subconsciously asked, What about you? Xia Zhou turned his head and looked at the planetary explorers in the distance, who had not yet returned to the starship. We have to wait for someone. Attention everyone. Turn on the radiation imaging function. Xia Zhou's eyes suddenly became sharp. Get ready for the first wave of impact. Cover your teammates into the starship. The radiation imaging function is an additional feature added to the second generation exoskeleton armor. Its function is similar to that of a radiation detector. However, it can use zero computing power to simulate and image the detected radiation data in real time. In other words, those forgotten giant insects with extremely powerful stealth capabilities will reveal their true colors in front of the second generation exoskeleton armor that turns on the radiation imaging function. Zhu Ziwen stood there, silently observing Xia Zhou, Su Pingfei and others who were fully armed in just a few seconds. At the same time, he quickly recorded the defects he observed with the help of a brainwave reading device. The deployment speed of the plasma cannon is too slow. The position of the Type 3 laser cannon needs to be improved. Hey! Brother! What time is it? Don't be in a daze! Su Pengfei noticed Zhu Ziwen who was dumb on the spot and shouted angrily, Get back to the starship quickly. When they attack, we won't have time to care about you. Seeing that Zhu Ziwen had no reaction, he hurriedly turned to seek help from Xia Zhou. Captain Xia, Academician Zhu is scared to death. Quickly control the exoskeleton armor and let Academician Zhu return to the starship. Zhu Ziwen suddenly came back to his senses. The next second, he felt an irresistible powerful force coming from his limbs, seeing his body being forced towards the starship hatch driven by the exoskeleton device. He hurriedly shouted loudly, Captain Xia! Captain Xia! Etc. The mechanical exoskeleton stopped its movements. What? Xia Zhou was a little anxious, and his tone became a little more serious. Academician Zhu, now is not the time to joke. You? I need to observe actual combat scenarios with exoskeleton armor. Zhu Ziwen raised his tone and drowned out Xia Zhou's voice. For the development of the next generation of exoskeleton armor. Xia Zhou. He frowned and clicked his tongue slightly. But still unlocked the control authority of the exoskeleton armor. Stupid Su. You are responsible for protecting Academician Zhu. If something happens to Academician Zhu. You won't be able to live anymore. Did you hear that clearly? Yes. Zhu Ziwen straightened his body and responded loudly. As an explorer arrived near the starship, the dark green light spots in the radiation detector gradually increased in speed. They started to get restless. The sharp hissing sound mixed with the rustling sound caused by the moving body of the giant insect filled the entire tarmac. But even so, the forest under the high-power searchlights remained extremely calm, as if nothing had happened. This strange and extremely different scene made Zhu Ziwen shudder slightly. Gudu! Zhu Ziwen broke into cold sweat and swallowed hard. Suddenly, the alarm sound from the detector reached its peak, and the rapid beeps almost became one. Coming! 
Xia Zhou's shouts rang out in the communication channel. All waste explorers, in small teams, form a battle formation immediately. The moment the words fell, a sudden change occurred. Under the illumination of the searchlight, a series of dense footprints appeared in the area where the forest and the tarmac meet. But Zhu Ziwen's attention was not on these footprints. He was breathing heavily as he looked at the scene in the forest. With unspeakable fear in his eyes. Root. Overwhelming tree roots. He finally understood why these giant forsaken insects changed their habits and came near the tarmac. It was the giant trees that did it. They used tree roots to drive these giant insects into this area like sheep. Suddenly, an incredible idea came to Zhu Ziwen's mind. Look at the extremely skilled operations of these giant trees. Is it possible that these abandoned giant insects are livestock raised by them? As soon as this idea emerged, it kept lingering in Zhu Ziwen's mind. Drop! An electronic synthesized voice sounded. The radiation imaging function has been turned on. The scene in front of me suddenly changed. The whole world turned into a light fluorescent green. Zhu Ziwen also managed to see the appearance of those abandoned giant insects. Although this is still an image simulated by Zero through various data. It is already very close to the real picture. Worry! You idiot! The moment he saw the picture clearly, a scream came from Zhu Ziwen's mouth. Zero! You call this thing a watermelon worm? Where is this watermelon bug? This is simply a giant centipede! Zhu Ziwen's face was pale and his body was trembling slightly as he looked at the group of majestic giant centipedes. Although they are similar in size, the appearance of the watermelon worm and the centipede have completely different visual impacts. I won't post the picture. If you are interested, you can search it. Centipede, commonly known as Kianchuanzi and Millipede. Chapter 607, Communication Has Been Interrupted. Earth, the moment the alarm sounded, the expressions of Li Yongchang and Mao Xingji, who were continuing to study the giant tree in the laboratory, changed instantly. The two looked at each other, and both saw deep uneasiness in each other's eyes. Something happened to the expedition team. Lu Yongchang composed himself and said in a deep voice, Zero, take over the picture. Connect with academician Zhu Ziwen. Receive. The holographic image changes quietly. Looking at the densely packed, fast-moving dark green dots, Lu Yongchang and Mao Xingji couldn't help but gasp. Hack! Mao Xingji subconsciously cursed. What's going on? I thought it was the giant tree that was having an attack. How could it be those bugs? Lu Yongchang frowned and looked at various data carefully. Something's wrong. Why do these bugs come to the depths of the forest at night? Shouldn't they go to surrounding waters? As the sirens grew louder, the swarms began to attack, looking at the tree roots waiting behind the insect swarm. Everyone in the laboratory had a look of horror in their eyes. He actually took the initiative to drive away the insect swarms to attack the intruders. Mao Xingji murmured softly. Professor, we still underestimate this giant tree too much. Its intelligence is probably no less than that of humans. Lu Yong Cha did not answer. No less than human. I am afraid. It is far more than human beings. If those tree roots are really the nervous system, then the brain size of this towering tree will far exceed human imagination. With such a huge brain capacity, the level of intelligence is inconclusive. Suddenly, he noticed a corner of the holographic projection, looking at the specially highlighted name. Lu Yongchan frowned instantly. What the H? L is Zhu Ziwen doing? Zero's electronic synthesized sound just happened to sound again. Professor, academician Zhu Ziwen did not respond to communication requests. Lu Yongchang didn't hesitate at all and said directly, Forcibly connect. How long does it take to not answer the communication? Why don't you escape on the starship and wait for death? Receive. The moment the communication was connected, Zhu Ziwen's cries of ghosts and wolves howled suddenly sounded in the laboratory. Zero. You call this thing a watermelon bug? Labor and management believe your lies. Lu Yongchang. The next moment, Looking at the giant centipede coming toward him in the giant holographic projection, he subconsciously took two steps back. Hundreds of two to three meters long abdominal legs gently brushed against his face. Although he knew it was a holographic image, he still felt goosebumps all over his body. Zero? He shouted angrily. Look at your simulation results. This is too bad. Professor, there was insufficient observation data at the time, and there was a big gap between the simulation results and the real picture. This is normal. Zero's electronic synthesized voice was as calm as ever. The model of the forsaken giant insect has been updated. It cannot understand why Li Yongchang, Mao Xingji and others reacted so strongly. In its opinion, both watermelon worms and centipedes are arthropod-like organisms, and there is not much difference between them. 
Perhaps the biggest difference is that these centipede-like creatures can achieve higher crawling speeds with their longer abdominal legs. Lu Yongchang ignored Ling's words. He took a deep breath and suppressed the discomfort in his heart. Ziwen, get back to the starship. The rate of fire of the plasma cannon needs to be improved. We can add another energy storage area next time. But I don't know if the material is strong enough. Zhu Ziwen's muttering came from the communication channel. Zhu Ziwen! Lu Yongchang raised his voice and shouted again. Oh? Zhu Ziwen, who was immersed in observation, suddenly woke up. Professor? When did you connect the communication? How long has it been and you still haven't returned to the starship? Professor, the situation is urgent now. I will report to you later if anything happens. Zhu Ziwen quickly interrupted Lu Yongchang's words. I still need to record relevant data. After the words fell, the holographic communication screen that had just been connected for a few seconds returned to the blue initial interface at the beginning. Communication has been interrupted. Looking at the line of highlighted white text in the center of the blue interface, Lu Yongchang's eyes twitched. This little brat. I have to wait until he comes back. Professor. Calm down. Calm down. Mao Jingji on the side persuaded with a smile. Since Xia Zhou asked him to stay nearby, it means there is not much danger. I think Academician Zhu's next direction is a bit biased toward individual mechas. This new research direction does require a lot of data to support it. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang shook his head, sighed softly and whispered, Of course, I understand this. I'm just worried about Ziwen's safety. After all, this is an alien planet, and the creatures on it still exist in forms that we can't imagine. The unknown means danger after all. Mao Xingji thought for a moment and said, Professor, I don't think you need to worry too much. No matter how intelligent the tree is, no matter how big it is, it is just a tree. According to the data transmitted back, plasma cannons and some ultra-high temperature weapons are extremely lethal to it. The expedition troops we sent out can probably easily defeat a second-level civilization. Mao Jingzi's words made Lu Yongchang's brows suit a lot, but he still paid close attention to the real-time battle situation presented in the holographic projection. Zero. Send some more carrier-based drones to protect the safety of Academician Zhu Ziwen and the rest of the explorers. No, it's not enough. Send ten Golden Crow ships over. When necessary, destroy this giant tree. Receive. The moment the electronic synthesized sound fell, a small fleet composed of ten Golden Crow, battleships, and countless carrier-based drones quietly broke away from the large force and flew towards the Lost Star in the distance. Chapter 6 OA Deterrence Lost Star. The centipede-like appearance of the forsaken giant insect caused quite a shock to all the explorers present, looking at the giant insects that were moving at high speed and coming from all directions. Xia Zhou's expression changed slightly. Attention everyone! Give priority to using Type 3 laser cannons and plasma cannons to attack. These giant insects should also be able to absorb radiation. After saying that, Xia Zhou clicked his tongue softly. Damn it! I didn't prepare ordinary Gauss rifle ammunition. Otherwise, the simplest kinetic energy weapon should be the best solution. Xia Zhou's mutterings followed the communication link and reached Zhu Ziwen's ears. Zhu Ziwen's expression changed drastically. There is no doubt that this is his problem. At that time, in pursuit of more powerful weapons, he reduced the basic ammunition capacity of the Gauss rifle to zero and replaced it with high-power bullets containing antimatter inside. But the problem arises. Antimatter bullets are really useful in interstellar warfare. Just like the antimatter electromagnetic gun, as long as it hits, one shot can destroy the starships of lower civilizations. But in the dense planetary atmosphere, its power is too great, especially when attacking these close-range targets. Although an antimatter bullet can easily eliminate all insect swarms, on the other hand, the expedition team is probably dead the extremely powerful shock wave is enough to kill all surrounding objects. What he did was tantamount to destroying his martial arts skills. After thinking about this clearly, Zhu Ziwen's lips trembled slightly, and there was endless regret in his eyes. He did not hesitate to record this fatal flaw. Fortunately, the disparity in strength between the two sides was too great, and there were no surprises in the battle due to his negligence. There is no doubt that high-energy lasers and plasma cannons are lethal to such carbon-based organisms. The extremely high temperature often kills them easily at the moment of contact. But as the number of giant insect corpses gradually increased, the space for the exploration team to move became smaller and smaller. Damn! Xia Zhou gritted his teeth and shouted at several explorers who were carrying research equipment. Quick! Enter the starship immediately! Equipment! 
When did you return the equipment? I lost it all to labor and management. Everyone. Evacuate in order. Idiot. When how? Bo Luan. Come to the back with me. Siajo, who had just issued a series of orders, caught a glimpse of Ju Ziwen from the corner of his eye, who was still standing aside recording various data. Academician Ju. Academician Ju. Siajo's shouts made Ju Ziwen stop recording data. It's time to evacuate. Siajo shouted loudly, and at the same time raised his finger to point at the increasing number of giant insect corpses in front of him. Although the combat data is still insufficient, Zhu Ziwen will not be confused at such a critical moment. He nodded and walked quickly towards the starship not far away. The piercing siren sounded again. Zhu Ziwen turned his head and looked behind him in surprise. The giant insect's offensive remains unchanged. Without any changes, driven by the roots of the trees in the forest, these giant insects fled into this safe zone like crazy. While being attacked by humans, they fought back hard, trying to monopolize this area. Lie down! Just as Su Pengfei's voice sounded, a loud noise came from his side. Boom! Brilliant high-temperature plasma flew in the air and passed before Zhu Ziwen's eyes. At the same time, a shockwave hit him from his side, pushing him violently aside. With the help of the exoskeleton armor, he quickly stood firm. Looking at the burning tree roots in front of him, and the deep pit on the surface of the soil. He swallowed hard. At this time, he also heard the difference between the two sirens. This time, it's an attack from underground. Perhaps because he sensed their intention to retreat. The giant tree that had been acting as a bystander in the distance finally couldn't help but take action himself. Along with a slight trembling in the soil, thick tree roots pierced out from the ground. The incident happened so suddenly that the formation of the expedition team was also scattered. Seeing that the defense line created by laser beams and plasma cannons began to collapse step by step, Xia Zhou's eyes filled with a strong murderous aura. What the HL? This stupid giant tree is so shameless! As he spoke, he gave an order. Click! Asterisk 3. Three micro drones mounted on the back of the exoskeleton armor released their buckles and soared into the sky powered by fusion batteries. Captain Xia! Zhu Ziwen's face changed slightly. Are you going to use a miniature hydrogen bomb? Certainly. Siajo asked back. Academician Ju. I remember you said that these giant trees are highly intelligent. Ju Ziwen nodded hesitantly. There is currently no exact testing data to show this. But judging from its behavior pattern, its level of intelligence is definitely not low. That's good. Siajo looked at the carbonized debris flying everywhere and said viciously. This giant tree needs to be given a hard blow. Let it know that we are not to be trifled with. Otherwise, we will have to be dragged to death here. It's a pity that the Golden Crow battleship has not arrived yet. Otherwise, the cold light in Xia Zhou's eyes became sharper. I have to uproot this tree. As he spoke, he marked three bombing areas on the satellite map. In order to express efficient deterrence, the distance between these three bombing areas and the giant tree was shortened in sequence. The last bombing point was placed directly on top of the giant tree. Not only that, in order to prevent unexpected situations where the hydrogen bomb was insufficient in power and deterrent strength. Under Xia Zhou's operation, almost all the microdrone equipped with micronuclear bombs fell off from the exoskeleton armor and flew toward the target at extremely high speeds. Area flies. Let's go! Buddy! Get into the starship quickly! It's safe in there! Su Pengfei's roar interrupted the exchange between Xia Zhou and Zhu Ziwen. Zhu Ziwen took a deep look at the explorer who was trying his best to block the joint attack of the giant insects and tree roots, and whispered, Pay attention to safety. After saying that, he got into the side hatch of the starship without hesitation. Perhaps they discovered Zhu Ziwen's special status among the crowd, and these tree roots paid special attention to him. Almost at the same time he got into the cabin, three or four tree roots shot up from the ground and crashed into the cabin door that was about to close. Bang! 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 As soon as he closed the hatch, Xu Ziwen heard loud noises coming from the hatch. Under the watchful eyes of Su Pingfei and Xia Zhou, three or four thick tree roots were frantically tapping on the solid outer armor of the starship. The armor made of star gold carbonine composite material actually had a shallow dent after being struck again and again. Boom! 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 A barrage of plasma projectiles erupted from the exoskeleton armor's barrel, burning the roots into a pile of ash. Seeing most of the tree roots escape by cutting off their tails, Xia Zhou's expression became even more fierce. UV number one has arrived at the target area. 
a line of highlighted white text appeared in the holographic projection in front of Xia Zhou. Drop the bomb immediately. Xia Zhou gave the order directly without any hesitation. After a few seconds, an extremely bright ball of light appeared. The dazzling light violently tore open the dim starry sky of the forgotten star. Light down! Xia Zhou shouted loudly. The next moment, a powerful shock wave roared in, mercilessly knocking these 100 meter long trees to the ground. Because the trunks are strong, these trees retain their relatively intact shapes under the shock wave. The light gradually disappeared, and the night sky gradually returned to its previous dim appearance. The battlefield under the high power searchlights fell into silence. Chapter 609 Evacuation Night has come. As usual, it slowly emerged from the huge crown of giant leaves. The night is long and it has a lot to do. Foraging for food, replenishing water, communicating with others, and reproducing. It moved its long belly and legs and climbed down the tree trunk briskly. In the process, it saw a bright light coming from a very far distance. Strangeness. Isn't it night? Why is there light? Thick doubts arose in its less developed brain. It slowed down its crawling pace a bit. It seems that a lot of changes have taken place around this time. Not only did the ball of light disappear in the sky, but moving objects also appeared in the forest. It stopped in the middle of the trunk. Thinking quietly, a few minutes later, after thinking to no avail, it chose to follow its instinct and crawl toward the ground with its long belly and legs. Soon, it came to the soft earth. It lowered its head, ready to take a bite of fresh and juicy food. Suddenly, a slight tremor came from the soles of his feet. The fear engraved deep in the genes arises spontaneously. It rushed forward quickly and dodged the tree roots emerging from the ground. How so? It should be safe at night. It ran away quickly while thinking about the reasons behind it in its mind. As the number of tree roots increases, people of the same kind running away like crazy appear around it. Escape. 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 It has no time to think about the reasons behind it and can only follow the large army and rush forward. Suddenly, a bright light appeared in front of its eyes. It could clearly be seen that where there was light, there was no forest. No roots. Although the light means danger, the absence of forest and tree roots is enough to attract it. Together with its companions, it jumped out of the forest and rushed towards the light. Next moment, a hot breath came from the pavement in front. Without any time to react, it fell hard to the ground. As the burning sensation gradually spread throughout the body, it felt that its consciousness began to slip away. No, don't move forward. What lies ahead is H, L. It moved its tentacles slightly, wanting to pass on this news to the others of the same kind passing by. But driven by the tree roots, the eyes of those of the same kind were red. They stepped directly on its somewhat carbonized body and rushed forward. The light in its eyes disappeared at an extremely fast speed. Isn't this a time of peace? A confusion flashed through its mind. Increasingly warm, sunbathing. The number of similar species has increased exponentially. Everything means that decades of peace will follow. But in peaceful times, how could such a thing happen? Holding deep regret, it twitched twice and completely lost its breath. Those six pairs of dark eyes reflected the H, L like seen ahead. After the first miniature hydrogen bomb detonated, the entire planet fell into silence. This sudden war has come to an end for the time being. Even the giant lost insects were attracted by the ball of light and powerful radiation in the night sky. They raised their heads one after another, as if searching for the source of the huge radiation floating in the air. Without the giant tree roots to drive them away, they were able to take a breather. They swung their tentacles one after another and exchanged information with their companions. In the mixed information, there is only endless fear and confusion. They have no idea what's going on. Deep underground, waves of continuous vibrations were heard again. After noticing this vibration, the fear in the eyes of these giant insects became more intense. Xia Zhou, who was standing not far from the starship, felt his heart sink. He knew that it was the vibration caused by the roots of the giant tree rubbing against the soil underground. He swallowed softly and stared at the tree roots in front of him that had just emerged from the soil. The reaction of the forsaken giant insect did not deserve his attention. These poor people who don't know the truth are just cannon fodder driven over by the giant tree. As long as the giant tree stops its movements, these poor creatures will naturally leave this area. Suddenly, those tree roots that had just emerged from the soil took action again. These tree roots were like whips, raising their bodies high and lashing out at the expedition team. Xia Zhou's expression did not change at all. He stared hard at the highlighted line of text in front of the holographic projection 
and squeezed out an order from between his teeth. At the second bombing point, release 10 miniature hydrogen bombs immediately. The moment the words fell, the micro drone that had been guarding the second bombing area dropped the micro hydrogen bomb in the cabin without hesitation. Boom! The light, which was several times greater than the first time, once again tore apart the thick darkness of night. With those 100 meter giant trees acting as natural barriers, the giant insects did not suffer much damage. They raised their heads greedily, sucking in the radiation dispersed in the air. Although it is not as good as the fresh food at the bottom of the tree trunk, the radiation in the air is better than the amount. The light gradually dissipated, and a larger hole appeared near the 10,000 meter giant tree. Increasingly violent vibrations were also heard from the ground. Those tree roots that were raised high quickly returned to their original position. Obviously, the miniature hydrogen bomb this time hurt it. But Xia Zhou was not ready to give up just yet. Third bomb site. All micro drones. Descend to an altitude of 5,000 meters. Ready to detonate a hydrogen bomb at any time. The order was given. Densely packed micro drones swooped down from an altitude of tens of thousands of meters and arrived under the canopy of the giant tree of 10,000 meters. Then, he hovered quietly in front of it. Perhaps he sensed something. After a short wait, the tree roots that were exposed above the ground slowly retracted back into the ground. The giant insects that were driven away fled in all directions the moment they discovered that the tree roots had disappeared. The tarmac finally returned to calm. Everyone, enter the starship immediately. Siajo took a long breath and gave the order softly. The bet was right. Academician Ju was indeed right. These giant trees are highly intelligent. Judging from the current situation, their intelligence is probably no less than that of humans. Team Xia! Su Pengfei's call came from the communication channel. You are the only one left. Come back quickly! The starship is about to take off! Xia Zhou suddenly came back to his senses, glanced at the crooked forest in front of him with great fear, turned around, ran a few steps quickly, and jumped into the cabin. The next second, driven by the antimatter engines, starships rose from the ground and rushed towards the endless starry sky. Those micro drones also began to slowly withdraw. When everything returned to tranquility, tree roots emerged from the ground, silently stroking the hundred-meter-long trees that had been knocked down by the shock wave, as if they were mourning something. This scene was clearly and completely recorded by a detector flying at high altitude. Chapter 610 New Direction Earth Lu Yongchan looked at the pictures in the holographic image with a serious face. The level of wisdom of this giant tree is indeed not low. There was a hint of emotion in his eyes. I wonder if I can have some communication with it. Lu Yongchang's words immediately aroused Mao Jingji's interest. Communicate? Hey! Don't say it! Don't say it! Mao Jingji excitedly muttered. If our speculation is not wrong, communication is completely feasible. As long as we decipher their language system and signal transmission method. Lu Yongchang shrugged, raised his hand and pointed at the two huge craters filled with remaining leaves and broken roots in the holographic projection and said somewhat helplessly, What do you think? How do we do the analysis now? Mao Jingji's excited expression suddenly stiffened. This. His lips trembled slightly. And he knocked on the experimental table next to him angrily. Complaining in a low voice. These barbarians. Sure enough. Even the hydrogen bomb was used. Okay now. This giant tree is probably guarding us as much as it is guarding against thieves. I'm afraid it's more than that. Seeing Mao Jingji's reaction. A smile suddenly appeared on Lu Yongcheng's face. In the eyes of the giant tree. We are real intruders. Forget about research. I'm afraid it will be difficult to log in in the future. The corners of Mao Jingji's mouth twitched slightly. This is an unprecedented plant civilization. Seeing the research opportunity wasted. His heart hurt as if it was being cut by a knife. It would be great if I could sneak up a tree. Mao Jingji murmured to himself. Are you kidding? Lu Yongchan looked at Mao Jingji next to him with a horrified look on his face. If it is a dead thing, then there is no problem but it is a living creature. You have also seen the speed and power of the tree roots. The outer armor made of star gold carbonine composite material can even be punched with a dent. How about you go down and give it an injection of anesthesia? Lu Yongchan said half-jokingly. Mao Jingji did not speak, but stared blankly at the holographic projection in front of him. It seemed that he was really considering Lu Yongchan's proposal in detail. Lu Yongchan followed Mao Jingji's eyes. That's the scene inside the biology laboratory. Robots dedicated to scientific research are conducting detailed research on various giant tree tissue samples. Yes, there is a way. Mao Jingji's murmur came from the side. 
At the same time, Liu Yongchang seemed to have figured out something. And a smile of understanding appeared on his face. Do you want to use these tissues to recultivate a young giant tree? He asked Mao Jingji directly. Mao Jingji was stunned and then burst into laughter. Professor, you have also thought of this method. That's right. He turned his expectant gaze to the scene coming from the biological laboratory. Fortunately, according to the test report, these giant trees are cell-like structures. Although they are very different from plants on Earth, we still found suspected genetic material in these basic structures that are similar to cells. The research robot found this genetic-like material in every tissue sample. Having genetic material suggests that these cell-like structures may have totipotency. The so-called cell totipotency means that cells that have differentiated still have the potential to develop into complete life forms, whether they are animals or plants. As long as they are multicellular organisms, their cells contain all the genes for individual development. This means that as long as conditions permit, a cell can develop into a complete individual. Of course, in animal cells, because the degree of differentiation is too high, the differentiation potential of cells is getting narrower and narrower, and the conditions for achieving totipotency are becoming more and more demanding. For plants, at least for plants on Earth, even highly differentiated plant cells have the ability to develop into complete plants. The so-called blood rebirth is nothing more than this. And since this giant tree has a cell-like structure and genetic material, maybe it also has totipotency? Start the experiment immediately! Thinking of this, Liu Yongchang said with some excitement, First use radiation with different intensity gradients to stimulate the sample. If it can really differentiate and grow again, this may be our only chance to spy on this amazing creature. It's not enough. Mao Jingji interrupted Li Yongchang. Radiation intensity is indeed a crucial factor. But the moisture, the temperature, these variables all have to be taken into account. As he spoke, he raised his hand and gently rubbed his temples. Professor, don't rush to the experiment now. I will determine a detailed experimental plan first. After the order was issued, the scientific research robot meticulously started experiments based on the stimulus plan discussed by a group of academicians. Because of the lack of understanding of this strange life, the so-called stimulus packages are actually just trying to cross the river by feeling for the stones. At least, before the experiment started, it was unknown what kind of effect this stimulation program would have on the tissues of these giant trees. The power of scientific research robots is completely revealed at this moment. It's different from people. Under zero control. It can work day and night and maintain the highest working intensity for a long time. It is precisely because of this that the breeding experiments are progressing rapidly. Different from previous experiments. This time, the Academy of Sciences. In other words, mankind's luck seems to be getting better. Not long after the experiment started, good news came from a group of samples but it brought greater doubts to Liu Yongchang and others. It is foreseeable that the variable moisture will have an impact. Mao Jingzi frowned and shook his head repeatedly. But how could there be such little moisture? In the experimental data in the holographic projection, the groups of samples with the least moisture showed some changes. The amazing thing is that the less water there is, the more obvious the changes will be in the tissue sample. Perhaps, Liu Yongchang looked at the experimental data in front of him and said thoughtfully, this planet didn't have much water resources at the beginning? Although this situation is rare, it is possible. Think about it. Where did the water resources on Dawn planet come from? Mao Xingji suddenly realized. According to you, the abundant water resources on the Forgotten Star are also foreign objects. And they just suppress the growth environment of these giant trees? Liu Yongchang turned to look at the model of the Forgotten Star and nodded thoughtfully. Perhaps this is the reason why those giant insects gather near the water. Chapter 6 11 Hitting a Wall the long night fell once again, different from the previous swaggering appearance. An arthropod-like creature cautiously poked its head out from the wide leaves. It widened its six pairs of small eyes and raised its head to look at the sky. The night is getting dark. It stands to reason that it should be safe. But yesterday's lesson taught it that peace has not yet come. And it still needs to be cautious at night. It rubbed its way to the ground along the thick and strong trunk and was ready to turn around and run away at any time. On its way to the ground, it saw the huge circular pit in the distance. The tall trees on the edge of this huge pit are as small as ordinary twigs. It stopped, with a hint of fear in its six pairs of eyes. The events of the previous night slowly emerged in his mind. A huge ball of light, accompanied by a warm and pleasant sunbathing. Logically speaking, that should be a symbol of beauty. But this time, it was the scythe held high by the god of death. I don't know how many of the same kind died in that shocking incident. 
There was a bit of sadness deep in its eyes. But as it continued to crawl downward, the deep pit in the distance was gradually obscured by swaying trees, leaving this bad memory behind. The ground has arrived. It looked at its surroundings carefully. Nothing unusual. The forest at night was still as peaceful as ever. It rained heavily during the day. Due to the weather, it was extremely hungry at this time without enjoying sunbathing and urgently needed to find some energy-rich food. At this moment, it thought of the dangerous feast last night. It randomly took a few bites of disc-shaped food, and under the guidance of its senses, it quickly ran towards the pit. Not long after, it came to the edge of the pit. At this moment, many similar people with the same purpose have gathered near the pit. Near the pit, there are thick tree roots. The thin radiation intensity at night, coupled with the surrounding human environment, puts these tree roots into a deep sleep. Now, this is a paradise for giant bugs. It crawled forward quickly and leaned its body into the soil inside the pit. Although the surroundings are very humid, it still feels comfortable and comfortable when sunbathing. It stared blankly towards the center of the pit. Because of the heavy rain during the day, a clear pool of water accumulated in the center of the pit. The area of the pool is not large and it is not comparable to the vast water area in the distance. But this scene touched the deepest memory of its genes. In my memory, a long time ago, there was not such a vast body of water around. Some, just small puddles like this. At that time, there was no such thing as an era of peace and an era of crisis. There are crises everywhere, and they may be swallowed by monsters hiding underground at any time. But as time went by, after a catastrophe, a vast body of water appeared around it. Since then, the survival pressure of their species has been greatly reduced. It was also after that disaster that the idea of an age of peace and an age of crisis began to spread among the race. The distinction is also very simple. During the day, the light ball hanging in the sky becomes brighter, which is the time of peace. On the contrary, it is an era of crisis. In peaceful times, sunbathing is more comfortable and pleasant, and the frequency of underground monster activity will be greatly reduced allowing them to thrive. In times of crisis, as the comfort level of sunbathing decreases, the frequency of monster activities will rapidly increase. While it was thinking, it raised its head and looked at the starry night sky. There was deep doubt in the six pairs of small eyes. I don't know why, but the ball of light disappeared without realizing it. Instead, there was this huge disc. After that, the feeling of sunbathing changed slightly, although it was still comfortable and pleasant. It still lacked a bit of flavor. However, the intensity of sunbathing has increased a lot. From this aspect alone, it should be a time of peace. But what happened in the past few days was far beyond its understanding. It shook its tentacles slightly, turned around and walked towards its lone companion. It's time to get down to business. Earth. Experiments with totipotency continue in biology laboratories. Good luck. As the progress of the experiment continues to advance, Lu Yongchang and others can basically draw conclusions. The cell-like structure of the lost giant tree is indeed as versatile as the plant cells on Earth. But compared with the plant cells on the Earth, it is far more difficult to redifferentiate and grow into a complete giant tree individual. First, moisture. Too much water will inhibit the biological activity of giant trees. Too little water will affect the growth of giant tree tissue. With a large amount of experimental data, Lu Yongchang and others finally determined a suitable moisture ratio. But then problems arise. Even if the appropriate moisture is provided to these giant tree tissues, it cannot complete the complete differentiation and growth steps. Looking at the data in front of them, Lu Yongchang and Mao Xingji already had a vague guess in their minds. Perhaps, more factors are needed to activate its versatility. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang turned to look at the experimental group on the other side. Over there, Experiments are being conducted on the intensity of radiation. But I don't know why. No matter whether the radiation intensity is reduced or increased, these giant tree tissues do not show much abnormal response. The biggest reaction is that the leaves become greener, or the leaves wither. As for the differentiated growth phenomenon that Lu Yongchang and others wanted to observe, it did not appear at all. Strange. Mao Xingji's eyes were full of confusion. Logically speaking, radiation should be the most important factor. How could it be? Like Mao Xingji, Lu Yongchang was also a little confused at this time. At this point in the experiment, it seemed that it was stuck in the neck and could no longer advance. He shook his head vigorously, preparing to think of other issues to find inspiration. He subconsciously turned his head and looked at the porthole not far away. 
Outside the porthole is the black hole accretion disk that is releasing endless light. Liu Yongchang stared blankly at the black area in the center of the accretion disk, with countless complex thoughts rising in his mind. There was wonderment, curiosity, and a touch of panic. He took a deep breath and asked, Zero, where is the black hole detector? Is the gravity strength up to standard? As he finished speaking, a 3D model of a black hole appeared beside him. The relative positions of the detectors are also marked. Looking at the data marked in the model, Liu Yongchang's eyes showed a bit of joy. We are almost reaching the target area. What about the data? Did the detector send back relevant data? Zero's cold voice sounded in the laboratory. Sorry, the corresponding data has not been detected yet. Chapter 612 Liu Ziyuan Ling's response did not exceed Liu Yongchang's expectations. It's easy to understand. As the distance between a black hole detector and the black hole continues to shrink, the gravity and space-time curvature around it will continue to increase. A significant increase in gravity and space-time curvature will cause problems with the flow of time. If the black hole detectors are not damaged, they still maintain the same frequency, which is to send corresponding data to the fleet every second. However, according to Li Yongchang's calculations, after arriving at the predetermined area, it would take the fleet more than six minutes to fully receive the information in just one second. As for the quantum overdistance communication device, it has not been affected by the so-called event form theory and has maintained good performance until now. However, due to the time deceleration effect, information cannot be transmitted quickly. As a result, the period of observation and research on black holes has been lengthened several times. Why? Liu Yongchang stared at the brilliant black hole accretion disk outside the porthole window and sighed slightly. Although he knew that this was something he couldn't resist, he still felt a little anxious in his heart. Since the beginning of the Earth age, this is the first time that his research progress has been slowed down due to external factors. At this moment, the fleet is following the accretion disk and slowly rotating around the black hole. Only by maintaining a certain operating speed can we ensure that the fleet will not fall into the black hole. It is precisely because of this that the distance between the fleet and the forsaken star is getting closer and closer. Liu Yongchan narrowed his eyes slightly, looked at the planet in the distance that was slightly yellow-green under the light of the accretion disk and fell into deep thought. What would the main star and its previous star system be like? An inexplicable thought appeared in Liu Yongchang's mind. Suddenly, his eyes lit up, as if he thought of something. Liu Yongchang took a deep breath and subconsciously clenched his hands, trying to catch the flash of inspiration in his mind. Accretion disk! Star! Star! He finally caught the flickering inspiration in his mind, and the light in his eyes became brighter and brighter. I see! I know what the problem is! Li Yongchang suddenly turned around and shouted to Mao Xingji, who was in a daze. It's a problem caused by radiation. Mao Xingji stared blankly at Li Yongchang, who was extremely excited. Huh? Obviously, he did not realize the meaning behind Li Yongchang's words. The composition of radiation. Li Yongchang looked at the confused Mao Xingji with heartbroken and wished he could instill the inspiration in his mind into his brain. Think about it. What kind of environment was the law star in before? What kind of environment is it in now? No matter how lucky it is, can the radiation produced by the black hole and the black hole accretion disk be the same as the radiation produced by the host star? Liu Yongchang's words were like a bolt of lightning, clearing away the thick fog in Mao Xingji's mind. His eyes suddenly lit up, and he exclaimed, So, it turns out that's what it is. I get it, Professor. I get it too. We're going in the wrong direction. Only a small part of the main star of the Forsaken Star remains. Most of the mass has been swallowed by the black hole. It is almost impossible to use these debris to perfectly deduce the appearance of the main star at that time. At least, based on the current technological level of human civilization, this is an impossible task. But with the help of these wreckage and a little bit of basic information, human civilization can still do it. With the efforts of Liu Yongchang, He Bailin and others, Ling successfully completed various calculations. The conclusion is out. It is a star that emits intense radiation outward. The main components of radiation are gamma rays and X-rays. Among them, gamma rays occupy a dominant position. The X-rays produced by the black hole accretion disk are obviously significantly higher than the standard for these giant trees. That is to say, they have been living in a high-intensity radiation environment and their vitality is strong enough. Otherwise, he must have died completely long ago. After adjusting the composition of the radiation, the experiment continued, but in the biological laboratory, there was still no scene that academician Mao Xingji wanted to see. 
These giant tree tissues are bathed in specially prepared radiation and are growing very well. But they are still unable to differentiate and grow into complete giant tree individuals that cannot grow roots. The most important purpose of this experiment is to decipher the language system and communication method of the giant tree by studying its root system. This cannot grow a root system. And no matter how good the experimental data is, it will not be of any use. He kept trying various gradients of radiation intensity near the calculated value, but he never saw the results he wanted. At this scene, Mao Jingji suddenly had several blisters on his lips. Academician Mao, I want to increase the radiation intensity. Just as Mao Jingji was scratching his head impatiently, a young voice came. Lu Siyuan? Mao Jingji raised his head and looked at the speaker with bloodshot eyes. He was deeply impressed by this newcomer. In order to train the most dazzling biological academician of the Glee's generation, Mao Jingji spent a lot of energy on him. After all, the rapid development of civilization requires a continuous supply of fresh blood from generation to generation to maintain. Effort and reporting are directly proportional. In just a few years, this young academician has squeezed into the core area of the Academy of Sciences by virtue of his own abilities. How high should you turn it up? Mao Jingji slowed down his tone slightly, shook his head and whispered. I even doubled it. But it didn't work at all. Ten times. Lu Siyuan's answer made Mao Jingji widen his eyes. Ten times? Do you know what ten times is? Academician Mao. Since you have tried it within twice the time, why not try a higher level? Lu Siyuan said softly. This is alien life after all. And we should not look at it with the usual eyes. Listening to Lu Siyuan's extremely firm words, Mao Jingji showed a bit of a smile on his face. After all, the courage of young people is somewhat stronger than that of the older generation of scientific researchers. There are still many samples. So just listen to him and let him test it once. As for scientific research, you have to dare to think and do it. While thinking about it, Mao Jingji nodded. Go ahead. You know the operating procedures well. Go and verify your ideas. Okay. Thank you. Academician Mao. There was a bit of joy in Lu Siyuan's eyes. He thanked Mao Jingji and hurried towards the console beside him. Chapter 613 The Accelerated Path of Evolution Seeing Lu Siyuan's excited look, the smile on Mao Jingji's face grew stronger. How? Is this the successor you trained? Mao Jingji turned his head and looked in the direction of the sound, and saw Lu Yongchan walking towards him with a bit of a smile in his eyes. Professor, he said H, low first. After hesitating for a moment, he responded in a firm tone. I think he is a good choice. At least, in terms of biology, he is a talent worth shaping. Oh! Lu Yongchan looked at Lu Siyuan, who was busy at the main console in surprise. This is the first time I've heard you speak so highly of others. As he cast his gaze towards Lu Siyuan, a holographic projection appeared next to him. On the projection, Lu Siyuan's resume information from birth to present is clearly displayed. After just a brief glance, Lu Yongchang's eyes showed a bit of surprise. Glee's new generation? Yes. Mao Jingji smiled and nodded. Speaking of which, he is still a new human being born from the public support system of society. Moreover, he is also the first batch of new humans to join the Academy of Sciences. Lu Yongchang looked at the dense resume and became more and more surprised. The resume is quite nice. You can actually master the most cutting-edge biological knowledge in such a short time. It seems that the public education system is doing quite well. It's not all due to education. Mao Jingji corrected Lu Yongchan's words with a smile. In my opinion, the biggest contribution is the zero screening and filtration of germ cells. Continuous optimization at the genetic level has improved a lot of people's physical fitness and intelligence. The slow progress of human evolution seems to be accelerating under the stimulation of the public welfare system. Moreover, under Zero's control, the teaching materials are also updated at any time according to the intelligence improvement of new humans. It creates a positive cycle. Speaking of this, Mao Jingji pondered for a moment and spoke again. Let's put it this way. The theoretical system of the Earth Age is now the basic textbook for new humanity. Liu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. What about humans who reproduce naturally? Natural birth? Mao Jingji laughed dumbly. Professor. You may not pay much attention to the news of the sociology branch. When the public welfare system was first implemented, many natural persons were born every year. But as time goes by, the public care system matures, and people gradually discover the advantages of new humans. Extremely high intelligence, coupled with zero targeted teaching. No matter what industry they are in, they are extremely competitive. Fortunately, 
the number of new humans born every year is controlled with zero precision. This situation does not have a big impact on society. It's just... Mao Jingji shrugged and said helplessly. Just like natural selection. Natural humans are gradually eliminated by new humans. When we left the Glee's 555 star system, the number of natural human births per year had dropped to an all-time low. Coupled with persistent publicity, people's ideas have also changed a lot. Whether it is for the next generation or for other reasons, almost all couples will choose to apply for public care quota. According to the prediction model analysis of the sociology department at that time, under normal development, in about 200 years, the public support system can completely replace the original reproductive system. After listening to Mao Jingji's report, Lu Yongchang breathed a long sigh of relief, and his somewhat tense body relaxed a little. A big stone in his heart finally landed smoothly, with the help of various data provided by the human civilization of Proxima Centauri. The restructuring of the human fleet has finally been smoothly implemented. Only, are there no shortcomings in the implementation of the public care system? Lu Yongchang's inquiry brought a bitter smile to Mao Jingji's face. Cons? Of course. The original concept of family has been greatly impacted. Of course, under the supervision of the sociology branch, everything is under control. The original concept of a small family is slowly developing into a concept of a big family as expected at the time. Mao Xingji's words did not exceed Lu Yongchang's expectations. The so-called small family concept is the traditional concept of mankind in the Earth Age that relies on blood relationships to maintain relationships. The concept of the extended family is a new concept proposed by the Academy of Social Sciences for the public education system. With the gradual advancement of the public education system and education, the eyes of new humans are no longer limited to small families bound by blood relationships. In a broad sense, all human beings are members of a large family. Therefore, the new humanity's focus is mainly on the entire human civilization. The development of civilization is above all else. It sounds simple to say, but until now, this idea has just sprouted in the new human group. To truly consolidate this concept, I am afraid it will take a long time for the education system to work hard. In a sense, the day when this concept is completely finalized is the moment when the public welfare system truly succeeds. Thinking of this, Lu Yongchang took a long breath. From the birth of the first batch of publicly raised humans, human beings can no longer be called human beings. Just like the fish that landed on the beach. It can no longer be called a fish. But this is a helpless move after all. In order to survive in this dark and cold universe, the price paid by the human fleet should be considered small. Thinking of this, Lu Yongchang's eye showed a bit of helplessness. And he sighed softly. It's a pity that after the public care system is established, humans can never go back. Mao Jingzi's expression changed slightly. Of course he knew the meaning behind Li Yongchang's words. He was silent for a while and responded in an extremely low voice. Professor, perhaps, from the day humans leave the earth, humans should no longer be called humans. Li Yongchang looked slightly moved. He stared deeply at Mao Jingzi beside him. And after a long silence, he sighed silently. You're right. After leaving the earth, human beings have changed too much and can no longer be called human beings. Chapter 614 was successful? Two days later, Lu Yongchang came to the laboratory very early as usual. All experiments took a long time. So after completing various basic inspections, he and Mao Jingji sat on the seats near the portholes. This should be his only rest time besides sleeping. Sitting on their chairs, Lu Yongchang and Mao Jingji both looked at the extremely gorgeous black hole accretion disk outside the porthole window. The power of nature was unreservedly unleashed before the eyes of two human scientists reminding us of the insignificance of human beings in every aspect. Changed! There has been a change! In the distance, a familiar exclamation came. The exclamations were full of joy and excitement. Academician Mao! The experiment has worked! After a brief moment of sluggishness, Mao Xingji, who was originally sitting on the chair, quickly untied the electromagnetic absorption device and stood up from his seat with a roar. Without any hesitation, he opened his legs and ran towards the main console compared with Mao Jingji. Lu Yongchang appears to be much calmer. As he stood up from his seat, he waved his hands lightly and operated the holographic projection beside him. The experimental data soon appeared in front of Lu Yongchang. When he saw the bright red radiation intensity curve, he froze on the spot. Ten! Ten times standard radiation? The so-called standard radiation is the radiation intensity of the main star in the protostar system of the forgotten star, which is calculated through a series of calculations. Lu Yongchang subconsciously raised his hand 
and scratched his head. This, are all young people today so crazy? But the problem is that such an outrageous and crude experimental operation was successful. Looking at the extremely small and thin segment of the slightly trembling brown object in the picture, he suddenly felt that he was somewhat behind the times. Professor! Professor! Did you see it? Mao Jingji's excited voice came from a distance. Lu Yongchang calmed down, waved his hand to turn off the holographic projection around him, and walked quickly towards the main console. Although he had seen all the data of the experiment in the holographic projection, he still wanted to witness this miracle with his own eyes. Suddenly, he seemed to have thought of it, frowned slightly, and slowed down his pace. After pondering for a moment, he said softly, Ling! Ask Yi Bailin to come to my place! Receive! Electronic synthesized sound sounded beside him, through the huge wall made of transparent aluminum. The lucky plant is clearly visible to everyone in the laboratory. The straight trunk, the broad leaves, and the root system that is trembling slightly and just growing out. They are almost carved out of the same mold as those giant trees on the surface of Forsaken Star. The only difference may be in size and size. See you and how could you think of conducting experiments with such a high dose of radiation? After satisfying his curiosity, Mao Jingzi finally remembered the business and asked Lu Siyuan. Lu Siyuan smiled and scratched his head. Academician Mao. I said I was intuitive. Do you believe it? Mao Jingzi. Seeing a slight change in Mao Jingzi's expression, Lu Siyuan hurriedly opened his mouth to explain. That's right. These giant trees have extremely high tolerance to radiation. Even if the radiation intensity and radiation type vary greatly, they can still live normally. This has been confirmed in previous experiments. Mao Xingji nodded slightly. Indeed. Otherwise, these giant trees would not live so comfortably next to the black hole. So, I wondered if the stimulation we gave it was too small. So we couldn't activate its ability to differentiate and grow. Mao Xingji nodded thoughtfully. According to calculations, the main star of the Forgotten Star does not have such a strong radiation level at all. Lu Siyuan shrugged and did not answer. He specialized in biology and did not dabble too much in other subjects. Lu Yongchan did not speak, but listened silently to the discussion between the two. He frowned, seeming to be thinking about something. Professor, are you looking for me? Along with the sound of hurried footsteps, he Bailin's voice sounded from the side. Lu Yongchan nodded slightly and pointed at the data in the holographic image. Here, look at these data. Oh, by the way, just look at the experimental data related to radiation intensity and that's it. Hearing this, he Bailin quickly turned to look at the dense and extremely complicated experimental data. His. A few minutes later, he Bailin seemed to have discovered something. He took a slight breath and said, This, ten times the standard radiation? This experiment actually succeeded? Whether the experiment is successful or not is not important. What is important is the information behind the experimental data. Lu Yongchang reminded softly. Hearing this, he Bailin couldn't help but be stunned. Behind the experiment? Soon, he realized the meaning of Lu Yongchang's words. Since these giant tree tissues can survive normally under such radiation intensity, and can even activate the totipotency of those cell-like structures, that explains it. You mean, our previous calculation data may have been wrong? Might the radiation intensity of the former star of the lost star be higher than what we calculated? As he spoke, he Bailin raised his hand and dragged a holographic image across it. He quickly flipped through the calculation data in the image, and at the same time, he used Zero's computing power to perform verification work. It's not right! Professor, I checked the calculation again. There should be no problem with the calculation process. Even taking into account the fact that the black hole swallows a large amount of stellar matter, isn't it an exaggeration to say that the radiation intensity is 10 times higher? The same calculation data was also presented in front of Li Yongchang. He had already done the verification work. There is no problem. But this is exactly the biggest problem. Chapter 615 The Truth Comes Out For a moment, the atmosphere in the laboratory became solemn. The joy of the successful experiment disappeared at this moment. He Bin Lin, in particular, has even begun to investigate the possibility of malfunctions in various detectors. But obviously, all his efforts were in vain. After finding that all the data was correct, he Bilin exhaled a breath of air. He scratched his head anxiously. How could there be such a big deviation? Is it because of the black hole? Professor, do you think it's possible that black holes have some mechanism that we don't know about? Is it this mechanism that affects our observations and calculation results? 
He Bilan's words aroused the agreement of several academicians of astronomy. Not only that, even Mao Xingji nodded in agreement. It's possible. Humanity's research on black holes is too shallow. Maybe we can use this opportunity to discover something this time. Hearing this, a hint of excitement suddenly rose in He Bilan's eyes. New discoveries involving black holes. Don't think too much. This must be a big discovery. Thinking of the scene where he left his name in history. He Bilan's breathing suddenly became faster. You don't need to think so complicated. Liu Yongcheng's voice was like a basin of cold water poured on the heads of Hibailin and others. If it is not necessary, do not add entities. Try to think in a concise and effective direction. Otherwise, wasting energy is a small problem. And going in the wrong research direction is a big problem. But, but, Professor, if it wasn't the black hole, how could there be such a big deviation in the calculated data? This is a difference of more than 10 times. He Bailin tried to refute Liu Yongcheng's concept. After a moment of silence, Liu Yongcheng responded softly, What if this star is a flaring star? These words, like the rising sun in the early morning, instantly tore apart the dark fog in everyone's minds. Dazzling star, shining star. He Bailin froze on the spot, repeating these two words softly. Gradually, his eyes gradually brightened. Yes, there is still the possibility of shining as a star. I remember that Ross 154 was a shining star at that time. Liu Yongchang had a nostalgic smile on his face and nodded slightly. Yes, that shining star caused us a lot of panic at that time. If it's a shining star, it all makes sense. The pattern of flare star explosions is almost unpredictable. It may emit extremely powerful radiation in a very short time. Or it may become extremely dim in a very short time. Thanks to this, giant trees have extremely strong adaptability. They can survive a wide range of radiation intensities. We can even simulate the growth experience of giant trees on this lost star. Liu Yongchang said with a look of amazement. When the Yaoyang occurs, the radiation intensity increases rapidly. And these giant trees begin to expand rapidly. When the flare ends and the radiation intensity decreases, they go dormant. No, it's not dormancy. Mao Xingji interrupted Liu Yongchang. After the detector was equipped with a radiation imaging function, we captured image data of giant trees hunting. With that said, Mao Jingji opened a holographic image. In the projection screen, there is a light fluorescent green. The atmosphere, the giant trees, the giant insects, the soil. Almost every object on forsaken surface contains some amount of radiation. The radiation imaging function operates based on this. Depending on the intensity of the radiation, different shades of color appear. With the help of the difference in shades of fluorescent green, Liu Yongchang can easily identify the appearance of giant trees and giant insects. The time mark in the upper right corner of the screen made him realize that the scene in front of him took place during the day on the forgotten star. It's a cloudy day. Mao Jingji's explanation voice came from the side. The radiation content in the atmosphere has been much lower than before. Perhaps because it was too hungry. One giant insect chose to leave the canopy and head to the ground. Following Mao Jingji's explanation, the nearly dark green centipede-like insect left the tree crown step by step and crawled slowly down the light green trunk. And at the base of the light green tree trunk, there are disc-shaped dark green objects. These are... Liu Yongchang's eyes showed a look of surprise. The trapping organs of the giant tree? Yes. The test results also show that these mushroom-like organs contain large doses of radioactive materials. Mao Jingji nodded in agreement. They are extremely tempting to giant insects. In the picture... After hesitating for a while, the giant insect quickly crawled towards the bait and started to eat it unscrupulously. The next second, the light green tree roots buried in the ground rose high and directly dragged the giant insect into the ground. The video is over. Taking all the data together so far, we can easily draw one conclusion. Mao Jingji said solemnly, These giant insects are indeed the captive species of the giant trees as we suspected. Combined with the inference of the shining stars, the giant trees greatly expand their growth areas during the good years. That is, when the shining stars occur. And at the same time, they are also feeding these giant insects. And when the glory comes to an end, the giant trees will start to hunt these giant insects. Of course, this is not absolute. Hunting will also occur in good years. But the frequency is not high. Just like just now. Due to weather conditions, the giant trees chose to hunt giant insects to replenish themselves with nutrients. Judging from these behaviors alone, the intelligence of the giant tree should not be underestimated. Liu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully and turned to look at the seedling in the biology laboratory. When it grows a little bigger, 
We can start deciphering experiments. Zero. Let Meng Lu come and tell her that she's here to work. As soon as the words fell, the electronic synthesized sound immediately sounded. Receive. Academician Meng Lu is being notified. Chapter 616 Bioelectrical Signals. While waiting, Lu Yongchang and the surrounding academicians carefully observed the fragile sapling that was struggling to grow in the laboratory. Based on the data from other experimental groups, they slowly adjusted various environmental parameters in the laboratory. Moisture. Radiation. Temperature. Atmospheric composition. I don't know if it was a psychological effect or something else. But when several parameters were adjusted to the optimal state, Lu Yongchang seemed to see the extremely thin root system of the sapling trembling several times quickly. It's like expressing your joy and satisfaction in a comfortable environment. Looking at the increasingly brightly colored light green leaves, Lu Yongchang had a faint smile in his eyes. Outside the laboratory, there was a sound of light footsteps approaching from far away. Meng Lu is here. Perhaps because she learned about the new research project. Her steps seemed particularly fast and intensive. The laboratory door slowly opened. And Meng Lu's voice came. Professor Lu, what strange civilization did the fleet discover this time? There was a bit of excitement and excitement in her voice. To this day, she still remembers the shock that the language system of those amino giant fish brought to her. Pity. With the outbreak of that advanced civilization war, the Glee's 555 star system has been completely destroyed. Amino giant fish located deep within the ice giant. Nature cannot escape the fate of extinction. Thinking of this, Meng Lu smacked her lips with regret. I'm afraid. In the future, she could only remember these silly big guys from the civilized materials she compiled. Academician Meng. Come quickly. Let's talk first. This mission is much more difficult than the last time. You can't run away from the battle. While Meng Lu was standing at the door of the laboratory, deep in thought, Lu Yongchang's voice came from the laboratory. She was stunned for a moment then stepped forward with some doubts in the direction where the academicians were gathering. Professor, what are you talking about? I don't care about research tasks that are not difficult, she said half-jokingly as she walked closer to the crowd. Inside the curtain wall made of transparent aluminum is a spacious room with white as the main tone. Looking at the various arrangements, a hint of enlightenment rose in Meng Lu's eyes. This is a biology laboratory. But then, she frowned. In this biological laboratory, Except for the busy scientific research type 1 robot. There seemed to be no other living creatures except for the extremely thin sapling in the center. See it? That's what you're studying. Lu Yongchang's voice came from the side. Meng Lu was stunned for a moment. Raised her hand to point to the sapling inside the transparent curtain wall with a look of surprise. And asked in an extremely strange tone. Professor? You want me to study the language system of a tree? Are you serious? Lu Yongchang smiled and waved to the side. Old Mao. Please explain. Academician Meng. A familiar voice came from the side. We meet again. Academician Mao. Seeing Mao Xingji, Meng Lu hurriedly said H. Lo. You? Mao Xingji smiled happily and interrupted Meng Lu's unfinished words. Don't worry. Let me introduce it to you first. This is a plant-type highly intelligent life we discovered on a planet. More than ten minutes later, different from the confusion and confusion in her eyes at the beginning. At this moment, Meng Lu looked at the inconspicuous and thin sapling, with strange colors flashing in her eyes. Plant type highly intelligent life. The universe is so vast and full of wonders. How is it? Are you confident? Lu Yongchang chuckled and asked in a gentle tone. It was extremely rare that Meng Lu did not respond to Lu Yongchang's inquiry immediately. After all, this is an unprecedented plant life, different from those animal life forms that rely on sound or other media to communicate. Although academician Mao Jingji introduced her in detail about this giant tree, she is still confused. Therefore, when faced with Lu Yongchang's inquiry, Meng Lu showed a deeply entangled look on her face. After pondering for a long time, she responded hesitantly, Professor, let me try it first. Lu Yongchang was not surprised at Meng Lu's reaction. After all, it was a brand new field. And even he didn't dare to say that he could definitely decipher the language of the giant tree. He smiled gently. Don't put too much pressure on me. This is not the core research direction of the Academy of Sciences. And even if it fails, it will not have much impact. Seeing that Meng Lu was slightly relieved, he whispered again, If you have any difficulties during the research process, please tell me or Academician Mao. And the Academy of Sciences will try its best to meet your requirements. Research has officially begun, based on various experiments and exploration data provided by Academician Mao Jingji. Meng Lu can basically determine 
that these giant trees rely on their root systems to transmit information. According to the speculations of Professor Liu and Academician Mao, all the trees on the Forgotten Star are branches of the 10,000-meter giant tree. In other words, it is a separate individual life. A problem occurred. The value of the language system is communication. Whether it is language, gestures or words, its ultimate goal is communication. Does an individual life really have a so-called language system when it does not need to communicate with its own kind? Without a complete language system, the difficulty of her work would increase exponentially. Asking a tree to understand human meaning is still an alien tree. This is easier said than done. Before the experiment started, Meng Lu had already doubted the success rate of the experiment. Even so, she tried to start the experiment according to the normal procedure. Because there was no precedent, she could only conduct tentative experiments based on her own understanding. First of all, what appeared in her mind was the speculation of bioelectricity. In an isolated biological laboratory, scientific research robots are carefully implanting tiny electrodes into the roots of saplings. Under the camera, Meng Lu could clearly see that with the movements of the scientific research robot, the sapling shook its thin root system slightly, as if resisting this action, as the last electrode was successfully implanted into the root system of the sapling. She breathed a sigh of relief. In order to reduce the irritation of this operation to the saplings, she specially chose the smallest electrode. Fortunately, there were no unexpected incidents in the entire operation process. She turned to look at the holographic image on the side. After waiting for a moment, undulating curves appeared in the holographic image. Sure enough, there is bioelectricity. Meng Lu frowned slightly and carefully observed the fluctuations of these curves. Chapter 617, Wrong Direction? Not long after, Meng Lu's eyes showed surprise. These seemingly complicated biological currents do have some simple and obvious rules. Zero, record all bioelectrical signals and try to split and compare them. She pondered for a moment and then said again, model and compare the frequency of changes in current size. Receive. The moment the electronic synthesized sound sounded, segments of extremely similar waveforms began to appear in the holographic projection on the side. This was an experience she learned while studying the language system of the amino giant fish. Amino giant fish can use the rapidly changing frequency of ultrasonic waves as syllables and phonemes for communication. These giant trees can also use the changing frequency of bioelectric current as the basic unit of information transmission. She didn't want to fall in the same pit twice. Time passes bit by bit. There are more and more sample data in holographic projection. But Meng Lu's brows did not relax at all, but instead furrowed deeper. This is exactly the opposite of what happened when studying the amino giant fish. There are too many similar waveforms in front of me. According to statistics provided by Zero, more than 99% of bioelectric signals are repeated. Experience tells her that these repeated fragments generally have no research value. So, she focused on the only 1% of bioelectric signal fragments. Just one glance made her frown. Confusion. This was Meng Lu's first impression of those waveforms. The waveforms are extremely messy, and there is no pattern at all. She carefully read through these bioelectric signals, trying to find patterns in these chaotic signals. As for Zero, he was naturally not idle either. With its huge computing power, it tries to find the rules using exhaustive methods. Call! Meng Lu raised her head in a daze, turned to look at the green sapling inside the transparent aluminum curtain wall, and gave a bitter smile. After such a long period of research, she didn't find any pattern. It seems that the 1% of the bioelectric signals are really garbled. Professor Liu is indeed right. This research task may be far more difficult than she imagined. She walked slowly to the transparent aluminum curtain wall, leaned close to her body, and stared at the sapling with her naked eyes. Under the right environment, its growth rate is several times faster than before. In less than 10 hours, the sapling's root system has increased in size, seeing the gradually thickening roots trembling slightly in the air. Meng Lu nodded thoughtfully. Perhaps, she had to check the physiological structure of these roots first. Only after understanding the structure can she prescribe the right medicine and find the correct research path. Meng Lu didn't hesitate at all. Turn around and walk towards the experimental platform not far away. Academician Mao! She shouted in a low voice. Academician Mao! I want to know the internal structure of the root system of the giant tree. When Mao Jingji, who was busy doing research, heard this, he was stunned for a moment. After completing the operation in his hands, he raised his head and stretched out his hand to drag a holographic image. The internal structure of the root system of giant trees. We haven't studied this thoroughly yet. Mao Jingji sighed softly. Look at it. 
This is an anatomical model of the roots of a giant tree. Tree root samples taken from the forgotten star. Seeing the confusion in Meng Lu's eyes, he added, Meng Lu suddenly realized it and quickly turned her attention to the holographic model. The model is filled with extremely thin tubular structures. These tubular structures are connected in turn to form a huge network. In the central region of the network, there is a spherical cavity. Almost all tubular structures are connected to this cavity. Or in other words, all tubular structures extend from this cavity. At the cutoff point of the tree roots, these tubular structures come to an abrupt end. This is... Meng Lu looked at Mao Jingji beside her with some confusion. Facing Meng Lu's inquiry, Mao Jingji shrugged helplessly. Have no idea. At least until now. We don't know the role of these tubular structures and spherical cavities. The tree roots we obtained are all dead and have been damaged to varying degrees. So the difficulty of research has increased a lot. As for the living tree roots, Mao Jingji turned towards the biological laboratory area and nuzzled his lips. In addition to the sapling you have over there, there are three other saplings being cultivated. When the cultivation is successful, maybe we can discover something. Meng Lu pondered for a moment and said again, I found bioelectrical signals in the root system of the saplings. These words made Mao Jingji's eyes suddenly light up. Bioelectricity? Yes, the signal is strong. But, Meng Lu showed some hesitation on her face. After all, she had not made any substantial discovery yet. But Mao Jingji did ask repeatedly with an anxious look on his face. But what? But more than 99% of these bioelectrical signals are repeated. Just like pulse currents. And have no meaning. Meng Lu pursed her lips and said with a gloomy expression. As for the remaining 1%, so far, I haven't concluded any patterns. The signal was jumbled. Like gibberish. My intuition told me that I was going in the wrong research direction. It seems that information is not transmitted between tree roots through bioelectrical signals. Mao Jingji frowned. Let me see those bioelectric signals first. Naturally, Meng Lu would not refuse this request. Soon, detailed experimental data was presented to her and Mao Jingji. Correct. Ling, call me Professor Lu and tell me that academician Meng Lu has made some discoveries. Mao Jingji whispered while checking the data. Soon, another candidate for eyebrow fighting in the laboratory was added. Lu Yongchan looked at the experimental data provided by Meng Lu with a confused face and was also a little confused. He turned his head and looked at the network tubular structure in the tree root anatomy model and then looked at the regular but extremely messy bioelectrical signal data and fell into deep thought. You said, Is it possible that these network tubular structures are channels for bioelectric signals? Just like our neurons? Mao Xingzi's eyes lit up slightly and he asked in a low voice. I'm afraid it's not that simple. Before Meng Lu could speak, Lu Yongchang vetoed Mao Xingzi's proposal. According to our observations, Almost all tree roots on the entire forgotten star move at the same time. In other words, it needs to transmit all information to every peripheral nerve in an instant. It is impossible for bioelectric signals to accomplish such a feat. It's too slow. If bioelectrical signals were really used for signal transmission, it would probably be a severely paralyzed patient with high paraplegia. It simply can't direct all its roots to make such uniform movements. At that time, according to our guess, it should have mastered a communication method similar to quantum long-distance communication. Chapter 618 Giant Tree Consciousness As he spoke, Lu Yongchang's voice gradually became deeper. Mao Jingji and Meng Lu looked at Lu Yongchang, who was mid-sentence in surprise. For a moment, the two of them were confused. Professor? Looking at Lu Yongchang who suddenly fell into deep thought, Meng Lu carefully shouted in a low voice. I see! Lu Yongchang murmured in a low voice. Bioelectrical signals are just a preliminary step in information transmission. They are not the medium for transmitting information. Zero. Draw a 3D model diagram of bioelectrical signal conduction. He didn't explain much, but gave Zero a straightforward order. As the blue particle effect slowly floated in the air, a section of tree roots that were magnified several times and slowly trembling appeared in front of the three people. Buzz. Bright azure light slowly lit up from both sides of the tree roots completely wrapping the tree roots, forming two azure halos that echoed from the beginning to the end. This is a zero-simulated biocurrent signal. Then, the two azure halos moved towards each other and converged in the central area of the tree roots. The next moment, two azure halos of light started from the central area and rushed toward both ends of the tree roots. So back and forth, like a surging tide, one wave after another. At this moment, both Li Yongchang 
and the other two people noticed the movement pattern of this blue halo. It roughly outlines a rough mesh area, and in the center of this mesh area, there is a spherical hole, relevant to the internal structure of tree roots. It is not difficult to imagine that these biological currents are running around those tubular structures and spherical cavities. Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the mesh structure and spherical cavity glowing with bursts of blue light. Due to the insufficient number of electrodes and insufficient detection accuracy, bioelectric signals in many detailed areas are missing. Therefore, the structure is not clear, but rather vague, with only a rough outline. But just like that, Lu Yongchang made a surprising discovery. In order to verify his conjecture, his fingers trembled slightly, and he clicked on the holographic projection on the side. With the help of his authority, he quickly entered Zero's database. At the bottom of the database, he found a piece of information. That is research data from before the human fleet left the solar system. He quickly opened the drawing file and showed it in front of Mao Jingji and Meng Lu. Professor? Mao Jingji frowned slightly, as if he noticed something. Is this the design drawing of the first generation quantum ultra-distance communication device? What did you do with this? The human fleet has developed for hundreds of years. And the quantum ultra-distance communication device has been updated countless times. In Mao Jingji's opinion, the quantum ultra-distance communication device in this drawing has fallen behind to the extreme. As for Meng Lu on the side, born in Proxima Centauri, she had never seen such an old antique before. Right. Lu Yongchan did not raise his head, but responded softly, and did not even answer Mao Jingji's question. He raised his hand and selected a part of the drawing. Then, he kept swiping his fingers to remove all the various parts and miscellaneous equipment. Soon, a drawing that was streamlined countless times appeared in front of the three of them. Lu Yongchang took a long breath and excitedly put it together with the other two holographic models. When the three holographic models glowing with azure blue were placed together, both Mao Jingji and Meng Lu had shocked looks on their faces. Although there were subtle differences, the extremely similar mesh structure and spherical cavity area still caused the two of them to exclaim. Mao Jingji stared blankly at the three holographic models in front of him and swallowed hard. This, is this the core area of quantum communication? Right. Lu Yongchan gave an affirmative answer. Biological current is just a tool to control this core area. After the brief shock, Mao Jingji quickly came to his senses. He looked at Lu Yongchan with some excitement. Professor, Professor, I have a guess. If, and I mean if, all our guesses come true. Then we looked at these mesh-like structures and spherical cavities as human neurons. Then they use the quantum over-distance effect to transmit signals. This should be correct. Right. Lu Yongchang thought carefully for a moment and then nodded cautiously. Theoretically, it should be no problem. Okay, that's fine. Mao Jingji muttered in a spirited voice. Lu Yongchang frowned suddenly. What exactly do you want to say? Then if giant trees have consciousness, what is their form of consciousness? Professor, we have done a lot of research on human consciousness in the past, and all data show that human consciousness is in a quantum state, Mao Jingji said urgently. But what about the giant tree? Are they also quantum forms of consciousness? Lu Yongchang was stunned. To be honest, he didn't think about this problem at first. Perhaps, Professor, this may be our best chance to study consciousness. Mao Jingji excitedly reached out and squeezed Lu Yongchang's arm, interrupting his words. Professor, Think about it carefully. It can convert bioelectrical signals into quantum signals. And countless quantum signals can then converge to form quantum consciousness. This is simply the best research template. If we study it thoroughly, we may be able to explain how human consciousness arises. This will make a huge contribution to the future evolution of mankind. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang's breathing gradually became rapid. How does consciousness arise? Can consciousness be transferred? Even if human civilization has developed to this point. These problems have still not been solved. The reason is also very simple. For organisms on Earth, the transmission of information between neurons mainly relies on electrical signals and chemical substances. That is, neurotransmitters. The latter is more common. Therefore, it is extremely difficult to study the formation process of human consciousness or other biological consciousness. Therefore, as Mao Jingji said, giant trees are the best template for studying consciousness. They can directly convert electrical signals into quantum signals, which will undoubtedly greatly reduce the burden of related research. I have to say, he was moved, but now is not the time to study this. Lu Yongchang took a deep breath, suppressed his curiosity about relevant knowledge, and said in a deep voice, 
research in this area. Don't rush it yet. The priority that needs to be solved now is the language system of the giant tree. If we want to use giant trees to study human consciousness, we must first study the giant trees thoroughly. Zero. Ask him Ozeon to bring someone over. When it comes to the field of quantum communication, professionals are naturally needed to assist. Chapter 6, 19 Breakthrough Progress Biological Quantum Communication? Or on a tree? Emoziang, who hurried over, had an expression on his face that was very similar to Meng Lu's. Professor, your joke is too big. Lu Yongchang did not speak, but silently pointed to the three holographic models placed side by side. Emoziang looked suspiciously in the direction of Lu Yongchang's finger. With just one glance, he noticed the origin of one of the holographic models. He was stunned and asked with some surprise. Professor, this should be the core control component of the first generation of quantum over-distance communication. Right. Where are the two next to you? Before Li Yongchang could speak, Mao Xingji had already started to explain. When he learned that the other two models were actually the internal structure model of tree roots and the bioelectric signal model, the expression on his face changed slightly in an instant. The similarities between the three are too high. Curiosity. Surprise. Shock. In just a few dozen seconds, Mo Ziyang performed a Sichuan opera face change in front of everyone. What the HL? Mo Ziyang's eyes fell on the holographic model with a surging blue aperture. And he murmured softly, This thing is amazing! After observing fascinatedly for a long time, he straightened up and looked at Li Yongchang with piercing eyes. Professor, what should I do? It's very simple. Li Yongchang smiled and gestured to Meng Lu beside him. Cooperate with Academician Meng's research work. Decipher the giant tree's language system as soon as possible. Li Yongchang thought for a moment, perhaps thinking of a possibility mentioned by Meng Lu earlier, and added again, If it does not have a language system, try to establish a communication channel. The reorganization of the research team, especially the addition of Emoza Yang and others, has accelerated the progress of the entire research. After one experiment after another, Emoza Yang and others quickly determine one thing there is indeed a mechanism very similar to quantum long-distance communication in the root system of giant tree saplings. But this information made Meng Lu frown. Quantum long-distance communication, can the signal be intercepted and deciphered? She asked Emoza Yang with some worry. I remember that quantum communication should be very confidential. Right. Yes. Emoza Yang smiled and stopped what he was doing to explain. Due to the characteristics of quantum entanglement. Normally, the information transmitted during quantum over-distance communication cannot be deciphered. Perhaps thinking of something. Emo Ziyang shrugged and added again. At least, it cannot be deciphered with current human technology. Maybe those advanced civilizations can decipher it. Just like the original painting, we have almost no privacy in front of them. Hearing this, Meng Lu's eyes became more worried. Then, can the experiment continue? Don't worry. Emo Ziyang raised his hand and pointed at the transparent aluminum curtain wall of the biology laboratory. I'm talking about the general situation. Now! The sapling itself is right in front of us, which is equivalent to placing the mother machine of a quantum communication device in front of us. If this can't be solved, my job as an academician will be in vain. Ming Lu breathed a sigh of relief. Academician M.O. The experimental preparations have been completed, and the signal interception experiment can be started at any time. An academician interrupted Meng Lu's intention to continue questioning. Emo Ziyang, who noticed this, showed an apologetic smile to Meng Lu. Sorry, the experiment is about to begin. If you have any questions, I will answer them after the experiment is completed. After saying that, he looked solemn and focused all his attention on the holographic projection in front of him. Get ready to insert the probe. The first probe position data. Orders were issued in an orderly manner from Emo Ziyang's mouth and the signal interception experiment officially began. After inserting countless atomic-level probes, a weak signal finally appeared in the originally unchanging holographic projection. As the position of the probe is continuously adjusted, the number and intensity of the signals gradually increase. Looking at the strong and rhythmic signals in the holographic projection, all the academicians present showed a little excitement in their eyes. Rhythm often means regularity. Meng Lu couldn't help but hold her breath. The deciphering work made a breakthrough at this moment she finally found a path that might be right, just as the deciphering work was gradually getting on track. On the other side, in Lu Yongchang's office. At this moment, Lu Yongchang was looking at the colorful black hole outside the porthole window. The gorgeous accretion disk around the black hole didn't catch his eye. All his attention was focused on the central region of the accretion disk. 
There is the body of the black hole. To be precise, it is inside the black hole's event horizon, because light cannot escape from it. To the outside world, the inside of the horizon is pitch black, and what happens within it will never be observed by the outside world. Near the event horizon, there is a gravitational lensing effect that is distorted to the extreme. I don't know when he started to become addicted to this feeling of observing black holes, compared with other celestial bodies that can be seen clearly at a glance. Celestial bodies such as black holes, which are invisible to the naked eye, often mean more truths and secrets. Looking at the unexplorable black hole, Lu Yongchok felt countless elusive inspirations slowly rising in his mind. Professor, the black hole detector has detected the latest data. At the same time as the electronic synthesizer sounded, a holographic projection automatically unfolded above the desk. The black hole detector has successfully arrived at the predetermined area. Lu Yongchong slowly withdrew his gaze from the porthole and looked at the holographic projection above the desk. Looking at the data in the projection, his somewhat dazed eyes once again gained focus. A light of joy rose from it. He quickly returned to his seat and looked carefully at the data in the projection that was beating slowly like squeezing out toothpaste. The initial data doesn't have much value. It is nothing more than reporting the location information of the detector and the corresponding time. He glanced lightly. Sure enough, as calculated at the beginning, the fleet took six minutes to receive every second of information. He tapped his fingers lightly on his desk. Duh duh duh. Each character slowly beats in the holographic projection, gradually converging into a string of data with practical meaning. The gravity is strong enough. Lu Yongchang's eyes moved slightly, and he murmured in a low voice. The curvature of space and time is already huge enough. Next, it is time to try to find the so-called gravitons. Chapter 620 continued to sink. The People's Alliance fleet was slowly rotating around the central black hole on the periphery of the huge accretion disk. Round and round. During this period, the huge fleet passed by the forgotten star several times. Every time, the fleet will send more or less detectors to explore the forgotten star. At the beginning, when the detector arrived on the ground, the vengeful giant tree would cautiously make a tentative attack with its roots. As for why be cautious? Until now, those two huge craters have just begun to grow saplings. What's more, from time to time, there will be several strange things whizzing through the air. Who knows whether they will be attacked like last time? It is not stupid, so it will naturally not risk its life to touch human beings. After several trials, the giant tree seemed to figure out the rules and gradually became familiar with these iron bumps from the sky. In fact, because these iron lumps will release a large amount of radiation when they land and take off, the giant trees will ambush them in advance. Just like a pilgrimage, both leaves and tree roots will crowd around the detector, waiting for the gift from nature. As for the forsaken giant insect, this pattern was gradually discovered. However, they are weak and obviously cannot break through the blockade of the giant tree. They can only lick some radioactive materials missed by the giant tree in the most remote peripheral areas. Even so, the day when the detector arrives is a rare carnival for them at least. The giant trees will no longer attack them. Research time always flies by, especially in the study of black holes. Just receiving data consumes more than 80% of the entire research process. In the laboratory, Are there any signs of the existence of gravitons? Lu Yongchang asked with a gloomy face. No response. Lu Yongchang took a deep breath to calm down his inner anxiety. Five years. It has been five years since the black hole detector successfully arrived at the target area. After five years of continuous observation, no trace of the existence of gravitons was found. Not to mention the so-called superstring gravitational constant. We haven't even caught the hair of a graviton. Lu Yongchang's restless voice echoed in the laboratory. While speaking, the bright green background of the technology tree system seemed to reappear in his mind. The missing constant, the search for gravitons. According to the tips of the technology tree, if you want to obtain the superstring gravitational constant, you must find the so-called graviton. But until now, Yong Chong, Bong Su said hesitantly, wait a little longer. If we use the time of the black hole detector as a benchmark, it is only a little more than five days from arrival at the target area to now. Don't I know about this? Lu Yongchang's face became increasingly ugly. Is it possible that this is why I'm so upset? Even before the experiment began, he was prepared to spend a lot of time. But after waiting for five years, he only received a series of useless data. This fact was still difficult for Lu Yongchan to accept. Five years. This is five years. In the past, five years would have been enough for him to develop a lot of technology. Although the fleet supplies are sufficient, 
they are still limited. In order to resist the gravitational pull of a black hole, we consume a lot of energy every moment. What if it takes a year for a black hole detector to observe the data we want? This means the fleet will have to stay here for 360 years. Fong Su fell silent. Like Lu Yongchang, this problem has been bothering him. Based on zero calculations, we can stay here for at most 500 years. It seems that there is still plenty of time. But judging from the data obtained so far, I don't think the detector can give us a satisfactory answer within this deadline. Can we really find gravitons in 500 years? Lu Yongchang's voice still echoed in the laboratory. That. He Bailin's voice came from not far away. Professor, what do you think we should do? Lu Yongchang also fell into silence. The laboratory was quiet, and every academician subconsciously slowed down his breathing for fear of disturbing Lu Yongchang's thoughts. Let the detector continue to sink. Lu Yongchang's firm voice suddenly broke the silence in the laboratory. But this is already the limit that the detector can reach. He Bailin's expression changed slightly. And he immediately retorted, If it continues to sink, the detector's antimatter engine power will not be enough to escape the gravity of the black hole. The probe will lose its ability to maintain orbit. Under the gravity of the black hole, it will continue to fall toward the black hole's event horizon until it is swallowed by the black hole. That's not the most important issue. Once the distance between the detector and the black hole continues to shorten, the time deceleration effect will continue to increase. If you want to receive a complete piece of data, the time consumed will increase significantly. Lu Yongchan did not immediately respond to Yi Bailin's words, but stretched out his hand to drag a holographic image. He made a gesture to ask Zero to clear all the data on the projection, and then said again, Some time ago, I have been thinking about a problem. Perhaps because we didn't understand the specific conditions of the black hole. There were some problems with our original inferred data. The curvature of space-time in the area where the detector is located is still not large enough to directly expose gravitons to the visible universe. As he spoke, Lu Yongchan raised his hand and started writing on the holographic projection in front of him. This is... He Bailin on the side frowned and murmured softly. The formula we use to calculate the conditions for the emergence of gravitons? Not bad. Lu Yongchan nodded and without any pause in his movements. He wrote down rows of profound numbers and letters in a smooth flow. Among the data returned by the detector, several pieces of data caught my attention. Although they have nothing to do with gravitons, they have some deviations from our previous black hole models. The observation time is still short, and we cannot yet determine whether this is an experimental error. But if we feed these biased data into the extrapolation process, the movements in Li Yongchang's hands became faster and faster and the writing on the projection became more and more sloppy. Fortunately, all the academicians present were already accustomed to Lu Yongchang's scrawled handwriting, so it was not too difficult to identify them. We can easily come to a conclusion. Lu Yongchang suddenly stopped writing in his hand, and then gently tapped a series of numbers with his fingers. The current curvature of space-time near black hole detectors is not enough. Chapter 621 Decoding Successful The calculation process in holographic projection is extremely complex. However, when Li Yongchan deliberately slowed down his derivation, most of the academicians present kept up with his derivation progress. He Bainan frowned and stared at the last string of numbers in the projection. He subconsciously opened a holographic projection and began to calculate. Don't forget it. Li Yongchan glanced at the formulas and numbers in the projection from afar and gently interrupted He Bailin's initial calculation. In 330 years, to be precise, 329 years and 10 months later, we will receive data from the detector that arrived at the second target area. He Bailin paused in his movements. More than 300 years. Then these 300 years. Hibernation. Li Yongchang said in a deep voice. The entire fleet is in hibernation and the fleet is sailing at the lowest consumption until abnormal data is received. Yongchang, what if no abnormal data is received? Fang Su asked the worst case scenario. Li Yongchang took a deep breath, calmed down his emotions and said in an extremely helpless tone, The fleet will be here for 450 years. 450 years later, Zero will lead the fleet to the nearest star system to replenish supplies. After the words fell, there was silence in the laboratory. Every academician's face showed a more or less unwilling look. Does anyone else have any comments? After waiting for a while, Li Yongchang made sure that there was no objection, and then issued the order to Ling. Zero! Control half of the black hole detectors to head to the second target area at full speed. The remaining black hole detectors maintain their current orbits and continue to perform observation missions. Due to the time-slowing effect, 
Zero had to deliberately adjust the speed at which the information was sent. So it took some time for the black hole detector to receive the complete command. After confirming that the order had been executed, Lu Yongchan clapped his hands gently and said with a fake smile, Everyone, it's time for us to prepare for hibernation. Maybe when we wake up, our detector will find traces of gravitons. Lu Yongchan's words did not dispel the negative atmosphere in the laboratory. He Bailin and others had bitter smiles on their faces. Can such an ideal situation really occur? The greater possibility is that when they wake up, they have been forced to arrive in a brand new star system. Five years of waiting gradually eroded their original unwavering confidence. As of now, no one dares to pat their chest and guarantee that there will be traces of the existence of gravitons near the black hole. Manpower will eventually be exhausted. Even a fourth-level civilization can only despair when faced with the most mysterious and powerful celestial body in the universe. The entire human fleet can only place its hopes on those few black hole detectors. Just as everyone unhooked the electromagnetic absorption device and prepared to get up and leave, Zero's electronic synthesized sound sounded again. Professor, Academician Meng Lu has sent a message. Professor, Meng Lu looked at Li Yongchan who was rushing over and said H, low with a smile. Did the deciphering succeed? Lu Yongchang nodded and went straight to the point without any polite words. Yes. Speaking of this, Meng Lu suddenly became excited. She stretched out her hand and said, Professor, come and take a look at the sapling first. The news of the great success of the research briefly dispelled the sadness between Lu Yongchang's brows. He smiled gently and followed Meng Lu's footsteps towards the biological laboratory. As he walked, his pace slowed down. There was an extremely rare look of surprise on his steady face. This. He stopped where he was, staring blankly at the scene inside the transparent aluminum curtain wall. A thick tree trunk with deep veins on its surface. Professor, the saplings grow very fast, and the biological laboratory began to renovate and expand in the second year. Meng Lu noticed Li Yongchang's pause and immediately explained with a smile. You have been studying black hole data. No, it's normal to know that the research progress here is normal. Li Yongchang gave a bitter smile and said nothing. He took another step and walked towards the transparent aluminum curtain wall. As he continued to get closer, the entire scene inside the curtain wall gradually fell into his sight. It was a spherical space with a diameter of 2 to 300 meters. On the inner wall of the space, machines that produce radiation hang. In the spherical space, under the illumination of the stellar spectrum light, a giant tree hundreds of meters high is growing vigorously. The green leaves sway gently in the artificial breeze. The perspective slowly moves down. The bottom area of the spherical space is filled with soil from the forgotten star. Thick, brown tree roots are entwined in the soil. Because there is not much soil, some superficial tree roots are directly exposed to the soil. Under the illumination of the stellar spectrum light, they squirm slowly, as if looking for the most comfortable position. What really surprised Li Yongchang was not these strange scenes. He opened his mouth slightly and looked at the scientific research robots freely moving around the tree roots in surprise. This... Won't these tree roots attack the robots? After hearing Lu Yongchun's question, Meng Lu said meaningfully, It does attack in the beginning, but as the forsaken star's detection and landing operations become more frequent, it will no longer attack the robots. Lu Yongchun couldn't help but froze on the spot. For a moment, he felt like his brain CPU was shutting down. Wait, wait, you say it again? What does this have to do with the exploration landing operation on the forgotten star? Meng Lu smiled, and pointed to the console beside her. Professor, this is related to our research results. Please come with me, Academician Mao, and I will answer all your questions. Lu Yongchang turned his head suspiciously, and glanced at the scene in the biology laboratory. This sight completely shocked him. I saw a scientific research robot holding small gamma ray guns in its hands, and beside it were countless thick tree roots that were slowly dancing. This fantastical scene once again left him stunned. Professor, you're finally here. The familiar voice came closer and closer, making Lu Yongchang gradually come back to his senses. But his eyes still moved uncontrollably towards the scientific research robots and tree roots. If you don't come again, we're all going to start. Ahem. Meng Lu coughed slightly, interrupting Mao Jingji's words. The happy expression on Mao Jingji's face gradually disappeared. He first glanced at Meng Lu in surprise, and then glanced at the shocked and confused expression on Lu Yongchang's face. He suddenly understood, lowered his voice, and asked Meng Lu, You haven't told Professor Lu about that yet? Seeing Meng Lu nodding, Mao Jingji suddenly showed a strange smile on his face. Chapter 622 Professor Times have changed. 
Academician Mao. Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the picture inside the transparent aluminum curtain wall and murmured to himself. Have you already tamed this giant tree? Cough, cough, cough. When Mao Jingji heard this, he couldn't catch his breath and coughed suddenly. Professor, why do you think of doing this? Huh? Lu Yongchang turned his head in confusion. What else? Have you forgotten what the expedition team encountered when they landed on the Forgotten Star? Mao Jingji waved his hands in confusion. Professor, times have changed. Although it has only been five years. In these five years, we have sent many detectors to the Forgotten Star to perform various scientific research missions. The current Forsaken Star may be slightly different from what you imagined. Lu Yongchang. Before he could speak, Mao Jingji had already opened a holographic image. What is played in the projection is the perspective of a detector. As the video accelerated, it quickly entered the atmosphere of the Forgotten Star and hovered high in the sky of the Forgotten Star, as if waiting for something. Over time, the forest directly below the detector gradually adjusts the orientation of its leaves and canopy. Eventually, a hole appeared in the lush forest that reached to the ground. The opening is not big, but enough for the detector to pass through. This, Lu Yongcheng's pupils dilated slightly, looking at the projected picture with shock on his face. What happened in the past five years? Professor, calm down and continue reading. Mao Jingji chuckled and reminded in a low voice. It can be easily seen from the changes in the projection screen that the detector is slowly falling. It smoothly passed through the small opening formed by the leaves and crown of the tree and fell towards the ground. On the ground, a small circular area appeared. It's like a tarmac in the age of Earth. Around this circular tarmac, thick tree roots are intertwined to form a fence, several meters high. To Lu Yongcheng's surprise, these tree roots did not attack the landing detector and even retreated slightly to avoid the flow of high-temperature particles ejected from the engine mouth. Under the watchful eye of Li Yongchang, the probe successfully landed on the apron. The hatch slowly opened, and scientific research robots filed out in neat formations, holding small gamma-ray guns in their hands. They all raised their hands and pointed their small gamma-ray guns at the surrounding tree root fence. Start up. Under the irradiation of gamma rays, these tree roots twist their bodies with pleasure. Looking at the scene in front of him, Lu Yongchang looked like he had seen a ghost. Who knows how he could see the joyful emotions from these thick tree roots. He turned his head and glanced at Mao Jingji. And seeing that he had no intention of explaining, he had to endure it and continue watching. Time passed by minute by minute. As the scientific research robot turned off the gamma ray gun, the tree roots that formed the fence slowly spread out and retracted underground again. Before retracting underground, they even took the initiative to cut off a small section of tree roots and threw it in front of the scientific research robot. This scene directly shocked Lu Yongchang's eyes. He looked at Mao Jingji beside him with a horrified look on his face, and moved his lips slightly, as if he wanted to ask him how he did it. Mao Jingji shrugged and still said nothing. The holographic projection continues to play. As soon as the tree roots spread, the radiation imaging detector sounded a piercing alarm. The giant insects left behind were like sharks that smelled fishy smell rushing towards the source of gamma-ray radiation from all directions. Lu Yongchang's expression changed slightly. These lost giant insects without advanced intelligence are not as easy to talk to as the giant trees. Just as he was secretly worried in his heart, the picture on the projection shocked him again. I saw a few tree roots emerging from the ground and waving roughly in the air a few times. The atmosphere suddenly resounded with the screams from the lost giant insect. Through the radiation imaging detector, Lu Yongchan could clearly see that the giant insects left behind that were close to the scientific research robot were easily knocked away by the waving of tree roots. The remaining giant insects, under the threat of the giant tree, retreated one after another, giving up enough territory for the scientific research robots. The video is over. Lu Yongchan took a deep breath and tried to maintain his usual calm. What is going on? Have you completed your first communication with the giant tree on the Forgotten Star? No. Mao Jingji shrugged. All actions were done spontaneously by the giant tree. What we did was just send detectors and scientific research robots. What's going on with the small gamma ray gun? Lu Yongchang asked in a deep voice. We found that both giant trees and giant insects have shown great interest in the gamma rays released by the antimatter engine. So, Mao Jingji pointed in the direction of the biological laboratory. You can put the gamma rays a ray gun is understood as a feeding machine. Like feeding kittens and puppies? Lu Yongchang said with a puzzled look on his face. Only by relying on these, you can complete the communication with the giant tree on the Forgotten Star? Hearing this, Mao Jingji blushed. He coughed twice in embarrassment 
and said with a smile. Of course it's more than that. What else? Um, 2,000 high-yield hydrogen bombs, carried by 2,000 carrier-based drones, Mao Jingji said weakly, waiting on top of the 10,000-meter giant tree, Lu Yongchang. He gasped slightly and raised his hand to gently rub the center of his brow. The amount of information was a bit overwhelming, and he needed to take a break. In other words, you tamed this giant tree with a hand of sweet dates and a big stick? It's not considered domestication, Mao Jingji said with obvious lack of confidence. I think it should be a cooperative relationship. Lu Yongchang. What's your cooperative relationship like? Okay. Okay. Let's treat it as a cooperative relationship. Lu Yongchang only felt a pain in his head. He never thought that after five years of retreat with a group of academicians to study black hole data, the biological laboratory would bring him such a big surprise. What were we talking about just now? Yes. That's right. Lu Yongchang turned around suddenly and looked in the direction of the transparent aluminum curtain wall. What's going on with this giant tree? Why does it also master these, well, these skills? Have you tamed it like this? No. Meng Lu denied it first. Mao Jingji also nodded repeatedly and continued. Professor, don't worry. We have definitely not carried out any quasi-domestication behavior on this giant tree. That, looking at the peaceful coexistence of tree roots and scientific research robots, Lu Yongcheng's eyes suddenly widened and an astonishing guess slowly emerged from the bottom of his heart. Is there still some kind of connection between it and the giant tree of the Forgotten Star? Chapter 623 Dangerous Creatures Lu Yongchang subconsciously took two steps back and stared in horror at the giant tree behind the transparent aluminum curtain wall. Do you know this is dangerous? He turned around suddenly, grabbed Mao Jingji's sleeve fiercely, and shouted in a low voice, That's an intelligent creature, a life form with advanced intelligence. Without knowing the details of the other party, we rashly allow it to survive in our flagship. Do you know how much hidden danger this means? Teach. Professor. Meng Lu on the side was frightened by Lu Yongchun's reaction. But she still opened her mouth to explain for Mao Jingji. Yes. I asked Academician Mao to do this. This will be of great help to my deciphering work. It won't be the same next time. Lu Yongchun slowed down his tone slightly. Academician Meng. You probably don't know the crisis the fleet encountered last time. I don't blame you. Remember? Weakness and ignorance are not obstacles to survival. Arrogance is. Professor. Mao Jingji also started to explain. I have taken everything you said into consideration. He pointed at the transparent aluminum curtain wall and said in a low voice. There are three ship-based laser cannons installed in the biological laboratory. Once it makes any abnormal movement, Zero will control the laser cannon to destroy it immediately. Not only that, the entire laboratory adopts a modular design. Once an uncontrollable state occurs, it will directly break away from Earth and be bombarded by the antimatter cannon that has been set up. In addition, in order to prevent information leakage, all instruments sent to the biological laboratory are encrypted. Not only that, even the probe sent to the Forgotten Star has been encrypted and equipped with a self-destruction device. Hearing these words, the shock and anger in Lu Yongchang's eyes gradually dissipated. He took a deep breath and apologized softly. Sorry, I was too excited just now. We don't know how high the other party's intelligence and technological level are. What if this is its disguise? Just like the painting at that time. I can understand. Mao Jingji interrupted Lu Yongchang with a smile. Because of this, I took various preservation measures. Lu Yongchang turned to look at the transparent aluminum curtain wall aside, with a deep fear in his eyes. In such a short period of time, it has learned how to coexist harmoniously with human civilization. Moreover, even if there are no tree roots to connect with each other, even if it grows in an environment isolated from the outside world, it can still have a certain connection with the mother body. At this moment, in Lu Yongchun's mind, no matter how docile these giant trees appeared, they were classified as dangerous creatures. After a moment of silence, he slowly turned his head to look at Ming Lu. The decryption has been successful. Now let's try to communicate with it. Perhaps because she had not yet recovered from the conflict that had just occurred. Meng Lu subconsciously turned her head to look at Mao Jingji beside her. Seeing Meng Lu's eyes asking for help, Mao Jingji smiled bitterly, touched his nose, and said, Yes, there is some kind of connection between the two. It's just speculation after all. We would like to take this opportunity to verify that we can communicate remotely with the giant tree on the Forgotten Star through this small tree. Lu Yongchang thought for a moment and then nodded lightly. Let's start the experiment. 
in the biological laboratory. Scientific research robots carefully inserted electrodes and probes into the slowly twisting tree roots because a large number of similar operations had been performed in the past. These tree roots did not show much reaction to this. Academician Mo, Let's get started. After Mao Xingji checked it again, he turned to Mo Ziyang and said, Get ready to start transmitting information. Mo Ziyang nodded solemnly, and then carefully turned on the precise instruments one after another. Academician Meng. He greeted softly. Meng Lu responded, quickly walked to her own position, and started checking the compiled translation program again. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly and looked carefully at the holographic projection in front of Meng Lu. Bioelectric signal? He whispered softly. Yes. Mao Xingji explained softly after completing his work. Professor, at the beginning, we did not find any pattern in the bioelectrical signals. On the contrary, a relatively strong pattern was found in the quantum signals generated by the giant trees. That also creates a problem. We can intercept these quantum signals with the help of instruments. But we lack the means to interfere with them. Lu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. This is indeed a difficult problem. How did you solve it later? Good luck. Mao Jingji said with a smile. As the giant tree continues to mature, the bioelectrical signals gradually change from disorder to order. Of course, the specific cause of this phenomenon has not yet been clarified. However, thanks to this, we successfully found the correspondence between bioelectrical signals and quantum signals. This communication device is based on this principle. Using bioelectric current, we interfere with the quantum signals generated in a certain root system of the giant tree to achieve communication with the giant tree. After Lu Yongchang was silent for a moment, he slowly spoke. Do you think this is like a learning stage for humans? Mao Jingji was slightly startled. He quickly understood the meaning of Lu Yongchang's words. You mean... The quantum signal we discovered did not come from this sapling, but from the giant tree on the forsaken star? What do you think? Lu Yongchang once again turned his attention to the transparent aluminum curtain wall, stared at the rough tree trunk, and whispered, Do you think it is possible for it to master a mature language system immediately if it grows alone in a closed environment? If this is the case, then the potential of this race will be immeasurable. Mao Jingzi's face changed slightly, and he nodded repeatedly. Yes, you are right. Bioelectric signals are spontaneously generated by saplings. Because they are just born and have not mastered the corresponding skills, they will appear extremely messy. The quantum signal is transmitted from the giant tree. The complete language system is naturally regular. Suddenly, he seemed to have thought of something. Frowned, and lightly tutayed. No, that's not right. According to our guess, these small trees that are 100 meters high should have no individual consciousness. They are just branches of the giant tree. But now, Li Yongchang glanced at Mao Xingji. You are over the top. What if this little tree can grow into a giant tree of 10,000 meters after being separated from its mother? What if they all have individual consciousness, including what I said just now? They are all unverified speculations, and no one can say for sure. Everything depends on the results of the subsequent experiments. Chapter 624 Hello. This is human civilization. Professor. Meng Lu completed the final inspection and reminded softly, The experiment is about to begin. Lu Yongchang quickly retracted his gaze from staring at the giant tree, focused his attention on the holographic projection in front of Meng Lu, and then nodded slightly. Meng Lu looked solemn and said in a cold voice, The first giant tree communication experiment begins now. Prepare to release bioelectric signals. The release of bioelectric signals is normal. A researcher responded loudly, The rejection reaction of the tree roots is relatively weak. The experiment continues. Start adjusting the bioelectrical signal frequency and output the first greeting. As she spoke, Meng Lu raised her hand and lightly drew it on the holographic projection in front of her, entering a line of text into the left side of the translation program. With the support of zero computing power, almost at the same time, this first greeting message sent by humans was converted into a corresponding bioelectric signal, which was input into the giant tree located in the biology laboratory through a series of electrodes. Among the tree roots. Hello. This is human civilization. The next second. Bang. A dull sound came from the direction of the biology laboratory. Lu Yongchang quickly turned to look in the direction of the transparent aluminum curtain wall. I saw a thick tree root slamming against the wall of the biology laboratory. Seeing that fierce action, Lu Yongchang's eyes instantly became solemn. With a slight movement of his fingers, he brought up the control system of the biological laboratory. Next moment, the curved dome of the biological laboratory slowly cracked, 
and three huge ship-based laser cannons protruded from it. The huge muzzles were aimed at the abnormal giant tree below. With just one order, these three laser cannons can turn the biological laboratory into a super high temperature H, L on Earth. As for the giant tree among them, judging from previous experience, the only possibility is to turn into ashes. Professor, Meng Lu hurriedly stopped Lu Yongchang's behavior. Wait, give it some more time. Lu Yongchang looked at the crazy look of the giant tree inside the transparent aluminum curtain wall, frowned and asked in a low voice, What's going on? Why did it suddenly have such a big reaction? Mao Xingji also said, Professor, this is the first time we've injected compiled bioelectric signals into the roots of a giant tree, because these signals act directly on the tree's roots. These responses in giant trees are within our expectations. Huh? Li Yongchang asked with some confusion. What's the reason? Why does inputting compiled bioelectrical signals cause such a reaction? Mao Xingji pondered for a moment, then said with some trepidation, This Professor, let me give you an analogy. If we compare these tree roots to the human nervous system, these signals are acting directly on the nervous system. In other words, to it, the messages we sent out were like, it suddenly had a voice in its mind. Professor, how would you feel if a strange voice suddenly sounded in your head? Lu Yongchan suddenly realized. He nodded and said softly, I understand. A few minutes later, the banging and slapping sounds in the biology laboratory gradually subsided it seemed that the giant tree had become accustomed to the extra sound in its mind. Did the other party respond with any message? Hearing Lu Yongcheng's question, Meng Lu shook her head slightly and said with a somewhat uneasy expression, No signal has been detected yet. Yes. Emo Ziyang suddenly raised his head and shouted excitedly, Academician Meng, the probe has received an abnormal signal. Meng Lu had no time to respond to Emo Ziyang's words and looked directly at the translation interface in front of her. Who are you? Human civilization. What is this? Why can you speak in my consciousness? Seeing the information gradually emerging in front of him. Everyone present frowned. How do you feel? Lu Yongchan clicked his tongue lightly and said hesitantly. The other party doesn't seem very smart. Whether it is Lu Yongchan, Mao Xingji, or other academicians of the Academy of Sciences who are responsible for the project. They all have great expectations for the wisdom of the giant tree. The reason is also very simple. It can find a way to coexist peacefully with alien civilizations in a very short period of time. This alone is enough to prove its wisdom. But the scene in front of me is obviously not in line with the academician's expectations. Meng Lu didn't speak, but quickly called up a piece of information in the plan and put it into the translation program. We are a human civilization that arrived on your planet five years ago. During this period, there may have been some unnecessary misunderstandings and conflicts between us. Now, we would like to have a simple communication with you. Next, we will tell you some basic information about human civilization, which can help you understand us. Zero quickly translated this information into corresponding bioelectric signals and controlled the electrodes inserted into the roots of the tree to input these signals into the root system of the giant tree. Time passed by, but no signal came. Academician Mo, what's going on? Mao Xingji turned to look at Mo Ziyang, who was standing aside. Are the bioelectric signals and quantum signals normal? Emo Ziyang stared at the strongly fluctuating curves in the holographic projection, nodded and said, It's normal. Even the intensity of basic bioelectric signals and basic quantum signals has increased a lot. But no valid information was detected. As he said that, Emo Ziyang pondered for a moment and said again, It's a bit like it's thinking about this information. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang's brows furrowed even deeper. For a giant tree that reaches the size of a planet, does this piece of information really require such a long period of thinking? Just when Li Yongchang and others were getting impatient, along with weak fluctuations, messages slowly appeared on the holographic projection in front of everyone. Human civilization. I cannot understand what you say. Can you please stop talking in my mind? Very noisy. Very noisy. In the biology laboratory, the sound of bang 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 came again. It seems that the messages they sent have caused great trouble to this giant tree. Li Yongcheng's eyes were filled with doubts. Professor, judging from the results of the exchange just now, it seems that the lost giant tree is not very intelligent. Emo Ziyang sighed and whispered. Li Yongcheng didn't speak, just thinking quietly. Send another message. He suddenly spoke and said in a deep voice, Ask if it can contact the giant tree of the forgotten star. Hearing this, Mao Xingji's eyes suddenly lit up. Obviously, he thought of what Li Yongchan said to him not long ago. 
Professor. What do you mean? These small trees that are hundreds of meters high all have independent individual consciousness. Chapter 625 Him. This is the only possibility. Lu Yong Chong shrugged and spread his hands helplessly. I don't believe that the intelligence of a giant tree can be so low. Hearing this, Mao Xingji also touched the tip of his nose and smiled bitterly. Yes, based on the communication records just now, it is preliminary estimated that its intelligence has only reached the level of the current new human beings when they are five years old. The level of intelligence shown by those giant trees in Forsaken Star is not like this. While the two were talking, Meng Lu had quickly edited a new message and clicked the output button. The moment the bioelectrical signal was released, the bang bang sound in the biology laboratory stopped abruptly. It seemed that the five-year-old sapling was shocked by this message. Different from the last time. This time, in just a few seconds, pieces of information appeared on the interface of the translation program. How do you know him? He? Lu Yongchang suddenly frowned. Zero. Is there no problem with your translation? The word, he, often refers to the third-person pronoun of general gods. The appearance of such a text in such a place undoubtedly aroused Lu Yongchang's high vigilance. This involves the relationship between the sapling and the forgotten star giant tree. At the same time, it also foreshadows the class relationship between the forgotten star giant tree. Electronic synthesized sound sounded quickly. There is no problem with the translation. Zero explained in detail. The moment the electrode released the signal, the probe found that an abnormal bioelectrical signal was generated in the root system. The emotions expressed by this bioelectric signal are relatively complex. After comprehensive evaluation, the preliminary analysis results are reverence, obedience and belief. Perhaps it was because humans had not responded to the message for a long time. So the sapling couldn't help but kept asking questions. Do you know him? Where is he? Please speak. Meng Lu turned her head and cast a pleading look at Lu Yongchang. This turn of events has completely exceeded the plan made by the research team. Without any hesitation, Lu Yongchang took a step forward with a calm face, moved his fingers quickly, and entered a line of text in the holographic projection. Can you contact him now? Perhaps because they are accustomed to this method of communication. The saplings are responding faster and faster. After almost no waiting time, the sapling's response appeared in front of Lu Yongchang. I have no idea. I don't know why. But the connection is getting weaker and weaker. I haven't heard his voice for a long time. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows. The vigilance in his eyes slightly lessened. It seems that the connection between saplings and giant trees is gradually being lost. Perhaps due to a willingness to break the physical connection. This is nothing short of excellent information for humans. After all, today's saplings are equivalent to a newly born child. What they will grow into in the future depends on the information instilled by the outside world. In this way, if humans can teach it to a certain extent, thinking of this, Lu Yongchang's eye showed a strong emotion. He calmed down and continued to enter information. When was the last time you heard his voice? You are right. I do know him. And I know his specific location. Looking at the lines of information in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang couldn't help but turn his head and look around with a guilty conscience. Sure enough, all the academicians around him cast strange looks at him. Ahem! Lu Yongchang coughed twice guiltily and explained in a low voice. I... I'm not trying to fool a child. I'm not wrong. We do know the location of the giant tree. Looking at Lu Yongchang speaking plausibly in front of the holographic projection, the academicians could not help but have a faint smile on their faces. Besides, can the affairs of scientific researchers be called cheating? Lu Yongchang argued while pressing the biocurrent input button. This time the response came faster than ever. When the time information appeared in the holographic projection, everyone present let out a deliberately suppressed exclamation. It's actually this time. Mo Ziyang murmured to himself. What's going on? Li Yongchang frowned and asked in a deep voice. Does this time have any special significance? Mo Ziyang took a deep breath, calmed down his inner excitement, and explained in a low voice. Professor, when the experiment first started, the bioelectrical signals were very messy but the quantum signals were very orderly. This caused a huge disruption to our research process. Then, it is after this point in time that the bioelectrical signals gradually become orderly. Lu Yongchang looked solemn. That is to say, at this time, the forgotten giant tree instilled some basic information into it, such as the language system. It's like preschool. He pondered for a moment and entered a line of text into the translation program again. Can you try to contact him? I could give it a try though. What should I say? Lu Yongchang fell into silence. 
He weighed the pros and cons carefully. Finally, he gritted his teeth and entered into the translation program. If it succeeds, tell him the situation you are facing now. Okay, I'll try. The translation program fell silent again. But in the holographic projection in front of him, Oziyang, the intensity of bioelectrical signals and quantum signals increased a bit. Obviously, this sapling is trying to communicate with the lost giant tree. Time passed by minute by minute. Suddenly, the curve representing the quantum signal intensity suddenly fluctuated. Its fluctuation range far exceeds all previous detection data. Professor, seeing this scene, Emo Ziyang suddenly turned his head to look at Lu Yongchang. This should be a signal that the giant tree has been left behind. They made contact successfully. The next second, the translation program that receives the corresponding information starts to operate automatically. One piece of information emerged at an extremely fast speed. Different from the childish tone just now. The message this time seemed extremely mature and wise. Dear human civilization. H. Lo. You can call me Noos. Please forgive my previous offense and rude behavior. Due to the lack of Italian network components. The communication signal is very unstable and information transmission may be interrupted at any time. The complete Italian network can provide us with a good information exchange environment. News. Please come again. Chapter 626 Nusi and Kurian. Professor, the signal strength is dropped. Emo Ziyang's voice came from the side. The connection may have been interrupted. In the holographic projection, the unique childish words of the sapling appeared again. I succeeded. He said, You are a very powerful advanced civilization. Let me listen to your words and live with peace of mind. Him. He also said, Let me ask you to go to Kurian again. Oh, by the way, Kurian is the name of the mother planet. Mother Star. Do you know what home star means? Looking at the lines of text in the projection, Lu Yongchan couldn't help but fall into silence, thinking of the respectful attitude shown by the abandoned giant tree just now. A guess suddenly emerged in his mind. Could it be? Do they know what happened to their home planet? But a new doubt emerged, temporarily suppressing the speculation in his mind about the current situation of the abandoned giant tree. He considered it for a while, and entered a line of information word for word. Does he? Like you. Each individual have independent consciousness? The sapling responded quickly. He is he. He is not an independent consciousness. But we all have independent consciousness. This answer completely confused all the academicians present. Lu Yongchang asked again, with confusion on his face. Aren't he and you the same thing? Of course not. He is him. And together we make him. Lu Yongchang. Zero. Is your translation really correct? Professor, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. Zero replied solemnly. Lu Yongchang sighed helplessly and turned to look at the confused group of academicians of the Academy of Sciences around him. It seems that we have to go to the Law Star again. He stared at the chat history in the holographic projection. And a guess slowly emerged in his mind. The fleet once again sailed near the Forsaken Star. According to Sapling. News, in order to show its sincerity. Human civilization only needs to send some of the usual messengers to Kurian. Although it was a bit confusing, Lu Yongchang quickly understood the meaning of this sentence. It seems that the other party already knows the difference between humans and robots. Lu Yongchang looked at the lush planet outside the porthole with interest. That's normal. In Jushu's view, there should be a very clear difference between robots and humans that produce certain radiation. Yongchang, do you think it is necessary to send diplomats? From the side, Fong Su's inquiry came. The School of Sociology believes that considering all aspects of the situation, the abandoned giant tree means surrender to human civilization. Moreover, the branch believes that it, Muse, has expressed his sincerity as much as possible. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and slowly shook his head. It's not that time yet. If we really want to establish any diplomatic relations, it's not now. Just send the scientific research robot. It's not a complicated task anyway. If news really wants to communicate with us, a scientific research robot would be enough. Fong Su nodded matter-of-factly. I think so too. By the way, there's one more thing. The School of Sociology believes that since human civilization has encountered such a situation, we should also start preparing to screen some diplomatic personnel. Hearing this, Lu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. The battle with the Bota civilization made him realize something. To some extent, subsidiary civilization is indeed a good helper. A single tree cannot make a forest before human civilization develops to a strong enough level. It is not a bad thing for human civilization to find some allies with appropriate strength. You go and talk to Chairman Hong about this matter. 
There should be such talents in the parliament. It's like trying to find such talents from the Academy of Sciences. Hearing this, Fong Su turned his head and glanced around. Everyone focused on the data in front of them and deliberately avoided Fong Su's eyes. Seeing this, he couldn't help but smile bitterly and shook his head. You are right. Then I will go find Chairman Hong first. Go. Lu Yong Chong responded absently and also turned his attention to the holographic image directly ahead. The ship-based drone is about to set off. And we should prepare to communicate with news. After you finish this matter, go to the sociology branch and analyze news as behavior with all your strength. I need them to give me an exact assessment. As he spoke, three modified ship-based drones, carrying more than a dozen scientific research robots and a complete set of communication devices, flew towards the forgotten star not far away under Zero's control. A few hours later, three ship-based drones slid through the upper atmosphere of the forsaken star at high speed. The high-energy particles ejected by the antimatter engine produced long strips of light in the atmosphere, as colorful as the aurora. Under Zero's control, they flew straight towards the north pole of the forgotten star without any hesitation. Strong gamma rays are like waves, rushing in all directions from high in the sky. The forest below relied on the fluctuations of gamma rays to quickly detect the movements of these ship-based drones. Among the tree roots underground, strong bioelectric signals are quickly converted into quantum signals, and the information is transmitted far away. Forsaken Star Arctic Region A giant tree 12,000 meters high stands quietly between heaven and earth. When the signal came, its extremely wide leaves began to sway. Subsequently, in the forest beneath its huge canopy, with the movement of leaves and tree roots, a small circular apron gradually appeared. At the same time, the three aurora streamers in the sky also spread from very far away to just above the tree crown. It was only then that the sound of the atmosphere being torn apart could be faintly heard in the distance. The height of the three ship-based drones dropped sharply, and with unrivaled momentum, they dived straight towards the crown of the 10,000-meter giant tree. Chapter 627, Cluster Consciousness Just when a collision was about to occur, the flight speed of the carrier-based aircraft suddenly decreased. In just a few seconds, the transition from extreme movement to extreme stillness was completed. The drone hovered quietly just above the canopy of the giant tree. As if waiting for something, the leaves on the tree crown slowly rotated until they all faced the three ship-based drones. It's like worshipping. Seeing this, the drone gradually lowered its altitude and landed on the not-so-wide apron on the ground. When they landed successfully, sections of thick tree roots were crawling around the tarmac. Further away, the originally quiet forest also became active. The tree roots rise from the ground, constantly driving away the blind giant insects. The hatch opened slowly. Scientific research robots slowly walked out of it carrying a large number of instruments. At the same time, a section of tree roots that were thicker than ordinary tree roots crawled on the ground, slowly extending towards the ship-based drone. This quickly attracted the attention of scientific research robots. The small laser cannon equipped on the drone quickly adjusted its direction and aimed at the approaching tree root. Under the aim of the laser cannon, the tree root slowly stopped in front of the scientific research robot. Earth, looking at the real-time image in the holographic projection, Lu Yong Chong raised his hand and touched his chin with interest. He thought of what News had said just now. Is this the Italian network interface provided for us? It should be. Everything went smoothly, and there was a faint smile in Mao Jingji's voice. Judging from the diameter, this root does not belong to the superficial root system. It should appear deeper underground. Lu Yongchang nodded, thought for a moment, and then issued the order. Zero. Insert the electrodes and probe into this section of the tree root. Receive. Under Zero's control, more than a dozen scientific research robots had a clear division of labor, and a complete signal conversion system was quickly built in this forest. Professor. The probe received extremely strong signal fluctuations. The translation program has started working normally. Emoza Yang and Meng Lu's voices sounded almost at the same time. At the same time, lines of text were presented to everyone under Zero's translation. Dear Human Civilization, H. Lo, I am Nusi. Thank you for visiting Kurian again. The corners of Lu Yongchang's mouth raised slightly, and he quickly entered a message with his fingers. Hello Nusi, I am Lu Yongchang, the Chief Scientist of Human Civilization. Can you understand this title? Before commencing communication, he needed to do a simple test of the giant tree's intelligence to prevent the unexpected situation from the last experiment from happening again. News responded very quickly, Dear Chief Scientist, I understand. 
that child has told us basic information about human civilization. Human civilization is a great civilization. The curvature of the corners of Lu Yongchang's mouth became more and more obvious. On the one hand, it is because, news, s intelligence level has reached his psychological expectations. Which means, that the next communication will save a lot of trouble. On the other hand, it is naturally because the other party praises human civilization. Human civilization has been struggling for nearly a thousand years, and has finally been recognized by other civilizations. And this process is a sacrifice full of blood and tears for all human beings. The pride this message brings is unimaginable to others. Lu Yongchang, who was in a happy mood, quickly entered a line of information. Noos, who are you? After seeing this message, Mao Jingji glanced at Lu Yongchang in surprise. According to the original plan, the answer to this question will be summarized and analyzed by the Academy of Sciences. After all, this kind of philosophical question is a difficult problem for most intelligent creatures. Don't worry. I believe it can give me a satisfactory answer. Lu Yongchang, who noticed Mao Jingji's gaze, said with a smile, Don't underestimate it. Its intelligence may far exceed our imagination. After waiting for a few seconds, a response appeared again in the holographic projection. Based on our analysis, I think what you mean by this sentence is to ask about the difference between me and individual consciousness. Is it right? Looking at the two different titles in this sentence, Lu Yongchang suddenly showed a satisfied smile on his face. Sure enough, his guess at the time was confirmed. According to the name of human civilization, each lost giant tree has an independent consciousness. The intelligence level of the isolated giant trees is not very high, and communication with each other is also difficult. For better development, we began to evolve 10 million years ago. The successful construction of Italian internet and Italian internet terminals allows our consciousness to connect with each other. The consciousnesses of all the lost giant trees were integrated with each other. And a huge consciousness was born. This huge consciousness is me. News. You can simply understand that I am the combination of consciousness of all the lost giant trees. Hack. Mao Xingji's eyes widened. He stared blankly at the words in the holographic projection and said with some excitement, Professor, Cluster Consciousness! This is Cluster Consciousness technology! If humans can master this technology, the speed of civilization development has increased by at least an order of magnitude. Academician Mao, calm down! Lu Yongchang smiled and shook his head. This technology is still too early for current humans. As he spoke, he entered new information into the translation program. I understand. You are also a great civilization. This sentence is a sigh from Lu Yongchang's heart. Compared with animals, the possibility of plants giving birth to civilization is relatively weak. It is difficult for a plant civilization with greatly restricted mobility to develop a sufficiently intelligent civilization. The plant civilization on the forgotten star can continue to evolve for tens of millions of years to achieve the so-called swarm consciousness. This alone is enough for this civilization to win his respect. Thank you for your recognition. Nusi responded in a nonchalant manner looking at the line of text flashing with a faint white light in the projection. Lu Yongchang sighed slightly, and while inputting the information, he said to himself, Unfortunately, after all, I am still limited by my own racial characteristics. No matter how great a civilization is, what can it do when faced with this situation? As he spoke, a new line of text glowing with white light appeared in the translation program. News, do you know the situation your home planet is facing? This time, Nuss didn't respond. Chapter 628, Kukukin. News, as silence gradually silenced the originally high atmosphere in the laboratory. Professor, is this problem too difficult for those lost giant trees? Mao Jinji asked with some worry. So far, no observation equipment for the universe has been found on the lost star. They, Kukukin disappeared. Right? A message appeared in the holographic projection, interrupting Mao Jinji's words. Next to the message, was a note that Zero provided. Kukukin, suspected to be News, S name for the main star. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and asked again, Do you know the reason why it disappeared? News, S response came quickly. No, I do not know. The day Kukukin disappeared, there was great panic within civilization. But a huge disk no weaker than Kukukin soon appeared in the sky, which reduced the panic within the civilization a lot. Although the living environment has changed, the large amount of energy released allows us to continue to survive. However, I recently discovered a terrifying phenomenon the energy released by the disk is gradually decreasing. In order to maintain enough energy, I have to start hunting again. 
This is also a big reason why I acted offensively towards you at that time. Looking at the lines of text in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchan fell into deep thought. News, S words are actually easy to understand. The so-called Kukukin did not rise. In fact, the main star was captured by the small black hole. As for the huge disk that is not weaker than Kukukin, it is naturally a huge accretion disk formed by the remains of the main star. The reason why the energy released by the disk gradually decreases is also very simple. The small black hole is devouring the material in the accretion disk at an extremely fast speed. According to calculations, in more than a thousand years, the black hole's accretion disk will completely disappear. The creatures on the forsaken star simply cannot survive this time. As the radiation intensity gradually decreases, in about 200 years, the size of the lost giant tree will continue to decrease due to energy problems until it completely dies. Lu Yongchang gently swiped his fingers and sent all the information related to the forgotten star to news. There was another long silence. I see. So we are doomed. Right? The message, news, set was planned. Looking at these two brief messages, Lu Yongchang sighed again and gave his answer. Yes. With almost no pause. News, as response appeared in front of everyone. If I am willing to become a subsidiary civilization of human civilization, can you help us solve this crisis? There was a burst of discussion in the laboratory. Lu Yongchan also narrowed his eyes slightly and stared at the words in the holographic projection solemnly. To be honest, Lu Yongchan did have this intention at the beginning. In his opinion, the civilization of the lost giant tree has high development potential, especially the technology they have mastered in their consciousness. Whether it is consciousness interconnection or consciousness fusion, each of them is a bud-like ability. In this case, accepting it as a subsidiary civilization seems to be a good choice. But after truly understanding the lost giant tree, he hesitated. Professor, are you worried that the other party will not be under our control? Mao Jingzi's voice came from the side. Lu Yongchang nodded solemnly. Yes. Judging from the performance just now, it can grasp the basic information we transmit at an extremely fast speed. This means that the research efficiency of swarm consciousness is extremely terrifying if it is accepted as a subsidiary civilization. I am worried about what unexpected things may happen in the future. Of course, that's only part of the story. The more important reason, we don't have a good way to help them solve this crisis. Hearing this, Mao Xingji couldn't help but smile bitterly. Indeed, although today's human civilization cannot play with the stars in the same way as the sweeper civilization and pastoral civilization, but for a small planet, human civilization still has many methods at its disposal. If they don't consider any factors and just rely on stacked antimatter engines, they can push the forgotten star out of its original orbit and then take it to a suitable star system. But this is obviously unrealistic, not to mention the issues of navigation speed, crustal movement, and the survival of giant trees. The huge amount of antimatter consumed in this process alone is not something that current humans can bear. So, he moved his finger slightly and sent out a message. Feel sorry. Your size is so big that it almost encompasses the entire forsaken star. Even we cannot leave with the forgotten star while ensuring your safety. News seemed to be aware of the hidden meaning in this message. After a moment of silence, it sent out a new message again. Dear human civilization, you don't need to take me away. You just need to take that lucky child away. News as proposal shocked all the academicians of the Academy of Sciences present. Lu Yongchan is naturally one of them. Professor, this, Mao Jingzi's voice came from the side. This may be a good plan. It's just about the Italian Open. Lu Yongchan couldn't help but fell into silence. Mao Jingzi's worries were exactly what he had in mind. For humans, only the lost giant trees that have formed a group consciousness have the greatest research value. Lu Yongchan hesitated for a moment and simply raised his doubts directly to news. You don't have to worry about this problem. I can provide you with a new Italian net core. It can guide the child to form new meanings. As for the cultivation of ethnic groups, this shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. Right? Although he knew that the other party could not see his expression, Lu Yongchan couldn't help but smile slightly awkwardly. The one in the biological laboratory was not obtained through any legitimate means. Especially when I think of how I coaxed it like a child not long ago. The embarrassment on Lu Yongchang's face became even more intense. He coughed slightly to hide his embarrassment. Just do it the way you said. News. Send a response message directly without any hesitation. Thank you for your generosity. Human civilization is a great civilization. I wish your civilization can exist in this universe for a long time. From now on, 
New civilization voluntarily becomes a human subordinate civilization. I will start making new Italian open cores immediately. This takes a lot of time. Please understand. Chapter 629 The End and the Beginning In addition, just when Li Yongchan thought that this communication was completely over, News sent several new messages again. If possible, please bring some healthy forsaken giant worm larvae. I can complete the collection and screening work for you. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows. News, as requests far exceeded Lu Yongchang's expectations. Logically speaking, when civilization survives or dies, it should only care about the interests of its own race. This abnormal phenomenon quickly aroused his curiosity. Give me a reason. News's response quickly appeared in front of him. The forsaken giant insect has extraordinary significance to our new civilization. In the past, when Kukukin went dark, they were the ones that kept the Nuth civilization through. Therefore, when the brightness of Kukukin returns to normal, we will intentionally protect them and increase their racial density. Their excrement and corpses are also indispensable nutrients for us. So, Lu Yongchang chuckled, turned to Mao Jingji beside him and asked, Symbiotic species? Mao Jingji nodded. Judging from the description, it does belong to a symbiotic species. Professor, I suggest bringing a certain amount of giant worm larvae. Why? Li Yongchan looked at Mao Jingji with interest. As long as there is sufficient energy, the giant tree should not need to hunt. As for nutrients, we can also artificially prepare them. The space of the starship is limited. I don't think there is any need to waste energy on these low-level creatures. You can't say that? Mao Jingji looked serious. Professor, if you want to create another new civilization, these giant insects are indispensable. Not only that, we also need to artificially create an environment where the radiation intensity changes. Otherwise, the new civilization, which has no pressure to survive, may degrade its root system, which is unacceptable for human civilization. Lu Yongchang suddenly realized. You're saying that it was precisely because of the existence of these giant insects and the unpredictable shining star that the new civilization evolved such a flexible root system structure? If it is like this, as he spoke, he raised his hand preparing to re-edit a message. Suddenly, a new message from News attracted his attention. In addition, according to my observations, the giant insects also gave birth to weak intelligence. Although it is not as good as me, it has broken away from the lowest level of life. It may become a useful weapon for you. Lu Yongcheng's hand suddenly paused. And then he entered a line of information with great determination. According to what you said, the exchange has come to an end for now. Lu Yongcheng looked at the sapling that was growing vigorously in the biology laboratory and sighed with some emotion. A good civilization has become a subsidiary civilization of other civilizations. After solving the major issue that had been bothering him for a long time, Mao Jingzi's face became much more relaxed. But after hearing Lu Yongcheng's words, the originally relaxed look on his face became solemn again. Become a subsidiary civilization. A simple sentence. But the consequences are not simple. First of all, after becoming a subordinate civilization, the new civilization lost its ownership of the Forgotten Star. Lu Yongchang has already issued an order to send engineering ships and robots to the Forgotten Star to mine and manufacture some necessary supplies. In this process, many lost giant trees will inevitably lose their lives. But it has no standing to oppose this order from an autonomous civilization. Secondly, in terms of war, the new civilization does not need to worry about this due to its own characteristics. But if it were an ordinary subsidiary civilization, once a war breaks out, they will inevitably be sent to the battlefield and serve as indispensable cannon fodder in the interstellar battlefield. In the final analysis, it is actually a matter of strength. Mao Jingji sighed lightly. If one day, human civilization encounters a more advanced civilization, maybe this is not possible. Lu Yongchang interrupted him directly. Human civilization has no choice but to surrender and become a subordinate civilization. Even if we face the sweeper civilization and the pastoral civilization, we will only die on the road to charge. As the Forgotten Star incident came to an end, the interior of Earth gradually became deserted. Academicians entered hibernation one after another. Of course, Lu Yongchang is no exception. According to the plan, Zero will implement the wake-up plan at the moment it receives abnormal data. Inside the starship, the lights went out one by one. Only the high-energy particles ejected from the nozzle of the antimatter engine proved that this fleet was not dead. In the distance, in the Forgotten Star, the giant trees also started the battle for the continuation of civilization. 
From time to time, there will be a slight vibration on the ground surface. This is the movement that the roots of the underground tree are working hard to create at the core of the Italian network. Making this core is obviously not an easy task. The originally lush forest looked like it was decaying at this moment. At the same time, a large number of abandoned giant insects were hunted by the tree roots, leaving only a part of the selected and excellent larvae, which were imprisoned by the tree roots near the core of the Italian network that is, next to the 10,000 meter giant tree. Time flies by, and in the blink of an eye, a hundred years have passed. The originally extremely large accretion disk of the black hole has dimmed a lot, and the intensity of the radiation produced has also weakened a lot. The originally lush and green lost star has become a brown and green planet. Decline has become the main theme of this planet. The lack of energy, coupled with the laborious work of creating the core of S Univision, caused the forest to shrink again and again. The camera gradually zoomed in, passing through the rich atmosphere, and came to the surface of the forgotten star. The shock that lasted for hundreds of years finally stopped. At the north pole of the forgotten star, near the core area of the old Italy network, a huge sphere with a diameter of 100 meters, made of countless tree roots, lead quietly on the slightly sunken ground. This is the core of new idea network created by new civilization. In order to ensure the growth of future generations, news stored all memories about civilization into the core of this novelty network. News used the surrounding radiation to carefully explore the status of the core of S-Univision. This is something that is left to future generations of civilization. It must ensure that the core can function properly under any circumstances. What if human civilization regrets it? During these hundred years, this question flashed through the depths of its consciousness countless times. But there is no answer to this question. Nussi looked at the much shrunken disk in the sky and sighed in his heart. This is the end of civilization. But it is also the beginning of a new civilization. Chapter 630 Discovery of Gravitons Earth Calendar Year 3258 337 years after the implementation of the black hole observation plan. The originally huge and gorgeous black hole accretion disk has shrunk into a pitiful little disk, emitting a negligible light into the cold and dark universe. Several black hole detectors are located in the central area of this small disk. The antimatter engines at their tails were running at full capacity. The huge thrust drives these black hole detectors in a slow circular motion around the black hole in the center of the accretion disk. But even the antimatter engine still cannot overcome the strong gravity from the black hole. The radius of the detector's orbit is getting shorter and shorter, and the antimatter it carries is getting less and less over time. Eventually, one day in the future, these detectors will be pulled by the black hole's gravity toward its event horizon. This is an extremely quick process. It is also an extremely long process. It may sound contradictory, but it's actually not difficult to understand. In the event horizon area of a black hole, the gravitational pull of the black hole has reached an extreme level, and the degree of distortion of space and time has reached an unimaginable degree. Even light cannot escape from inside the event horizon. And around the event horizon, due to its extremely huge gravity, the flow of time becomes extremely slow. Therefore, the detector will pass through the event horizon and fall into the black hole in a finite time. But to an outside observer, it will take an infinite time to continue to approach the event horizon. Farther beyond the black hole, a planet quietly orbits the black hole. Under the extremely weak light of the accretion disk, the planet's entire body appears a decaying yellow-brown color. Among the large amounts of yellow-brown, there are some inconspicuous greens. As latitude increases, the green color becomes more intense, occupying more and more areas, all the way to the North Pole. Just like hundreds of years ago, the Arctic region of the Forgotten Star is still covered by lush forests, as the core area of civilization of the Forgotten Giant Tree. The core area of the Italian Open is naturally fully supplied with nutrients. The abandoned giant tree that is 10,000 meters high stands quietly between the sky and the earth, absorbing as much radiation energy from the black hole's accretion disk as possible. Not far away, on the slightly sunken ground, lay quietly a huge dome wrapped by countless thick tree roots. Countless shipborne drones and robots are tying carbon nanotube ropes firmly to the dome. As the drone slowly took off, the dome shook its heavy body and gradually broke away from the ground it was familiar with. Under the spectations of countless leaves, the dome gradually disappeared into the distant sky. A series of biological currents and quantum signals flashed through the remaining Italian network of the abandoned giant tree. News withdrew his gaze from looking at the sky, and a touch of reluctance and regret flashed through his consciousness. The seeds of the continuation of civilization have set off, 
and it is time to prepare for the final sunset on the horizon. The disc whose diameter has shrunk countless times slowly sinks into the horizon. The camera zooms out. Farther away is a huge silent fleet. The antimatter engine at the rear of the fleet works intermittently, providing the necessary power for the fleet. Suddenly, a little light shines from the porthole of the fleet flagship, breaking the fleet's original silence. A string of signals from the black hole detector, after hundreds of years of arduous journey, finally reached the fleet that had been silent for hundreds of years. Signals are quickly analyzed and various comparisons performed. In less than a second, this simple process is repeated tens of thousands of times. Next moment, a slightly harsh buzzer sounded, and at the same time, a blue holographic projection suddenly appeared in the air, and a line of faint white Chinese characters slowly emerged on it. Abnormal signal detected. Signal source. Black hole detector number one. Start execution of wake-up plan. Data anomaly. In the Earth laboratory. A strange rosiness flashed across Liu Yongcheng's face, which was slightly pale due to long-term hibernation. He shouted loudly in his somewhat hoarse voice. He Bailin! Hurry! Compare the received data! Quick! Everybody move! Who is that? Are you dumbfounded by the deep-sea fluid? The data is right in front of you. Why are you still stunned? In the laboratory, the small discussions among the scientific researchers one after another, and the shouts of Liu Yongcheng formed an extremely beautiful duet. Suddenly, a shout that was slightly broken due to excessive excitement drowned out all the noise in the laboratory. Professor! Found it! He Bilan's cheeks were abnormally red, and the whites of his eyes were mixed with faint red bloodshot streaks. He panted rapidly, trying to suppress his extremely excited mood. Looking for it! I found it! Hearing this, Lu Yongchan felt his heart skip a beat at that moment. He ignored the work in front of him, and ran straight in the direction of He Bilan. You? What did you find? While looking at the holographic image in front of Ibilin, he asked loudly and urgently, Tell me, what did you find? Gravity. Graviton. Ibilin's face turned red from holding back, and he struggled to say three words. As if his strength had been drained, he exhaled the breath accumulated in his chest, and explained with a slightly trembling voice, Black hole detector number one successfully found the graviton. According to the preset program, it should be trying to capture and observe the behavior of it. Maybe. Maybe in a little while, we will be able to receive information from the black hole detector. Li Yongchang said nothing and ignored He Bilin's words. His hands were trembling slightly as he slid the holographic projection in front of him and observed the various data presented on it. When he saw those key abnormal data, he subconsciously held his breath. Then, a line of hot tears suddenly slid down both sides of his cheeks. Found it! Found it! Li Yongchang stared at this line of data and murmured in a low voice. Finally found you! The discovery of Graviton means that the Grand Unified Theory is about to achieve a breakthrough. Since the beginning of the Earth's time, scientists of human civilization have begun to pursue this mountaintop hidden in the clouds and mist. Washan is a dead horse. From the first level civilization, we have been pursuing it to the fourth level civilization from the Earth. We have been pursuing it to the black hole. Finally, at this moment, Lu Yongchang saw the dawn of hope for completing the Grand Unification Theory and human civilization becoming a fifth-level civilization. Chapter 631 This is the Superstring Gravitational Field Equation. Time flies. The excitement brought about by the discovery of gravitons gradually dissipated, replaced by an unprecedented anxiety. Tisk! Lu Yongchang frowned and looked at the characters in the holographic projection that would increase after a long time. This data transmission efficiency is too low. Apart from the successful capture of gravitons, no exact and valid observation data has been returned so far. I don't know how long it will take. As he spoke, Lu Yongchan patted the experimental table in front of him anxiously. Seeing this, Fong Su showed a helpless smile on his face. This scene has occurred more than once. Due to the influence of the black hole's gravity, the detector's data transmission efficiency is getting lower and lower. Even if gravitons are successfully captured, it will take several years for the observation data to be transmitted back to the fleet. On the other hand, in order to save energy as much as possible, the fleet stopped all remaining research and development projects. Therefore, during this process, everyone can only wait patiently. Liu Yongchang's performance is already better than that of most scientific researchers. To use an analogy, just like you downloaded a wonderful blockbuster, the download progress has reached 99.9%, .9%, but the download speed has dropped to 0.01 kilobytes per second. The truth is before our eyes. 
Not everyone can tolerate the data transmission speed as fast as a tortoise. Drop! A clear buzzer sounded in Lu Yongchang's ears. He subconsciously stopped mumbling words and turned to look at the holographic projection aside. Data reception completed. Decompression in progress. Zero's electronic synthesizer sounded. The next second, the holographic projection in front of the laboratory was flooded with dense and complex data. At the same time, the somewhat anxious atmosphere in the laboratory suddenly dissipated. Looking at the scene in front of him, Lu Yongchang didn't speak, and there wasn't much expression on his face. But his slightly trembling hands revealed his inner excitement. He quickly opened a holographic image and started writing on it. The calculation process is boring, but the calculation results are exciting. As the technology tree system said, through various observation data of gravitons, Lu Yongchang successfully found the constant that had troubled him for hundreds of years. Under the gaze of a group of scientific researchers, Lu Yongchang swallowed hard. At this moment, he felt as if he had returned to the classroom. At that time, he also wrote the key information about nuclear fusion on the blackboard under everyone's gaze. And now, what is before him is a key theory related to the future development of human civilization. He took a deep breath, and the agitated emotions in his heart calmed down instantly. His expression was extremely solemn, like a pilgrim, and he solemnly raised his hand and moved it on the blue holographic projection. A line of highlighted white fonts chased his fingertips and appeared clearly in front of all the academicians. Letter and number. Interspersed, arranged, and combined with each other, an extremely beautiful formula is formed. Finally, Lu Yongcheng's fingers stopped. He raised his hand and then gently tapped on the holographic projection in front of him. Fellow academicians of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, this is the superstring gravitational field equation. We made it! Wow! The moment the words fell, a thunderous tsunami of applause suddenly erupted in the laboratory. Boom! Accompanying the warm applause was a quiet roar. The roaring sound comes from inside the head. No one could hear it except Lu Yongchang. The moment the roar sounded, Lu Yongchang was horrified to find that time in front of him seemed to have stopped. He tried to move his body, but to no avail. It was as if his body had been frozen in time, with only his sight and thinking activities unaffected. This, how is this possible? He exclaimed in great horror from the bottom of his heart. Stopping time is almost impossible. The quality of the chief scientist allowed him to calm down quickly. Although he didn't know what happened, the roar in his head made him vaguely guess. He cast his sights on the atomic clock in the distance. Soon, he came up with an answer. Time did not stand still. It just flowed extremely slowly. Compared with time standing still, this answer made him relax a lot. The time deceleration effect is theoretically achievable. After calming down, he slowly closed his eyes. With a slight movement of consciousness, the familiar scene once again appeared before his eyes. The technology tree composed of bright white lines floats quietly in a fluorescent green space. Lu Yongchang subconsciously looked up. The missing constant, the search for gravitons, the threshold of cosmic civilization, perfecting the superstring gravitational field equation. The originally dim cursor gradually became brighter at this moment. Unlike before. After the two cursors became brighter, the fluorescent green space that used to serve as the background began to vibrate, along with the vibration of the fluorescent green space. A faint feeling of dizziness came from Lu Yongcheng's mind. This feeling is like a side effect of excessive overclocking of the brain. The vibration amplitude gradually increased, and the dizziness became more severe. The technology tree system was beyond his understanding. Coupled with this abnormal change, Lu Yongcheng suddenly felt an extremely strong sense of panic in his heart. Damn it! He endured dizziness, cursing in his heart, and kept trying to exit this constantly turbulent technology tree space. But obviously, these attempts were all in vain. The dizziness continued to increase, and his consciousness became blurred. At the moment when Lu Yongcheng almost fainted, the vibrations in the green space suddenly stopped. Just like when the vibration first started, there was no warning when the vibration stopped. He opened his eyes with difficulty and looked at the technology tree ahead. The bright white technology tree was still standing quietly in front of him as usual. At the top of the technology tree, three cursors with decreasing brightness illuminate the boundary between the fourth level civilization and the fifth level civilization. Preliminary application of superstring gravitational field equation. Curvature navigation technology. Advanced application of superstring gravitational field equations. Primary gravity shield. Grand unified theory. All this was within Lu Yongchang's expectations. But the originally fluorescent green space has undergone some unexpected changes. Fluorescent green. Dark blue. 
light yellow, dark red. The complex colors blended with each other to form a model pattern in front of Lu Yongchang. This? How is this going? Lu Yongchang wanted to think about the meaning of this model pattern. But his vision went dark. The next second, his consciousness quickly left the technology tree space. As if he was forcibly kicked out. At the last moment, he vaguely saw a line of bright white text suspended above the model background. First renovation. Completed. Chapter 632 Top Secret Files. First time remodeling? What transformation? What has been transformed? In an instant, countless questions flashed through Lu Yongchang's mind. Before he could think about it, his consciousness completely left the technology tree space and returned to the real world. The next second, he quickly noticed something abnormal happened to him. Seem. So the so-called side effects caused by the first transformation were not completely eliminated. He tried to focus his gaze on the people in front of him. The originally slow flow of time gradually returned to normal. And the cheers and applause from all the academicians gradually filled my ears. Because the flow of time has not yet fully recovered. These cheers and applause were elongated and seemed particularly weird. The dizziness is increasing at a rapid rate. He subconsciously raised his hand, trying to grab something to stabilize his body. But, he caught nothing but the ethereal blue holographic image. In a burst of exclamations, the world in front of him fell into darkness. Inside the medical center, Lu Yongcheng's eyes were closed, and he was lying quietly in an angular medical cabin. This is the latest model of medical cabin developed by the Academy of Sciences, which is sufficient to solve most diseases that have appeared in human history. But now, Lu Yongcheng in the medical cabin did not react at all. Lying quietly in it, as if he had been injected with hibernation, Fang Su looked anxiously at Dr. Wen, who was frowning in front of him, and asked in a low voice, Dr. Wen, what's going on? Why? Dr. Wen sighed and shook his head slightly. Professor Lu's situation is very complicated, and I don't know how to explain it. Unknown disease? Mao Xingji, who was standing nearby, came over and asked solemnly, Do you mean some kind of special unknown disease? Dr. Wen pondered for a moment, shook his head again, and sighed melancholy. I hope it is caused by disease. At least it can be easily solved. Her words immediately made the atmosphere in the medical center become more tense. Mao Jingji and Fang Su looked at each other, and then cautiously glanced at Su Yutong, who was standing aside. Almost at the moment Dr. Wen fell, Su Yutong's slightly thin body swayed slightly. Obviously, Dr. Wen's words had a great impact on her. Under the worried gazes of Mao Jingji and Fang Su, Su Yutong held the medical cabin on the side with her right hand and quickly stood firm but it can be seen from the backs of her hands that are slightly bruised with veins and knuckles that her heart is not peaceful. Su Yutong's eyes were slightly red, and her pursed lips looked a little pale. Dr. Wen, just tell me. Yongchang, what's the problem? Dr. Wen and Su Yutong looked at each other and said with some trepidation, This is supposed to be a top secret document. This happened. After saying that, Dr. Wen shook his head helplessly. However, I think you don't need to be too nervous. Judging from previous experiences, Professor Liu will be able to return to normal in a short time. Bong Su and Mao Xingji looked at each other, and for a moment, they didn't know what to say. Seeing this, Dr. Wen turned around and dragged a holographic image over, then reached out and clicked on it a few times. You should be aware that Professor Liu has been in situations like this from time to time since the beginning of the Earth Age, she said in a somewhat indifferent tone. There is no warning of coma, and usually returns to normal within three days. Following Dr. Wen's movements, the holographic projection quickly enlarged, showing detailed file information one by one. Since the first coma, Dr. Wen's voice paused slightly. Under the order of the old council chairman, I conducted a comprehensive examination of Professor Liu's body. According to the order of the old council chairman, all test data are classified as top secret information. Dr. Wen's voice paused. She glanced at the academicians in the medical center and then lowered her voice and said, Never lift the ban. The expression on Fong Su's face suddenly became serious. Without any hesitation, he turned around and waved to the academicians behind him. It's gone! It's all gone! The superstring gravitational field equation has been given. If you don't do a good study, why are you waiting here? If Professor Liu is not here, we won't be able to do scientific research? A few minutes later, the huge medical center became empty again. Dr. Wen looked at the few people with solemn expressions in front of him called up a file, and began to explain. This is an inspection report from Earth's time. Academician Mao. You can focus on Professor Liu's brain test report. Dr. Wen reminded softly. Mao Jingzi frowned slightly 
and raised his head to look at the dense charts and test data. With just one glance, a look of deep horror appeared on his face. This? How is this possible? Is this level of brain activity really something humans can achieve? Mao Xingji's exclamation immediately attracted the attention of Fang Su and Su Yutong. This is just the test data during the first coma. Dr. Wen smiled bitterly and shook his head. From that time on, Professor Lu's brain activity will rise to a higher level every time he is in coma. You might not believe it if I tell you. At that time, I suspected that Professor Lu was an alien. After all, a normal human brain can never reach this level. Fong Su swallowed hard and turned to glance at the medical cabin not far away. Don't talk about you. I think so too. Su Yutong rolled his eyes and interrupted Fong Su's words. What do you think? You think Yong Chang is not human? If you have the ability, you can say this in front of Yong Chang and see if he can cut you off. Fong Su looked suffocated and scratched his head with a smile. Ahem, academician Su, you know that's not what I meant. In addition to the brain, Professor Lu's physical fitness is also slowly improving. Dr. Wen's voice sounded again. It's just that it's not as fast as the brains change. So I made a wild guess at that time. Professor Lu's body, especially his brain, is evolving rapidly for some reason that we don't understand. However, the brain evolved a little faster, and his body couldn't keep up with this evolution. That's why he regularly falls into comas. Chapter 633 Brain Energization There is a certain possibility. Mao Xingji pondered for a moment and murmured in a low voice. It's like the computer CPU or graphics card is too powerful and the power supply cannot be supplied. Yes, that's what I mean. Dr. Wen smiled and nodded in agreement. Academician Mao is right. Why is there one missing coma data? Fong Su raised his eyebrows and was keenly aware that the examination report in front of him was missing one. Where is the examination report of the last coma? Hearing this, Dr. Wen once again showed a confused look on his face. It's different from the last few times. The last time he was in a coma, Professor Lu had an abnormality in his brain. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang's brain scan image appeared in the holographic projection. In the image, a hole suddenly appeared in the central area of Lu Yongchang's brain. The hole disappeared in an instant, and soon the brain scan image returned to its original state. Looking at the test data next to him, Fang Su took a sharp breath. Energy of matter? How could such a thing happen? Don't ask me. I don't know. Dr. Wen shrugged, his eyes full of confusion. Since discovering this phenomenon, I have conducted a lot of research, but I have never found the reason. Even this energized brain region was discovered by accident. So far, I have asked Professor Liu to do several inspections, but no similar situation has been found. Etc. Fong Su noticed the hidden meaning in Dr. Wen's words. Until now? What do you mean? Dr. Wen did not speak, but raised his hand and tapped lightly on the holographic projection. This is the test data from the medical cabin. If there is no problem in the medical cabin, Professor Liu's entire brain has been fully energized. In the holographic projection, a deep cavity clearly appeared in Liu Yongcheng's head. The originally complex brain structure has completely disappeared at this moment. Such an appalling scene directly plunged the atmosphere in the medical center into deathly silence. Silence. There was a long silence. This. How can this be? Mao Xingji repeated this sentence in a low voice with difficulty. How can carbon-based organisms achieve such a level? Biology cannot explain such a phenomenon at all. Mao Xingji's tone became violent. At least, human biology cannot explain such a phenomenon. Dr. Wen shook his head silently and did not respond to Mao Xingji's words. As for Fang Su and Su Yutong, they stared blankly at Lu Yongchan lying in the medical cabin. Drop! A crisp beep came from the direction of the medical cabin before anyone could react. The red indicator light on the surface of the medical cabin quietly turned green, and the hatch opened. Cough. Lu Yongchan coughed lightly and struggled to prop up his body. It's really terrible. Did you faint again? In the quiet medical center, his whispered complaints were extremely clear. Dr. Wen, we meet again. As he spoke, he raised his head and glanced ahead. Belch? This extremely weird scene in the medical center scared Lu Yongchan so much that he burped. You? Why are you looking at me like that? As he spoke, he lowered his head and looked at his body. I? Is there something wrong with my body? Fang Su looked at Lu Yongchang with a strange look on his face, but hesitated to speak. I said, Yongchang, do you really not feel like you are missing something in your body? Lu Yongchang's face was originally calm, but after hearing Fang Su's words, 
Lu Yongchang's face changed instantly. He subconsciously raised his hand and touched his lower abdomen. The familiar touch made his face immediately relax a lot. Something is missing? Lu Yongchang lowered his head to check his body and asked urgently. What's missing? You should explain it clearly. Fang Su didn't speak, but looked at Lu Yongchang's head with some horror. After a brief pause, Lu Yongchang realized the focus of Fang Su's eyes. He raised his hand and touched the organs on his head, then stretched out his hand to summon a holographic image, brought up the camera, and examined it carefully. No problem? Fang Su, please explain clearly to the labor and management what is going on. Perhaps because he noticed that everyone was looking at him more and more strangely. Lu Yongchang's tone of voice also became irritable. I mean, Fang Su swallowed lightly and said in a slightly hoarse voice, Yong Chong, don't you feel like your brain has disappeared? Lu Yongchang, your brain just disappeared. Your whole family's brains are gone. Lu Yongchang responded with black lines on his head. Dr. Wen, tell me what happened. Professor, Dr. Wen looked at Lu Yongchang's head with strange eyes. Academician Fang is right. Your brain, in a sense, does disappear. Lu Yongchang, to put it simply, my brain has turned into a ball of energy? Looking at the people in front of him, who nodded repeatedly. Lu Yongchan waved his hand with a black line on his face. That's a bunch of nonsense. Listen to yourselves. Is this possible? And you, academician Mao. You are also an academician of biology after all. So you are just messing around with them like this? Mao Jingji smiled bitterly and reached out to touch the tip of his nose. Then carefully dragged a holographic image. Professor, you can see for yourself. We did not lie to you. Lu Yongchang glanced at Mao Jingji suspiciously, then turned to look at the holographic image, looking at the deep skull-shaped hollow in the holographic projection. The expression on Lu Yongchang's face gradually solidified. A few minutes later, Lu Yongchang, who had various detector electrodes attached to his head, lay uneasily on the hospital bed, looking at the scanner in front of him, and swallowed hard. Open! Let's start! When it comes to his own physical problems, even Lu Yongchang has lost his usual stability. Dr. Wen nodded silently and reached out to turn on various high-precision detection instruments one by one. After a short wait, a real-time scan of the brain appeared in the holographic projection. Looking at the huge hole in the image, Lu Yongchang subconsciously held his breath and then shook his head slightly. The holes in the image swayed simultaneously. Uh-huh. Lu Yongchang's face instantly turned extremely pale. While his mind went blank, a line of faint words emerged from the depths of his memory. First renovation. Completed. Is this the first time the technology tree system has transformed him? It is certain that no matter who it is, after discovering that their brain tissue has completely disappeared and turned into a ball of energy, they will not be able to accept this fact in a short period of time. Chapter 634 Professor. I am not such a person. Professor. Do you really not feel anything unusual? Dr. Wen looked at the huge hole in the holographic projection and asked solemnly. No, I don't feel it at all. Lu Yongchang responded in a difficult tone. Can you find the cause of this phenomenon? His. Hearing Lu Yongchang's inquiry, Dr. Wen took a deep breath, and a look of embarrassment appeared on his face. Professor, this may be a bit difficult. As she spoke, she glanced at Mao Jingji next to her. Academician Mao, what do you think? Mao Jingji frowned and kept swiping his right hand on the holographic projection in front of him, carefully flipping through a series of inspection data. Professor, I need to examine you further. After speaking, he raised his head and looked around. His brows suddenly furrowed deeper. There are not enough equipment here. Professor, I need to take you to the biology laboratory. Lu Yongchang. Half an hour later, Lu Yongchang had various electrodes attached to his body and lay in the middle of several large instruments with an uneasy look on his face. He never thought that one day he would be able to enter the biological laboratory as an experimental sample. I said, perhaps because of being too nervous. Lu Yongchang found that his voice was broken as soon as he spoke. He hurriedly coughed twice, cleared his throat and spoke again. I said, Academician Mao, are you sure you want to avenge yourself publicly? Mao Xingji, who was busy debugging instruments on the side, was suddenly startled and then realized the meaning of Lu Yongchang's words. How come? Professor, I am not that kind of person. As he spoke, Mao Jingji showed a meaningful smile to Lu Yongchang and once again turned his attention to the testing equipment in front of him. Lu Yongchang, why? No, academician Mao, academician Mao, 
What do you mean by that smile? Professor, the inspection has begun. Please keep as quiet as possible, Mao Jingji said meticulously. Otherwise, there may be large errors in the test data, and a second test may be necessary. Liu Yongchang's expression froze, and he quickly stabilized his movements. Looking at the huge testing equipment that was starting to operate and the huge probe facing his head, Liu Yongchang felt a chill coming from behind. His eyes were involuntarily cast towards the transparent aluminum curtain wall not far away. Inside the curtain wall, a giant abandoned tree was gently swinging its broad branches and leaves under the illumination of the stellar spectrum light. Beside the tree crown, several monitoring devices are closely monitoring its every move. At this moment, he suddenly felt the feeling of the abandoned giant tree growing in the isolation laboratory. Perhaps due to psychological effects, Lu Yongcha felt that the examination took an extremely long time. All right. The inspection project has basically been completed. The moment Mao Jingzi's voice came from not far away, Lu Yongchang breathed a sigh of relief. After getting up, he pulled off all kinds of electrodes on his body, and then walked quickly in the direction of Mao Jingzi. Old Mao, have you found any problems? Mao Jingzi did not respond to Lu Yongchang's question, but frowned and looked at the data in the holographic projection carefully. The brain structure completely disappeared and was replaced by an unknown energy body. When Lu Yongchang walked to his side, Mao Jingzi raised his hand and gently clicked on the picture in the holographic image. The energy fluctuation changes of the energy body can be clearly observed. At the same time, the amplitude of energy fluctuations in each area of the energy body is quite different. It's somewhat similar to another form of brain wave expression. Liu Yongchang added thoughtfully. Mao Jingji was stunned for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Yes, it's a bit similar. But the energy fluctuation amplitude of this energy body is much stronger than the brain wave fluctuation amplitude of the human brain. According to current observations, it is probably more than a thousand times that of normal humans. This is the amplitude of energy fluctuations in a quiet state. If you are thinking... Mao Xingji shook his head repeatedly. It's unimaginable. It's unimaginable. Liu Yongchan did not speak, but stared blankly at the data in the holographic projection. Out of professional habit, he couldn't help but start thinking about the reasons behind this phenomenon. After thinking about it, Liu Yongchan noticed something abnormal in his body, different from the past, where his thinking seemed to be covered with a thick layer of fog. Now, Liu Yongchan only feels that his thinking is extremely clear. Some details that he had not noticed before seemed extremely clear to him at this moment. This is overclocking status. He quickly realized the changes in his brain. After completing the first transformation, he could easily enter the so-called overclocking state without the help of the technology tree system. While ecstatic, he began to quickly think about the reasons. He raised his hand and unconsciously looked at the detection data in the projection. When he saw the pulsating energy fluctuations, an inexplicable sense of familiarity arose from the bottom of his heart. Wrong. This is not an energy body. Liu Yongchang turned his head to look in the direction of the transparent aluminum curtain wall and murmured in a low voice. What? Mao Jingji was stunned and turned to look at Liu Yongchang, who was behaving a little strangely. Why isn't this an energy body? All the test data can show that there is an extremely high intensity of energy in your skull. Although we have never been exposed to this form of energy, I am certain that this is definitely an energy body. Liu Yongchang silently moved his fingers and called up a series of information in the holographic projection. This is... Mao Xingzhi seemed to realize something and said hesitantly. The detection data of the lost giant tree? Liu Yongchang continued to paddle the holographic image in front of him. Under his operation, complicated data items were quickly eliminated. Finally, a pulse-like curve wave diagram appeared in front of Mao Xingzhi's eyes. This is quantum consciousness. Liu Yongchan tapped the holographic projection with his finger and whispered in a firm tone. Chapter 635 Quantum State Brain Quantum Consciousness? Mao Xingji looked shocked and subconsciously repeated the words spoken by Liu Yongchan. Yes, just like a giant tree left behind. Liu Yongchan turned his attention to the transparent aluminum curtain wall not far away. Their thinking is placed in the quantum signals triggered by bioelectrical signals. My brain should be in this state. Two. It's just that compared to these giant trees, my brain seems... Mao Jingzi raised his eyebrows and added softly. It's more advanced. Liu Yongchan shrugged. I feel the same way. And I feel like... That should be a good thing. Without the constraints of the carbon-based structure, I feel that my thinking is much smoother than before. As he spoke, 
Lu Yongchan flipped through the dense data in the holographic projection fascinatedly. With the help of overclocking thinking, inspiration continued to rise in his mind. Special energy shock causes brain quantization? It should be. The vibrations in the technology tree space are most likely releasing some form of energy that humans have never come into contact with before. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but think about it. The brain can be quantized. But what about the body? The quantized brain can unlock the original overclocking limitations. But what about the quantized body? Since there is a first transformation, will there be a second transformation? Just as Lu Yongchang was immersed in his inspired reverie, a strong sense of dizziness arose spontaneously. Lu Yongchang's face changed slightly. This familiar feeling instantly reminded him of the sequelae caused by overclocking in the technology tree space at that time. With overclocking thinking, Lu Yongchang instantly figured out the reason. Although the quantization of his brain has greatly improved his thinking ability, his frail body has endured a far greater burden than before. Damn it! Lu Yongchang cursed in his heart and tried to suppress his rapidly spreading thoughts. But, to no avail, inspirations kept rising in his mind, just like bubbles rising on the sea. Even though he tried his best to suppress his desire to pry into those inspirations, his curious instinct still drove him to continue to pursue one inspiration after another. The direct consequence of this behavior was a rapidly increasing sense of dizziness. Professor? Mao Jingji on the side couldn't help but glance at Li Yongchang's head again. He seemed to have discovered something unusual about him and asked in a low voice, Are you okay? Li Yongchang took a deep breath, raised his hand and patted his empty head vigorously, endured the dizziness and changed the subject. It's okay. I'm just thinking about a question. How do you think this thing is implemented? Hearing this, a trace of sadness and confusion flashed across Mao Jingji's face. Professor, I don't know either. How do you think this person's head can become a quantum state? This, this is unreasonable. An event beyond the scope of cognition is like the sword of Damocles hanging overhead for scientists. Lu Yongchang pretended to shrug and said with a smile. Forget it. Since you don't understand the reason, just put it aside for now. The superstring gravitational field equations have just been worked out, and we still have a lot to do. Mao Jingji sighed helplessly and murmured in a low voice. Professor, my research on superstring gravitational fields is of no use. So let me study it for a while longer. Perhaps, maybe I can find something? Mao Jingji's tone was not confident. Obviously, he also knew that this kind of miraculous change far exceeded the current technological level of human civilization. As he spoke, Lu Yongcha felt his dizziness getting worse. As the dizziness worsened, the inspiration rising in his mind became more intense. If it was just bubbles that occasionally appeared on the sea at the beginning. Now it is a huge bubble machine spitting bubbles to the sea. He opened his mouth, trying to say something else. But physical discomfort stopped him. You? Okay. Okay. Come on. I have to go. I just thought of a question about the superstring gravitational field equation. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang walked quickly outside the laboratory. He can't stay here anymore. Each of these data and these instruments will cause an outpouring of inspiration in his mind. Professor, let me see you off. Mao Jingji heard this and said quickly, No, no, just do your research. Lu Yongchang waved his hands repeatedly and walked out of the biology laboratory door as if running away. After leaving the biology laboratory, the relaxed expression on Lu Yongchang's face disappeared instantly. He raised his hand and gently held his forehead, trying his best to endure the intense dizziness. Overclocking your mind obviously comes with a price. After the brain becomes a quantum state under the impact of energy, it releases its original constraints and can enter an overclock state at any time. But the impact of overclocking on the body has not disappeared. Even, in a sense, due to the extension of the overclocking state, the burden on Li Yongchang's body increased several times compared with the original. His face was pale and he leaned against the wall of the earth corridor. The cold touch slightly dissipated some of the dizziness. He took a few deep breaths and tried his best to restrain his thoughts that were gradually starting to run rampant. Professor, you don't seem to be in good condition. Do you need to call Dr. Wen for you? Zero's avatar appeared next to him. And at the same time, a slightly cold electronic synthesis sounded. Li Yongchang closed his eyes tightly, restrained his thoughts that were running around like a wild horse, and said with difficulty, No, no need. Just leave me alone for a while. Time passes slowly with deep breaths again and again. The reins of this fierce horse finally returned to Lu Yongchang's hands. He slowly opened his eyes, looked at the azure holographic image in front of him slightly absent-mindedly, 
twitched the corners of his mouth, and revealed a bitter smile. Have to. I didn't expect that at my age. I still have to learn how to use my brain. Lu Yongchang shook his head as if mocking himself, stood up straight, and staggered toward his office. Zero's avatar followed him silently, as if guarding its creator. Chapter 636, Gravity A few days later, Earth, Lu Yongchang's office, after several days of adaptive training, he has basically mastered how to use the quantized brain. At least now, he can restrain his instinct and no longer chase the bubbles of inspiration that keep rising in his mind. He carefully raised his hand and clicked on the holographic projection in front of him. In the blue holographic image, a line of bright white formulas quickly appeared. Superstring gravitational field equation. Lu Yongchang silently stared at this equation that he had put a lot of effort into and breathed a long sigh of relief. In the quantum brain, memories of the past quickly emerged. Preliminary application of superstring gravitational field equation. Curvature navigation technology. A faint heat flashed in Lu Yongchang's eyes. Curvature sailing. Perhaps this is why the technology tree space classifies the superstring gravitational field equation as the threshold of cosmic civilization. Just like the nuclear fusion technology at that time was regarded as the threshold of interstellar civilization. Only by mastering the curvature navigation technology can the speed of the fleet exceed the speed of light and truly enter the stage of cosmic civilization. Otherwise, just sailing between star systems will take more than 95% of a civilization's time. Such a civilization may be called an interstellar civilization, but it cannot be called a cosmic civilization. Thinking so, Lu Yongchang said softly, Zero, notify all academicians of the Academy of Sciences and relevant majors to gather in laboratory number one. Receive. At the same time as the electronic synthesized sound sounded, the avatar waiting quietly turned into light particles and slowly dissipated in the air. Professor, in the past few days, we have conducted comprehensive verification and analysis work on the superstring gravitational field equation. In the laboratory, Tao Yuda had a touch of excitement on his face, followed Lu Yongchang with hurried steps, and told him his findings in a low, rapid voice. You were right at the time. The Randall syndrome model is right. While there isn't any direct observational evidence to suggest this, I believe that gravity definitely exists across all dimensions. The time and space we live in is five-dimensional but we all live on a one plus three-dimensional hyperspace membrane. Electromagnetic force, weak force, and strong force are all transmitted on this membrane and will not enter the fifth dimension. Only gravity can pass through this membrane and enter the so-called fifth-dimensional space-time. As for higher dimensions, Taluda's voice paused slightly. It should have been curled up in microscopic particles, and it is difficult to reproduce it. Lu Yongcha chuckled, slowed down his pace, and turned to look at Taluda who was following closely beside him. Do you still remember what Hua said? Pastoral dimensional creatures need to consume a lot of energy to resist the assimilation of the universe. Now it seems that it may be because of this one plus three dimensional hyperspace membrane. Tao Yudo was stunned for a moment. And then his eyes suddenly lit up. It makes sense. But the next second, Tao Yudo's expression dimmed slightly. This hyperspace membrane should have strong restraint and recovery capabilities. It seems that if we want to jump out of this membrane to implement wormhole technology, it may not be so easy. A gentle smile appeared on Lu Yongcheng's face again. He waved his hand gently and said, It's too far away. Wormhole technology is too far away for current human civilization. Our primary goal now is to control gravity with the help of superstring gravitational field equations. Then use gravity to realize curvature navigation technology. Earth calendar year 3265. In the blink of an eye, Seven years passed by. In the distance, the brightness of the black hole's accretion disk dimmed a bit. At the same time, the lush greenery on the forgotten star also decreased a bit. Seven years of precipitation and research and development have brought leapfrog progress to human civilization. Under the leadership of Li Yongchang, the Academy of Sciences finally achieved the control of gravity to a certain extent by relying on the superstring gravitational field equation. I announce that the first gravitational field generation experiment has officially started. In laboratory number one, Lu Yongchang's somewhat excited voice came. In order to eliminate the influence of the black hole's gravity and ensure the smooth progress of the experiment. And of course, to ensure the safety of Earth and the human fleet. The experimental site was not arranged in Earth. Not even in the human fleet. In the endless deep space one light year away from the human fleet. A small fleet composed of more than a dozen starships stood quietly in place. Waiting for orders. In the center of the fleet is a square cube-like starship, 
rather than saying it is a starship. It is better to call it a mobile gravity laboratory. Inside the cube, a gravitational field generating device newly developed by the Academy of Sciences is installed. That's why it was given a very meaningful name. Gravity. Around it, dozens of starships loaded with various high-precision detection equipment were docked quietly. Their function is simple after the gravitational field generating device is activated. The universal gravity can be observed in all directions. Attention all units! Lu Yongcheng's voice sounded again from the Earth, one light year away. Prepare to activate the gravitational field generating device. Chapter 637 Gravitational Field Generating Device Through the Quantum Ultra Distance Communication Device This command instantly crossed the distance of one light year and was transmitted to the universal gravity. Under Zero's remote control, the power of the antimatter engine began to increase first. The huge energy generated by the annihilation of matter and antimatter flowed into a huge device located in the central area of gravity along a complex and neat pipeline system. This is the core component of gravity, the gravitational field generating device. The device has a silver-white hemispherical structure. Its surface is very smooth, without any unnecessary interfaces or bulges. The entire gravitational field generating device is firmly embedded in the starship deck without any gaps, as if it is cast in one piece. Near it, all devices were firmly fixed on the starship deck. All of this is to prevent any unexpected situations under the influence of huge gravity. Inside the gravitational field generating device is an extremely complex circuit and pipeline structure. These lines and pipe structures enclose a large, high-purity vacuum cavity. The cavity is filled with a large number of captured gravitons. This is also the core component of the gravitational field generating device. Similar to electrons, the movement of electrons will form an electric current thereby forming a magnetic field. The regular motion of gravitons will form a regular gravitational field. Due to the special nature of gravitons, controlling the regular motion is not an easy task. Therefore, when the technical conditions are not sufficient, the gravitational field that this experimental model can create is not very powerful. According to estimates by Lu Yongchang and a group of academicians of the Academy of Sciences, the gravitational field it can create is not much different from the gravitational field produced by the Earth. A gravitational field of this intensity produces extremely weak space-time curvature. Therefore, the observation accuracy of the equipment inside the surrounding observation starships has reached the top level of human civilization today. With the continuous influx of energy generated by the antimatter engine, the gravitational field generating device also began to operate. Under a series of complex processes, a large number of gravitons began to move in a predetermined direction. Regular and weak gravitational fields began to appear and gravitational waves were born, transmitting gravity to the surroundings at the speed of light. At this moment, if you observe it from the perspective of gravity, it is as if a huge celestial body suddenly appeared in the empty universe. As time goes by, the mass of celestial bodies is increasing dramatically, from the asteroid level to the satellite level, and then from the satellite level to the planet level. Almost at the same moment, the surrounding detection star ships, under Zero's control, adjusted their postures and started their antimatter engines because they were too close. They needed the power generated by the antimatter engines to maintain their posture. Otherwise, under the influence of gravity, these exploration starships will crash into the universal gravity inside the distant Earth on the holographic projection directly in front of the laboratory. The gravitational field intensity value from the detection starship is increasing rapidly. 0.98 n slash kg 1.96 n slash kg 9.7 n slash kg, 9.75 n slash kg. In the end, the gravitational field strength stayed at 9.8 n slash kg. Looking at this familiar value, Lu Yongchang's face suddenly showed a hint of ecstasy. 9.8 n slash kg. This is the strength of the Earth's gravitational field. In other words, the true artificial gravity technology has been realized at this moment. With just a few minor improvements and adjustments, Humans living in starships can no longer rely on electromagnetic boots, electromagnetic adsorption devices, and gravity chambers. Successful! Finally successful! Lu Yongchang stared at the straight line, with almost no fluctuations in the holographic projection, and murmured in a low voice. The next second, warm applause and cheers came from all directions, directly drowning Lu Yongchang's voice. The experiment isn't over yet. The successful startup of the gravitational field generation device is only the first step of this experiment. Therefore, after a short period of cheers and celebrations, the laboratory quickly returned to its original calm. Start directional adjustment of the range and strength of the gravitational field. 
Lu Yongchang straightened his expression and said in a deep voice, If the successful generation of a gravitational field is the basic work of this experiment, then the directional adjustment of the gravitational field is the core of this experiment. Only when it is confirmed that the gravitational field generating device can directionally and quantitatively adjust the gravitational field and thereby produce different degrees of space-time curvature can this experiment be considered a complete success. And all of this is just the first step in the development process of the curvature engine. The first gravitational field range adjustment starts now. The default adjustment direction is as follows. The detection area of the detection starship has been changed successfully. Adjust countdown 3, 2, 1. Adjustment begins. The reports of scientific researchers sounded in the laboratory one after another. The moment the order was issued, Zero began to control the precision instruments in the gravitational field generating device through the ultra-distance communication device. The gravitational field that originally spread evenly in all directions slowly dissipated and was replaced by a gravitational field that spread forward in a fan-shaped area. The reduction of the range has increased the intensity of the gravitational field a lot. According to the data returned by the detection starship, the gravitational field intensity value even reached 14.7 n slash kg, which is about 1.5 g. Successfully observed changes in the curvature of space-time. The first gravitational field adjustment experiment. Successful. The experimental data storage is completed. One group. Start analyzing the relevant data. The second gravitational field adjustment experiment. Get ready. Chapter 638 Another Abnormal Data. The whole experiment takes a long time. During the experiment, when a group of scientific researchers were taking a break, Liu Yongchang looked up at the previous experimental data in the giant holographic projection and slowly shook his head. Too small. Professor, what did you say? Tao Yuda, who was processing data on the side, moved his ears slightly, looked at Liu Yongchang who was standing with his hands behind his hands in surprise, and asked in a low voice, What is too small? Gravity field. Liu Yongchang chuckled, spread his hands and said, or the curvature of space and time. With this size of space-time curvature, it is impossible to build a curvature engine. Tao Yuda put down his work and responded in a low voice. If increasing the intensity of the gravitational field can create a curvature engine, then it would be too simple. We just need to increase the size of the gravitational field generator to do it. Liu Yongchang smiled noncommittally. As Tao Yuda said, all the current work of the Academy of Sciences is just laying a solid foundation for the curvature engine building. The various data generated by the successful operation of the gravitational field generator have laid a good foundation for the Academy of Science's subsequent research. Not a single moment of time was wasted. At the moment the experiment ended, Liu Yongchang led everyone at the Academy of Sciences to start research on the second-generation gravitational field generating device. According to the predetermined goal, the gravitational field created by the second-generation gravitational field generator will reach the level of the sun. Compared with the first generation, this improvement is extremely huge. However, in Liu Yongchang's previous calculations, the curvature of space-time created by this intensity of gravitational field is still not enough to drive the spacecraft into a curvature navigation state. Even so, the research and development process still encountered a lot of difficulties. The power problem of the antimatter engine and the energy conversion rate problem. With the joint efforts of Liu Yongchang and academicians of the Academy of Sciences, these complicated problems were overcome one by one. As time goes by, the research work on the second-generation gravitational field generating device is gradually coming to an end. As usual, Liu Yongchang completed his daily exercise. After stepping out of the gravity chamber, he walked quickly towards the office. Suddenly, a holographic projection suddenly unfolded in front of him. At the same time, Zero's electronic synthesized voice came from the surrounding speakers. Professor, the black hole detector has made a new discovery. Liu Yongchang raised his eyebrows slightly and asked in surprise. Black hole detector? Can it still send messages back now? Yes, but the difficulty is very high. It took the fleet six years to complete the final reception of this set of data. Ling responded to Liu Yongchang's question in a serious manner, but Liu Yongchang ignored it. At this time, Liu Yongchang's attention had been attracted by the data in the holographic projection. He frowned slightly and quickly moved his fingers across the holographic image in front of him. Countless complicated data flowed before his eyes, like a waterfall. The improvements brought by the quantized brain are all round. Analyzing these data is not difficult for Liu Yongchang, who has entered the overclocking state. With just a few glances, Liu Yongchang noticed the problem from these abnormal data. Something's wrong! His face changed slightly. He suddenly stopped walking back to the office. 
turn around and walk towards the laboratory. Zero, inform everyone to gather in the laboratory immediately. Lu Yongchan sat on a chair in the laboratory, looking through the data sent back by the black hole detector with a solemn expression. Tisk, something's wrong. So wrong. He clicked his tongue irritably. This is absolutely not. Uh-huh. The sound of the laboratory door opening interrupted Lu Yongchang's unfinished words. I said Yongchang. Isn't it a day off today? Fong Su walked into the laboratory while yawning and said with some dissatisfaction. Everything is fine. Why did you send out another notice? In order to overcome the last difficulty of the second generation gravity generating device, the Academy of Sciences has been conducting research for three months. I know you are impatient. But research must also pay attention to the balance between work and rest. It's easy for you. Stop talking nonsense. Lu Yongchang impatiently interrupted Fong Su's chatter and said bluntly. The black hole detector sent back the latest detection data. And there is one data. His voice paused and he said with emphasis. It's very abnormal. Huh? Black hole detector? Is this thing still working? A trace of surprise flashed in Fong Su's eyes. And he sighed the same as Lu Yongchang. The quality is pretty good. As he said that, he quickened his pace and came to Lu Yongchang. What data can surprise you so much? See for yourself. Lu Yongchang raised his hand and pointed to the location of the data for Fong Su. That's it. After a few seconds, the laboratory fell silent again, like Lu Yongchang. Fong Su also fell into confusion and confusion. Hiss, something's wrong. These data look a bit like gravitons, Fong Su whispered, but there seems to be a slight difference. I think this is definitely not a graviton. It may be a particle that we have not discovered yet. Lu Yongchang's expression was extremely solemn. If it is true, this may have a huge impact on our next research direction. Could it be that the detector made an error? Fong Su looked at Lu Yongchang in front of him with suspicion. The detector is now very close to the black hole. In such a strong gravitational environment, it is normal for it to malfunction. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment, then slowly shook his head. I don't think this is a malfunction. In the data returned by the detector, there are a total of 9,531 sets of data, of which only three sets of data are abnormal. The time when the abnormal data appears is not continuous. If it was a fault, it's unlikely that would happen. Hearing this, Fong Su fell into silence again. Swish, swish, swish. As time passed, the sound of the laboratory door opening gradually became more frequent. These academicians of the Academy of Sciences also fell into deep thought after briefly understanding what happened through Zero's introduction. Chapter 639 A Scapegoat Like other academicians, Lu Yongchang was also thinking hard about the reasons behind these abnormal data. The data sample is too small. Next to him, Fong Su complained in a low voice. There are only three sets of data, and they were measured in this environment. It is difficult to rule out the influence of observation errors and the like. Lu Yongchang nodded silently. The possibility of the observation instrument malfunctioning was not high. But he was a little unsure about the experimental error. Zero. How long will it take to receive the next set of observation data? After thinking for a moment, Lu Yongchang asked Ling helplessly. A line of countdown is presented in the holographic projection directly in front. Looking at the extremely long time, Lu Yongchang shook his head feebly. Too slow. Although his heart was scratched like a cat's paw. Everyone whether it was Lu Yongchang or the other academicians of the Academy of Sciences, knew clearly that the reasons behind this phenomenon could only be analyzed with the support of a large amount of observational data. And now, transfer all the data to your personal terminal. Lu Yongchang waved his hand slightly irritably and whispered, There are too few data samples, so it's not a problem for us to wait here. Go back and rest. Lu Yongchang's words obviously did not agree with this group of academicians. The moment the words fell, Voices of opposition rang out in the laboratory. Professor, what are you talking about? Yes, Professor, with the abnormal data right in front of our faces. Who can still think about resting? No, no, Professor, let me think about it again. I feel like I have some inspiration. Seeing this, Lu Yongchang smiled bitterly and shook his head. Also, once these abnormal data are laid out, if they can't understand them, let alone rest, these academicians may not even be able to eat. That's not what I said. Academician Fong just told me that scientific research requires a balance between work and rest. Lu Yongchang shrugged, pointed at Fong Su, who looked stunned, and put the blame directly on his head. Of course, I know you want to continue studying this abnormal data. But, 
This thing will probably not be available for a while. No results. Wait a little longer. Wait for the second batch of data to be transmitted back. And continue the research after more observation samples are available. As soon as he finished speaking, all the academician's eyes turned to Fang Su. Seeing the gnashing teeth of his colleagues, Fang Su felt his scalp numb. I... It's gone! It's all gone! Lu Yongchang waved his hands repeatedly. Take all the data back and take a good look at it during your break. Tell me immediately if you find anything. Hearing this, the academicians who were originally reluctant showed smiles of satisfaction on their faces. They quickly transferred the data in the laboratory to their personal terminals and then hurriedly walked towards the laboratory door for fear of wasting thinking time on the way. Of course, before leaving the laboratory, they did not forget to cast dissatisfied glances at Fang Su. A few minutes later, the originally crowded laboratory became deserted again. Ah, you! Fang Su's chest rose and fell rapidly. And he pointed at Li Yongchang, unable to utter a complete sentence for a while. Okay, okay. Brother Su, it's almost time for you to go back and rest. Li Yongchang didn't look ashamed at all on his face. After waving his hands carelessly, he once again turned his attention to the data returned by the black hole detector. Data? Don't interrupt my train of thought here. Fang Su. Lu Yongchang. You are a real dog. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows suddenly and said in a long tone. Huh? What did you say? No. It's nothing. Feeling the threat, Fang Su twitched the corners of his mouth and turned away without hesitation. I won't disturb your thoughts. Listening to the footsteps gradually disappearing and the sound of the laboratory door slowly closing, the smile on Lu Yongchang's face gradually dissipated. Da da da. He frowned slightly and tapped his knuckles lightly on the table in front of him. He didn't know why, but he always had a strange feeling when looking at the data in front of him. Seem. The truth hidden behind these data will be of great help to him and even to the Academy of Science's subsequent research. After pondering for a long time, he sighed softly, reached out to untie the electromagnetic adsorption device, stood up and left the laboratory. Although a dark cloud appeared during the study, it could not obscure the otherwise clear sky. While the final problem of the second-generation gravity-generating device was successfully solved by the scientific research team led by Lu Yongchang, the manufacturing task was also carried out simultaneously. The real horror of Zero lies not in its role in promoting the technology tree, but in its efficiency in transforming scientific research results into practical applications. With the manufacturing experience of the first-generation gravity-generating device, the time to manufacture the second-generation gravity-generating device has been shortened several times compared with the original. It only took a few months for the engineering ship located one light year away to remotely update most of the hardware facilities of the gravity under zero's control. According to the scheduled plan, the second gravitational field creation experiment will be carried out in three days. These three days of waiting time are for the final maintenance work of the updated gravity. All the academicians on Earth are waiting for the completion of this work with anticipation. One minute. One hour. One day, time passed slowly, and the maintenance work was about to be completed, and the second gravitational field experiment was about to officially begin. Along with a piercing siren, something no one expected happened. Bip! Blop! Blop! A sharp beep echoed hoarsely through the laboratory speakers. Professor, the black hole detector has lost signal. The detection data transmission mission has been interrupted. Trying to reestablish connection. Connection failed. The entanglement effect of quantum long-distance communication devices is disappearing. Chapter 640 Mystery Zero's electronically synthesized sound was very bland, without any emotional changes. But it directly touched the hearts of all the academicians. What? Tao Yuda subconsciously exclaimed. Well, how come the quantum entanglement effect suddenly disappears? Not only Tao Yuda, but also most of the academicians present had expressions of mild or severe horror on their faces. Ever since quantum communication technology matured, human civilization has never encountered this situation in hundreds of years. Quantum ultradistance communication, with its stable and fast characteristics, has quickly occupied the vast majority of communication devices in starships. Electromagnetic wave communication devices have become an emergency backup option in the fleet. In order to ensure safety, it is still a communication module that every starship must be equipped with. But the frequency of use has been reduced to a pitiful level. The most critical point in quantum communication technology is the quantum entanglement effect. Once the quantum entanglement effect suddenly disappears for some reason, this will be a devastating blow to quantum communication technology. At the same time, 
It is also an extremely heavy blow to the People's United Fleet. In order to ensure communication security, the fleet may need to switch communication methods immediately to prevent sudden interruption of communication links. As for the alternative electromagnetic wave communication, its propagation speed is too slow and far from meeting the needs of today's human civilization. Therefore, if it is determined that quantum communication technology has some security risks, developing new communication technologies will become the most important task of the Academy of Humanities and Sciences. Zero. Are all black hole detectors having trouble? Lu Yongchang asked in a deep voice. Yes. This is true for all detectors approaching black holes. Lu Yongchang's mind instantly recalled the scene when the black hole detector was first manufactured. He turned to look at He Binan not far away with a gloomy expression. Coincidentally, He Bailin also glanced at him. The moment their eyes met, He Bailin's lips moved slightly. Lu Yongchang understood the shape of his mouth. Event form theory, he murmured in a low voice with an ugly face. The evolution of quantum states in singular spacetime and flat spacetime is different. Under the influence of gravity, entangled quantum pairs will suffer probabilistic losses. This is the event form theory. This theory has not been confirmed during previous experiments. But if this theory is confirmed, this is undoubtedly extremely bad news for human civilization. The simplest point is that a spacecraft that enters curvature navigation will most likely be unable to use quantum long-distance communication. In the blue holographic projection, the bright white fonts are particularly eye-catching. The quantum entanglement effect has completely disappeared, attempting to switch to the electromagnetic wave communication frequency band. After a brief period of chaos, the laboratory quickly returned to normal order. Under the organization of Li Yongchang, a group of academicians returned to their posts and began to study the reasons behind it. Lu Yongchang asked in a deep voice. Zero. Are electromagnetic wave communications affected? Professor, do you think these black hole detectors may have been destroyed? The moment he finished speaking, he Bailin's eyes moved and he asked in a low voice. Yes. The event form theory is indeed very possible. But we still have to rule out some necessary options. Judging from the final information transmitted by the quantum communication device, the current black hole detector is still a certain distance from the black hole event horizon. Theoretically, in this case, electromagnetic wave communication will not be affected. Electromagnetic waves propagating at the speed of light will definitely be able to break away from the gravitational pull of the black hole and transmit information to the United Fleet. Therefore, if the electromagnetic wave communication device is also affected by the image, it means that the black hole detector was destroyed under the influence of certain factors. Communication is being established. Please wait. Zero's response came. Because of the time deceleration effect, establishing communication links has become a difficult task. Professor, do you think it could be caused by the tidal effect? He Bilan's voice came again. This is a small black hole, and its tidal effect cannot be underestimated. The so-called tidal effect. Simply put, when an object falls into a black hole, the end close to the black hole will receive a stronger force than the end far away from the black hole, which will cause the near end to fall toward the black hole faster. Therefore, the entire object will stretch and torn. Therefore, as a black hole eats a star or planet, it often stretches it into a long noodle, this is called spagatization. Large black holes, on the other hand, perform much more mildly in this regard. Compared with small black holes, the tidal effect of super large black holes is much weaker. Therefore, when humans fall into a large enough black hole, if they are lucky enough, they may be able to spend the rest of their lives in the black hole. Facing He Bailin's inquiry, Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and then slowly shook his head. He stretched out his hand and dragged a holographic image, called up a calculation data in it and said, Look, this is calculated data before launching the black hole detector. Through the information sent out by these black hole detectors just before they lost contact, we can roughly calculate their locations. According to calculations, the tidal force at that location is not enough to tear it apart. He Bailin's expression changed instantly. He suddenly realized the meaning behind Li Yongchang's words. Then what do you mean? That's right. Li Yongchang's eyes showed deep worry. All the clues seem to be pointing in one direction. If traditional electromagnetic wave communication methods are also affected, all black hole detectors will lose contact at the same time. Then... These detectors are most likely to have encountered attacks from advanced civilizations. He Bailin subconsciously held his breath. This? How is this possible? A civilization living near a black hole. How powerful this must be. Even the sweeper civilization may not be able to live near a black hole. Right. 
Lu Yongchan was silent for a while and responded in a low voice. Who knows? Perhaps such a powerful civilization really exists. Everything depends on the reaction of the electromagnetic wave communication device. As he spoke, Lu Yongchan raised his head and looked at the slowly beating bright white fonts in the blue projection with worry on his face. Chapter 641, Kuenping. Drop! Drop! In the silent laboratory, apart from the breathing of the academicians, the only sound left was the buzzing sound coming from the loudspeaker. In the holographic projection, the bright white text has not changed at all. Zero is still trying to re-establish communication with several black hole detectors using electromagnetic waves. But, as time goes by bit by bit, the hope in everyone's hearts is also disappearing bit by bit. Call! After Lu Yongchang sighed deeply, he moved his lips and whispered, It seems that these black hole detectors have been. The first black hole detector has successfully switched its radio communication module. Zero's electronic synthesized sound interrupted Lu Yongchang's unfinished words. Lu Yongchang was stunned. Before he could react, the electronic synthesized sound came again. Both the second black hole detector and the third black hole detector have successfully switched radio modules. At the same time, on the blue holographic projection, the originally dim logos became bright again. Professor, it's successful. He Bilan's excited voice was mixed with Zero's electronic synthesized voice. Coming from the side, the detector has not been destroyed. The event form theory is right. Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the slowly beating data bite by bite in the holographic projection. A complex emotion welling up in his heart. On the one hand, he felt a little lucky. The black hole detector was not destroyed. Which shows that the human fleet did not encounter the so-called advanced civilization living around the black hole. This alone is lucky enough for human civilization. But on the other hand, yeah, the event form theory is right. He nodded subtly and sighed with relief. Quantum ultra-distance communication device. Under the influence of a strong gravitational field, the entangled quantum pairs will be damaged with probability. While speaking, there was a hint of sadness deep in his eyes. It seems that we still need to develop a new communication technology. Otherwise, after entering warp navigation, every starship may become a blind man smearing its progress in the vast universe. After hearing this, the excitement on Ibilan's face gradually dissipated. After a moment of silence, he suddenly whispered, Professor, do you still remember the abnormal data last time? What? Lu Yongcheng's eyes moved slightly, and he asked softly, Did you find any problem? Ibilan hesitated for a while. I have a little guess, but I can't be sure. The three sets of data samples are too few. Only more data can verify this guess. Lu Yongchang pursed his lips towards the slowly advancing progress bar in the holographic projection. Well, the second set of data has started to be transmitted again. Just wait a little longer. No surprises at all. The second gravitational field control experiment was also a great success. When the intensity of artificial gravitational fields increases significantly, the curvature of spacetime also increases rapidly. Although it is not comparable to the extreme spacetime curvature of a black hole, the universal gravity still created a space-time curvature comparable to that of a medium-sized star in a short period of time. Thanks to this, under the order of Li Yongchang, research on the curvature engine officially began. United Fleet, Warp Engine Laboratory, like the gravity, in order to minimize the impact of surrounding celestial bodies and ensure the safety of the fleet, the curvature engine laboratory was also placed in a large starship. This mobile laboratory transformed from the Taotai Material Reserve Ship was given a meaningful name. Kuenfeng, one day the rock rises with the wind and soars 90,000 miles. Watching the modified, Kuenping, Curvature Engine Mobile Laboratory slowly leaving the People's Alliance Starship Factory carrying several engineering ships and several, Tao Tai, material reserve ships. Li Yongchang murmured to himself with deep eyes. I hope that one day, it will lead human civilization into a new era. Certainly possible. Fong Su's voice came from the side. Professor, the Artificial Gravity Laboratory has encountered difficulties. If we want to generate a gravitational field with consistent intensity within the range of a starship, this difficulty is beyond our imagination. The current gravitational field generating device cannot achieve such fine control. Moreover, we don't have a good plan to block the spread of gravitational fields. Which means, it means that the gravitational field will escape outside the starship and affect the surrounding starships. Li Yongchang's tone became solemn. If the gravitational shield technology is mastered in the future, it will also greatly affect the strength of the gravitational shield. As he spoke, he smiled self-deprecatingly. Of course, 
according to the current gravitational field generation device. It is not an easy task to realize a gravitational shield. Fong Su was silent for a while, and then said again, Professor, do you have any good suggestions? I? I don't know either. Lu Yong Chong shook his head decisively, but then nodded hesitantly. But my intuition tells me. Perhaps. Lu Yong Chong turned to look at the black hole accretion disk that had almost disappeared outside the window, and said softly, The answer lies in those abnormal data. There was a hint of doubt in Fong Su's eyes. Professor, do you have the answer? There's a clue. Lu Yong Chong nodded noncommittally. It's not just me. He Bailin should also have thought of it. It's just that the data samples are too small to make accurate judgments. Everything will have to wait until the second set of data transmission is completed to see the outcome. Hearing this, Fong Su nodded in understanding. Chapter 642, Waves of Time and Space. Time flies. Driven by the antimatter engine. Kuenping, as distance from the fleet and the black hole continues to increase. The first experiments on curvature navigation were also carried out. It is certain that curvature navigation is related to gravity. But what kind of correlation method is specific? Not to mention the academicians of the Academy of Sciences. Even Li Yong Chang is confused. As for using the help of the technology tree space. Perhaps because the accumulated experience and experimental data are not rich enough. Even with the overclocking function of the quantum brain. Lu Yong Chang cannot determine a specific research direction in the ocean of inspiration. Therefore, Human civilization at this moment is like a pedestrian crossing the river by groping for stones. We can only rely on experiment after experiment to accumulate experience and deduce the next direction step by step. The first curvature experiment begins now. As Lu Yongchang's voice echoed in Earth, Zero began to control the scientific research robot to perform corresponding operations according to the experimental plan. The Kuenping Mobile Laboratory has a specially improved second-generation gravitational field generation device compared with ordinary second-generation gravitational field-generating devices. This one has higher control accuracy. And the range of generated gravitational field can also be controlled within a relatively small range. But correspondingly, the strength of the gravitational field has been weakened to a certain extent. Therefore, it cannot be called a third-generation product. At best, it is a 2.5-generation product. Under Zero's control, the pure energy from the antimatter engine was transported into the complex pipeline system and the gravitational field began to slowly increase. The experimental object is a small ball with extremely light mass. Under the influence of the magnetic field, it floats quietly in the center of the vacuum experimental chamber. Not far in front of it, a powerful gravitational field began to gradually form. The steady stream of energy caused the strength of this small gravitational field to quickly exceed that of the Earth and reach the level of Jupiter. The powerful gravitational field quickly created a concave space-time. It was like a small whirlpool appeared on the flat sea. The balls used in the experiment were foam balls floating on the sea. Pulled by gravity, it begins to move forward, like small foam balls attracted by whirlpools in the sea. Under the control of the gravitational field generating device, the core area of the gravitational field begins to move forward. The depression in space-time created by the gravitational field then begins to move. The ball chases the gravitational field and begins to accelerate gradually. Inside Earth, Professor, do you still need to increase the strength of the gravitational field? An academician turned his questioning eyes to Lu Yongchang, who was standing in the command position. Lu Yongchang shook his head calmly. Stop the experiment. If you go in the wrong direction, no matter how hard you try, you won't get the result. It would be ridiculous if this could achieve curvature navigation. We have sent out so many detectors, but we have never seen them sailing directly into curvature near the black hole. The real purpose of this experiment is mainly to accumulate some experimental data on the movement of the gravitational field. The inquiring academician nodded slightly, reached out, and pressed a few buttons on the holographic projection. Under Zero's control, the gravitational field generating device slowly shut down, and the powerful gravitational field generated gradually dissipated. Then, how is the curvature engine implemented? He Bilin scratched his scalp hard, his face full of confusion. Is it possible that the way we generate the gravitational field is wrong? Lu Yongchan fell into deep thought, looking at the experimental data in the holographic projection. Countless inspirations emerge one after another in the quantum brain in the overclock state. He quickly completed the screening work and caught a relatively reliable inspiration. I have an idea, he whispered. Maybe we should make the gravitational field move. This movement is not just a movement in space. As he spoke, Lu Yongchan raised his hand and drew several sketches on the holographic projection. 
There is no doubt that gravitational fields can create curvature of space-time. What if, as it moves, we also change its intensity? In this way, space-time will have amplitudes under the influence of the gravitational field. Like waves on the ocean. It might be a good idea to let these space-time waves push objects forward. He Bilan looked at the wavy movement of time and space in the holographic projection. And his eyes gradually glowed with light. That makes sense, Professor. I will solve the experimental plan immediately. And let's conduct another experiment. Looking at the heated atmosphere in the laboratory once again, Lu Yongchang had a gentle smile on his lips. But a trace of worry that was imperceptible to others flashed in his eyes. This solution sounds like a good idea. But he is not optimistic. There is no other reason than intuition. Under the enthusiastic support of a group of academicians, the second experiment quickly began. In this experiment, the requirements for the gravitational field generation device have been raised to a higher level. It needs to control the movement of the gravitational field while quickly changing the intensity of the gravitational field. This almost touches the limit of the control accuracy of this device. With the experience of the first experiment, Zero quickly adjusted the corresponding parameters and generated a gravitational field in the Kuimpeng Mobile Laboratory with a strength slightly lower than that of Jupiter. Under the influence of gravity, the relatively flat space-time has some depressions. Then, the gravitational field quickly shrunk. The sunken time and space then gradually recovered. Before it could completely recover, the gravitational field began to increase rapidly again. In the calm space and time, waves gradually appeared under the influence of the suddenly strong and sometimes weak gravitational field. And the small ball not far away gradually began to move under the action of the waves of space and time. Compared with the first experiment, the acceleration of the ball has obviously increased a lot this time. Lu Yongchang carefully observed the monitoring data of the curvature of space-time. When its fluctuation reached the expected level, he did not hesitate and issued the order directly. Start moving the gravitational field. As the gravitational field began to move slowly, the time and space in the vacuum experimental cabin actually turned out to be like the surface of the sea, with layers of undulating waves. But the ball's condition did not meet everyone's expectations. Not only did it not enter the so-called curvature navigation state, its acceleration also began to become erratic. As the space-time waves gradually increase, the ball's motion becomes more and more unstable. Click! Under everyone's gaze, the round ball broke into several pieces of different sizes. This. He Binlin stared blankly at the picture in the holographic projection and swallowed hard. Fortunately, it's an experiment. He thought in his heart with some fear. If it was a starship, all the people on board should have died in this disaster. Right? The superposition and weakening of space-time waves? Lu Yongchan looked thoughtfully at the data in the holographic projection and muttered to himself. Maybe there are factors similar to the resonance effect. In short, it should be an extremely complicated process. As he spoke, he raised his hand and quickly wrote down lines of formulas on the holographic projection in front of him. Wait a minute. I need to build a simple model of this. Lu Yongchang's tone was urgent, and he said with some excitement, Although it may not necessarily solve the problem of curvature navigation, it can definitely solve many situations that we may encounter during curvature navigation. Chapter 643 The Tide of Time and Space Inside Earth, everything was quiet. Everyone was staring intently at the giant holographic projection at the front of the laboratory, Lu Yongchang's slightly scrawled handwriting was simultaneously projected on it. At the beginning of the deduction, almost all academicians followed Lu Yongchang's ideas. But as time went by, Lu Yongchang's handwriting gradually became sloppy, and the speed of deduction began to speed up significantly. Many unnecessary processes in Lu Yongchang's eyes have been omitted. As a result, more and more people are frowning in the laboratory, and the number of people with question marks on their faces is also growing rapidly. He Bailin frowned and struggled to follow Lu Yongchang's deduction ideas. He is one of the few academicians who can keep up with Lu Yongchang's out-of-the-box thinking. Academician he, do you understand? Beside him, an academician asked He Bailin in a low voice with a guilty look on his face. He Binlin did not respond to his question, but just made a quiet gesture. The academician who received no response was not only lifeless, but even had a look of envy and annoyance on his face. What he envied was naturally he Bilan's brain that could keep up with Professor Liu's ideas. What I am upset about is my stupid talent. I see. Looking at the latest line of formulas presented in the holographic projection, the confusion that gradually accumulated on he Bilan's face melted away in an instant like snow under the sun. Academician he, do you understand? The academician who had been waiting quietly beside he Bilan 
before saw He Bailin's look of realization and hurriedly asked again. He Bailin, who was immersed in Lu Yongchang's deduction process, trembled slightly. Apparently, he was startled by the sudden sound beside him. That's roughly the situation. Before He Bailin could speak, Lu Yongchang's voice came from the front. This is a preliminary space-time model that I established based on experimental data. Of course, it is only a rough model at the moment. It may still have many loopholes, which require a large amount of experimental data to fill in, Professor Lu said. Space-time model. He violently pointed to Lu Yongchang in front of him, shrugged and said. Simply put, this model explains the reason why the ball in Kuenping S laboratory was torn apart under the action of the fluctuating gravitational field. The undulating space-time is like a surging ocean wave. Some waves promote the movement of the ball, while other waves have the opposite effect. The two superimpose each other, causing a tidal effect in space and time. It was like a gravitational tide, tearing the ball apart. The academician who asked him the question nodded in understanding. Then can we avoid this tidal effect of space and time? He violent spread his hands and said, I don't know either. At present, the tidal effect of space-time is most likely the biggest threshold for us to master curvature navigation technology. More than just the tidal effect of space and time. Lu Yongchang heard He Bailin's words, frowned slightly and added, There is also the issue of the curvature of space and time. Based on this space-time model calculation, theoretically speaking, it is possible for objects to enter a curvature navigation state in a wave like space-time. But this requires extremely strong space-time curvature. A conservative estimate. As he spoke, he turned his head and glanced at the porthole in the distance. It's similar to the black hole outside. This, he Bilan's breath suffocated slightly, and he shook his head and retorted, Impossible. Absolutely impossible. This is simply not something that level 4 and level 5 civilizations can do. Whether it is the later civilization or the Bota civilization, we have not observed such a powerful gravitational field on their starships. Yes. Li Yongchan let out a long sigh. This only proves that our path is still wrong. In short, let's repeat the second experiment to improve this new space-time model as much as possible. It can save us a lot of trouble in our subsequent research. Kuenping Mobile Laboratory Under Zero's control Similar experiments have been carried out in the laboratory based on the space-time model proposed by Lu Yongchang. The gravitational field fluctuation frequency is adjusted accordingly to determine the impact of space-time with different fluctuation frequencies on objects. Unfortunately, so far, no small ball has left the vacuum experimental chamber intact. Lu Yongchog sat in the office, looking at the pieces of data provided by Zero, and shook his head helplessly. In the past few days, he once again tried to seek help from the technology tree. But, nothing was found. In his feeling, he was only a thin layer of window paper away from the truth. But this layer of window paper is extremely tough. No matter how hard he tries, he can't pierce it. This feeling of powerlessness made him feel extremely irritable and uneasy. Professor, the second batch of observation data has been received. Do you want to decompress it immediately? Zero's electronic synthesized sound suddenly sounded, breaking the quiet atmosphere in the office. Lu Yongchang was stunned for a moment, and his expression suddenly became excited. The reception is finally completed. Looking at the bright white text in the holographic projection, he even felt a little teary-eyed. Do you know how he has been living these past few years? Decompress. Decompress now. Tell Yi Binlan to come to the office to find me immediately. Li Yongchan gave the order in a strong tone. The next second, he reached out to untie the electromagnetic adsorption device, stood up and walked towards the office door. No. This is too slow. Ask Yi Binlan to wait for me in the laboratory. I'll be there right away. As he spoke, he waved to the robotic arm crawler robot standing in the corner of the office. Zero. Take me to the laboratory immediately. Quickly. Chapter 644 A Faint Dark Cloud Uh-huh. The laboratory door opened with a bang, attracting the attention of all the academicians in the laboratory. A slight buzzing sound came from the distance. Academicians are no stranger to such buzzing sounds it is the sound of robots' electromagnetic absorption tracks moving on the starship deck. But the pitch of the buzz this time was undoubtedly much higher than normal. This means extremely high driving speeds. Under normal circumstances, for the sake of personnel safety, the speed of the robot's movement in the starship is greatly restricted at least. It will not emit a buzzing sound with such an obvious Doppler effect. It's coming to the laboratory. This idea had just arisen in the minds of the academicians. 
and a robotic arm-type robot equipped with electromagnetic adsorption crawlers had already appeared at the entrance of the laboratory. Chirp. The sudden breaking brought a slightly sharp friction sound. All the academicians in the laboratory were stunned. They stared blankly at the scene at the entrance of the laboratory. And the expressions on their faces gradually became weird. This. Professor Liu? What the H? L. They have seen too many robotic arm-type robots. Not to mention small computers. Even large computers that can easily reach hundreds of meters high cannot arouse the shock of these academicians. They could see Li Yongchang every day. So it naturally didn't surprise them. But the combination of the two brought an unprecedented impact to this group of academicians in front of them. Lu Yongchang was standing on the back deck of the robotic arm robot and showed them a gentle smile. Zero. Let me down. Lu Yongchang gently patted the mechanical arm in front of him that temporarily acted as a seat belt and said softly. The next moment, under the eyes of everyone as if they had seen a ghost. The robotic arm slowly released its grip and helped Lu Yongchang off its back deck. Lu Yongchang walked into the laboratory clapped his hands in a relaxed manner, and let out a heartfelt sigh. I haven't noticed it before. I didn't expect this thing to be quite fast. It's much more convenient than walking. Academicians. Lu Yongchang didn't pay attention to the weird looks from the academicians, and turned around to look around. Why compare yourself to your neighbor? He randomly selected a lucky academician and asked him a question. He, academician, he hasn't come yet. Today is his day to rest. TSK. Lu Yongchang tooted slightly. His speed is too slow. Professor, has something big happened? The academician asked curiously. Big deal? Lu Yongchang chuckled. It can be considered a big deal. The second set of data from the black hole detector has been successfully transmitted. The moment the words fell, a slight discussion broke out in the laboratory. Really? In the distance, an academician's face turned slightly red, and he said excitedly, After waiting for so many years, I finally got this set of data. Professor, what do you think is the cause of these abnormal data? Lu Yongchang smiled and shook his head. I am not a god. I can't make accurate inferences before seeing the data. While the academicians were having a heated discussion, there was a burst of rapid footsteps coming from far and near outside the laboratory. A few seconds later, a panting He Bin Lin appeared in front of the laboratory door. Xiao He, your speed is too slow. Lu Yongchang said cheerfully. I'll recommend something to you. You can. Robotic arm type robot. Right. He violent interrupted Lu Yongchang with a strange expression without taking a breath. Professor. I just called you from behind. Did you not hear me? Lu Yongchang. Yes. Does this happen? Seemingly. When I was. Racing the robot. Did I actually hear a faint shout? Thinking of this. The smile on his face stiffened. Ahem. Lu Yongchang coughed hard. And regardless of everyone's weird looks. He changed the topic directly. Zero. Is the data decompression completed? Release all abnormal observation data. The moment the words fell, dense and complex data suddenly appeared in the huge holographic projection in front of the laboratory. Zero? Seeing the huge amount of data, Lu Yongchan couldn't help but be surprised and asked, Have you confirmed that it has been screened? The data screening work has been completed. The electronic synthesized voice followed. The amount of abnormal observation data is relatively large, accounting for about 10%. Lu Yongchang's expression suddenly became serious. With a proportion of 10%, this is already a quite large data sample. He stopped talking and looked directly at the holographic projection in front of him. More than an hour later, Lu Yongchang breathed a long sigh of relief. The huge data sample basically confirmed the vague guess in his mind. He turned to look at He Binan aside and happened to catch the gaze He Binan was looking at him. Professor, now we can basically determine the reasons behind these abnormal data. As he spoke, he took a deep breath, was silent for a while, and then said solemnly, Anti-graviton! Asterisk 2. Under the gaze of all the academicians, Li Yongchang and He Bailin said in unison. He Bailin was stunned and looked at Li Yongchang in surprise. Professor, have you thought of it too? Of course. Li Yongchang smiled at the corners of his eyes and nodded slightly. It is very similar to the graviton. And there are only a few parameters that are different. It's hard not to speculate in the direction of antigravitons. A magical universe. He violent sighed from the bottom of his heart after a moment of silence. When we first discovered the graviton, we all agreed that the antiparticle of the graviton should be itself. Like photons. Now this discovery completely overturns our previous understanding. This is also the reason why I didn't dare to make a judgment at the beginning. 
Lu Yongchang slowly shook his head and whispered, Don't speak too early. I still think that, under normal circumstances, the antiparticle of the graviton is itself. Otherwise, many phenomena in the universe will be difficult to explain. As for these abnormal data now, speaking of this, Lu Yongchang fell silent again. After a long time, he uttered a few words with great difficulty. Perhaps, this has something to do with the nature of black holes. He Bailin's eyes moved, and he quickly understood the meaning behind Li Yongchun's words. Professor, you mean, the existence of black holes causes gravitons to temporarily exhibit opposite characteristics? Li Yongchang nodded and shook his head. His eyes were a little confused. At this moment, he once again deeply felt his ignorance. I, I don't know. Maybe it's the influence of black holes. Or maybe it's other influences. Lu Yongchang moved his lips slightly and murmured in a low voice. On the eve of becoming a level 5 civilization, a faint dark cloud once again appeared in the sky of the human scientific world. Chapter 645 Create a Black Hole The atmosphere in the laboratory became solemn again. You said, the graviton in this state. Can it exhibit anti-gravity? After Lu Yongchang was silent for a long time, he whispered again. In other words, anti-quality. Boom. The moment he said these words, Lu Yongchang felt that the tough membrane in his mind that blocked inspiration had been pierced. The quantum state brain directly and spontaneously enters an overclocked state. In an instant, countless inspirations burst out from the quantum brain. Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed, and his voice gradually became louder. Under the influence of the gravitational field, space-time is concave. Then, if you let... Let's call it an antigraviton. If you let the antigraviton move, will it form an antigravity field? Under the action of the antigravity field, the originally flat space-time may become convex. In this way, the threshold for using wave-like space-time to induce curvature navigation may be greatly reduced. Hearing this, He Bilan's expression suddenly changed. After a brief thought, his breathing suddenly became rapid, and a flush of excitement appeared on his face. Yes, Professor. You are right. With the help of gravitational field and anti-gravitational field, we can create larger space-time waves with the same power, which will greatly reduce the threshold requirement for gravitational field strength. Suddenly, the excitement on Ebilan's face quickly dissipated, replaced by endless confusion and doubt. Only, how do we obtain antigravitons, and how do we create an anti-gravitational field? It is impossible for the black hole detector to escape from the gravitational pull of the black hole. He Bilan stood there blankly and said with a confused look. Currently, it is impossible for us to obtain antigravitons from near the black hole. It's not difficult. Lu Yongchang showed a hint of madness on his face. Although I don't know why gravitons show opposite properties, I am certain that it changes under the influence of black holes. In this case, then let's build a black hole. After leaving the laboratory, Lu Yongchang hurriedly climbed onto the robotic arm robot waiting at the door. Quick! Take me back to the office. After receiving the order, Zero carefully controlled the robotic arm to fix Lu Yongchang on the back deck of the robot. Then, accompanied by a sharp friction sound, the electromagnetic adsorption crawlers ran at high speed, taking Lu Yongchang quickly toward the office. Hiss! He Bin Lin, who had just walked out of the laboratory door, happened to see the scene. He took a breath of cold air, and there was a hint of emotion in his eyes. How do you feel about this thing? The effect is quite good? Zero, apply for a robotic arm robot for my office. Equipped with electromagnetic adsorption crawlers. Receive. Hearing Zero's electronically synthesized sound coming from the side, he Bilan nodded with satisfaction and walked out of the laboratory. Before Li Yongchan left the laboratory, he gave him a task. Without relevant experience, he needs to seek help from Fang Su, Chao Liankai and others. After returning to the office, Li Yongchan sat in his seat and closed his eyes in a hurry. He had a premonition. After breaking through this most critical node, the technology tree system can already provide him with corresponding help, compared with before. After the brain is quantized, the speed of entering the technology tree system is much faster. The colorful technology tree background appeared before his eyes again. Although he had seen it many times, he would frown every time he saw this mottled and seemingly chaotic background. He thought about it for a long time but he never understood the meaning of this model background. He shaked his head and focused his attention on the white technology tree suspended in the model background space. Curvature navigation technology. The half-dimmed and half-bright cursor hangs quietly on the top of the branches of the technology tree. 
LV Yongchang expertly focused his attention on the cursor, and then unlocked the constraints on the quantum state of the brain. The originally calm thoughts became turbulent again. As attention gradually focused, the tech tree system began to come into its own. The messy inspirations in my mind began to gradually dissipate, replaced by inspirations similar to precise push. Time passes bit by bit. A model of curvature navigation gradually took shape in his mind. After one day, inside, Earth, laboratory number one, Lu Yongchang stood in front of the academicians. Next to him was a blue holographic image. In the holographic image, there is a model constructed of crystal white lines. Looking at everyone's confused looks, Lu Yongchang slowly said, Everyone, this is a schematic diagram of the working principle of a warp engine. This sentence directly ignited the originally silent atmosphere of the laboratory. Based on the observation of abnormal gravitons, we can basically draw a conclusion. Under the influence of some unknown mechanism of black holes, gravitons exhibit opposite characteristics. Although there is currently no definite experimental evidence to support it, I believe that anti-gravity fields exist and space-time bulges can also be realized. And this is also the core working principle of this curvature engine. Lu Yongchang cleared his throat and started to explain again. With the help of the anti-gravity field, we can make the space-time behind the aircraft expand and bulge, while the space-time in front of the aircraft shrinks and dents. In this way, space-time will become waves that keep rolling forward, and the aircraft continues to move forward driven by this wave. Of course, in order to prevent the aircraft from being torn apart by the tides of space and time, we need to smooth out the waves of space and time around the aircraft as much as possible. In other words, under the action of the curvature engine, it is not the aircraft that moves, but the space-time where the aircraft is located, since the spacecraft itself is almost stationary relative to space and time. It can avoid the time deceleration effect of relativity theory while also allowing us to break through the speed limit of relativity theory. Achieve true faster than light travel. The moment the words fell, there was a burst of warm applause in the laboratory. Lu Yongchang raised his hand slightly and pressed the air. The applause gradually stopped and the laboratory became quiet again. As for the creation of anti-gravity fields, we first need to create a miniature black hole. As for how to make it, that's the main point I'm going to make. As he spoke, his right hand passed through the holographic projection beside him. The warp engine model quickly dissipated, replaced by several bright white Chinese characters. Ring Black Hole Super Large Particle Accelerator Chapter 646 New Accelerator Construction Plan His These big characters in the holographic projection caused a gasp. Almost every academician had a look of shock on their face. Lu Yongchang's voice sounded again. Theoretically, through the ring black hole particle accelerator, we can accelerate particles to a sufficient energy level. At the moment of collision, we can have a truly miniature black hole. Miniature black holes are extremely unstable and evaporate themselves due to Hawking radiation almost the moment they are born. Therefore, we need to use some solutions to stabilize this miniature black hole. Professor, after hesitating for a moment, an academician took a step forward and interrupted Lu Yongchang. I think the most important issue at the moment is not how to stabilize micro black holes. Huh? Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows. You tell me. A circumblack hole particle collider, how do we make it? The academician said hesitantly. Professor, this is different from the circumplanetary particle collider. It requires a lot of matter. Currently, the fleet does not have so many material reserves. In fact, our antimatter reserves no longer allow us to stay near the black hole for too long. No matter how you look at it, building a ring black hole particle collider is a huge project that is impossible to achieve for current human civilization. His words resonated with many people. It's normal and easy to understand. Up to now, the fleet has spent nearly 350 years in order to receive various data. The fleet's antimatter reserves only allow them to stay near the black hole for 500 years. In other words, the human fleet only has 150 years left at most. According to the conventional thinking, even if there are sufficient supplies, we want to build a ring black hole particle accelerator, conduct corresponding experiments, and develop a curvature engine on this basis. 150 years is not enough. Seeing the doubts on the faces of the academicians, Li Yongchang showed a gentle smile again. No, in a sense, we can even complete the construction of the ring black hole particle accelerator within a year. What? This is impossible. Professor, are you kidding me? The moment the words fell, the originally peaceful laboratory exploded. Almost everyone was loudly expressing their objections and doubts. One year to build a ring black hole particle accelerator? Even if it is zero, 
under today's computing power conditions. It cannot accomplish such a feat. Lu Yongchang chuckled, turned his head, and glanced at He Binan not far away. Let Akinabishan he answer your questions in this regard. He is solely responsible for the construction of the ring black hole particle accelerator. Lu Yongchang's steady and powerful voice suppressed the noisy questioning in the laboratory. Facing everyone's gaze, He Binan opened a holographic projection with a calm expression. A real-time model of a black hole appears in front of everyone. Looking at the black hole accretion disk that had almost dissipated and released only extremely weak light, the laboratory instantly became quiet. Everyone, we do not need to maintain traditional concepts when it comes to manufacturing very large particle accelerators. We all know that the sweeper civilization is using the power of civilization to build a cosmic particle accelerator. According to traditional concepts, a cosmic particle accelerator consumes an extremely large amount of matter. And even hollowing out the entire universe is not enough. Then how do sweepers achieve civilization? He Bilan's voice echoed in the laboratory. And the expressions on the faces of the academicians also changed slightly. So we need to think differently. He Bilan reached out and tapped lightly on the holographic projection beside him. Densely packed ship-based drones surrounded the black hole. Forming a huge ring. I eliminated the original closed tubular structure and directly exposed the particle accelerator to the vacuum of space. He Bilan had a faint smile on his face. Through a large number of ship-based drones, a large number of acceleration magnetic fields and deflection magnetic fields are constructed at key nodes. At the same time, we don't need to spend extra resources to maintain a high-purity vacuum in the particle acceleration chamber. What about the interference problem? An academician asked. Although the particles in the universe are very thin, they will still cause certain interference to the impact results. We can create a particle capture device to screen particles that meet the energy level, capture them, and then control them to collide. He Biden shrugged and said with a relaxed expression. Simply put, it's about dividing the particle accelerator into two parts. The collision area continues to use the original design plan. As for the acceleration area that consumes the most materials, it will be replaced by a ship-based drone. This will greatly reduce the material consumption and construction time of the particle accelerator. The construction plan quickly passed preliminary verification. At the same time, under Zero's control, the manufacturing and modification of particle capture devices and ship-based drones have begun. However, the construction of the collision area of the ring black hole particle accelerator has not been started yet. The reason is also very simple. Professor, if a micro black hole really appears, how should we stabilize it? He Bailin sat in Lu Yongcheng's office, frowning and said, it disappeared so fast that we had no time to take any remedial measures. Lu Yongchan didn't speak. He just buried his head and wrote something on the holographic projection in front of him. A string of bright white characters flashed quickly in the blue projection. With the help of Zero's computing power, the blinking speed of calculations and characters was completely beyond He Bailin's understanding. He could only vaguely make out that these equations and characters seemed to be related to the space-time model that had just been established not long ago but he had no way of knowing the specific relationship. He Bailin stared blankly at Lu Yongchang's movements and swallowed the question on his lips. Use gravity. Suddenly, Lu Yongchang's gentle voice broke the silence in the office. And the flashing speed of the characters in the holographic projection also slowed down a bit. The so-called black hole is nothing more than a celestial body that appears when the curvature of space and time reaches its limit. Micro black holes, because their own energy is too weak, are unable to maintain this level of space-time curvature while releasing radiation energy. Using the gravitational field generation device, the space-time in the collision area is dented in advance. In my calculations, this could briefly extend the life of a microscopic black hole. The gravitational field of moderate stellar strength can theoretically extend the life of a micro black hole to 0.01 seconds. Chapter 647 Methods to Stabilize Micro Black Holes Look! Lu Yongchang raised his hand and operated on the holographic projection again. Densely packed calculations flew across the projection. And soon the holographic interface reached the first step of the deduction. A flash of understanding flashed in He Bailin's eyes. Sure enough, just as he thought, this calculation process is based on the space-time model. Lu Yongchang patiently and slowly dragged the holographic image, explaining to He Bailin line by line. Perhaps it was because Lu Yongchang's thinking was too fast. Even with such a sentence byline explanation, He Bailin would be a little confused in his mind. But under Lu Yongchang's explanation, these faint doubts were quickly erased. More than an hour later, He Bailin sighed with relief and sighed from the bottom of his heart. Professor, thank you for being here. Lu Yongchang chuckled. 
waved his hand gently, and said in a low voice, What I did was just some small things. Without me, you would have found this method sooner or later. I digressed. Let's get back to the topic. Theoretically, under the influence of a strong gravitational field, the existence time of a micro black hole will be extended to 0.01 seconds. If we can achieve a breakthrough in gravitational field control technology, this time will be extended again. And in this short period of time, we need to release a large number of high-energy particles at the black hole. He Bilan nodded. Releasing high-energy particles against the black hole was within his expectations. A micro black hole of this magnitude can only swallow particle-sized objects. I suggest that once the black hole is successfully generated, we can use a large deflection magnetic field to blast all the particles captured by the particle capture device towards the micro black hole. As he Bilan spoke, he drew a simple sketch on the holographic projection. The speed of these high-energy particles is fast enough, and they can definitely enter the black hole within 0.01 seconds. And now, it's easy to implement in operation. Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction. I will do as you say. When the mass of the micro black hole increases slightly, we can feed it macroscopic matter. On the other side of the forsaken star, News only has a small part of his consciousness left. Meng Lu has completed the final communication with News. When the time comes, the forgotten star can be used as food for the micro black hole. Seeing Yi Bailin nodding, Lu Yongchang's expression gradually became serious. Remember? The mass of a micro black hole must not exceed this threshold. As he spoke, Lu Yongchan tapped his fingers heavily on the holographic projection. Once the threshold is exceeded, with our current technical level, it may cause an extremely serious out of control event. The black hole will escape our control and swallow the surrounding control equipment and starships. By then, whether the human fleet can continue to exist will become a question. A thin layer of cold sweat suddenly broke out on Ebilan's back. He swallowed hard and nodded vigorously. Don't worry. I will definitely control it. Lu Yongchan smiled relaxedly. Don't be too nervous. The work of raising the black hole is all done by zero. I believe it will not make such a stupid mistake. What you want to do is actually a second layer of insurance. Do you understand? Okay. He Bailin responded in a deep voice. Three years later. Earth calendar year 3270. The particle capture device and black hole stabilization device were completed at the same time, marking that the ring black hole particle accelerator has officially entered the experimental stage. It took a little longer than Li Yongchang said at the time to complete the construction of the ring black hole accelerator within one year. But this is also a speed that was unimaginable in the past. In these three years, Kuiping, one light year away, conducted countless gravitational field traction and space-time wave-making experiments at the same time, Material reserve ships and engineering ships were dispatched in batches to the location of Kuiping to transport necessary supplies to it. The originally rough space-time model has become an extremely mature model with the help of a large amount of data. Human civilization is moving towards the pinnacle of level 4 civilization at an extremely high speed. Inside, Earth, Laboratory Number 1, Lu Yongchang, who was standing in the command area, had a little excitement in his eyes. Today is destined to be recorded in the history of human civilization. The ring black hole particle accelerator will conduct its first operation today. If the experiment succeeds, human civilization will have an artificial black hole of its own. Whether in physics or in human history, this will be a colorful page. I announce that the ring black hole particle accelerator has started its first particle acceleration experiment. The ship-based drone begins calibration. Facing the gazes of all the academicians, Li Yongchang took a deep breath and issued the order in a deep voice. As the words fell, rows of data flashed quickly in the huge holographic projection in front. At the same time, around the black hole, a ship base drawn arranged in a hollow ring structure began to adjust its posture slightly with the help of the antimatter engine under the control of Zero. Drop. Calibration completed. Zero's electronic synthesized voice sounded. All ship based drones are located on the same plane and the error is less than 10 nanometers. Start the magnetic field generation unit. Lu Yongchan calmed down and said again, the magnetic field generation unit has been started, and the pulse magnetic field has been successfully generated. Start releasing experimental particles. Lu Yongchan raised his voice slightly. Start accelerating the experiment. Start the particle capture device and prepare to capture particles with energy levels up to standard. The electronic synthesized voice responded quickly. The particle capture device has been activated. 
and the particle screening mechanism is working normally. No particles that have reached the target have been detected yet. On the opposite shore of the fleet, that is, on the other side of the ring black hole accelerator, a huge concentric disc-shaped building quietly maintains its posture under the power of the antimatter engine. This is the particle capture device. According to the experimental plan, the experimental particles will make a continuously accelerating circular motion around the black hole under the action of the pulse magnetic field generated by the ship-based drone. When the acceleration is completed, these particles will be directed towards the disc-shaped particle capture device under the influence of the deflection magnetic field in order to eliminate interference from other particles in the universe. The particle capture device will perform a screening process on the incoming particles. Particles that reach the energy level will enter its internal channels. The pipeline is also equipped with a pulse magnetic field, which can perform final acceleration work on the experimental particles. Finally, when the number of experimental particles reaches the target, the particle capture device will open the gate, allowing these high-energy particles to enter the collision area, which is also the final black hole generation area. Chapter 648 1 minus 1 divided by 10 to the power of 40, speed of light. The collision area is the core component of the ring black hole particle accelerator. It has a standard spherical shape as a whole. Both ends of the sphere are connected to pipes carrying an accelerating magnetic field. And the pipes lead to the particle capture device in the distance. When the valve of the particle capture device is opened, countless high energy particles will rush to the sphere collision area along this pipe and collide in the center of the collision area. The sides of the sphere are also connected to pipes with accelerating magnetic fields. Compared with the two main pipes, the diameter of these auxiliary pipes is much smaller. Their function is simple. When a miniature black hole is generated, high-energy particles will spurt out from these secondary pipes and shoot towards the black hole located in the center of the collision area from all angles. The periphery of the collision area is wrapped by a larger spherical structure. This huge spherical structure is filled with a variety of instruments and equipment including many of the latest models of gravitational field generating devices. All devices have only one purpose to stabilize micro black holes. Following Liu Yongchang's order, a large number of particles set off from the People's Alliance fleet, passing through the pulse magnetic fields generated by the shipborne drones one after another, and began to accelerate continuously. In order to facilitate acquisition and acceleration, the experimental particles were selected as the most common and common electrons. 10% the speed of light. 50% the speed of light, 95% the speed of light, 99% the speed of light. The ring black hole particle accelerator has an extremely long acceleration pipeline. Therefore, even if the electron speed is very close to the speed of light, it still takes up to a year to complete the journey. In order to save resources, the pulse magnetic field of the ship-based drone is not turned on all the time. Instead, it follows the electron group and starts section by section. This not only saves the energy loss, when accelerating electrons, but also ensures that the high-energy electron group can be accelerated throughout the entire process. Since the fleet launched tens of thousands of batches of high-energy electrons before and after, the working mode of the entire accelerating pipeline is like a rapidly flashing neon light. 1 minus 1 divided by 10 to the power of 40, speed of light. Simply put, there are 49s after the decimal point. Theoretically, this is the speed that a group of high-energy electrons reaches after completing their acceleration. At this time, the kinetic energy carried by each electron has far exceeded 1J. So far, this is the highest speed that human civilization has accelerated microscopic particles to. And it is also the current technical limit of human civilization. According to the special theory of relativity, for every 9 after the decimal point, the energy carried by the particles will increase countless times. When there are 27 nines after the decimal point, the kinetic energy carried by a single electron will officially exceed 1J. When there are 69s after the decimal point, the kinetic energy carried by a single electron is close to the total amount of solar radiation received by the Earth every second. This is extremely exaggerated energy. It can be predicted that when this majestic kinetic energy is concentrated in such a small range of electrons and released, the energy fluctuations caused are extremely violent. One year later, there is still one hour left before the estimated acceleration completion time. At this time, the laboratory was already crowded with people. Almost all the awake academicians on Earth put down their research work and gathered in laboratory number one. Everyone hopes to witness this incredibly magical and magnificent scene with their own eyes. Lu Yongchang clenched his right hand and nervously looked up at the countdown on the holographic projection. Time passed slowly minute by minute. As the countdown numbers continued to decrease, the atmosphere in the laboratory gradually became more solemn. Zero. Reconfirm, 
The working status of the particle capture device. Liu Yongchang pursed his lips hard and said, This is the third check this hour. The particle capture device is in normal condition and has not yet captured the target particles. Like the previous two times, Zero's electronic synthesized voice still responded calmly. Drop! As soon as he finished speaking, as the countdown reached the last five minutes, the sharp sound of the buzzer came from the side. It is detected that the high-energy electron group has successfully entered the final accelerating magnetic field. The electronic synthesized voice sounded again. The attitude adjustment of the particle capture device has been completed and it can capture particles that meet the standard at any time. For Lu Yongchang. Or in other words, for all the academicians in the laboratory, these five minutes are as long as a year. They can suppress their breathing, lest their heavy breathing cross time and space and affect the high-energy electron groups that are flying through the universe in the far distance. Far away. In the microscopic world invisible to the naked eye, a group of electrons are speeding toward their destination under the influence of a pulse magnetic field. Compared with a year ago, their numbers have dropped by 90%. There are many reasons for attrition. Most of the reasons are collisions with loose free particles in the universe. It is no exaggeration to say that these electrons have gone through all kinds of obstacles to reach this position. With the help of the deflection magnetic field, their flight attitude continues to make subtle adjustments. Finally, they cross the last extremely subtle arc. The simultaneous disappearance of the deflection magnetic field and the acceleration magnetic field means that they have embarked on the final journey of the acceleration phase. This is a straight stretch of road constructed of solid pipes. The straight path was not long. And soon they felt the presence of the deflection magnetic field again. This is the screen device of the particle capture device. In this deflection magnetic field, many high energy particles traveling with them, but whose speed has not yet reached the standard, crossed a beautiful arc and collided with the solid tube wall of the screening device. Only they, who had completely accepted the particles for one year of acceleration, successfully passed this screening device. The particle trap successfully detected high energy electrons. A slightly stiff electronic synthesized voice sounded in the laboratory. The screening has been completed and all particles meet the standards. High energy electrons have successfully entered the buffer region. Estimated arrival time of the second batch of high energy electrons, 30, 29, 28. Boom! The silent laboratory suddenly boiled. The successful arrival of the first batch of high energy electrons means that the entire experiment is already half successful. This is the only example of a particle accelerator with such a huge span in the history of mankind. In the absence of a physical acceleration pipeline, the accuracy requirements of this particle accelerator have reached an outrageous level. Therefore, even Lu Yongchan could not guarantee that the experiment would be successful before the experiment started. Hard work pays off. Zero's precise control, coupled with the efforts of all scientific researchers, brought this accelerated experiment to a semi-satisfactory conclusion. Chapter 649 Artificial Micro Black Hole the second batch of high-energy electrons has successfully arrived. The third batch. The fourth batch. Every 30 seconds, an exciting announcement sounded from the laboratory loudspeaker. The number of particles in the buffer area of the particle capture device also increased rapidly. Under the control of the magnetic field, these particles continue to make circular motions in the closed pipe. Drop! The number of particles has reached the target. The moment he heard the notification sound, Lu Yongchan became excited. This experiment which has lasted for a year, has finally entered its final stage. Open the floodgates! The deflection magnetic field is activated to guide high-energy particles into the main pipe of the collision area. When particles collide, open the auxiliary pipe simultaneously. Lu Yongchang issued orders one after another in a hurried tone. Start the gravitational field generating device immediately and increase the intensity of the gravitational field to the highest level, the other side of the black hole. The moment the order was issued, Countless high-energy reactions began to occur in the huge spherical structure connected to countless pipes. The huge energy brought by the annihilation of matter and antimatter entered the gravitational field generating device along the cable. A gravitational field suddenly appears near the black hole. It grew rapidly and soon reached the intensity of a medium star. At this moment, a large arc appeared in the space-time within the collision area. On the periphery of this spherical structure, the antimatter engines have also entered full power operation they need to resist the gravitational pull from the black hole. These are macro-level changes. In comparison, the changes at the micro-level are more dramatic and magnificent. The moment the buffer zone gate opened, countless high-energy electrons rushed toward the collision zone along the two opposite main pipelines under the dual influence of the magnetic field and the gravitational field. In the blink of an eye, 
two high-energy electrons crossed the not-so-long pipe, and under the influence of magnetism and gravity, they collided in the concave area of space-time. A collision has occurred. High-energy level reaction detected. The secondary pipeline has been successfully opened and high-energy particles have been successfully launched. Along with the sirens one after another, Zero's electronic synthesized voice quickly announced the current experimental progress. Lu Yongchang subconsciously held his breath. In his calculations, even if the gravitational field generation device is improved to the greatest extent, the existence time of the micro black hole will only be 0.015 seconds. All, stable, operations must be completed within 0.015 seconds. This is an extremely harsh condition. Lu Yongchan does not have much confidence in this experiment. In other words, in fact, he was prepared to fail a year ago. But even so, at this time, his heartbeat became violent. Bang! 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 He stared at the holographic projection in front of him with a dry mouth. And his eardrums were filled with the sound of his heart beating violently. One second. Two seconds. Looking at the stream of high-energy electrons continuously emitted from the auxiliary pipe in the holographic projection. Lu Yongchang swallowed slightly. Sure! Was it successful? His voice was extremely hard. Hawking radiation has been detected. After a moment of silence, Zero's electronic synthesized voice sounded in the laboratory. The formation of a micro black hole has been confirmed. Getting ready to start dropping macro stuff. Hydrogen is being released. Alert! Hawking radiation has been detected and continues to increase. Alert! Change in gravitational field strength detected. The alarm sounded by Zero did not cause much panic to everyone. On the contrary, these alarms brought endless ecstasy to the academicians. Bang! Lu Yongchang, who was standing at the front, felt his heart beating extremely hard in his chest. A large amount of blood poured into every part of the body along the blood vessels, giving him an unreal feeling. Success! It's a success! It's a success! His hands were trembling slightly, and he was holding on to the experimental table beside him to support his already somewhat unsteady body. Professor! Professor! He violence hoarse shouts came from beside him. Then, a warm and strong hand supported his body. Professor, we really succeeded. Black hole. This is really a black hole. Lu Yongchang ignored He Bailin's shouts. He gently broke away from He Bailin's support and walked forward slowly, staring blankly at the real-time image from the collision area in the holographic projection. Black hole. We really created a black hole. Under the illumination of light, the central area of the image is deep and extremely dark. Very small. Only the size of a melon seed. But it is the most extreme celestial body in the universe. Possessing power that daunts countless civilizations. Surrounding this small black hole is an accretion disc-like material. They are clumps of hydrogen gas mixed with large amounts of colored dust. Under the gravitational pull of the black hole, they form long spiral arms. Gorgeous. Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the beautiful scene in the projection and murmured to himself. Just like the Milky Way. With the continuous input of macroscopic matter, the originally tiny and fragile black hole has become stable while growing up. To ensure the safety of the fleet, Zero has slowed down the feeding frequency. At present, it only needs to ensure that the black hole does not shrink due to Hawking radiation and various radiations. The research and development of the curvature engine has thus entered the second stage. With engineering ships and robots working day and night, a mobile laboratory wrapped around a black hole was built. The laboratory is still a hollow spherical structure under the influence of the gravitational field. This miniature black hole is firmly bound in the center of the laboratory. Surrounding the black hole is an open area with a diameter of 50 meters. This is the gravitational range of this tiny black hole. Attention all units! Within Earth, Lu Yongchang's voice came again. Prepare to release detection equipment. Roger! He Bailin's voice came from the side. Get ready to release the number one detection arm. After the words fell, a mechanical arm came from deep inside the wall of the hollow sphere, carrying detection equipment, and slowly stretched towards the black hole in the center. 40 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters. As the distance between the robotic arm and the black hole gets closer and closer, the gravitational force it experiences begins to gradually increase. But this strong gravitational force is nothing to the robotic arm. At least, it is safe as long as it does not come within one meter of the black hole. When the numbers in the holographic projection shrunk to 10 meters, a piercing alarm sounded in the laboratory. Professor! He Biling quickly checked the corresponding data and shouted excitedly. The detection equipment has detected that gravitons show opposite characteristics. Li Yongchang quickly confirmed. 
Then, he breathed a long sigh of relief. Really, his guess was not wrong. Under the influence of a black hole, gravitons will exhibit opposite characteristics. Get ready to capture these antigravitons. Chapter 650 The Disappearing Ball Another robotic arm slowly stretched out. Under Zero's control, it cautiously approached the miniature black hole. The modified graviton capture device then began to operate. Although these gravitons show opposite characteristics under certain effects of black holes, their essence is still gravitons. Therefore, they can be easily captured with only a few modifications to the original graviton confinement and capture devices. Capture successful. A slightly stiff electronic synthesized sound sounded in the laboratory. And the smile on Liu Yongcheng's face became a little stronger again. Transfer the anti-gravitons and allow for further examination and observation. He issued the order in a deep voice. With the help of previous experience in graviton research. The research on anti-gravitons has been carried out extremely smoothly. As L.B. Yongchang predicted. The movement of anti-gravitons can form an anti-gravitational field that is opposite to the gravitational field. In other words. It is possible to make flat space-time convex. After learning the news. Liu Yongchang was so excited that he once again started the research and development of the curvature engine that had been stagnant for a long time. Of course, in addition to excitement and excitement, further research on micro black holes has also brought new doubts to the Academy of Sciences. The Academy of Sciences conducted an annihilation experiment on these antigravitons. To put it simply, it is to put normal gravitons and these gravitons with opposite characteristics together to see whether the two will produce an annihilation reaction. Unfortunately, the annihilation experiment failed. Consistent with Liu Yongcheng's guess, these two gravitons with different characteristics did not annihilate each other after contact. From this point, it can be seen that the so-called antigravitons are just gravitons showing opposite characteristics under some unknown principle. Liu Yongcheng, whose guess was verified, did not show much happiness. The reason is because another puzzling phenomenon was discovered. Under the latest observation methods, these antigravitons showing opposite characteristics cannot maintain their properties for a long time. After a period of time, they will gradually return to normal gravitons. Like, the three-dimensional universe has the same assimilation effect on two-dimensional matter. As soon as he discovered this phenomenon, a flash of inspiration flashed in Liu Yongchang's mind. But doubts arise. According to what the painting said at the time, a long time ago, probably at the beginning of the birth of the universe, all dimensions in the universe were exposed. Ten dimensions of space, plus one dimension of time, form a ten plus one dimensional universe of space and time. However, ten plus one dimensional space time does not seem to be stable. With the passage of time, or for other reasons, the ten plus one dimensional space time gradually fell, all the way down to the current three plus one dimensional space time. The high dimensional space continues to curl up in the falling space and enters the microscopic world. At the same time, due to its strong stability, three-dimensional space has a strong assimilation effect on other dimensions. In other words, the so-called assimilation effect often means that this substance has existed before. Did antigravitons exist in the previous universe? Liu Yongchan looked at the test data in front of him and murmured to himself. He violent opened his mouth with confusion on his face, but did not say a word. No one can answer Liu Yongchan's question. In desperation, Liu Yongchan sighed, shook his head, and suppressed this question in his heart. Continue research on the warp engine. He did not turn his head, but silently stared at the miniature black hole image in the holographic projection and whispered to Yi Binan, Earth calendar year 3275. In the vast universe a light year away from the human fleet. Under Zero's control, an engineering robot quickly tightened the last screw. The next second, it drove the simple propeller behind it and flew towards the engineering ship not far away. At the same time, a small transport ship that had traveled a long distance and traveled a long way successfully arrived at its destination. After the transformation, the Kuimping Mobile Laboratory will restart curvature experiments. Professor, Kuimping is ready. Electronic synthesized sound sounded in laboratory number one. Start experimenting. The moment he heard the report, Liu Yongchan looked solemn and spoke directly. Start the gravitational field generating device and the anti-gravity field generating device at the same time. Same as the first experiment, a small ball was sent into the high-purity vacuum experimental chamber. But the difference from the previous experiment is that with the injection of energy, two completely different gravitational fields were generated before and after the ball. In the huge holographic projection in front of Li Yongchang, 
the curvature of space and time in the experimental cabin is clearly displayed. Looking at the two curvature values that were changing simultaneously, but completely opposite to each other, Lu Yongchang became nervous. Through the holographic model provided by Zero, we can intuitively see that not far in front and behind the suspended ball, the flat spacetime is constantly distorting. In front of the ball, the flat spacetime is constantly concave, while behind the ball, the flat spacetime is constantly convex. In this way, there is a huge difference between the two, as the intensity of the gravitational field and the anti-gravity field continues to increase. The degree of distortion of spacetime gradually increases, and the small ball that originally stayed in place begins to gradually move forward. Subsequently, the gravitational field and the anti-gravitational field began to fluctuate slightly according to the preset program. The calm space and time, at this moment, set off huge waves like a furious sea. Bang! As a loud noise came, the picture in the holographic image shook violently. Lu Yongchang, who was concentrating on the relevant data, also trembled violently. Obviously, he was also shocked by this sudden change. Alarm! Alarm! Experimental anomaly! Experimental anomaly! The gravitational field generating device has been successfully shut down and troubleshooting has begun. Cold electronics and sounds echoed in the laboratory. The picture in the holographic projection also gradually stabilized. Looking at the scene on the screen, Lu Yongchang's expression suddenly changed a bit. The small ball in the center of the experimental cabin disappeared. Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed with a hint of hesitant joy. Okay. Successful? The ball disappeared. In Lu Yongchang's view, there seemed to be only one possibility. That means the curvature experiment was successful. Under the action of two opposite gravitational fields at the front and back, the distorted space-time directly drives the ball into a curvature navigation state. Zero. Find the ball immediately. Since the curvature navigation experiment is being carried out, the entire experimental chamber has a large range. It was definitely impossible to find the ball quickly with the naked eye. So Lu Yongchan directly issued an order to Ling. After a short wait, the electronic synthesizer sounded. Professor, no experimental target was found in the experimental cabin. What? Before Li Yongchan could speak, Fang Su's surprise cry came from the side. No experimental target found? Is the experimental cabin damaged? Li Yongchan's expression moved slightly. He understood the meaning of Fang Su's question. The small ball that entered the curvature voyage may have directly collapsed the bulkhead of the experimental cabin and flew out of the Kuimping Mobile Laboratory. After all, this experimental chamber is still too narrow for objects moving at super light speeds. But Zero's response left Lu Yongchang and the academicians confused. Everything in the experimental cabin is in normal condition and no damage has been found. Chapter 651 Curvature Bubble Then, where did the ball go? He Bilan's confused voice came from behind. Lu Yongchang also frowned. Yes. Where did the ball go? Zero. Slow down the experimental process. Lu Yongchang directly ordered. The holographic projection screen changes accordingly. At a million times slow down speed, the ball, slowly, moves forward. This is the result of the combined action of two opposing gravitational fields. When the strength of the two gravitational fields successfully increased to medium stellar strength, the small ball suddenly disappeared from the screen. Then, there was a violent shaking in the slow motion camera. Play again and increase the slow playback speed to 10 million times. Lu Yongchan said with an extremely serious expression. 10 million times. 20 million times. 100 million times. No matter how Lu Yongchang increased the slow playback speed, the high-speed camera did not capture the disappearance of the ball. Warp navigation. High-speed cameras cannot obtain the trajectory of superlight objects. Lu Yongchang took a long breath and said with relief, Therefore, it is basically certain that the experimental object will directly enter the moment when the gravitational field intensity reaches the medium stellar intensity. The curvature navigation state has been reached. But, where's the ball? He Bilan asked in a low voice. Even if it enters the curvature navigation state, it shouldn't disappear. Lu Yongchang's eyes moved. He recalled the anomalies that occurred during the first experiment. Zero. Are there any debris from the broken ball found in the experimental cabin? No ball fragments have been found. Zero responded quickly. Second screening is in progress. Correction. Unknown powdery object found. Discovery area. Near the experimental bulkhead. Substance type inspection is in progress. Electronic synthesized sounds, accompanied by sirens, sounded one after another in the laboratory. Powder? Or was it found near the experimental bulkhead? 
Lu Yongchang stared at the holographic projection blankly. And an incredible guess came to his mind. Driven by the super strong spacetime waves caused by two opposite gravitational fields. The spacetime where the ball is located is advancing rapidly. The little ball is the passenger who takes the hitchhiker. It followed the moving spacetime and successfully entered the curvature navigation state. But at that moment, the extremely powerful spacetime tidal effect directly tore it apart. Compared with the last experiment, the spacetime tidal effect this time was much greater, it was directly shattered. But the warp voyage has begun. The moving time and space carries the powder formed by the small ball and rushes straight forward. The next moment, they rushed out of the range of the gravitational field. The waves of space and time gradually subsided, and they broke away from the curvature navigation state. The small ball powder also slowly fell near the experimental bulkhead. The test is complete. The material composition is the same as the experimental ball. Ling's report undoubtedly confirmed the guess in Lu Yongcheng's mind. He directly raised his hand and pulled several data out of the holographic projection. After some simple calculations, he looked at the calculation results in front of him and took a deep breath. 1.01 times the speed of light. Fellow academicians, we have exceeded the speed of light. We made it. The words fell. After a few seconds of silence, the laboratory suddenly boiled. After a brief celebration, the laboratory returned to its original atmosphere of intense research. Everyone knows that they are still far away from real success. Although they successfully found the switch to warp navigation, that doesn't mean they have mastered warp navigation. The reason is simple. Professor, the calculation results are out. The moment it entered the curvature navigation state, the experimental ball was subjected to unimaginable space-time tides. He violent raised his hand, slid a few times on the holographic projection, and called up a piece of data. Two opposite curvatures of space and time produced an extremely complex reaction at the intersection. Part of the space-time curvatures cancel each other out, and part of the space-time curvatures superimpose each other. This causes the experimental ball to be subjected to an unprecedented space-time tidal effect. He swallowed lightly. As of now, no material in human civilization can withstand such a space-time tidal force effect. Although he had expected it, Liu Yongchang's heart suddenly sank when he heard these words. In other words, Today's curvature navigation technology is a proper one-way ticket. It's not even a one-way ticket. It's more like stuffing a person or object into a gun barrel and then firing it out. We need to smooth out the complex distortions in space and time around the aircraft. Liu Yongchan looked at the curvature model in the holographic projection and muttered to himself. As he spoke, he stretched out his hand to sketch and calculate something in the curvature model. With the real-time calculation provided by Zero. A brand new curvature model was quickly presented to Liu Yongchang. Professor, this is... Looking at the bubble-like object that appeared in the curvature model with narrow ends and a fat middle. He Bailin couldn't help but ask Liu Yongchang a question. With real-time computing and control, we can impose a changing gravitational field on the space-time around the aircraft. Thus, the distorted space-time around the aircraft is smoothed. According to the model calculations, this would be a bubble-shaped gravitational field similar to a rugby ball. We can call it warp bubble. Once you enter the curvature navigation state, only the inside of the curvature bubble is the safe zone. He Bailin nodded as if he understood. Professor, I understand what you mean. But, can such calculation work really be completed? Li Yongchan smiled gently. This is my job. With the current space-time model and curvature model, I believe that we can definitely get a model that can accurately calculate the curvature of space-time. He stood up from his seat and looked back thoughtfully at the rough model he had just completed. Perhaps this curvature bubble is the predecessor of the gravity shield. After saying that, he turned around and walked out of the laboratory, leaving behind a few words. Continue the experiment and send all data to my personal terminal. Chapter 652, Curvature Number 1 Earth Lu Yongchang's office door is closed. As usual, Lu Yongchang locked himself in the office again. He needs to integrate the space-time model and the curvature model he has established, and use this to find the law of the interaction of space-time waves in the curvature navigation state. As long as we find the rules for the generation of space-time waves and solve the equations about space-time waves, then human civilization can be said to have mastered curvature navigation technology accurate prediction and calculation of space-time waves can help mankind smooth the surface of the ocean in space and time. Wave. Obviously, this job is not easy. It can even be described as an exaggeration. Not only human civilization, but many level 4 civilizations in the universe are stuck at this step. The space-time wave equation and the grand unified theory 
are the two biggest thresholds between the fourth level civilization and the fifth level civilization in the universe. At this time, although Lu Yongchang, with his quantum brain, has a thinking ability that far exceeds that of ordinary individuals in a fourth level civilization, due to his own civilization level, or in other words, due to his own knowledge, it is difficult to hit the nail on the head. This is the first threshold to enter the fifth level civilization. Even he needs to constantly consider and try. Of course, more support is needed from a large amount of experimental data. It is for this reason that in the Kuimping Mobile Laboratory a light year away, the antimatter engine continues to output majestic energy at full power, and explosions are heard all the time in the vacuum experimental cabin. That was the moment when the experimental subject entered the curvature navigation state, because the material could not withstand the tidal effect of space and time and thus shattered the sound produced. Every experiment will generate a large amount of data. These data were continuously transmitted to Lu Yongcheng's office and presented one by one in front of Lu Yongcheng. Lu Yongcheng's office was therefore covered in layers of stacked holographic projections. In the ocean of blue data, he was like an insignificant dust, quietly huddled in a corner and performing his own calculations. Time passes bit by bit in front of him. As a more complete space-time model gradually became clear, a set of equations related to the development of human civilization gradually emerged. Three months flew by. The closed office door finally slowly opened again. At the door, Fong Su's face was filled with excitement and expectation. Through the slowly opening gap in the door, he vaguely saw the layered and densely packed Azure holographic projections inside the room. On each holographic projection, there are bright white data and formulas that look like a heavenly book. As the gap in the door gradually opened, these blue holographic projections gradually turned into light particles and dissipated in the air. When the door was completely opened, only a huge holographic image remained in the slightly dim office. On the projection, an intoxicating picture appears. Space-time, under the action of the gravitational field, sets off waves of rhythmic waves just like the wind blowing across the sea. Fong Su stared blankly at the waves in the holographic projection. In his opinion, at this moment, the waves of time and space in the holographic projection seem to be much more alive and no longer as rigid as before. At the same time, there is an indescribable sense of beauty in the rhythm of time and space. His eyes slowly moved to the other side, where there were densely packed formulas and equations. Under the control of zero, these equations also follow the slight rhythm of space and time. Before he could take a closer look, a figure walked out from the depths of the room, attracting his attention, but also blocking part of his line of sight. The figure gradually became clearer. Unkempt hair. Withered face. But none of these can cover up the bright and blazing light in his eyes. Fong Su swallowed lightly and asked in a hoarse voice. Teach. Professor. Sure. Was it successful? Facing Fong Su's inquiry, Lu Yongchang slowly stopped his staggering steps, twitched the corners of his mouth, and showed a bright smile. Certainly. He responded softly. One year later, the first warp engine prototype was successfully manufactured. Considering that the power of the prototype was still small, it was installed on a small starship modified based on the Zuin fighter. Curvature number one. This is the code name of this small starship. For safety reasons, the test flight location of Warp 1 is also not next to the fleet. Relying on its antimatter engine, it, slowly, arrived at an open area 0.1 light years away from the fleet. Originally, according to Fong Su's idea, the test site of Curvature 1 had to be placed at least one light year away. But Lu Yongchang believes that 0.1 light years is safe enough. Of course, the main reason is that it takes too long to send Warp 1 one light year away. After the curvature engine prototype was successfully produced, Lu Yongchang didn't want to wait for a moment. Finally, after thinking about it for countless days and nights, the real curvature navigation experiment is about to begin. In the laboratory, Professor, according to the experimental plan, Warp 1, which carries mice, gorillas and other experimental animals, will conduct a 10-minute warp voyage, he Bailin reported to Lu Yongchan meticulously. During this period, the starship's sailing speed will reach 1.1 times the speed of light. On the preset route, the Academy of Sciences has deployed a total of 30 detection starships to conduct all-round exploration of the navigation process. Do you have anything else to add? 1.1 times the speed of light. This is also the ultimate level that the first-generation curvature engine can achieve. Of course, after increasing the power of the curvature engine, the sailing speed will also increase. However, the higher the sailing speed, 
the higher the requirements for the curvature of space and time. At the same time, the waves of space and time will become more and more difficult to control. After rigorous calculations, Lu Yongchan came to a conclusion. According to the current energy level that humans can control, the maximum speed that a curvature spacecraft can reach should be about 10 times the speed of light. In other words, 10 times the speed of light should be the ceiling of a fourth level civilization. Since the paths and directions of the development of civilizations in the universe are quite different, the technology tree of each civilization will also be quite different. Different civilizations also have great differences in their mastery of curvature engines, and the sailing speeds of starships vary even more. Therefore, based on the calculation results, Lu Yongchan divided a simple grade for curvature navigation. The basis for division is naturally the degree of control over energy. At first level curvature, the starship sails at a speed between 1c and 10c, which is the level at which human civilization is now. c refers to the speed of light, and 10c is 10 times the speed of light. Secondary curvature, 10c 100c. Level 3 curvature, 100c 1000c. Level 4 curvature, 1000c 10000c and so on. According to his guess, the sweeper civilization and pastoral civilization have a high probability of mastering level 4 curvature technology. Or even the more advanced level 5 curvature. Professor? He Bilan's voice interrupted his thoughts. He came back to his senses, and after pondering for a moment, a look of satisfaction appeared on his face. The plan is very good. Just follow the plan you said. Okay. He Bilan nodded excitedly. Chapter 653 Warp Communication 1.0 Program The moment the order was given, the experiment officially began. Under Zero's control, the antimatter engine inside, Warp 1, began working at full power. The gravitational field generating device is ready. The anti-gravity field generating device is ready. The curvature bubble begins to generate. Announcements sounded one after another in the laboratory. At the same time, the peaceful space and time gradually became ferocious. But at the core of the storm, there is calm. A small, constantly fluctuating gravitational field smooths out all the wrinkles in space and time, creating a small piece of peaceful paradise. And warp speed one is located right in the middle of this paradise. Prepare to enter warp sail. Countdown five, four, three. Looking at the rapidly flashing data in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchan clenched his fists slightly and subconsciously held his breath. As the countdown ended, Warp 1 also disappeared from everyone's sight. The sound in the laboratory became more and more noisy, and almost every academician became busy. Quick! Lu Yongchan shouted loudly and urgently. Zero! Confirm the working status of the quantum communication device. The moment Warp 1 enters the curvature state, it means that ordinary electromagnetic wave communication has failed and has left electromagnetic waves behind. According to the situation that occurred near the black hole, the quantum overdistance communication device will also experience quantum decoherence under the influence of a strong gravitational field. If the long-distance communication device also completely fails, that means that every time the human fleet enters curvature navigation, the quantum ultra-distance communication module will be damaged in all directions. Thinking of this situation, Lu Yongchang's face suddenly turned ugly. Current entangled state quantum loss rate, 1.72%. The communication connection status is normal. Information loss rate, 1.72%. Warp 1 has successfully entered the warp navigation state. And the current navigation speed is 1.1c. The moment the electronic synthesized sound sounded, Lu Yongchang breathed a sigh of relief. As the event form theory says, under the influence of gravity, there will be a probabilistic loss of quantum entangled pairs. During the detection of micro black holes, Lu Yongchang discovered that the probability of loss of quantum entanglement pairs is directly related to the strength of gravity. When the gravitational intensity exceeds a threshold, that is, when the curvature of space-time reaches the threshold, there is a probability that entangled quanta will decohere. The greater the intensity of gravity, the higher the curvature of space-time, and the greater the probability of decoherence. Therefore, after rigorous calculations, Lu Yongchang had a guess. When the curvature navigation speed is below 10c, the quantum communication device will not completely lose its function. This means that at present, Human civilization can still use quantum long-distance communication to communicate. However, the probabilistic loss of entangled state quanta means that the transmitted information will also suffer probabilistic loss. But this can be made up for by regularly shuffling the order of information and transmitting information at high frequencies. 
humans may be able to avoid the loss of information during transmission. To put it simply, it means to arrange and combine sentences through a specific algorithm and then send out all these combinations. During this process, information will be probabilistically missing. After the receiving end receives the information, it restores the information through an algorithm. By comparing each piece of missing information, complete information is obtained. The second purpose of the curvature number one experiment is to verify the feasibility of this plan. Report. The number one exploration starship has detected curvature fluctuations. An academician reported excitedly. The curvature state of space and time is normal. Okay. 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 Liu Yongchang said repeatedly with a red face. Zero. Start the curvature communication 1.0 program and check the integrity of the transmitted information again. After a short wait, warp communication 1.0 has been successfully launched. The communication connection status is normal. Current information loss rate, 0%. Before Li Yongchan could speak, extremely warm applause came from behind him. 11 light extra. Minute of light. The distance light travels in one minute. The last detection starship stayed quietly at the end of the runway. It needs to collect relevant data when curvature 1 exits the curvature state. Time flies. 10 minutes are almost up. Professor. The exploration starship number 30 has detected fluctuations in the curvature of space and time. He Bilan's excited voice came from the side. The experiment was successful. We successfully mastered the warp navigation technology. Wait a minute. Liu Yongchang took a deep breath and suppressed the excitement in his heart. It's not too late to celebrate when warp 1 safely exits the warp state. In the distance, announcement sounded again. The gravitational field is starting to weaken. The curvature bubble is working fine. Prepare to exit the warp state. Countdown, 10, 9, 8. The bright red countdown beat up and down in the giant holographic projection, affecting the heartbeats of all the academicians present. The moment the countdown reached zero, an announcement sounded at the same time. Warp 1 has successfully escaped from the warp state. Everything on the ship is in normal condition. Before the academicians even had a smile on their faces, the piercing sirens filled the entire laboratory. The Azure holographic projection instantly turned into blood red. Warn! The signal of the 30th exploration starship was lost. Re-establishing connection. Connection re-establishment failed. Correction. The number 30 exploration starship has not been observed yet. Repeat. Number 30 exploration starship not observed. Suspected of being under unknown attack. The fleet has entered level 1 alert. With the blood red warning light flashing continuously. Extremely rapid electronic synthesis sounds echoed in Earth. At the same time, while sailing around the Earth, the silent, golden crow began to act under Zero's control. Countless cannon muzzles began to slowly change direction, pointing at the test site 0.1 light years away. Chapter 654 Advanced Civilization? Anomalies? Everything is completed in just tens of seconds. It only took less than a minute. Under Zero's control, the People's Alliance fleet completed the transition from semi dormant state to first level alert state. Even most academicians in the laboratory have not yet shaken off the joy of successful curvature experiments. What is this called? We are in the laboratory. And you tell me that an alien civilization has invaded? Zero. What's going on? Liu Yongchang's face changed drastically, and he asked loudly. Why did you order the fleet to enter the first level alert state without authorization? Professor. The observation starship number 30 has been confirmed to have lost contact. A slightly stiff electronic synthesized voice responded. Based on the information currently returned by various detectors, it is basically certain that the observation starship number 30 has been attacked by an unknown attack. Liu Yongchang asked hurriedly. Where is the source of the attack? Unknown. Attack method? Unknown. Liu Yongchang clenched his fists hard. This series of unknowns made him feel powerless from the bottom of his heart again. Is it another move by higher civilizations? Humanity's experience over the past few hundred years reminded him of this direction for the first time. Not only him, but almost all the academicians present looked ugly. Zero. Show the scene of the number 30 detection starship being attacked. Li Yongchan gave the order in a heavy tone. As the words fell, the picture in the holographic projection changed instantly. When the countdown ended, Warp 1 successfully escaped from the curvature state and appeared in the center of the camera. In the far corner of the screen, half of the number 30 exploration starship is shown. One second. Two seconds. When the time came to the third second, the surface of the number 30 exploration starship suddenly emitted a burst of extremely dazzling white light, as if it had been attacked by something. 
The white light quickly dimmed. But the number 30 exploration starship disappeared from the screen. The playback screen ends here. This strange scene shocked everyone in the laboratory. He Bailin, who was standing next to Lu Yong Chong, looked extremely solemn. He turned his head and whispered, Professor, do you think he is a sweeper or a pastoralist? Lu Yong Chong didn't speak. He had a straight face and stared at the holographic projection in front of him. Judging from the information currently available to the Academy of Sciences, the strength of a civilization that can quietly wipe out a small starship under the surveillance of countless detectors is probably not much different from painting. Such a powerful advanced civilization, at least in human perception, should belong to one of the two factions, the sweepers or the pastoralists. Time passes bit by bit. In the holographic projection, Curvature 1 stayed quietly in the empty and silent interstellar space. Inside, Warp 1, mice, gorillas, and a number of experimental animals are all living peacefully in their own spaces as usual. They don't know that they are currently the only creatures in the entire human history that can exceed the speed of light. Of course, even if they knew, they wouldn't have much feelings about this historic moment. Drop! With a crisp sound, Zero began feeding food to the experimental creatures according to the preset program. The interior of Curvature 1 gradually became lively. It looks like, at least, our curvature experiment was successful. Warp 1 successfully entered and safely exited the warp voyage. During this period, living organisms were not significantly damaged or affected. The quantum communication compensation scheme has also been verified. Lu Yongchan looked at the lively experimental animals and murmured in a low voice. The price paid for all this is just a detection starship. Wait! His eyes moved slightly, as if he realized something. It's just a detection starship. Why didn't the advanced civilization that launched the attack directly destroy our warp speed one? Or, maybe it's because... Fong Su hesitated, and he said unconfidently, Maybe it's to give us a warning? No, no, it doesn't look like that. Lu Yongchang's originally heavy eyes suddenly became lively. He rubbed his hands vigorously, and quickly organized his thoughts. Think about it. Since leaving the Earth until now, when has human civilization encountered such a kind civilization? Even the new civilization showed a lot of malice at the beginning. You mean? Fong Su's eyes revealed a hint of expectation. Is it a problem with the experiment? Yes. Li Yongchang said decisively. It must be. During the curvature navigation, there should be some phenomenon that we haven't discovered yet. Zero. Continue to play back the scene of the detection starship being attacked. Laboratory 1. In the holographic projection, the scene of the disappearance of the detection starship was replayed over and over again. Hiss! Fong Su gasped, raised his hand, and rubbed his sore temples vigorously. Professor, do you see what the problem is? This is already... Fong Su turned his head and glanced at the holographic projection on the side, confirmed it, and said again. This is the 798th replay. Wait! Wait! Lu Yongchang raised his index finger and made a silent gesture, with a faint light shining in his eyes. I can probably understand the reason behind it. Fong Su. What the H, L? What the H, L? Lu Yongchang glanced at Fong Su with some dissatisfaction. What's going on? Can you calm down? No. Fong Su swallowed and looked at Lu Yongchang in shock. You can understand the reason just by looking at this thing? Are you sure you're not just guessing? Lu Yongchang twitched the corners of his mouth and showed a slightly sarcastic smile. That is you. Sometimes you have to admit that there is a gap between the two of us. Fong Su. Chapter 655 Tachyon Storm. So, what amazing and shocking discovery did you make? Fong Su's eyes twitched repeatedly as he asked Lu Yongchang word by word. Lu Yongchang chuckled and stretched out his hand to drag a holographic image. With a few strokes, he sketched out a simple space-time model. Everyone, we have overlooked an important issue. When the curvature engine is activated, a large number of particles will be sucked into the gravitational field in front of the starship under the action of two opposite gravitational fields at the front and rear. As he spoke, Lu Yongchan tapped an area in the projection with his index finger. Eventually, these particles will converge in front of the curvature bubble. As the warp travel time increases, the number of particles accumulates. At the same time, during the process of curvature navigation, the energy they contain will continue to accumulate. Wait! He violent frowned and interrupted Lu Yongchang. Where does their energy come from? Warp drive. Yes. Lu Yongchang nodded and confirmed he violent's words. I just checked the energy consumption of warp one after entering the curvature state and found that it was slightly higher than I expected. 
At first, I thought it was an error. Now it seems that this is not an error. But these particles are playing tricks. This is equivalent to additional resistance that the curvature bubble needs to overcome as it advances. He Bilan nodded thoughtfully. I probably understand. When starships exit the curvature navigation state, they can still maintain the curvature navigation state for a short period of time because the particle mass and size are much lower than that of the starships. At this time, because the particles are still in the curvature navigation state, they cannot be observed by ordinary observation instruments. Moreover, it contains a lot of energy. Once it encounters an object blocking its progress, it will. He violent suddenly opened his palms. Bang. It looks to us like we've been attacked by some mysterious attack. But, Professor, how to verify this? Lu Yongchang smiled and pointed at the giant holographic projection in front of him. Let's do the math. The interval between warp 1, exiting the warp navigation state, and the observation starship being attacked was 3.13 seconds. Then consider the distance between the two. Exactly enough to get the speed of the attacking object, 1.1 c. Hearing this, he Bailing quickly lowered his head and did some calculations. It's true. Looking at the results in the holographic projection, he shouted in a low voice with some surprise. Lu Yongchan laughed. So, before proceeding with the curvature navigation, we need to ensure the safety of the channel. Once any macro blockage appears on the waterway, the consequences could be catastrophic. Bong Su on the side also added, that means that in planetary systems with relatively rich interstellar matter, curvature navigation is strictly prohibited. Certainly, Lu Yongchan thought for a moment, not only within the star system, but also between star systems. We need to be more careful. After all, we currently don't have the corresponding super light observation methods. Professor. In the distance, Tao Yuda's voice came. I have an idea. Do you think this characteristic of the curvature engine can be used to make weapons? Lu Yongchan was silent for a while, nodded, and then shook his head. Okay, but it seems it doesn't have much effect. Before attacking, it needs to accelerate over a long distance to accumulate energy. In actual combat, it would be more efficient to use a curvature engine to launch antimatter bombs, a weapon against low-level civilizations. Tao Yuda said softly, if we want to absorb the other party as a subordinate civilization, the curvature engine should be a good weapon. Professor, think about our initial reaction. At that time, the later civilization did not use such methods against us. Taoyuda shrugged. Of course, the sailing distance of their flagship was not enough to trigger this effect. But if, Professor, what do you think will happen? At least, the morale within the civilization will become a huge problem. Lu Yongchang's face changed slightly. After pondering for a moment, he nodded. In that case, I'll leave this research task to you. Then. He turned and looked at the old man with gray hair standing not far away. Academician Chao Liangkai. You will be responsible for the task of modifying the existing starships. After leaving the laboratory, Lu Yongchang, with the help of the robotic arm, directly boarded the robotic arm-type robot that had been waiting at the door. The robot took him and drove quickly towards Lu Yongchang's office. Rear. He Bailan looked at the robots retreating back with Indy. Xiao He. Where is the robot you applied for? Fong Su asked in surprise as he walked out of the laboratory door. Academician Fong. My application was not approved. He Bailan looked at Fong Su with a complicated face as he climbed onto the back of another robot. Oh, sorry. I forgot. Fong Su smiled and raised his eyebrows at He Bailan. Come on. Make a few more big projects. And I will approve your application. He Bailan, after returning to the office, Lu Yongchan quickly sat down in his seat. Zero. Close the door. As he finished speaking, his consciousness had sunk into the depths of his mind. Technology tree space. In the modeled background, the science and technology tree outlined by crystal white lines is particularly bright. Looking at the extremely bright cursor, Lu Yongchang breathed a sigh of relief. Curvature navigation technology has passed the verification of the technology tree. A bright white line flows out of the cursor and stretches upward along the dim passage. Primary Gravity Shield. Grand Unified Theory. These are the last two technologies for the 4th level civilization to enter the 5th level civilization. Looking at the fog at the top of the technology tree, Lu Yongchan calmed down and focused his attention on one of the dim cursors. Chapter 656. Principle of Gravity Shield. Grand Unified Theory. In the universe, at least in the universe currently understood by human civilization, there are only four forces between microscopic particles. 
gravity, electromagnetism, strong interaction, and weak interaction. From the time we stepped out of the Earth to the fourth level civilization, the Academy of Sciences has only unified three of them. Universal gravity, because no graviton has ever been discovered, has always been outside the theoretical system of human civilization. Nowadays, gravitons have been controlled by the Academy of Sciences, and the grand unified theory has reached the most critical step. The half-dim and half-bright cursors in the technology tree system also confirm this. With just one step left, the grand unified theory can be presented to everyone. Cross-level. Analysis of key technologies is an extremely dangerous behavior. In the past, Li Yongchang would never have dared to take this risk. But now, after the brain is quantized, with his thinking ability greatly improved, he decided to take a risk. The human fleet does not have much time left. Under the guidance of the technology tree, Li Yongchang's brain entered the overclocking state again. Endless inspiration comes from the depths of my mind. Accompanying it was a dizziness that I hadn't experienced in a long time. He endured the dizziness and quickly organized and integrated all the known information. A mathematical model emerged in his mind little by little. While Lu Yongchang was working hard to conquer the Grand Unified Model, he Bailin returned to the laboratory again after a short break. According to Lu Yongchang's arrangement, he needs to lead the team to overcome the gravity shield technology. Curvature bubble. He Bailin frowned slightly, looked at the space-time model left by Lu Yongchang in the holographic projection, and murmured to himself, Is this thing really the predecessor of the gravity shield? The function of the curvature bubble is very simple. It can use the fluctuating gravitational field to smooth out the wrinkled space-time. But that's not how gravity shields work. Or rather, just the opposite. Only the distortion of time and space caused by a powerful gravitational field can effectively resist attacks from the outside world. But there's a problem. Generating a powerful gravitational field to deflect external attacks is simple. But I want to turn it into an egg sh l to protect the starship inside and prevent the starship from being affected by anything. This is very difficult. After all, generating a gravitational field around a starship will inevitably affect the starship itself. He Bailin sat quietly on the chair, subconsciously imitating Li Yongchang's movements when he was thinking. His knuckles tapped lightly on the experimental table in front of him, making crisp sounds. In the holographic projection, the space-time fluctuations of Curvature 1 in the Curvature Navigation State were clearly presented before his eyes. Surround the curvature bubble? He Bailin's eyes were full of confusion, and he murmured to himself. As soon as the words came out of his mouth, he suddenly stopped tapping on the table. Right. That is it. His eyes flashed with excitement, and he quickly opened a holographic projection and raised his hand to operate on it. With the help of the gravitational field generating device, several powerful gravitational fields are generated around the starship. He Bailin stood in front of everyone, tapping the picture in the holographic projection with his finger. The function of these gravitational fields is to deflect attacks from the outside world. What about the starship itself? An academician interrupted He Bailin's words. These gravitational fields will not only affect the navigation status of the starship itself, but also affect the accuracy and power of our attacks. He Bailin chuckled, turned off the holographic projection screen, and then pointed at the space-time model that was still running in the distance. Professor Liu has already told us the answer. Curvature bubble. Similar to the working principle of the curvature bubble and curvature navigation, we can use anti-gravity fields to smooth out the fluctuations in space and time around the starship. I roughly understand what you mean. Is it equivalent to generating countless small gravitational fields around the curvature bubble? The academician who spoke earlier asked with his eyes brightening. Yes, he Bilan nodded. We can also imitate the principle of the magnetic field shield and let it fluctuate according to a specific algorithm. This can greatly reduce the enemy's probability of breaking the gravity shield. At the same time, with the help of zero computing power, we can control the small gravitational field generation area in real time and implement point-to-point -point defense against every attack. The words fell. The laboratory returned to calm again. But soon, the calm was broken by warm applause. With theoretical support and zero's terrifying work efficiency, the first gravity shield test began quickly. A modified small starship slowly left the Human Alliance starship factory and flew towards the empty universe in the distance. A Golden Crow battleship followed silently behind it. Activate the gravity shield. He Bailing gave the order with a serious expression. The power of the antimatter engine began to increase. And several gravitational field generating devices installed inside the small starship began to operate. While small gravitational fields are continuously generated around the starship, 
a slightly larger anti-gravity field is also slowly increasing around the starship, with the help of high-precision optical telescopes. It can be clearly discovered that, as the power of the gravitational field continues to increase, the light passing through the small starship gradually becomes distorted. The gravity shield is successfully generated. The current status is stable, and the load is 3.73%. Attack tests can be started at any time. The report came from not far away. Prepare. Before he Biling could finish speaking, the door to laboratory number one suddenly opened. Success! I succeeded! Liu Yongchang's ecstatic shouts came from outside the door. Chapter 657 A Late Return Gift Liu Yongchang's shouts made he Biling's body tremble suddenly. Success! He simply put aside the work he was doing and turned towards the laboratory door. Professor, please explain clearly. What succeeded? He Bilin's voice trembled slightly as he eagerly asked Lu Yong Chong, who was walking towards him. As a core member of the Academy of Sciences, He Bilin naturally knew what Lu Yong Chong had been doing some time ago. Therefore, the moment he heard Lu Yong Chong's words, a faint suspicion emerged in his mind. Grand unified theory? He couldn't believe his guess. How much time has passed? Even before the gravity shield test machine was successfully launched, Professor Liu single-handedly took off the crown of physics. Great, great unity. He Bilin swallowed hard and cast his expectant eyes on Li Yongchang in front of him. Li Yongchang smiled gently and nodded, then raised his hand and patted He Bilin's shoulder gently. Yes, you guessed it right. Grand unified theory. I figured it out. The moment he heard this understatement, He Bilin felt his breath suddenly suffocate. What followed immediately was a surge of ecstasy and excitement that arose from nowhere. How did you integrate gravity with the other three forces? He Bilin exclaimed. It's unimaginable that you were able to complete this complex theory in such a short period of time. You're really, really, really. His face turned slightly red. And after holding it in for a long time, he finally came up with the simplest and most simple words. That's awesome. The laboratory was silent for a few seconds and then burst into laughter. He Bilin scratched his head in embarrassment, quickly stepped aside, extended his hand and said, Professor, please come in quickly. Just in time. The first test of the gravity shield has begun. According to your instructions, this gravity shield is developed based on curvature bubble technology. Lu Yongchang smiled and waved his hand. I didn't give you any advice. This is your credit. No one can take it away from you. As he spoke, he stepped forward and strode into the laboratory. Attention all units. The first live fire test of the gravity shield begins now. He Bilin's excited voice came from behind. Looking at the Golden Crow battleship with its gun muzzle beginning to shine in the holographic projection. Lu Yongchok felt a bit of emotion in his heart. His thoughts then returned to more than 10 minutes ago. Inside the office, Lu Yongchung's eyes flashed with extremely strong excitement. He reached out to unlock the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat and complained softly. Wait. Then. When I figure out the grand unified theory, I'm going to tear you apart sooner or later. As he spoke, he stood up and walked to the lockers nearby. He gently opened the top door of the locker and carefully took out a black box. The box is not big, just slightly larger than the palm of your hand. He gently brushed off the few specks of dust on the black box and quickly returned to his desk. Click! The sound of the electromagnetic adsorption device sounded again. Call! Lu Yongchang took a deep breath and solemnly pressed a switch on the side of the black box. Laugh. The sound of airflow followed. When the sound of airflow disappeared, he rubbed his hands and gently opened the lid of the box. A pen with obvious signs of wear on its surface appeared in front of him. Looking at this pen, Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly filled with deep nostalgia. This was a gift given to him by Su Yutong in the Earth Age. It was on the eve of the helium flash crisis. He spent almost all his energy trying to lead mankind to escape from the Earth and the solar system. Naturally, he didn't care about this gift at the time. Nor did he care about the date when the gift was sent. He just regarded it as an ordinary gift. Until later, when human civilization successfully left the solar system and could take a breather. Zero awakened him. Professor, according to the humanistic information I have, you should return the gift to Professor Su Yutong. At that time, Zero said so. Return gift? Why return a gift? Does this gift have any special meaning? Lu Yongchang, who was lying in the hibernation cabin, asked Ling doubtfully, along with a slight pain. Hibernation was injected into Lu Yongchang's body, and Zero's voice also sounded. The time you received the gift is February 14th in the Earth calendar. Lu Yongchang suddenly realized. 
but the effect of hibernation had already appeared. He slowly closed his eyes, and his consciousness gradually stagnated. After entering space, traditional pins cannot be used normally because there is no gravity. For this reason, he specially added an electromagnetic micropump to this pin. But the service life of the pin is limited after all. Seeing that the pen was getting worse and worse, and paper was a scarce resource in space, he had to seal it in a vacuum box. To this day, this pen that spanned thousands of years was taken out again. Lu Yongchan carefully took the pen out of the box and pulled out a stack of precious papers from the side. He laid it flat on the table and flattened it with an electromagnetic ruler. Swiss! Swiss! Swish! Writing in space is not an easy task, but he still struggled to keep his handwriting neat along with the rustling sound of the pen rubbing against the paper. Neat lines of formulas appeared on the paper. At the same time, under the real-time capture by the camera, the same content is simultaneously presented in the holographic projection. A large amount of zero-idle computing power was mobilized to this office. In the universe, the theories and formulas that every fourth-level civilization dreams of are slowly taking shape on this piece of light paper. Despair. The tip of the pen tapped lightly on the paper, leaving a small black dot. Finished. Lu Yongchang took a deep breath and whispered softly. Human civilization has become a level 5 civilization at this moment. The moment he said the words, there was a sour feeling in his eyes. Thousands of years of hard work finally achieved fruition. We humans, today, can finally make their own voice to the universe. He was silent for a moment. After turning his head to look at the date, he waved the pen again and left a sentence at the end. On February 14th, 3276 Earth Calendar. Lu Yongchan gave Su Yutong a gift in return. He carefully closed the pen and placed it in the black box again. With a burst of airflow, the inside of the black box was evacuated into a vacuum again. After putting the box back in place, Lu Yongchan reached out and removed the electromagnetic ruler and picked up the thick stack of manuscript paper. Zero. Help me deliver this manuscript to academician Su Yutong. Tell her for me. This is my return gift for keeping her waiting. Chapter 658 Level 5 Civilization Receive A slightly stiff electronic synthesis sound sounded, and the robotic arm robot slowly stepped forward, stretched out its hand, and took the manuscript wrapped in an envelope. No matter in the future or now, this manuscript will be a priceless manuscript in the universe. Watching the robotic arm robot leave the office, Lu Yongchang leaned hard on the back of the chair and sighed longly to relieve himself from the fatigue of this period of time. Professor Academician He's Gravity Shield Research has made breakthrough progress. Preparations for the trial are currently underway. Huh? Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows, sat up straight and laughed. He Bilan is really impressive. He conquered the Gravity Shield so quickly. As he spoke, he adjusted to a comfortable sitting position. Show me the information. The holographic projection unfolded quickly. Research information on Gravity Shields quickly appeared in front of Lu Yongchang. He reached out and touched his chin quickly flipping through the information in the holographic projection. Countless small gravitational fields are generated outside the curvature bubble. Lu Yongchang smiled and nodded. It's a good plan. There are also considerable advantages in micromanagement. As he spoke, he quickly flipped through the information to the control program section. Sure enough. Lu Yongchang laughed loudly. I saw this guy right. He changed the control program of the magnetic field shield and applied it directly. Zero. When does the experiment start? There's still one hour. Zero responded quickly. Do you want to go to the scene to direct? Lu Yongchan thought for a moment. Shook his head and said, Wait a minute. Close the office door and don't let anyone disturb me. Let me think of something first. With that said, he closed his eyes. The consciousness soon came to the technology tree space. Lu Yongchan frowned slightly. Every time he saw the model background of the technology tree space, he would feel a sense of unreasonable irritability in his heart. I always feel that since the last upgrade, the technology tree system has hidden some important information in the background. But looking at the colorful and mottled background, he really couldn't think of what information this thing could hide. After thinking for a moment, he reluctantly turned his attention to the white technology tree suspended in the air. The branches are lush and the cursor is bright. The technology tree of the fourth level civilization has been completely formed. A thin, bright white line extends from the grand unified theory and rises straight towards the fog above. With a slight tremor, the fog gradually dissipated. As usual, the technology tree began to rapidly extend upwards with a slight vibration. The vibrations gradually subsided. 
The technology tree of the fifth level civilization also appeared in front of Lu Yongchang. Grand Unified Theory As the ceiling theory of the fourth level civilization has now become the cornerstone of the fifth level civilization, quietly staying at the lowest end of the technology tree, the thin white lines gradually extended upward, dispersing the thick fog bit by bit, revealing extremely dim cursors. Second Generation Gravitational Field Control Technology Starship Adaptive Artificial Gravity Technology there was a hint of surprise in Lu Yongchang's eyes. No wonder the Academy of Science's research on artificial gravity has encountered obstacles. Judging from the guidance of the technology tree, the prerequisite for realizing artificial gravity is actually a new gravitational field control technology under the guidance of the Grand Unified Theory. Professor. Professor? He Bailin's voice came from the side, interrupting his memories. What's wrong? Lu Yongchang came back to his senses and turned to look at He Bailin beside him. Professor. It's successful. He Bailin's eyes were full of excitement. The first actual combat test of the gravity shield was a complete success. The strength is increased several times compared to the magnetic field shield. At the same time, it can also block attacks from kinetic energy weapons to a certain extent. Lu Yongchan quickly looked at the holographic projection ahead. In the projection screen, the small experimental starship stood motionless amid the storm-like attack of the Golden Crow battleship. Current shield load is 53.9%. Preliminary estimates suggest that three Golden Crow battleships are needed to break through its defenses. He Bailin quickly explained, paired with a magnetic field shield, our starship's defense can be greatly improved. Not bad. Not bad. Lu Yongchang looked at the rapidly flashing experimental data in front of him and nodded with satisfaction. When this is over, I will go and talk to Academician Fong. I asked him to approve your application. He Bailin was stunned. The next second, the smile on his face became brighter again. Thank you, Professor Liu. After some celebrations, He Bailin hesitated for a while, then whispered, Professor, that, what's wrong? Liu Yongchang looked at He Bailin in surprise. Didn't you always want a robot on robot to take your place? What? No more. No. 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 He Bailin's expression changed instantly. He shook his head quickly and said, I mean, can that grand unified theory? Lu Yongchang raised his head and glanced around, looking at the eager looks of the academicians in the laboratory. He burst out laughing. Good. While smiling, he stepped forward. Then I will give you a brief explanation of the grand unified theory. Alliance Starship Factory. Academician Chow. Are you sure you need to reserve such a large space for transformation? Li Yutian frowned slightly, looked at the transformation drawings in the holographic projection and asked in a low voice. This will greatly increase the burden on the Starship factory. The most important is, we are running low on supplies. If a modification of this scale were to be carried out, the fleet might immediately need to set sail in search of resources. Facing the doubts of his younger generation, Chao Liankai did not rise up, but smiled and shook his head. These are necessary components. Have you seen the latest announcement? Li Yutian shook his head in confusion. The gravity shield technology has been completely conquered. There has also been a breakthrough in curvature navigation technology. The human fleet can leave this ghost place at any time. Do you think Professor Liu will apply these new technologies to starships before leaving? After speaking, Chao Liankai sighed softly. After all, no one knows what kind of situation mankind will encounter next. Just in case. Li Yutian looked serious. Academician Chao. I understand. Ding dong. A clear message sound sounded. Academician Chao Liankai. Professor Li Yutian. The Academy of Sciences has released the latest paper. Please check it as soon as possible. Paper publisher, Lu Yongchang. Chao Liankai was stunned for a moment, then turned to look at Li Yutian beside him. Both of them saw the confusion and surprise in each other's eyes. Grand Unified Theory. The two said in unison. Chapter 659 Technology Explosion. May 18th. 3300 in the Earth calendar. It has been 24 years since we completed the Grand Unification Theory and entered the fifth level civilization. In the past 24 years, the Starship Factory has not stopped at all, and has worked overtime to complete various transformation tasks under Zero's control. As Chao Liankai said, before heading to a new star system, in addition to having curvature navigation technology, the fleet also needs to have some self-protection technology. These include but are not limited to gravity shields and various weapons and equipment. There are not many supplies near the black hole that humans can use today, and the Forgotten Star is already the richest area nearby. Therefore, 
in just 24 years. After the complete death of news, various resources on the forgotten star were exploited to the maximum extent. Of course, the curvature experiments did not stop during the fleet transformation process. After various animals and plants have successfully experienced warp navigation, the first manned warp navigation has also been declared a success. The successful establishment of the Grand Unified Theory and the breakthrough of basic theories have once again brought human civilization into the era of technological explosion. In just 24 years, under the guidance of Li Yongchang, the Academy of Sciences has made several major scientific research results. The successful breakthrough in gravitational field control technology has greatly enhanced the strength of the Starship's gravitational shield. At the same time, magnetic field shield technology has also achieved further breakthroughs. Weapon systems are naturally no exception. The miniaturization of gravitational field generating devices has also made curvature weapons a reality. However, due to resource issues, not many of these powerful weapons were produced. Energy aspect the introduction of gravitational field technology has increased the power of the antimatter engine several times. Under the combined influence of various factors, the maximum theoretical speed of the human fleet has also soared from 10C to 50C. However, due to various reasons, in most cases, the fleet's sailing speed will still be maintained within 10C. On the one hand, there are limitations of communication technology. When the curvature navigation speed reaches more than 10C, the probabilistic decoherence phenomenon of entangled state quantum will rapidly increase and exceed the threshold of information repair, not to mention electromagnetic wave communication. Electromagnetic waves propagating at the speed of light cannot even catch up with a starship entering a state of curvature. Once the sailing speed exceeds 10C, the fleet will be completely lost. On the other hand, there are issues of energy and materials. The higher the curvature, the greater the energy consumption to maintain the curvature. This is simply a fatal problem for today's human fleet. In addition to the above technologies, artificial gravity technology has also been successfully implemented in the laboratory. After learning the news, Lu Yongchan hesitated for a while and reluctantly gave up the idea of applying it to all starships. The reason is simple. The scale of the renovation is too large and consumes too many materials. In a sense, the cost of fully transforming a starship even exceeds the cost of rebuilding a starship. Therefore, of the entire fleet. Only some areas on the flagship, Earth, were equipped with artificial gravity facilities. The time has come. Resources are severely insufficient, and many scientific research tasks in the laboratory have been suspended. Lu Yongchang stood in a Earth command center, feeling the comfort brought by artificial gravity, and said in a deep voice, The fleet transformation work is basically completed. Humanity needs to find new star systems. After saying that, he turned around and glanced around. Seeing no one objected, he asked Hee Binan, who was sitting in the first row of seats. Academician he, has the selection of habitable star systems been completed? He Binan nodded and subconsciously reached out to touch the electromagnetic absorption device on the side of the seat, but came up empty. He stood up awkwardly, walked quickly to Li Yongchang, and said loudly, Currently, we already have mature planetary transformation technology, so I have relaxed the screening conditions for habitable planets. As he spoke, he moved a few times in the holographic projection beside him. A list of names and a star map were presented to everyone. Considering that the fleet's antimatter reserves are seriously insufficient, the fleet's first navigation target is the HIP-3376 star system located 13.7 light years away. According to our observations, the HIP-3376 star system is a binary system composed of two red dwarf stars. Currently, no evidence of the existence of a planet has been observed. Once the Dyson Cloud device is successfully deployed. The fleet will be able to collect sufficient energy for navigation within 50 years. The proposal to find a star system without planets to replenish energy actually came from Lu Yongchang. Although human civilization has successfully promoted to level 5 civilization and has even mastered a small part of the technology of level 5 civilization, the combat power of human civilization, in a sense, is not even as good as that of the level 4 civilization. Energy the energy consumption of interstellar war is a terrifying value. Whether it is a curvature engine or a gravitational shield, any equipment involving a gravitational field generating device is a large energy consumer. Therefore, the remaining energy reserves of the human fleet today are simply impossible to support a vigorous interstellar war. In star systems without planets, the probability of civilization being present is also greatly reduced. After all, in the young universe, energetic stars can be found everywhere 
and the scarce ones are actually planets that are habitable and capable of long-term development. In addition, although the human fleet has undergone small-scale modifications, these starships equipped with curvature engines are still satellite-class starships. If we want to have a fifth-level civilization planet-level starship, human civilization will still need a period of development and efforts. What's next? Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows, as if he realized something. I remember that some time ago, a lot of Dyson clouds were newly built at the starship factory. If you unfold them all, I'm afraid a lot of antimatter can be produced in 50 years. Where is the final voyage destination? Kepler 452. Professor. He violently said calmly. The distance from the hip 3376 star system is 1539.2 light years. As soon as the words fell, there was a commotion in the command center. 1539.2 light years. This is an extremely exaggerated distance. At least, for previous human civilizations, this was a long and despairing journey. He Bilan added softly. It only takes 154 years to sail at 10 times the speed of light. Considering that supplies need to be replenished 2 to 3 times along the way, we can conservatively estimate that the entire voyage will take about 300 years. 300 years. It only takes 300 years. Looking at the numbers in front of him, Lu Yongcheng's pupils trembled slightly. For the first time, he deeply experienced the transformation of human civilization. Kepler 452b? After a moment of silence, Lu Yongchang asked, Are you sure it exists? In the Earth era, Kepler 452b is a magical planet. This is the first potential super Earth rocky planet discovered in human history. At the same time, various calculation results show that this planet, like the Earth, is in the habitable zone of the star system. This brought endless imagination to mankind thousands of years ago. However, in the Earth era, due to limitations in observation technology, humans have not been able to prove its existence and have only counted it as an exoplanet candidate. After the solar helium flash occurred, although the observation technology of human civilization continued to grow, the distance of more than 1,000 light years directly crushed the desire of the Academy of Sciences to conduct observations with this spare time. It is better to consider how to avoid the ubiquitous crisis comes as expected. Chapter 660 Target, Kepler 452 Confirmed, he Bilan said firmly. According to the latest observation results, the Kepler 452 star system has a total of six planets. The general structure is similar to that of the solar system. Meanwhile, Kepler 452 b was confirmed to be a rocky planet with a mass approximately five times that of Earth and a surface of approximately 2 g. The orbital period is approximately 385 Earth days. Also located within the habitable zone of the star system. As suspected thousands of years ago, it is almost equivalent to the second Earth. Lu Yongcheng's heart beat violently for a few times. And a sense of anticipation that he had not felt for a long time suddenly arose. But? He bite and shrugged and said with regret. We found that there is a large amount of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. Which will cause a considerable greenhouse effect. Zero simulation results show that there are relatively few water resources above Kepler 452b, and the maximum surface temperature may be above 120 degrees Celsius. The temperature difference between day and night is large, and the lowest temperature is about minus 50 degrees Celsius. In general, it is different from the imagination thousands of years ago. It is most likely a desolate planet. Lu Yongchan laughed dumbly. This is not a big problem. Planet terraforming technology can quickly turn it into Earth 2.0. But, I need to hear your reasons. Lu Yongcheng's face became a little more serious, and he said in a deep voice, Why did you choose it? I just took a look at your list. Within a hundred light years, there are ten planets on your candidate list. Why did you choose such a distant planet? You should know that long journeys often mean various variables. Looking at Lu Yongcheng's serious expression, he violent pondered for a moment, organized some words, and then explained. The most critical reason is that it is closer to Sagittarius A asterisk, the central black hole of the Milky Way. That means more supplies. It will also have many benefits for the future development of human civilization. But dense star systems will also give birth to more civilizations. Lu Yongchan sighed in a low voice. This will bring more conflicts. In other words, more opportunities for cooperation. He violently interrupted Lu Yongchan's words and corrected with a smile. Although the fifth level civilization is not a top existence in the galaxy, it is not someone who can be robbed randomly, pinch, absorb subsidiary civilizations, and build a civilized territory. Only in this way can human civilization survive better. There was silence in the command center. Lu Yongchang frowned slightly 
and carefully consider the pros and cons. The benefits of affiliated civilization are many. Some time ago, the absorption of new civilization as a subsidiary civilization allowed him, as well as everyone in the Academy of Sciences and the Parliament, to taste the sweetness. Although new civilization currently only has less than 0.1% of its scale left, the potential contained in its race is immeasurable. The collision between different civilizations will cause the technological level of this civilization to rise rapidly. But the disadvantages are also obvious. War will most likely always accompany human civilization. In fact, according to Liu Yongcheng's idea, human civilization should huddle in a corner and silently develop to level 8 with the help of the technology tree. No. Level 9. Stand up and make your voice heard again. By then, he would be 98% sure to easily resolve all crises. What a sweeper. What a pastoralist. It's just a subsidiary civilization under the jurisdiction of the People's Union. But judging from the current situation, this is obviously unrealistic. The abundance of materials at the edge of the galaxy cannot support the normal development of an advanced civilization. Thinking of this, he sighed again and gave up the thought of continuing to develop. Ready to set sail. Zero. Start planning the route and integrating the fleet. After the order is issued, the complex starship factories and various facilities scattered in space began to gradually gather together. Outside the portholes, large or small starships and carrier-based drones were speeding past. Under Zero's planning and control, there is an indescribable sense of order in the chaotic waterway. Under Liu Yongchang's gaze, the originally scattered fleet was quickly becoming more organized as time went by. According to the plan, the fleet will conduct regular voyages for up to half a year, driven by antimatter engines. He Bailin's voice came from behind, drawing Li Yongchang's attention back from the porthole. The original plan was that within the next six months, the awakened personnel in the fleet will gradually enter hibernation. Professor, you? I don't hibernate, Li Yongchang said cheerfully. I haven't experienced the feeling of curvature navigation. So why do I hibernate? It's not too late to hibernate after the fleet enters warp state. After finishing speaking, he glanced at Hebinan in surprise. Can those academicians be willing to bear such a historic scene? Hebinan smiled bitterly when he heard this, and reached out to call up the holographic list. Professor, what they said is exactly the same as you, except for the original test pilot. No one is willing to enter hibernation and have to wait until the moment the warp navigation begins. Ha ha ha! Lu Yongchang suddenly put his hands on his hands and laughed. It's just as I expected. Okay. He patted He Bailin's shoulder gently and said comfortingly, It's just an extra half year's consumption of supplies. There are only so many people in the Academy of Sciences, so it won't have much impact on the plan. Suddenly, Lu Yongchang seemed to realize something, turned his head and glanced at the list again, and said softly, Xiao He, where is your name? You decided to hibernate now? Lu Yongchang looked at He Bailin in front of him in bewilderment. What a joke. This is warp sailing. He didn't believe anyone could resist experiencing warp sailing for themselves. Ahem. He Bailin smiled awkwardly, scratched his head, and coughed lightly. Professor. This. I am the person in charge of this voyage plan. I must wait until everyone has hibernated before I can hibernate. Isn't it? He Bailin's voice became lower and lower. And it was obvious that he didn't really believe what he was saying. Lu Yongchang. Seeing Lu Yongchang's meaningful and contemptuous gaze, He Bailin hurriedly laughed and turned to leave. Professor, you are busy first. I'm leaving first. After saying that, he left the porthole viewing area as if he was fleeing. Chapter 661 Blue Shift Half year later, a huge fleet from the black hole region passed silently through deep space, driven by antimatter engines. Several asteroids, coming from afar, came to greet the fleet. The next second, before they could touch the starship armor, they were blocked by an invisible barrier, their own inertia coupled with several twisted gravitational fields, directly tore their fragile bodies into pieces. The asteroid, which turned into countless debris, drew a beautiful arc and slid towards the rear of the fleet. Professor, the gravitational influence of the black hole has been reduced to below the standard value. Electronic synthesized sound sounded in the command center of Earth. Liu Yongchang nodded and checked again to confirm the space-time curvature value returned by the detector. After confirming that the values had returned to normal, he took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, Attention all units! Fleet, prepare to enter warp navigation state! The moment the words fell, the originally quiet command center suddenly became lively. The output power of the antimatter engine begins to increase. 
Curvature bubble begins to generate. Current space-time curvature, 0.167. This is the space-time distortion caused by the fleet's own mass and gravitational shield. As the intensity of the curvature bubble gradually increases, the space-time curvature value begins to fall rapidly. Correction. The current space-time curvature is zero, and the curvature bubble is working normally. Prepare to activate the warp drive. After the report, he bilin pressed the virtual button in the holographic projection with a serious look. The positive and negative gravitational fields are being generated. As Zero's electronic synthesized sound sounded, a slight tremor came from the deck beneath my feet. A faint feeling of weightlessness followed. This is normal. Due to the old age of the starship and the backwardness of some of its devices, there are some flaws in the energy supply of the antimatter engine. This ship is about to enter a warp navigation state. Please be prepared. Passengers, countdown to warp navigation. 30, 29, 28. A string of bright red countdowns with a warning tone accompanied by electronic synthesized sounds appeared in front of everyone. Lu Yongchang cautiously stepped forward and half drifted, half walked to the porthole of the command center, different from the conventional driving method. During the curvature navigation, the crew does not need to lie in the deep sea cabin and can even move around at will. During the curvature navigation, the starship is moved by the surrounding space and time. The starship itself remains relatively stationary with time and space. Therefore, a starship entering a state of curvature will not feel any acceleration. Similarly, wrapped in a curvature bubble, a starship can also avoid the clock slowness and scale shrinkage effects caused by special relativity. Lu Yongchang turned his attention to the front of the starship. The slightly distorted starlight indicates that an extremely powerful gravitational field is being generated in front of the starship. 3, 2, 1. Warp navigation has officially started. This ship's current sailing speed, 1.1 c. The quantum ultradistance communication device is undergoing self-test. The information transmission status is normal. Current sailing speed, 2 c. The moment the countdown ended, the faint feeling of weightlessness disappeared. Li Yongchang only felt his body sink, and his feet stepped firmly on the deck again. He didn't pay attention to these small details. At this moment, all his attention was attracted by the scene outside the porthole. Under the state of curvature, the universe outside the porthole window presents an extremely strange phenomenon. As the starship's sailing speed continues to increase, the starlight ahead gradually becomes stronger. At the same time, these lights gradually took on a faint blue color. The wavelength of light becomes shorter and moves to the blue segment of the spectrum. This is the blue shift in the Doppler effect. This means that these light sources are approaching them very quickly. In other words, they are approaching these infinitely distant stars at extremely fast speeds. Lu Yongchang turned his head and looked behind the starship. Different from the brilliant light curtain in front of the starship, there is a rich darkness. Starlight can no longer catch up with this wild horse. Zero. How is the black hole tow ship? Lu Yongchang withdrew his eyes filled with wonder, turned around and asked. The black hole tug ship, as its name suggests, is to tug the miniature black hole that humans have spent a lot of effort to create. As for why we need to take it on an interstellar voyage, over time, antigravitons will gradually lose their properties and convert into gravitons again. Therefore, if you want to ensure the normal operation of the curvature engine, you need a stable source of antigravitons mining. And micro black holes have undoubtedly become this source of minerals. The way to take it on a long voyage, it's actually not complicated. First, this miniature black hole needs to be thinned down a little. When its mass and gravitational influence range shrink to a certain extent, it will be pulled into the black hole tug ship with the help of the gravitational field. Similarly, with the help of the internal gravitational field, the black hole, the towing ship, and the surrounding space and time remain relatively stationary. The last step is to start the curvature engine and let this miniature black hole enter the curvature navigation state. It sounds simple. But when it is actually done, it brings a lot of trouble and difficulties to the human fleet. Most of Li Yongchang's work some time ago was also about solving difficulties in this area. Although after various rigorous calculations and several tests, it is almost certain that there will be no accidents. But it is a black hole after all. Even if it is a miniature black hole, it is still the most powerful celestial body in the universe. The black hole towing ship has successfully entered the curvature navigation state. The micro black hole is currently in good condition. And the black hole traction field is operating in good condition. Hearing Zero's response, Lu Yongchan let out a long sigh of relief. And then turned to look at the porthole next to him again. His eyes sparkled with intoxication and obsession. 
similar to Liyong Chong. After confirming that all starships had successfully entered the curvature state, every academician stood up from their seats and quickly came to the porthole of the command center. Hey! Hey! Lao Chao! Tell me how long have you been watching? Quickly give up your seat and let me have a look too! Fong Su's yelling came from not far behind him. Go! Go! There's nothing to see! The real-time camera footage is displayed in the holographic projection. It's the same when you look at that. How can that be the same? Besides, there's nothing good to see. Why are you occupying the seat? Fong Su naturally would not believe the deceptive words in Chao Liangsai's mouth. His eyebrows stood up and his voice suddenly became louder. Look, we still have so many people waiting to see. Current sailing speed, 10C. Listening to the bustling sounds in the command center, a faint smile appeared on Liu Yongchang's lips. It seems that the development of human civilization is beginning to go smoothly? Chapter 662 Kepler 452b Although curvature navigation is a first experience for all academicians, but the almost unchanged scenery outside the window soon became boring. After the novelty completely wore off, everyone entered hibernation one after another. The lights of Earth gradually went out, and the original hustle and bustle gradually returned to tranquility. In the deep universe, protected by the curvature bubble, the fleet flew towards the first destination at ten times the speed of light. There, the fleet stopped briefly to replenish the almost exhausted antimatter. Everything is completed independently by zero control robots. According to the default program, zero will wake up all scientific researchers only when it reaches its destination. The Kepler 452 star system. Earth calendar year 3605. In the dim command center of Earth, the blue holographic projection light once again lit up. Current distance from the target star system one light year, arrived at the warning distance. The fleet is exiting the warp navigation state. It is one light year away from the Kepler-452 star system. This is the empty space between star systems. In the cold and silent universe, apart from a few stars, there were only a few small micrometeorites left. Suddenly, the peaceful space and time became violently turbulent. The next second, a huge fleet suddenly appeared in this open area. The group of micrometeorites located in front of the fleet seemed to have been attacked by some invisible attack. In an instant, they turned into countless fine powders and dissipated into the visible universe. The turbulent time and space gradually subsided. The fleet's operating status gradually stabilized. And the intensity of the gamma rays released by the tail antimatter engine also slowly decayed. A few minutes later, the side hatch of the giant flagship located in the center of the fleet slowly opened. A large number of detectors lined up in an EQ and filed out of the hatch. After a short stay, they drive the antimatter engine and accelerate toward the star system ahead. Professor, welcome to Earth year 3608. The electronic synthesized sound rang in Li Yongchang's ears, awakening a sanity that had not yet fully recovered. 3,608 years. Li Yongchang closed his eyes slightly and murmured in a low voice. He coughed out the remaining deep sea liquid, took a deep breath and asked in a deep voice, Where is the fleet? The current distance is 0.01 light years from the target star system. Zero responded quickly. Hearing this, he opened his eyes suddenly. And deep in his eyes, a trace of strong shock flashed. Fast. Really fast. In just 308 years, the human fleet has traveled a distance that was previously unimaginable. Did you encounter any accidents during the voyage? Lu Yongchang asked in a low voice while struggling to get up from the hibernation cabin. According to the plan, the energy replenishment points are all planetless star systems. Zero responded to Liu Yongchun's question meticulously. Therefore, no traces of advanced civilization were detected during the voyage. Liu Yongchun nodded to express his understanding. Also normal. Ever since the earth-shattering battle between the sweeper civilization and the pastoralists, this corner of the Milky Way has almost become a silent place. Higher civilizations naturally dare not speak out rashly. And lower civilizations. Not to mention. This is one of the reasons why Liu Yongchang dared to take the risk of crossing 1,539 light years. Are all the other academicians awake? After receiving Zero's affirmative reply, Liu Yongchang got dressed and walked out the door. Tell them to report to the command center immediately. Receive! Inside the Earth Command Center, Liu Yongchang and a group of academicians carefully looked through the various data returned by the detector. He waved his hand and retrieved basic information about the Kepler-452 star system from the data in front of him. A high-definition image of a planet appeared in the giant holographic projection. It is basically consistent with the Bilan's original observation results. The Kepler-452 star system consists of six planets. 
including two gas giant planets, one iron planet, one ice giant, and two rocky planets. The main star is an orange dwarf. Compared with the sun, its mass and size are relatively small, and its stellar activity is relatively gentle and gentle, enough to provide us with a good living environment. The sun is a yellow dwarf. Orange dwarfs are larger than red dwarfs and smaller than yellow dwarfs. Among them, the first planet, Kepler 452b, is a rocky planet with a surface gravity of 2.03 g. Preliminary detection shows that there is less liquid water on the surface. However, the detector has discovered several comets containing a large amount of water resources in the star system. There is no need to worry about water resources. Speaking of this, Liu Yongchang's voice paused slightly. The atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide, oxygen and nitrogen. According to the calculation formula, the similarity between Kepler 452b and the Earth reaches 0.91. While talking, Liu Yongchan called up the surface image of Kepler 452b. So high! Fang Su beside him exclaimed in a low voice. The similarity between planets and Earth is comprehensively evaluated based on various factors such as atmosphere, geological conditions, gravity, etc. With the planetary transformation technology currently mastered by human civilization, as long as the similarity to the Earth reaches 0.7 or above, it can become a candidate colonizing planet for human civilization. The similarity of 0.91 means that they only need to make simple modifications to make this planet the best place for human settlement. After a brief moment of wonder, Fong Su immediately asked, Are there any signs of life found in the Kepler 452 star system? With such a livable living environment, there is great possibility for the development of civilization. An electronic synthesized voice sounded quickly. The probes dispatched have completed detailed exploration of six planets. So far, no signs of life have been found on the surfaces of the six planets. But Liu Yongchang's eyes moved slightly, and he stopped looking up the data in his hands. But he frowned slightly and asked in a low voice. A year ago, the detector discovered traces of biological activity and biological fossils in the strata of Kepler 452b. His! A gasp suddenly sounded in the command center. Biological fossils? Mao Xingji stood up from his seat excitedly and asked eagerly. Has it been tested? When was the creature born? Preliminary examination data shows that these creatures lived 500 million years ago. 500 million years ago? Zero's answer poured cold water on Mao Xingji. 500 million years. It's too long. Long enough to destroy any illusion. What's the reason? Fong Su's face gradually became serious. What's the reason for their demise? I think it's the greenhouse effect. Liu Yongchang stretched out his finger and lightly tapped a piece of data in the holographic projection. Carbon dioxide concentration. It's kind of like Earth being Venusized. Liu Yongchang gently touched his chin and said softly. Chapter 663 Planet Transformation Plan Venusization? Fong Su asked in a low voice. Before Liu Yongchang could speak, he Binan stepped forward and took over the conversation. Yes. Currently, the greenhouse effect on Kepler 452b is severe. According to the data returned by the probe, 500 million years ago, this planet had a large area of ocean. As the greenhouse effect goes out of control, the planet's surface temperature rises rapidly, and the oceans are gradually evaporated and gradually dissipated by the stellar wind. But due to its huge mass and relatively strong gravity, some small lakes still remain on its surface to this day. Fong Su understood. So, generally speaking, the priority target of the planetary transformation plan is its out-of-control greenhouse effect? He Bailin nodded slightly. You can say that. Liu Yongchan also turned to look at an academician sitting in the corner of the command center. He smiled gently and greeted softly. Academician Shen, it's your turn to study the field. Hearing Liu Yongchan's call, Shen Shenwen quickly stood up from his seat. There was a hint of excitement in his eyes, and he responded with a strong tone. Professor, I'm here. No wonder he reacted so strongly. Academician Shen Wen, who studies biosphere technology and planetary transformation technology, is not very noticeable most of the time. The reason, except for the time on the Dawn Star, the fleet was always on the way to escape or exploit resources. There was no time or conditions to transform the planet into a habitable planet. And planetary transformation technology is an extremely large-scale macrotype technology. At the same time, the computing resources allocated to him are not enough to allow him to simulate the detailed changes of a planet during its transformation. For Shinshuan, it has been a long time since he conducted a comprehensive research on planetary transformation. 
Lu Yongchan watched Shen Shenwen's reaction without hesitation. As a researcher, he naturally knew the reason for Shen Shenwen's reaction. He sighed silently in his heart, and the gentle smile on his face became stronger again. Academician Shen, calm down. Human civilization is about to begin a new era, and your research project will receive more resources from the People's Federation. Not just Kepler 452b. There are probably many planets in the star system around us waiting for you to formulate a transformation plan. Lu Yongchang's words made Shen Shenwen's mood even more agitated. Well, Shen Shenwen's lips trembled slightly, and he responded continuously. Professor, don't worry. I will draw up a modification plan for Kepler 452b as soon as possible. A week later, under Zero's control, the huge fleet stopped accurately and slowly near Kepler 452b. Hundreds of engineering ships and Tao Tai supply ships were the first to set off, driven by antimatter engines, and flew quickly towards the orange dwarf star not far away that exuded a gentle light. Their mission is simple. Rebuild the Dyson Cloud antimatter factory in the shortest possible time, and quickly replenish the antimatter reserves consumed during ultra-long distance voyages. In addition, the Space Mobile Factory is also unfolding around Kepler 452b1 by 1 under the control of Zero. Just one week later, the originally desolate star system has become lively. Small starships shuttle back and forth between planets, transporting various materials. Mechanical arms that are thousands of meters long move slowly through the universe, completing their respective manufacturing tasks delicately and quickly. Earth, the flagship of human civilization, stays quietly not far from Kepler 452b. The antimatter engine at its tail emits weak gamma rays, driving this old flagship to silently follow Kepler 452b. Inside the command center, Shen Siwen stood in front of the academicians with a serious expression. The real-time image of Kepler 452b is showing in the holographic projection beside him. Dear academicians, the planetary transformation plan has been completed and passed zero preliminary verification, he said in a deep voice. Next, let me briefly introduce the transformation plan to you. As he spoke, he stretched his hand across the holographic projection. First and foremost, what urgently needs to be addressed is the intense greenhouse effect that is running out of control on the planet. Considering the issue of the transformation cycle, I am not prepared to choose the traditional atmospheric transformer one to implement the transformation. As the words fell, a familiar yet unfamiliar thing appeared in the holographic projection. This is his. What the H L? Academician Shin. Are you crazy? The moment the projection appeared, the originally quiet and orderly command center exploded. Even Lu Yongchang, who had gone through ups and downs and had seen all big scenes, couldn't help but frown. Antimatter bomb, he whispered softly. Yes, it's the antimatter bomb. Shin Shenwen's expression became excited. With the power of the antimatter bomb explosion, we can directly blow away the dense atmosphere on Kepler 452b. In addition, we found that Kepler 452b has a relatively flat surface, which will have a greater impact on future sea building projects. Calculation results show that if the current landform characteristics are used, once the sea building project is implemented, more than 85% of the land will be flooded. With the help of antimatter bombs, we can quickly create oceans, basins, and other surface structures in the planned area. Along with Shin Shinwen's words, several huge mushroom clouds appeared extremely suddenly on the surface of the desolate planet in the holographic projection. The mushroom cloud expanded violently, and the shock wave of the explosion directly penetrated the dense atmosphere of Kepler 452b. In an instant, it was like a hole was broken in the atmosphere, and a large amount of accelerated atmosphere spewed out from the hole and escaped into the surrounding desolate space. At the same time, several huge, deep pits appeared on the originally flat ground. After filling with water, this is the ocean of Kepler 452b. His. Looking at this spectacular simulation, even Lu Yongchang couldn't help but gasp. Crazy. So crazy. Don't tell me. He has never seen such a scene. After the explosion of 19,131 precisely placed antimatter bombs, the density of Kepler 452b's atmosphere will drop to a range where humans can live normally. At the same time, the loss of a large amount of carbon dioxide will also greatly reduce the greenhouse effect. Shin Shinwen continued. The next step is the second step. The sea construction project. There are many water-rich comets in the Kepler 452 star system. With their help, we can easily turn Kepler 452b into Earth 2.0. The third step is global climate macro control. Through the network of climate control satellites and 
Atmospheric Transformer 1. We can quickly complete the final fine-tuning of the atmosphere. Preliminary calculations show that it will take approximately 30 to 50 years to complete all the renovation work. The following is the feasibility calculation report provided by Zero. There was dead silence in the command center. Looking at the academicians who were thinking carefully with their brows furrowed, Shin Shuwen had a trace of uneasiness deep in his eyes. Pa. 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 The applause from Lu Yongchang broke the dead silence. The next second, the sparse applause quickly became enthusiastic. Chapter 664, Selection Issue. Earth, Office of the Speaker of the People's League of Nations. The office door slowly opened, and Fong Su's voice came from outside the door. Chairman Hong, are you free now? The movement of chairs and the sound of footsteps sounded at the same time, followed closely by Hong Chiming's slightly dull voice. Academician Fong, long time no see. Along with the rapid footsteps, the dull voice gradually became louder. Quick, please come in. Looking at the familiar, slightly wrinkled face in the office, Fong Su also had a long lost smile on his face. Long time no see. Long time no see. The last time we met was probably hundreds of years ago. Right? Fong Su looked at Hong Chiming teasingly and walked towards the office. Hey! Hong Chiming waved his hand helplessly. If you include the length of hibernation, we should not have seen each other for almost 800 years. When I woke up, I even felt that I was a little behind the times. Warp navigation, something I never dared to think about has come true. Facing Hong Chiming's sigh, Fong Su sat on the chair happily. How about it? Are you free now? He asked with a smile. I'm free. Of course I'm free. Hong Chiming said repeatedly. The parliament just woke up from hibernation. And now everyone doesn't know what to do. As he said that, he spread his hands and looked at Fong Su helplessly. There is no way. Except for the academicians of your academy of sciences. No ordinary people are awake at all. Even if we want to do something. We can't do anything. Fong Su looked at Hong Chiming with a smile. Don't worry, Chairman Hong. No. Am I here to cause trouble for you? Hong Chiming, does anyone talk like that? Or has he failed to keep up with the times? Currently, human civilization has entered the fifth level of civilization. And we have basic self-protection capabilities. Fong Su looked a little more serious. Therefore, Professor Liu decided to change the policy towards alien civilization. We need to develop our own power. Hong Chiming's eyes moved slightly. You mean, ally? Has the Academy of Sciences discovered other civilizations now? Not an ally. Fong Su shook his head slightly and corrected Hong Chiming. To be precise, he is a vassal. Hong Chiming's voice suddenly paused, and he asked in an incredible tone. A vassal? Yes, a subsidiary civilization. Fong Su explained in detail. We need to give key technologies to affiliated civilizations and they need to pay for various resources and even lives. This civilization development model is imitated by the sweeper civilization. The development of higher civilization requires more and more resources. Although there is no shortage of resources in the universe, it is too big. If we want to ensure the rapid development of human civilization, we must absorb enough subsidiary civilizations. Hong Chiming nodded silently. I understand. What Professor Lu means is, you also know that the people in the Academy of Sciences like to do research. Let them deal with the complex relationships between civilizations. It is better to let them die. Fong Su laughed self-deprecatingly. So, Professor Liu wants to some people must be selected within the parliament for training. Specifically responsible for the liaison work between human civilization and other civilizations and the absorption of affiliated civilizations. Don't worry about the theory. The school of sociology will fully assist them. Hong Chiming was stunned. He frowned slightly and thought carefully. Let me think about it. As he spoke, he reached out and pulled up the members' information and began to screen them one by one. Xenophilia. I'm afraid we have to exclude this group of congressmen first. Hong Chiming muttered to himself. But such people are considered a different species in the parliament. Fong Su didn't speak. Just nodded in agreement. After all, subsidiary civilization is just a nice way of saying it. Good congressman who upholds xenophobia cannot do the dirty work of absorbing subordinate civilizations. To be honest, sometimes I admire you a lot, Fong Su said with a wry smile. I can't understand why under the previous circumstances there were xenophiles in the parliament. And how did you tolerate them? Of? Hong Chiming shrugged. To put it simply, when birds are big, they can be found in any forest. Fong Su was stunned for a moment, then burst into laughter. 
as for how to tolerate them. Hong Chiming waved his hand and looked at Fong Su helplessly. This is the parliament after all. I can only pretend that I haven't seen their proposal. After saying that, Hong Chiming once again crossed out some of the names of some members. Extreme xenophobia. This must also be eliminated. Otherwise, let alone absorbing affiliated civilizations. Who knows what trouble will happen. This time, the list was quickly whittled down. Obviously, extreme xenophobia is the mainstream trend among congressmen. Hong Chiming carefully looked at the list in front of him, which had been streamlined several times, and thought for a moment. Yes. He raised his hand and drew a circle on a person's name. Lin Shi Wang. I have an impression of this guy. He is a good material. Fong Su curiously opened Lin Shu Guang's identity information. Hey, you are still a new generation born in Dawn Star. He exclaimed with some surprise. You have become a member of parliament at such a young age. Your ability is extraordinary. Hong Chiming smiled and affirmed Fong Su's words. It's unusual. Born in the public support system. Received a good education. Have a strong sense of belonging and responsibility for human civilization. It is xenophobic. But not extreme. It just meets Professor Lu's requirements. The ability to perform on the spot is also passable. Okay. Just him. Fong Su interrupted Hong Chiming and said directly, I still believe in the candidate recommended by Chairman Hong. However, just to be on the safe side, the sociology department may have to conduct a few more tests. Hong Chiming smiled and nodded. It should be so. After all, this is a major event related to civilizations. So it is definitely right to be cautious. By the way, Chairman Hong. Fong Su said as he stood up. Help me pick a few more people. I can't send him to do all the tasks by himself. Right? Okay. Okay. The smile on Hong Chiming's face grew stronger. Give me a day. After I confirm the candidates, I will directly ask them to report to the School of Sociology. Chapter 665 School of Sociology After watching Fong Su leave, the smile on Hong Chiming's face gradually dissipated and his expression became serious. From Fong Su's words, he could clearly feel the importance the Academy of Sciences attached to this matter. It's difficult. Hong Chiming sighed softly and turned to look at the list of few people left in the holographic projection. He carefully flipped through each member's information and marked each one on the list carefully. For a long time, Hong Chiming breathed a long sigh of relief, straightened up from his seat, tapped his finger on the list of 50 people in the holographic projection, and whispered, Zero, help me call these people over. The specific details. Don't need to tell them for the time being. Two hours later, Lin Shuguang left the chairman's office with a bit of confusion in his eyes. Congressman Lin, what did Chairman Hong tell you? As soon as he walked out of the office door, Lin Shuguang was dragged over by a council member waiting in the corridor. Chiu Feng? After seeing the speaker clearly, Lin Shuguang asked in a low voice with some surprise. Why are you here too? As he spoke, he turned his head and glanced at the open door of the chairman's office, and lowered his voice again and said, Is this also the order from Chairman Hong? Chiu Feng nodded nervously, and said in a somewhat eager tone, Yes, I was getting familiar with the new gadgets in the fleet when I suddenly received a message from Ling. So, he took a deep breath and looked at Lin Chi Wang sincerely. What happened? Why did Chairman Hong want to meet with us alone? Hearing this, Lin Chi Wang's eyes became more confused. He shook his head and murmured in a low voice, I, I don't know. Chairman Hong just asked me to report to the sociology branch. I don't know the specific details. That's all? Chiu Feng asked in disbelief. School of Sociology? Are there any cooperation projects between the Congress and the School of Sociology? Lin Shi Wang shook his head again. I don't know. As he spoke, he hesitated for a while and said hesitantly. But I feel it should be a good thing. School of Sociology. Chinese Academy of Sciences. It should be here. Lin Shi Wang looked at the words displayed on the holographic projection, with a hint of hesitation on his face. Speaking of which, the relationship between the School of Sociology and the Parliament is quite close. When Dawn Star was first developing, in order to ensure the advancement of the social welfare system, there was a lot of close communication between the sociology branch and the Parliament. But at that time, he was just a little guy. I vaguely remember that he was standing in the crowd at that time watching the social academicians communicating with Chairman Hong with a little excitement. That extremely complete social public education system model deeply shocked Lin Shiguang at that time. Later, he succeeded in serving as a perfectly ordinary member of parliament. Naturally, 
newcomers, like him, were not involved in exchanges with the School of Sociology. Therefore, until now, he still has a little awe for these scientific researchers. He looked at the closed door in front of him and the row of holographic door numbers above the door and took a deep breath. After calming down, he stepped forward and walked forward. Uh huh. The door opened automatically, and the spacious and bright room inside appeared in front of Lin Shuguang. In the holographic projections, various data and models that he could not understand were presented. Logically speaking, such a scene should have brought quite a shock to Lin Shuguang. But his eyes did not stay on these tall data and models. Instead, he was attracted by the scene not far away. An academician wearing scientific research clothes was lying on his desk with his back on his desk, holding a bag of uneaten snacks in his hand, looking straight at the holographic projection above. Seeing such an eye-catching scene, Lin Shiguang's eyes couldn't help but twitch slightly. Hey! Someone is finally here! Perhaps hearing the sound of the door opening, the academician lying on the desk sat up suddenly, holding a snack bag in his hand and came towards him. Brother, are you from the parliament? This extremely strong contrast immediately made Lin Shiguang freeze on the spot. Huh? Ah! What? I'm asking you. Are you from the parliament? Ah, oh, yes. Yes. Chairman Hong sent me here. Lin Shiguang stuttered in response, while staring blankly at the colorful snack bag. Huh? Do you want some? The academician noticed Lin Shiguang's eyes, raised his hand, and raised the snack bag. Butter and spicy hot pot flavored potato chips. These are rare goods. The artificial gravity device on Earth only covers a small area. If you want to eat hot pot, you can't eat it. You can only eat this to satisfy your craving. Here, want one. With that said, he handed the snack bag to Lin Shuguang. No, no need. Lin Shuguang obviously hadn't adapted to such a chat rhythm yet. So he refused repeatedly. Excuse me, what is your name? Academician Lin put down the snack bag casually, dragged a holographic projection across it, glanced at it, and raised his eyebrows. Hey, we are still from the same family. My surname is Lin. Lin Zile. Nice to meet you. Counselor Lin Shuguang. The name is good. It reminds me of the days when the social welfare system was first implemented. Lin Shuguang was slightly startled, and the look on his face suddenly became serious. Relax. Academician Lin smiled and patted Lin Shuguang's shoulder. Our place is different from the parliament. There aren't so many rules. As long as you can produce research results, you can turn your laboratory into a playground. Lin Shuguang's eyes twitched. He nodded with a wry smile and said, I can tell. You are the first one to come to the School of Sociology. Just when Lin Shuguang was relaxing a little, Academician Lin changed the subject and stared directly at Lin Shuguang. The expression on his face became serious. Hong, did the chairman of the council tell you what you are going to do after you come here? Lin Shuguang's eyes flashed with astonishment, and he shook his head subconsciously. I... I don't know. Very good. Academician Lin nodded with satisfaction. Chairman Hong's work is as reassuring as ever. That I... In just a few minutes, Lin Shuguang, who had all the power to speak, asked hesitantly, Do I need to do anything? Chapter 666 People's League Diplomatic Policy No rush. No rush. Academician Lin smiled, waved his hand, and asked casually, What do you think of alien civilization? Lin Shuguang's eyes were even more confused. How come it's so easy to get involved with alien civilizations again? Such a jumping topic greatly consumes Lin Shuguang's energy and thinking ability. How do you think we should treat alien civilizations? Perhaps sensing Lin Shuguang's doubts. Academician Lin added again. How to deal with alien civilization? Lin Shuguang frowned slightly. And after thinking for a moment, he uttered one word. Hit! Looking back at the past thousand years of history, we have sacrificed too much for the continuation of civilization. There is an old saying that goes well. Why repay kindness with kindness for evil? So, for these alien civilizations, we should. Those are just some alien civilizations. Academician Lin interrupted Lin Shuguang's words. According to the painting, as the level of civilization increases, the laws of the dark forest no longer apply. That's just the painting as one-sided rhetoric. We can't confirm the true situation of the universe at all. Lin Shuguang's emotion suddenly became excited. Academician Lin, you won't be like the group of people in the parliament and decide to make peace with alien civilizations. Let's get along together. This, this is simply a traitor to human civilization. Lin Shuguang panted heavily and stared at Academician Lin in front of him with slightly red eyes. Listen to me first. 
Academician Lin was not angry, but said in a calm tone, What would you think if I told you that a group of individuals from extraterrestrial civilizations already live in the biological laboratory of the Academy of Sciences? What? Lin Shiwang's face changed drastically, and he exclaimed, How could Professor Lu allow this to happen? It's Professor Lu's order. The reason is, they have high scientific research value. So they are now a subsidiary civilization of human civilization. Academician Lin said softly, Do you understand what this means? Lin Shiwang's face relaxed a little. I see. So, what is your attitude now? Academician Lin looked seriously, staring straight into Lin Shiwang's eyes, trying to read his true thoughts. Lin Shiwang subconsciously moved his eyes away. But soon, he moved his eyes back and looked directly into Academician Lin's eyes openly. For those civilizations that are hostile to human civilization, I still stick to my previous idea and fight. Hit them until they obey. If they don't, beat them until they become extinct. As for those civilizations that can contribute to human civilization, we can consider accepting them as subsidiary civilizations. Lin Shiwang said word by word. Of course, this must pass strict tests. And at the same time, strict regulations must be made on them. Restrictions. Academician Lin did not speak, still staring into Lin Shuguang's eyes. After a long while, he smiled and extended his right hand to Lin Shuguang. Congratulations, Congressman Lin Shuguang. You will become a member of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Federation. Your main responsibility is to deal with various matters between human civilization and extraterrestrial civilization. Next, the School of Sociology will carry out corresponding training courses for you. At the same time, we will conduct rigorous testing and training on your professionalism. In addition, in future work, the sociology branch will be the main technical support department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Federation. As time goes by, the Kepler 452 star system changes more and more. The originally desolate and empty star system has now gradually turned into a bustling zone. The successful deployment of the Dyson Cloud system has renewed critical energy for the fleet. And at the same time, it has also made the infrastructure monster of human civilization active again under zero's control countless projects progress simultaneously with the joint efforts of hundreds of space starship factories the fleet expansion and upgrading project has been carried out in order to adapt to the next development direction the fleet types of human civilization have also begun to be subdivided the flagship naturally is earth and this will never change the secondary flagship officially renamed Titan Mothership, is the core starship of each branch fleet, Golden Crow Battleship, Xuanwu Frigate, White Tiger Destroyer. Starships equipped with a variety of weapons and defense devices are continuously produced from factories. The other side, the planetary terraforming work of Kepler 452B has already begun. Tens of thousands of small antimatter bombs detonated one after another, directly lifting the extremely dense atmosphere of Kepler 452B. Its relatively flat surface has also seen dramatic changes. Under the plate movement, 10,000 meter high mountains rose from the ground, and volcanoes that had been dormant for countless years began to erupt again. The radiation brought by the antimatter bomb had not yet dissipated, and three huge ice comets fell into the atmosphere under the tug of the Tau Tai material ship. The majestic heavy rain suddenly filled the entire planet, washing away traces of past life on this ancient planet. Not only Kepler 452b, but also other planets in the star system, as long as they are valuable for mining, have been included in the mining plan. These are all changes within the star system. Outside the star system, the interstellar region with extremely thin matter is already filled with various detectors and space forts. At the same time, small probes were sent to nearby star systems. While guarding against the invasion of alien civilization, human civilization needs to understand its surrounding environment as soon as possible, with all work on track. Liu Yongchang finally issued the order that the academicians had been waiting for. Everyone, I declare that the People's Academy of Sciences will fully restart scientific research. Chapter 667 Tachyon First of all, the first project we need to overcome is communication technology. Liu Yongchang stood in front of the command center, looking solemnly at all the academicians of the Academy of Sciences present. Currently, the Space Starship Factory has successfully manufactured the first planet-class starship. Although it is only a small engineering ship and does not carry many advanced weapon modules, its comprehensive performance has far exceeded the scope of the original satellite-class starship. For planet-class starships equipped with a new generation of curvature engines, 
The curvature navigation speed has been increased to 30C, which is still far from the theoretical upper limit of 50C. But these caps are just a bunch of useless numbers to us today. Due to the obstacles of communication technology, the Starship's sailing speed can still only be maintained at 10C and below. Communication technology has become the biggest shortcoming limiting the strength of the fleet. Liu Yongchang's voice echoed in the command center. The expressions on the faces of the academicians of the Academy of Sciences gradually became serious. Everyone is aware of this problem. However, Yong Chan, do you think, besides quantum long-distance communication, what other means of communication can exceed the speed of light? Fong Su sighed softly and said with some confusion, Academician Mo Ziyang has been working hard to improve quantum communication technology. He also reported to me the progress of the work. But we have not found a way to circumvent the event form theory. Lu Yong Chan chuckled and waved his hand gently. Quantum communication is definitely not going to work. We need to blaze a new trail. As he spoke, he raised his right hand and operated on the blue holographic projection beside him. A line of bright white text slowly emerged in the projection. Tachyon communication technology. After a short period of silence, low and intensive discussions came from all directions in the command center. Two days ago, Lu Yong Chang is sitting in his office, which is one of the few areas in the earth that is covered with artificial gravity. He stretched his body, lay back on the office chair, and breathed a long sigh of relief. A brand new star system means a lot of chores. Fortunately, with everyone's efforts, these trivial matters were resolved one by one, and the human fleet gradually got on the right track of development. With a slight smile on his lips, he slowly closed his eyes. With a slight movement of consciousness, he sank into the technology tree system in his mind. The model technology tree background remained as it always was, exuding a mysterious aura that constantly attracted his attention. Lu Yong Chang, who had a clear purpose, did not pay too much attention to this weird background, and directly focused his attention on the white technology tree suspended in the air. Since entering the era of technological explosion, the technology tree of the fifth level civilization has been lit up a lot. His gaze skipped the bright cursors and extended directly to the extremely dim font. Tachyon communication technology. Chopsticks? Countless information about Tachyon suddenly appeared in Lu Yong Chang's mind. Does this thing really exist? At the same time, deep confusion arose in his mind. But soon, he put these doubts behind him, the technology marked on the technology tree. So far, has not had any errors. He began to focus himself. Inspiration also sprung up in his mind, like mushrooms after a rain. Chopsticks? Not far away. Mo Ziyang frowned slightly and muttered in a low voice. Does this thing really exist? Since the beginning of the Earth's time, tachyons, subatomic particles, have always existed in the conjectures of human scientists. Subatomic particles, also known as subatomic particles, refer to particles with structures smaller than atoms, such as electrons, protons, neutrons, etc. According to theoretical speculation, the speed of tachyons is infinite and far exceeds the speed of light. Therefore, in a sense, it can achieve true long-distance communication, no matter where you are in the universe. Tachyons can arrive in an instant. But, as of now, tachyons still only exist in the mathematical system. We have never observed evidence of the existence of tachyons, Fang Su said in a deep voice. Yes, Lu Yongchang nodded lightly. The observation of tachyons, or in other words, the observation of superlight objects, far exceeds our previous technical level. Lu Yongchang's words touched the hearts of many academicians. I understand. I understand. You mean, Tao Yuda suddenly realized with a bit of excitement in his eyes. If we want to observe tachyons, we must sit on a curvature spacecraft? Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction with a smile in his eyes. Right. If you compare the universe to an ocean, the speed of light is an uncrossable divide, which is the surface of the ocean. Below the speed of light is sea water and our visible universe. Protons, neutrons, electrons, these sublight speed particles can never exceed the speed of light under normal circumstances. And those tachyons, such as tachyons, can never travel slower than the speed of light, where they are is in the sky above the sea. This creates a phenomenon. We who live in the sublight universe can never spy on the phenomena that occur in the superlight universe, unless we break free from the shackles of the sea and rush into the sky. The warp engine brings us a breakthrough. I guess that when our sailing speed exceeds the speed of light, some of the same experiments may yield some additional discoveries. Chapter 668 Imaginary Numbers Are Not Imaginary Imaginary mass. 
I know that this kind of groundless speculation will not play any substantial role in scientific research. After saying that, Liu Yongcha chuckled. But that was your guess, an academician shouted. For so long, Professor Liu, your guess has never been falsified. Liu Yongchan curled his lips and said half-jokingly, What if it's wrong this time? Then, the academician who spoke scratched his head, and an awkward smile suddenly appeared on his face. There was also a slight, kind laughter in the command center. Okay, let's get down to business. Liu Yongchan stretched out his hand and dragged a holographic projection and started writing on it. It's empty talk. Next, I will briefly explain to you the reasons for making this judgment. After the words fell, the originally relaxed atmosphere in the command center suddenly became solemn. Every academician widened his eyes, fearing to miss even one punctuating step. After all, everyone knows that Professor Liu's deduction steps are particularly unconventional. In a daze, you might have missed some important information. First of all, according to the special theory of relativity, objects with mass cannot exceed the speed of light. Just like protons and electrons, their running speed can only be infinitely close to the speed of light. So, for tachyons, we need to introduce a concept. Virtual mass. A long time ago, during the study of quantum physics, we came to a conclusion. Imaginary numbers are not imaginary. Imaginary numbers that have meaning in mathematics also have corresponding meanings in reality. As he spoke, Lu Yongchang quickly wrote something on the holographic projection. Based on the derivation steps here, we can extrapolate the concept of imaginary numbers. This extends the concept of virtual mass. And the mass of tachyon is an imaginary mass. It is precisely because of this that it can break away from the constraints of special relativity and become a faster than light particle. As Liu Yongchang's words echoed in everyone's ears, there were more and more complicated formulas in the holographic projection. The speculation on the properties of tachyons is also based on the concept of virtual mass. Unlike ordinary particles, Tachyons have a speed far exceeding the speed of light from the moment they appear. Its speed will increase infinitely as energy is dissipated, which is different from the particles we usually recognize. The moment its energy is exhausted and approaches zero, its speed will approach infinity. Therefore, if we want to observe tachyons, we must slow them down, which means we need to input a lot of energy into them. But even so, its speed will not be lower than the speed of light. Only with the help of curvature navigation can we get the opportunity to observe it. On the side, Tao Yudam murmured thoughtfully. Then if tachyons really exist, we can draw a simple conclusion. What? Lu Yongchang heard Tao Yudam's mumbling, and he turned to cast an inquiring look at Tao Yudam. Tao Yudam was silent for a while and said with a firm tone, Our universe is composed of virtual and real parts. The real universe is the visible universe within the speed of light, while the virtual universe is the invisible universe above the speed of light. After hearing this, Lu Yongchang also fell into deep thought. After a long while, he nodded hesitantly and confirmed Tao Yuda's statement. This conclusion can indeed be drawn. Lu Yongchang's words caused quite a stir in the command center. Academicians from related majors began to discuss it one after another. No, that's not right. Fang Su's voice drowned out all the subtle discussions. Professor, Tachyon has a big problem. Our cause and effect is reversed. Within the light cone, everything is destiny. The emergence of Tachyon seems to break this proposition. I understand what you mean, Lu Yongchang said softly. For the visible universe, the emergence of Tachyon seems to mean that it is possible to travel back in time, and the causal relationship will also be reversed. But the universe is fair. According to current inferences, we can only discover Tachyons when traveling at super light speeds and receive information transmitted with the help of Tachyons. In other words, only if we transcend the light cone can we obtain information outside the light cone. Cause and effect are not reversed. But what if? Fong Su said with an ugly face. What if tachyons break through this limit and affect the visible universe? If time can be turned back and cause and effect can be reversed, it means that our physics system has a huge problem to some extent. This will be an extremely huge blow to the science of human civilization. Fong Su's words were like a heavy hammer, hitting everyone's hearts hard. Going back in time and reversing cause and effect will cause countless paradoxes. Whether it is science or philosophy, it will be a subversive storm. Lu Yongchang took a deep breath, with a look of contemplation in his eyes. He raised his hand and waved it gently. Be quiet and let me think carefully. The noisy command center became quiet again. Lu Yongchang raised his head and looked at the holographic clock interface in the distance. The hands move clockwise minute by minute, and the river of time flows forward evenly. 
Suddenly, the hands began to turn backwards, and the river of time began to flow backwards. The whole universe has changed. The relationship between cause and effect is no longer maintained. A person will die suddenly while walking on the road. The reason is that a flower pot will hit him ten minutes later. Lu Yongchan shook his head vigorously, throwing this extremely terrifying picture out of his head. So far, we have never observed this happening. Lu Yongchan said word for word. Perhaps, there is some kind of self-correction mechanism in the universe that we don't know yet, which can prevent this situation from happening. Or, parallel universe theory. As long as it affects a parallel universe, this incredible scenario will not occur. When he said these words, Lu Yongchan felt his heart tremble slightly. Could it be that? Lu Yongchan calmed down and suppressed the unfounded suspicions in his heart. He raised his hand and gently rubbed his slightly aching temple. Don't think about it so much yet. Whatever we can think of, they can think of. Since the universe has been running without any problem so far, let's not worry about it. Think about the specific experimental issues. They. Fong Su's face darkened and he murmured in a low voice. Who are they? They are naturally those advanced civilizations. Sweeper. Pastoralist. Compared with human civilization, these advanced civilizations seem to be more likely to achieve such a feat. Thinking of Fong Su here, he suddenly felt a chill coming from behind. Chapter 669 The Traces Left by Tachyon One month later, after repeated improvements and improvements, the experimental plan was successfully released. The entire experimental process was placed on a specially customized small starship. The overall shape of this experimental ship is spindle-shaped and the outside of the experimental ship is surrounded by circles of ring-shaped facilities. These ring-shaped facilities are the tracks of the particle accelerator. According to the experimental plan, the Academy of Sciences will conduct another high-energy particle collision experiment while traveling at superlight speed. Since the particle acceleration orbit on the experimental ship is small, and the acceleration energy provided is relatively weak, most of the particle acceleration work is placed outside the starship under the ultra-large particle accelerator built by countless ship-based drones. Protons will be accelerated to 1 minus 1 divided by 10 to the power of 40, the speed of light. These particles will then be sent into an orbit around the experimental ship and maintain their own speed under the influence of a magnetic field. Next, the experimental ship will enter the curvature navigation state driven by the curvature engine. In order to prevent communication interruptions, the maximum speed of navigation is set at 10 times the speed of light. The last step is also the most critical step. At the same time as the particles collide, several high-energy laser generators will release high-energy lasers into the collision area. The purpose of this is naturally to provide energy to the so-called tachyons as much as possible and slow down their speed so that humans can observe them. Attention all units. The tachyon observation experiment begins now. Activate the magnetic field of the ship-based drone. Particle acceleration begins now. After several inspections to confirm that there were no omissions, the experiment began. Like the last particle acceleration, the entire acceleration process takes about a year. One year later, Earth calendar year 3610. Professor, the proton has successfully entered the orbit of the experimental ship. The moment the electronic synthesized sound sounded, the atmosphere in the laboratory suddenly became tense. The most critical moment of the entire experiment has arrived. Start the curvature engine and drive the experimental ship into a curvature navigation state. Lu Yongchang issued the order in a deep voice. The next moment, the majestic energy brought by the annihilation of antimatter poured into the curvature engine, and the positive and negative gravitational fields were quickly generated. The experimental ship, after a short wait, disappeared directly in front of everyone. The experimental ship successfully entered the curvature state. Current speed, 1.1c. The communication status is normal. The orbiting protons are running normally. And the collision chamber is working normally. Listening to the announcement coming not far away, Lu Yongchan let out a long sigh of relief. He didn't speak, but looked up at the holographic projection directly in front of him. As time goes by, the numbers above continue to increase. 1.2c, 1.5c, 2c. Finally, when the number stopped at 10c, Lu Yongchan's eyes suddenly became sharp. The particle collision experiment has officially begun. High energy laser generation unit. Start preheating. Two protons move toward each other driven by a magnetic field. Finally, they successfully met in the central area of the collision chamber. A large amount of energy is released. And a miniature black hole appears. But soon, the micro black hole without supplies evaporated instantly. 
and dozens of high-energy laser beams hit this small collision area straightly. The collision experiment is over. A large amount of data poured into the Earth central computer from the communication link. With the assistance of Zero, the preliminary screening of data began quickly, different from the purpose of previous particle collision experiments. This time, the main data analyzed by the Academy of Sciences is the running speed of various particles produced after the collision. Time passed bit by bit, and the particle data produced by the collision were eliminated one by one none of them traveled faster than the speed of light. Seem! Bong Su looked at the collision data that had bottomed out, raised his hand, and patted Liu Yongchang's shoulder gently, comforting softly. It seems there is no tachyon. We seem to be on the wrong track. Liu Yongchang's eyes were still sharp, staring at the holographic projection in front of him. No! It's not over yet! Tachyons must exist! It's not so much confidence as it is trust in the technology tree. Fong Su sighed softly, shook his head, and seemed to want to say something, but was interrupted by the piercing siren. Drop! Dip! Dip! Abnormal data detected. The corners of Liu Yongchang's mouth raised slightly, showing a faint smile. And at the same time, he gave Fong Su a proud wink at the side. As for Fong Su, he stayed in place blankly, his eyes full of shock. The holographic projection screen changed rapidly, and the highlighted abnormal data was clearly presented in front of everyone. Gamma rays? Looking at the data in front of him, Liu Yongchang raised his eyebrows. In this set of abnormal data, there are a total of two gamma rays running in opposite directions. At the same time, the intensity of the gamma rays changes from strong to weak. What? What do you mean? Fong Su frowned and asked in a low voice. Isn't it just an ordinary gamma ray? No. This is not an ordinary gamma ray. Li Yongchang seemed to have figured out something. And his expression suddenly became vivid. I understand. I understand. Tachyon. These are the traces left by tachyon movement. We found it. Liu Yongchang's reaction made all the academicians present confused. Wait, wait, wait! Fong Su stretched out his hand and grabbed the ecstatic Liu Yongchang. Please tell me clearly first. What trace? How can this be the trace of tachyon motion? Liu Yongchang took a deep breath, suppressed the excitement deep in his heart, and explained carefully. Before explaining, I need to clarify two concepts. First of all, tachyons travel faster than the speed of light. Secondly, Tachyons continue to release energy outwards during their motion. And at the same time, their speed will become higher and higher. Is that understandable? After receiving a positive answer, Liu Yongchang organized some words and said again, According to the current experimental data, the way tachyons release energy is to release gamma rays outward. The speed of gamma rays is the speed of light. This creates a phenomenon. The gamma rays it releases cannot catch up with it. Liu Yongchang rubbed his hands excitedly and spoke faster. Imagine a tachyon passing in front of your eyes while releasing gamma rays. It's so fast that, initially, you can't see it. You can only see it when the gamma rays it emits pass by you. This presents an interesting observation. Two gamma rays traveling in opposite directions. One gamma ray is chasing the direction of the tachyon, and the other is passing the gamma ray you released before. The two directions are opposite. At the same time, due to the Doppler effect, these two gamma rays will show obvious red shifts and blue shifts. Chapter 6 70 Voices from the Pastoral Era As Liu Yongchang finished speaking, several researchers quickly turned their attention to the two sets of abnormal data in the holographic projection. Really, as Liu Yongchang said, compared with other normal gamma rays, the two groups of gamma rays show strong red shifts and blue shifts respectively. Tachyon actually exists. Fong Su's eyes widened and he looked at the various data in front of him with a look of disbelief. Liu Yongchang raised his hand cheerfully and patted Fong Su's back gently. How about it? Lao Fong, am I right? Fong Su, who was still in extreme shock, nodded blankly and murmured softly. No, that's right. But how should we control it to convey information? Fong Su seemed to have thought of something, frowned slightly, and asked a crucial question. So far, we have not even observed the particle itself. Only the traces left by its movement. I want to use it to convey information. This is too difficult. The smile on Li Yongchang's face gradually dissipated and he frowned. Yes. His eyes moved slightly. So, what we have to do now is to reduce the speed of tachyons as much as possible. And at the same time find ways to observe and control them. Inside Li Yongchang's office, the hands of the holographic clock beat quietly in the clockwise direction as usual, marking the flow of time forward minute by minute. Late at night, however, 
Lu Yongchan did not rest. Instead, he stood up from his seat and walked slowly to the porthole. His eyes looked through the porthole to the planet in the distance that was being reborn. The atmosphere in the office was extremely peaceful. But in his mind, it was as intense as the world was turned upside down. The quantum state brain is running rapidly, thinking about various data in the experiment. Quasi! Quasi! Lu Yongchang murmured softly. Is it really the result of a particle collision experiment? Suddenly, he seemed to have thought of something, and his doubtful eyes suddenly became serious. At the same time, there was a strong sense of disbelief deep in his eyes. No, it can't be. He calmed down and calmed down his emotions. It's just a guess and needs data to support. With that said, he turned back to his seat and replanned the next experimental plan. In order to achieve this goal, the Academy of Sciences conducted countless similar experiments. A large amount of resources were poured into it. And for this reason, the original development plan of the Kepler 452 star system was even delayed. Fortunately, all efforts are effective. Based on experimental data one after another, the Academy of Sciences has preliminarily analyzed tachyons and has also unveiled the mysterious corner of the super light universe. The universe is filled with tachyons. Lu Yongchang stood next to a holographic projection, pointing at the dense experimental data and calculation formulas on it, and announced this important discovery to everyone in the laboratory with a somewhat excited expression. Right now, there are countless tachyons passing by around you and me. Why haven't we seen them? There are two main reasons. One is that over a long period of time, they have almost dissipated their own energy, and they no longer emit any radiation. Second, their speed is too fast. Under normal circumstances, without curvature technology, it is impossible to observe the scene of the superlight universe in the light speed universe. Speaking of this, Lu Yongchang took a deep breath and seemed to be mentally preparing. Everyone, based on the information the painting left us, I have a guess. The number of tachyons in the universe is likely to be constant. The moment he finished speaking, the quiet laboratory suddenly became noisy. Every academician is discussing something with the people around him. But it is obvious from the expressions of the academicians that almost everyone does not agree with Lu Yongchang's view. Quiet! Lu Yongchang frowned slightly and shouted in a deep voice. Listen to me first. When the laboratory returned to calm again, he pointed at the experimental data in the holographic projection. Even if particle collision experiments are not used and a large amount of energy is simply released into the experimental area, we can more or less observe traces of tachyon motion. What does that mean? It means that tachyons already exist in this universe. Whether it is particle collision or laser beam bombardment, it is nothing more than providing a large amount of energy to it, allowing it to temporarily reduce its running speed and briefly present its running trajectory and it's just in front of us. Lu Yongchang's tone became fierce. Therefore, the universe is filled with tachyons. You should have no objection to this. Right. The academicians nodded silently. Okay. Let me ask another question. Where do they come from? Lu Yongchang asked loudly. This. Tao Yudo on the side replied tentatively. From the moment the universe was born? Yes. Lu Yongchang nodded. So, I thought of some of the information revealed by the painting. At the beginning of the birth of the universe, it was what they call the pastoral era. 11-dimensional space and time. And tachyons may be a remnant of that era. A long time has passed. And all tachyons have exhausted their own energy. And they are like ghosts. Traveling around in the extremely huge universe. The academicians looked at each other. Obviously, they were shocked by Lu Yongchang's bold conjecture. I focused on the gamma rays released by tachyons in each experiment. Lu Yongchang continued. Based on the study of gamma rays, I discovered some properties of tachyons. It's amazing that it also has wave-particle duality. I even deduced part of its frequency. And, after processing, I adjusted it to a range where the human ear can hear it, before anyone in the laboratory could react. Lu Yongchang moved his fingers slightly. A piece of audio comes from the speakers. This is the sound from the pastoral era of the universe. Lu Yongchang said softly. It is also the last remnant left by the pastoral era. The voice is deep and melodious an inexplicable feeling of sadness arose in everyone's heart. It's just like... The expression on Fang Su's face gradually dimmed. It's like a dying person giving out his last scream. Lu Yongchang nodded slightly. If the 11-dimensional space-time and the super-light universe are compared to newborns, today's three-dimensional universe and the light-speed universe are indeed like twilight old people. As he spoke, he reached out his hand and stopped the audio. Back to business. 
All the above findings mean one thing. We can modulate the tachyon waves produced by tachyons just like modulating electromagnetic waves and use them to transmit information. Chapter 671 Basic Metal Resources Are in Short Supply Liu Yongcheng's various discoveries have brought breakthroughs to the study of tachyon communication. But at the same time, a warning message appeared in the squadron far away from the main fleet of the People's Alliance. Planetary Resources Exploration and Mining Division Affiliated to the Academy of Sciences As the name suggests, the task they are responsible for is the exploration and exploitation of planetary resources. The Planetary Mineral Resources Management Bureau, where Hope and Hans had previously worked, is also within the jurisdiction of this department. Academician Wang Man is the main person in charge of this department. As usual, he came to the office and dealt with various problems in planetary mineral exploration and mining with ease. After zero layers of screening, what was placed in front of him were basically higher level events. But those are just some questions about resource extraction and exploration. For today's human civilization, mining resources on ordinary planets is already an extremely easy and convenient matter. Therefore, most of the time, his job does not face much difficulty. For example, there is a warning message glowing red. Wang Man glanced at the warning message casually. The remaining basic metal resources of the People's United Fleet are less than 10%. After being stunned for less than a second, he suddenly shuddered. Heck! What the H L is this? Wang Man, who was frightened by this message, subconsciously put his hands on the table. Click! Ouch! Wang Man rubbed his waist with a painful look on his face. Having just gotten used to the artificial gravity on the Earth, he subconsciously ignored the electromagnetic adsorption device on the old starship. But his attention was still focused on the red warning message in front of him. Didn't there still be 60% of the inventory some time ago? Wang Man used his authority to quickly check the expenditure records of the fleet's mineral resources. The mineral mining and smelting projects have not stopped. So why did it run out so quickly? A few minutes later, Wang Man raised his head with a bitter look on his face and leaned heavily on the chair behind him. Damn! They are all big consumers of basic metal resources. He sighed feebly. In the expenditure records, the uses of various basic metal resources are clearly written. Kepler 452B Circumplanetary Climate Control Satellite Network Construction Project. Dyson Cloud Antimatter Preparation Base Expansion Project. Solid Planetary Surface Resource Extraction Project. These are minor issues. The largest resource consuming projects are in the Megastructure Project and the Starship Factory. It is understandable for the Starship Factory. After all, most Starships are too old. If they want to maintain the combat effectiveness of the fleet, the replacement of Starships is a major priority. But the Megastructure Project team, he was puzzled. At this juncture, what Megastructural Project is more important than other projects? This, isn't this causing trouble for him? Once basic metal resources fail to make ends meet, he, the head of the Planetary Resources Exploration and Mining Department, will be the first to be held accountable. Thinking of this, he quickly issued an order to Zero. Zero, help me contact Academician Tang Herong immediately. Kepler 452 be outside geostationary orbit. Academician Tang Herong, after successfully completing the Dyson Sphere project, became the dedicated person in charge of the People's Federation Megastructure Project. He stood in the office, looking through the portholes from a distance to observe the movements of the engineering ships in synchronous orbit. It's really like an ant. He sighed softly. In front of real planets. Our starship is still so insignificant. But such a small starship can play with a planet. Behind him, the office door opened. And a familiar voice came from outside the door. Okay. Academician Tang. Please leave. It's sad to be here for spring and autumn. Mingyuan. How can this be sad for spring and autumn? Tang Herong turned around and looked at the visitor with a faint smile on his lips. I'm just sighing. When will our megastructure project be able to build the same? It would be nice if the planets were the same size. Wang Mingyuan pursed his lips towards the porthole on the other side. Well, isn't there one? Have you forgotten about the Dyson Sphere project? Tang Herong smiled bitterly and shook his head. Dyson Sphere? It's still far away. We haven't even successfully launched the second phase of the Dyson Ring project. Let alone the third phase of the Dyson Sphere. You should know that what I said is. Okay, okay, Academician Tang. Business matters? Let's talk about these gossips later. Wang Mingyuan interrupted Tang Hyrong's words. You should know the person in charge of the Planetary Resources Exploration and Mining Department. Right? Tang Hyrong was stunned for a moment. Then nodded and admitted. You mean that old boy Wang Man? We know him. Of course he does. 
Wang Mingyuan shrugged. That's good. Now they are here to investigate. His words made Tang Herong stun for a while. Asking about the crime? What crime? Tang Herong asked curiously. I heard it's a matter of scheduling and usage of basic metal resources. Wang Mingyuan responded helplessly. Hey, that old boy Wang man. Tang Herong's eyebrows instantly stood up. Is it bothering him if I use some resources here? Ahem, academician Tang. Are you sure? Is it some resources? As he spoke, Wang Mingyuan glanced at the engineering blueprint in the holographic projection and asked weakly, Tang Herong, if you don't speak, no one will think you are dumb. Go and do your business. I'll take care of Wang Man's side. Okay. Wang Mingyuan shrugged, turned and left the office. Uh-huh. As the door closed again, the office returned to its original tranquility. Academician Tang Herong raised his hand, gently rubbed his painful temples, and said, Zero. Help me get the communication in. Receive. The electronically synthesized sound fell, and a holographic projection automatically unfolded in front of him. I said, Lao Tang, you are not very kind in what you do. What time is it now? The fleet has just arrived in the new star system, and everything is in a state of exhaustion. You're a person engaged in megastructure projects. Why are you joining in the fun at this juncture? I've already seen it. In the entire fleet. Except for the Starship Factory. You use the most basic metals. Before I saw the person, I heard his voice first. Before the projection screen was fully unfolded, Wang Man's strong complaints could already be heard from the loudspeaker. At the beginning, Tang Herong still had a bit of a smile on his face. After all, the two of them were old friends. They hadn't seen each other for a long time and he was preparing to have a good chat with him. As a result, I heard this series of angry curses. When I came up, especially the sentence, you are the only one engaged in megastructure projects, which directly triggered the anger in Tang Hyrong's heart. Chapter 672 Giant Space Ring Residential Station Hey, wait! I said Wang Man. What do you mean? Tang Hyrong's face looked a little ugly, and there was a hint of gunpowder in his voice. What do I mean? Wang Man snorted coldly. You should know better than anyone else how much resources your megastructure project consumes. Tell you the truth. Currently, less than 10% of the basic metal resources in the fleet's inventory are left. If this continues, all construction projects will have to be suspended in a short time. Wang Man's words shocked Tang Herong. What? Tang Herong exclaimed in surprise. Why is the consumption rate so fast? Seeing Tang Herong's expression that didn't look fake, the anger on Wang Man's face gradually disappeared. He sighed forcefully, shook his head and explained. The Starship Factory consumes a huge amount of basic metal every day. As you know, all the starships in the fleet are waiting to be updated. You can imagine the speed of this consumption. As he spoke, he raised his head, glanced at Tang Hyrong's uncertain expression, and said again. In addition, on your side, the consumption of basic metals is second only to the Starship Factory. If the Starship Factory is really shut down, due to basic metal inventory problems. I cannot bear this responsibility. Tang Herong frowned and asked Wang Man with confusion. What about your planetary resource exploration and mining project? Is there something wrong? In response to Tang Herong's question, Wang Man rolled his eyes angrily. I said Lao Tang, are you pretending not to understand or do you really not understand? Who doesn't need time to mine? Sort and smelt ore? What's more? Even some resource mining and smelting equipment needs to be manufactured on site. We only have so little computing power allocated to us. How can we keep up with such a terrifying rate of resource consumption? As he spoke, Wang Man changed the subject and once again pointed the finger at Tang Herong. I said, Lao Tang, what kind of megastructure project you have is? Is it important that the fleet can be updated? Or, Wang Man winked at Tang Herong and said, I owe you a favor. Okay. There is no way. After hearing this, Tang Hyrong's expression suddenly changed. Old Wang, let alone one favor. Even ten favors. I can't stop this project. You should take advantage of this free time to think about how to quickly mine or resources. Seeing Wang Man's face instantly slumped, Tang Hyrong smiled bitterly and shook his head. Old Wang, to tell you the truth, my project here was ordered by Professor Liu himself. The importance is probably not much different from that of Starship modification. What? Wang Man couldn't help being surprised and asked in a low voice. What on earth are you building? Isn't the Dyson Cloud expansion project completed a long time ago? 
Is it the second phase of the project, Dyson Ring? Does Professor Liu take such big steps? What a mess. Tang Herong waved his hand angrily, correcting Wang Man's statement. It's a giant space ring residential station. Space, ring, habitation station? Wang Man's eyes were full of confusion. And he said word by word, What is this? Isn't Kepler 452 be designated as the residence of human civilization? The surface gravity is 2.03 g. What should newborns do? Tang Herong said bluntly. The new generation that has not yet undergone the adult ceremony cannot withstand a gravity environment of 2 g. Then, isn't there a space nurturing center? Wang Man's eyes became even more confused. The scale is too small. And the small internal space will have a bad impact on the mental health of the new generation. Tang Herong spread his hands. These are Professor Liu's original words. In order to solve the problem once and for all, we were ordered to design a ring-shaped living station. As he spoke, he stretched out his hand and dragged the holographic projection beside him, calling up a model data. The entire circular habitation station is located in the geostationary orbit of Kepler 452b and is more than 100 kilometers wide. It is equipped with artificial gravity devices and various latest technological products. The habitation station is connected to the ground via 12 giant space elevators. Old Wong, look at how big a project this is. Tang Herong smiled bitterly. The dosage of all basic metals is calculated strictly. And there is no waste. Moreover, Professor Liu said that in order to ensure the future development of human civilization, the priority of the Ring Residential Station project is second only to the Starship Replacement Project. The office suddenly fell silent. It can be seen from Wang Man's constantly changing expression that his current mood may not be much better. After a long time, a long sigh came from the speaker. Why? Lao Tang. What do you think we should do? Tang Herong was silent for a moment and whispered tentatively. How about, you ask Professor Liu. Earth. A small man shuttle that came from afar drew a beautiful arc and docked quietly next to the huge Earth. Authentication in progress. Identity verification successful. Welcome back. Academician Wang Man. As this line of bright white text appeared in front of Wang Man, a gap slowly opened in the closed port door. The gap was small, but large enough to allow a small shuttle to pass through. Under the control of the onboard computer, the small shuttle smoothly passed the port gate. Outside the window, there is a directional holographic projection flashing with green fluorescence. The shuttle followed the holographic arrow and slowly drove into a small apron. Looking at the familiar scene outside the porthole, Wang Man took a deep breath and calmed down his anxious mood. Academician Wang Man, Professor Liu is waiting for you in the office. Zero's electronic synthesized voice sounded inside the shuttle. Okay, I'll go right away. As he spoke, the hatch on the side of the shuttle opened automatically. With the help of the auxiliary device, he carefully got out of the hatch and stepped on the extremely solid deck of the Earth. Drop. Electromagnetic adsorption has been successfully switched. A slightly stiff electronic beep sounded in the helmet. Wong Man subconsciously turned his head and glanced at the port gate that was slowly closing, feeling even more anxious. In fact, at the beginning, he refused Tang Hyrong's suggestion. After all, if there is a problem with the basic metal resource reserves, he, the person responsible for exploring and mining planetary resources, needs to bear a great responsibility. But seeing the gap getting bigger and bigger, Wong Man, who couldn't think of any solution, could only follow Tang Hyrong's advice and bite the bullet and return to the Earth. Hope. Professor Liu. Don't be too angry. Wang Man followed the guidance of the holographic arrow and walked on the hard and cold deck, thinking wildly in his mind. Chapter 673, sir. Times have changed. Uh-huh. The closed door of the office suddenly opened, revealing the bizarre world inside Azure holographic projections filled with various data filled the entire office. In the center of the huge holographic projections, a small figure sat on his chair with his head buried. It can be seen from the figure's movements that he seems to be performing some important calculation work. Academician Wang, take a seat. A familiar voice came from the front. Hey! Wang Man responded quickly and carefully squeezed into this world full of formulas and data. Even though he was extremely careful, he still inevitably came into contact with the light of the holographic projection, causing ripples to appear on its surface. Wait for me for a while, and let me finish the work on hand. Lu Yongchang said softly. Wang Man felt the long-lost gravity and nodded silently. A robotic arm robot fetched a cup of hot tea with ease and placed it gently on the coffee table in front of him. Looking at the mist rising above the tea, 
and then turning to look at the endless starry sky outside the porthole. Wang Man subconsciously sighed deeply. What? Are you discouraged now? As a familiar joking voice sounded, a figure blocked the light of the holographic projection and stood in front of him. Lu. Professor Lu, I. Wang Man stood up with an embarrassed look on his face, rubbed his hands, and whispered with embarrassment. Professor, I have failed to live up to your expectations. The corners of Lu Yong Chong's mouth raised slightly, with a faint smile, and he waved his hand nonchalantly. What are you talking about? This is not your fault. The megastructure project and the starship replacement project are being carried out at the same time, which really tests the fleet's material reserves. Wang Man looked slightly moved when he heard this. Professor, what do you mean? Stop one of the projects first? Lu Yongchan glanced at Wang Man with a half smile. Pause? Why pause? Since mining technology can no longer keep up with the rate of resource consumption, let's develop new mining technology. While speaking, Lu Yongchang raised his hand and made a gesture. The dense holographic projections in the office are like spring snow under the sun, instantly turning into light particles and dissolving into the air. Only a blank holographic projection was left floating quietly beside the two of them. Professor? Wang Man looked at Li Yongchang in front of him with some confusion. New mining technology? Planetary exploration and mining have developed to this point. And it can be said that it has reached its extreme. With nanorobots paired with large-scale mining machinery. The efficiency of mineral mining has been extremely exaggerated. I really can't imagine any other way to greatly improve the efficiency of mining. As he said this, Wang Man frowned and shook his head. Open your mind a little more. Lu Yongchang smiled and raised his hand to operate the holographic projection. A familiar planetary image appeared in front of the two of them. This is Kepler 452C. Wang Man, who is engaged in planetary resource mining, recognized the planet immediately. Right. Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed with a faint light. And he said in a deep voice, according to exploration, this is an iron planet. It contains a huge amount of basic metals and rare metals inside. If it can be mined completely in a short period of time, the fleet's resource shortage problem will be greatly alleviated. Professor, I understand everything you said. Wang Man responded in a low voice. Currently, the focus of mining work is on this planet. But, too slow. Lu Yongchang directly interrupted Wang Man's words. Open your mind. Lu Yongchang emphasized again. Wang Man frowned and thought carefully. After a few minutes, he smiled bitterly and shook his head. Professor, you'd better say it clearly. I really don't understand what you mean. Lu Yongchang glared at Wang Man angrily. You, you should be smarter. Mining? Why do we need to dig and mine little by little on the planet? Why does your next excavator need to be an excavator? Wang Man, this, are you talking human language? This, if we don't mine it on the planet, where else can we mine it? In space? Wang Man asked half-jokingly. Unexpectedly, Lu Yongchang actually nodded in agreement. Academician Wang, you have finally figured it out. Wang Man, who am I? Where am I? What have I done? At this time, Wang Man's main character is a confused person. Think about it. How tiring it is to mine on a planet. Digging, mining, transporting. Lu Yongchang's voice was like a devil's whisper. Slowly lingering in his ears. Even with nanorobots and giant mining machinery. These steps are very time-consuming and laborious. I came up with a simple and crude plan. Why don't we just blow up the planet and skip the tedious steps of excavation? Mining and transportation. Wang Man. He couldn't believe his ears for a moment. What is this? If the difficulty cannot be solved, then solve the source of the difficulty? What do you think of my plan? Lu Yongchang's demonic whisper continued. Think about it. If the entire iron planet is turned into large or small fragments, we can even directly use ship-based laser cannons to attack it. How efficient it would be to carry out the smelting step in space. Wang Man swallowed hard. His emotions a little incoherent. Teach. Professor. Huh? Li Yongchang glanced at Wang Man. I think your plan is very feasible. And I think so too. Wang Man said with emotion in his eyes. He briefly imagined the scene described by Lu Yongchang. And he was so excited that he wanted to raise his arms and shout on the spot. Sir, times have changed. Who would be a serious person to use mining equipment to mine? Lu Yongchang expressed great satisfaction with Wang Man's reply. So, he briefly introduced this extremely explosive mining plan to Wang Man. First, use high-energy laser weapons and antimatter bombs to completely detonate the Iron Planet. Then, 
in order to prevent planetary debris from flying around and disturbing the movement of other celestial bodies in the star system. A large number of gravitational shield generating devices are used to generate a reverse gravitational shield to trap these debris within a fixed range. After simple sorting, reverse gravity shields and high energy laser beams are directly used to put the melting and smelting work in space. As a result, not only the mining efficiency has been greatly increased, but the smelting efficiency has also been greatly improved. Only, the most difficult point at present is how to make a weapon powerful enough to detonate a relatively small iron planet. Chapter 674 Star Destroyer Suzaku One month later, Wang Man anxiously looked at the red warning sign in the holographic projection. Although the allocation of computing power has been adjusted to zero, and more computing power should be invested in mineral mining and smelting as much as possible, it still cannot change the situation that the fleet's basic metal resources cannot make ends meet. While starship factories and megastructure projects are slowing down as much as possible, the fleet's base metal resource reserves are still falling toward the lowest warning line. Drop! A crisp tone came from the speaker, breaking the silent atmosphere in the office. I could admission one man. There is a message from the starship factory. Special order manufacturing progress. The star destroyer, Suzaku, has been assembled and is undergoing factory inspection. Okay. After hearing the news, the depression on Wang Man's face disappeared instantly, replaced by a smile full of hope and relief. He untied the electromagnetic adsorption device, stood up, and walked around the office several times. Then, he reached out and opened a document in the holographic projection and checked it carefully again. After confirming that there were no mistakes, he said in a deep voice, Zero, help me contact Professor Liu. Suzaku is about to be completed and the fleet is ready for mining. Receive. After the electronic synthesizer sounded, Wang Man opened the information about the Star Destroyer, Suzaku, with some excitement. Looking at the gorgeous fiery red lines, there was a hint of intoxication in his eyes. In the case of severe shortage of basic metal resources, in order not to affect the progress of other projects, most of the manufacturing raw materials for Suzaku come from the remanufacturing of old star ships. But this does not affect the domineering and arrogant appearance of Suzaku. Likewise, it does not affect the structural strength of Suzaku itself. Just like its name, the Star Destroyer Suzaku is like a big bird flying high, with an aura of nobility all over its body. There was a faint aura of destruction and violence in the huge gun barrel that penetrated most of the ship's body. Similar to the battering ram, the Star Destroyer Suzaku also has one main gun. Moreover, this main gun also occupies most of the space of the ship body. Of course, there is a big difference between the two. The instantaneous output power of the former is far inferior to that of the latter. In the simplest terms, the Star Destroyer cannon is reusable, while the battering ram is a disposable weapon. In addition, the Star Destroyer, Suzaku, is equipped with a large number of defense modules and high-power warp engines. According to the design of the Academicians of the Academy of Sciences, in peacetime, the main function of Suzaku is mining. But in wartime, especially for those civilizations that stick to the planet, Suzaku will be an extremely lethal weapon. Of course, the basic method of both is the same, which is to detonate the planet. Ding! The crisp message tone sounded again, interrupting one man's thoughts. He glanced over his shoulder. It's information from Professor Liu. There were only two words in the message. Approve. The time to take action on Kepler 452C is set in half a month. On the one hand, the Star Destroyer, Suzaku, still needs to undergo several factory inspections. On the other hand, the fleet needs to deploy some of the updated planet-class starships to cooperate with this unprecedented mining project. These require a lot of time to prepare. Time flies. Under Zero's control, the newly launched planet-class, Golden Crow, battleships, and Tautai, material reserve ships slowly left the fleet and were driven by antimatter engines to the vicinity of Kepler 452C. This poor iron planet does not know what is about to happen. It is still quietly orbiting the central star as it has been for billions of years. And around it, the Golden Crow battleships are ready to go. Just waiting for an order. A cage built by gravity can be generated to tightly bind it within. Wang Man sat quietly on the chair in the office looking at the small gray planet outside the porthole window. Uh-huh. The sound of the office door opening came from behind. Old Wang. Hearing this familiar voice, Wang Man showed a faint smile. Lao Tang. You are here too. Nonsense. Tang Herong sat down on the chair next to Wang Man and said angrily. Can I let such a spectacular scene go? 
As he said that, he turned around and looked around, lowered his voice slightly and asked, Lu, isn't Professor Lu here? Wang Man stared at the great planet in the distance and nodded slightly. Yes, I heard that Tachyon Communication Technology is about to achieve a breakthrough. Professor Lu is leading the people on Earth to conquer this technology. His. Tang Herong took a slight breath and exclaimed with a look of horror on his face. So fast? How long has it been? It's not that short. Wang Man shrugged. At least. For Professor Lu. Tachyon communication technology takes a long time. The corners of Tang Hyrong's mouth twitched, revealing a wry smile. He shook his head and sighed helplessly. That's right. Under normal circumstances, this amount of time would have been enough for Professor Lu to produce two research results. But now, he has not solved even one. This tachyon communication technology is really difficult. Oh, by the way, you are wrong about that. Wang Man shrugged and corrected softly. The Suzaku Star Destroyer was created by Professor Liu. So, strictly speaking, he has made a research result. The bitter smile on Tang Hyrong's face suddenly solidified. This, gods, simply gods. Listening to Tang Hyrong's repeated sighs, the corners of Wang Man's mouth raised slightly, revealing a faint smile. Suddenly, the smile on his face gradually solidified, and his eyes became sharp. His eyes focused on a point far away, outside the porthole. Looking at the looming red, he excitedly unlocked the electromagnetic adsorption device on the seat, stood up, and laid down next to the starship's porthole. Hey! It's blocking my view! Tang Hyrong's unhappy voice came from behind. I wonder if you can! Coming! Wang Man's voice was full of excitement. Suzaku is here! Tang Hyrong's complaints stopped abruptly. A sound of scrambling came from behind. A few seconds later, Tang Hyrong also stood by the porthole, pulling the corner of the porthole with his hand, putting his head as close to the porthole as possible, and looking at the distant scene. Drop! Academician Wang Man! Academician Tang Hyrong! The first planetary mining project is about to begin! Please pay attention to safety while watching the process! As Zero's electronic synthesized sound sounded behind him, the scene outside the porthole began to gradually change. Chapter 675 Death of Kepler 452C Kepler 452C The gray iron planet moves quietly in its own orbit. Stellar winds from the host star quietly blow across its atmosphereless surface, blowing up some fine debris. The force of gravity drags it along, making it perform the same motion day after day, a motion it has maintained for billions of years. Without external influence, it could continue for billions of years. Around it, Hundreds of huge starships were built into a standard hollow sphere structure. The antimatter engines at their tails glowed faintly, driving them to maintain their position. Under the light of the main star, the surface of these starships glowed with an extremely bright metallic luster. Obviously, they are all fresh off the bat. New guys. Suddenly, the light of the antimatter engines at the tails of these hundreds of starships gradually became brighter. Viewed from the surface of Kepler 452c, Hundreds of extremely bright suns seem to appear instantly in the silent night sky. The gravitational field generating device begins to operate. Under Zero's precise calculations, the joint gravity shield constructed by hundreds of Golden Crow battleships is slowly taking shape. Unlike the gravitational shield around the starship, this gravitational shield is oriented in the opposite direction. It is to prevent attacks from within. When the strength of the gravity shield gradually increased, a huge red and black starship slowly came from a distance and filled the last vacant seat on the gravity shield. Here we go! Wang Man glanced at the data in the holographic projection beside him, and his expression suddenly became excited. The gravity shield has been constructed, and the next step is to launch the Star Destroyer cannon. The moment he finished speaking, the muzzle of the Suzaku Star Destroyer began to glow with a faint purple light. As the energy gradually gathered, the purple light from the muzzle of the Star Destroyer cannon began to become richer. Gradually, the purple light overshadowed the light emitted by the antimatter engine at the rear of the starship, and also overshadowed the light emitted by the star in the distance. Purple is the only color visible on the surface of Kepler 452C. Boom! When the purple light reached its peak, a thick laser appeared from the muzzle and shot straight towards the great planet ahead. Ten seconds later, the high-energy laser beam spanned a long distance and hit the surface of the great planet. The high temperature instantly melted its ground. Blasting a planet to pieces cannot be achieved by simply placing some explosives. Even a super-large yield nuclear bomb or an antimatter bomb can only blast a small crater on the surface of a huge planet. No matter how strong a fortress is, 
there will still be flaws within it. Therefore, the first thing the Star Destroyer Cannon has to do is to create a passage to the core of the planet. High-energy laser weapons are definitely the best choice. Whether it is an iron planet or a rocky planet, it is impossible to block the exaggerated temperature of a high-energy laser beam. Under the action of the laser beam, the metal that makes up Kepler 452C has already melted into hot molten iron. They flowed freely on the surface of the gray planet, and then slowly solidified into gray scars. Just like the planet shedding its last tears, the purple high-energy laser beam continues to drill deep into the Earth's core. The high temperature activates the inner core of Kepler 452C that has been solidified for who knows how many billions of years. Violent earthquakes came from the ground, and bottomless ravines began to appear on the surface that had become somewhat rounded by the stellar wind. Drop! A clear beep sounded in my ears. The logo on the holographic projection made Wang Min and Tang Herong subconsciously hold their breath. Got through. The high-energy laser beam successfully penetrated the underground of Kepler 452C. As a result, the Star Destroyer cannon entered its second form. The power of the purple laser column begins to decay next. It only needs to maintain the existence of this channel. An antimatter bomb wrapped in layers was shot from the muzzle, blasted along the laser column, and fell straight into the depths of Kepler 452C's Earth. During the fall, the heat-resistant armor on the periphery of the antimatter bomb continued to melt under the action of the laser beam. Finally, when the antimatter bomb reaches the center of the Earth, all the outer heat-resistant armor falls off. Bang! The bomb was detonated. The antimatter contained in it immediately encountered the extremely dense planet core material on the periphery. An annihilation reaction occurs. The majestic energy generated by the annihilation of matter and antimatter turns the newly activated core into a powerful bomb. As the purple laser beam slowly extinguished, the explosive fire flashed deep in the core of the Earth. Countless bottomless gaps instantly appeared on the surface of Kepler 452c. The next moment, the spherical planet fell into pieces. And along with the scalding hot molten iron, it turned into countless fragments. Under the impact of the antimatter bomb, these large and small fragments quickly overcome their own gravity and shoot away in all directions. The effect of the gravity shield begins to appear. Rather than saying it is a gravitational shield, it is better to call it a gravitational cage. Under the influence of the gravitational cage, the speed of these planetary fragments splashing around slowly weakened, and they stagnated one by one in the cold and dead space. In just a few dozen minutes, a complete planet turned into a dense cluster of asteroids. The red-hot molten iron connects and builds bridges between asteroids, forming an extremely magnificent picture. What the H.L.? Damn! This thing is so exciting! Wong Man and Tang Herong spoke at the same time, looking at the asteroid cluster that was gradually stabilizing under the influence of the gravitational field. Tang Herong glanced sideways at Wong Man beside him. Old Wong, why are you still standing there? It's your turn to do something. Oh, yes, yes. Wong Man suddenly came back to his senses, raised his hand, and patted his head gently. Attention all units, start dividing the smelting work immediately. He didn't hesitate at all and gave the order directly. As soon as the words fell, the combined gravitational field generated by the Golden Crow battleship began to split. Each gravitational field pulled clusters of planetary fragments and spread out in all directions. This is the work of division. As for smelting, that's even simpler. Reduce the scope of the gravitational cage. Use the gravitational cage as a smelting furnace. And directly heat it with the help of beams of high-energy lasers. The heat transfer effect in space is extremely poor and there are no extra magazines. This is a perfect place for ore smelting. Suddenly, in the originally empty and cold space, balls of red-hot molten iron appeared. After the smelting was completed, the Tautai, material storage ship waiting on the side quickly followed up, took the molten iron into its belly, and began cooling and shaping in a high-purity vacuum environment. Looking at the growing string of data on the holographic projection, Tang Heron glanced at Wang Man again. Old Wang! You won't stop me from using basic metal resources now. Right. No more. No more. Wong Man said with a smile on his face. Use. It's all open for use. Chapter 676 Restarting the Planetary Fortress Construction Project. Earth. Professor. The Planetary Mining Project has been successfully completed. Electronic synthesized sound sounded in the laboratory. Interrupting Lu Yongchang's immersed writing. Is it done? Lu Yongchang raised his head and glanced at the holographic clock on the wall, with a hint of confusion in his eyes. It's pretty fast. Where's Kepler 452C? Has it been destroyed? Yes. 
There are currently only five planets left in the Kepler-452 star system. Zero responded quickly, and at the same time showed the explosion scene of Kepler-452c on the holographic projection. How is the working status of the gravity compensation ship? Lu Yongchang asked Zero as he walked towards the porthole next to him. As a member of the stellar system, Kepler-452c suddenly disappears, which is bound to have a certain impact on the operation of other celestial bodies in the stellar system. By then, Kepler-452b may encounter a lot of trouble wherever humans live. For the current human civilization, it is almost impossible to completely eliminate this impact. But minimizing this negative impact as much as possible is what human civilization can do. The gravity compensation ship was built for this purpose. With the help of several large gravitational field generating devices, it can generate a gravitational field with a strength similar to Kepler-452c. As long as it continues to orbit the original planet instead of Kepler-452c, it can weaken or even eliminate most of the negative effects caused by gravitational disturbances. The operation is in good condition. Zero's response came from behind. No abnormal celestial body operation conditions have been detected in the star system so far. Lu Yongchang nodded slightly, placed his hands on the edge of the porthole, and turned his gaze to the original location of Kepler-452c. In the dark universe, there are scattered red and purple lights shining. It was the light of molten iron and high-energy laser mixed with each other. This is the final statement to the universe from a planet that has been around for billions of years. Just as Lu Yongchang stared blankly at the flickering lights, the electronic synthesized sound sounded again. Professor, Academician Wang Man sent a communication request. Are you connected? Lu Yongchang came back to his senses, glanced at the holographic projection behind him, nodded and said, Put it through for me. The next second, a big face full of wrinkles appeared in front of him. Looking at this big face full of joy, the corners of Lu Yongchang's mouth raised slightly, and his mood felt a little better unconsciously. It seems that Academician Wang is very happy. Hey! Professor Lu, what are you talking about? The smile on Wang Man's face grew stronger. What a great harvest! Professor, Kepler-452c directly fills the gap in the fleet's basic metals. Not to mention the current ring-shaped residential station. Even another giant structural project will be fine. Li Yongchang looked at Wang Man with a bright smile with interest. Is this true? Hearing this, Wang Man felt his heart skip a beat. Before the smile on his face dissipated, Lu Yongchang said, Just in time. I have a giant structural engineering project here. I will ask Academician Tang Herong to prepare in two days. Ahem, Professor. Wang Man showed a slightly embarrassed smile and asked in a low voice, Can I ask what type of megastructure project it is? Of course. Lu Yongchang said lightly, It's what we made before. Planet Fortress. Are you impressed? Thump. Wang Man sat back down in his seat. Planetary Fortress. It is no exaggeration to say that all the projects currently under construction in the People's Federation combined cannot match the resource consumption of that thing. This, isn't this going to cost him his life? At this moment, the smile on his face had completely disappeared. What's wrong? Academician Wang? Li Yongchang looked at Wang Man in front of him with a smile, and said in a teasing tone, You were not like this just now. Wang Man swallowed hard, raised his hand, and gently wiped the cold sweat on his forehead, and said with a wry smile, Professor, I just said it casually. Professor, please don't make fun of me. Lu Yongchang looked at Wang Man in the holographic projection with a half smile, but not a smile. After a moment of silence, he said softly, Who said I was joking? After the Starship Replacement Project is completed, the construction of the Planetary Fortress will be put on the agenda. It can be seen from the last war with the Bota civilization that although the Planetary Fortress consumes a lot of resources, the effect it can exert in an interstellar war is definitely not comparable to that of one or several starships. In the past, due to technical problems, the Planetary Fortress was only a semi-finished product. This time, I want to build a true Planetary Fortress. At least, it has to move. Hiss. Wang Man took a breath after hearing this. He silently made an extremely rough calculation in his mind. In order to achieve the goal stated by Professor Liu, no matter what, we must add a power system to the planet. This would require hollowing out the inside of the planet. Simply hollowing it out will definitely not work. No matter what, various fixing and supporting devices must be installed inside. Otherwise, wouldn't this planetary fortress become a hollow stone sh? L? When the time comes that it breaks into pieces when touched on the battlefield, it will become a big joke. Plus weapon systems and defense systems. After finishing the calculation, 
Wang looked at Liu Yongchang with a despairing face. Professor, we, we don't have that many resources. If you don't have resources, just mine them on sight. Liu Yongchang looked at Wang Man in surprise. You don't have to use such a useful resource mining method. Why don't you just watch it? No, that's not the problem. Wang Man looked increasingly bitter. Except for Kepler 452b, there is only one rocky planet left in our star system. According to the detection report, this rocky planet is not rich in mineral resources. If it is really mined, it may be a loss-making business. Liu Yongchang was even more surprised when he heard this. Who said it's in our star system? Ah? Uh -huh. Wang Man was slightly startled, with a look of confusion on his face. The curvature detector sent out some time ago has successfully returned the detection report. Liu Yongchang smiled and transferred a file to Wang Man opposite the camera. According to the detection report, in the star system 6.71 light years away from us, has three iron planets and two rocky planets, and is quite rich in metal mineral resources. Furthermore, the detector did not find any traces of the existence of alien civilization. Wang Man suddenly realized, Professor, what do you mean? Send a fleet to mine in the surrounding star systems? Chapter 677, Star Eater. Yes, but not entirely right. Liu Yongchang pondered for a moment and then said, Kepler 452 is the current station and base of future development of human civilization. And the main fleet cannot leave too far. In addition to the Suzaku, Star Destroyer, I can only send you some Tao Tai material transport ships. The number is about a hundred. Of course, in order to ensure the safety of the mining fleet, I can also assign you an escort fleet, consisting of Golden Crow, battleships, and Xuanwu frigates. Wang Man thought about it for a while, and a look of embarrassment suddenly appeared on his face. Professor, are these 100 starships too few? The gravitational cage created by this is too weak. Maybe some will appear. Li Yongchang fell into deep thought again. Da da da. His knuckles tapped lightly on the windowsill beside him, making a rhythmic sound. Allowing wartime starships to mine resources is a method of emergency. Liu Yongchang frowned slightly. This is not a long-term solution. I suggest you go find Academician Tang Herong. Redesign and build a megastructure specifically for mining and smelting. Wang Man nodded thoughtfully. Okay. I understand. After one day, a small shuttlecraft drew a smooth arc, crossed the huge lump of hot molten iron in space, and headed in the direction of Kepler 452b. In the shuttle, Two academicians, Wang Man and Tang Herong, were sitting. Old Wang, is what you said yesterday true? Tang Herong, who was sitting on the shuttle seat, carefully asked Wang Man beside him. Professor Liu really decided to restart the planetary fortress construction project? Wang Man set the course, turned his head, and glared at Tang Herong angrily. I'm talking about you. Tell yourself, how many times have you asked this stupid question? Fifty times if not a hundred. Right? Tang Herong smiled and scratched his head, and said with an embarrassed look, I'm not worried. Okay, okay. The planetary fortress cannot escape. It will definitely fall on you. Wang Man waved his hand and said, The most important thing now is the mining machinery. Seeing that Tang Herong was still smiling like before, Wang Man pondered for a moment and emphasized again, You have to think clearly. If the mining machinery is not powerful, you will not be able to build your planetary fortress. Where can I get you so many resources? As soon as the words fell, the smile on Tang Hyrong's face disappeared instantly. Ahem. He cleared his throat, and his expression became more serious. Old Wang, you have found the right person for this matter. When I saw the mining plan two days ago, I just wanted to say, there is no reason to let war-type starships go mining. This? Isn't this a pure waste? Professor Liu is right. We should build a big one specifically for mining. As he spoke, Tang Hyrong became excited again. When the time comes, we will send a mining machine to every surrounding star system. Good guy. Are we still using up all our resources? Looking at Tang Herong who was immersed in fantasy, the quarters of Wang Man's mouth twitched slightly. Small shuttles are very fast. During the chat, the shuttle came to a medium-sized command ship that was transformed from an engineering ship. This is the command center of the megastructure project and the office location of academician Tang Herong. The port door slowly opened, and the shuttle smoothly sailed into the command ship under the control of the shipboard computer. More than ten minutes later, there was a rush of footsteps in the corridor in the central area of the command ship. At the same time, Tang Hyrong's excited voice came from afar. Come on! Lao Wang! I'll show you a big baby! Wang Man! 
I always feel like something is wrong. Is it his misunderstanding? Wang Man followed Tang Herong into the office, with a suspicious look on his face. Click! The office door was closed. A few seconds later, a slight exclamation came from the door. What the H, L? Wang Man looked at the holographic image in front of him and exclaimed in a low voice. Isn't this a Dyson ring? Yes, but not entirely. Tang Herong explained with a smile. This is actually the first version of the design for a circular space habitation station. Each concentric ring can accommodate people. But considering that we don't have such a big demand at the moment, we reduced it to a single ring structure. As he spoke, Tang Herong raised his hand and gently moved the holographic projection. The nested structure composed of six concentric rings with increasing radii began to rotate. This extremely regular rotating image reflected in Wang Man's eyes, which relieved his somewhat impatient mood. So, how are you going to mine? He asked softly, his tone slower. Simple. Tang Hyrong's smile became even bigger. Just a little modification. A high-energy laser generating device and a gravitational field generating device are installed on the ring. Like a Dyson ring. It could wrap the planet to be mined. After the Star Destroyer blows up the planet to pieces, the segmentation and smelting work will be completed directly on the spot. The project is not difficult. Tang Herong pondered for a moment. Well, give me a few years, and I will help you get a prototype. Earth Calendar Year 3620 The Gadditer Giant Planet Mining Device followed the fleet to the target star system. In order to keep up with the fleet's sailing speed, Tang Herong even frantically added a curvature engine to the Galactus. But we have to admit that this operation greatly increased the efficiency of the mining team. Wang Man stood by the porthole of the planet-class command ship, looking at the six huge concentric rings on the same horizontal plane in the distance, with a bit of emotion in his eyes. This is the appearance of Gadditer before it has been deployed. This not only facilitates its entry into curvature navigation, but also makes it easier to swallow planets into it. Under Wang Man's gaze, Galater slowly drove towards the iron planet with a light gray surface and covered with large and small craters. Then, like a star ring, it was wrapped around the planet. Under Zero's remote control, Star Eater slowly unfolded and began to rotate continuously. The planet to be mined is located exactly at the center of these rotating concentric rings. Along with a purple light, the Suzaku Star Destroyer blew the mining horn. Galater also began to create a gravitational cage around the planet. Everything is on track. It is four light years away from the Kepler 452 star system. A slightly old detector with traces of time on its surface slowly drove forward. The direction it is heading is precisely the relatively dense star field of the star system, where the Kepler 452 star system is located. Chapter 678 Taladin Civilization As the camera gradually zooms in, the full picture of this lonely detector gradually becomes clear, different from the regular manufacturing style of human civilization. It is difficult to see edges and corners on this detector. Even the various internal circuits present a series of charming arc shapes. The surface of the ellipsoid detector was covered with a thick layer of dust. And even the outer SH. L suffered a lot of damage. Those are interstellar dust adhering to its surface. Obviously, it has experienced a long interstellar journey. However, on the dusty detector, those oval lenses were extremely bright and clear, without any sign of being eroded by dust. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A few wiper-like objects gently swept across the lens taking away the dust that had just been stained on the lens. The detector seemed to have received some instructions, and the camera slowly adjusted its direction. Its target is the Kepler-452 star system four light years away. As it observes, quantum signals continue to be transmitted to distant places. Ten light years away, at the edge of a small star system, a not-so-large fleet docked. It can be seen from the shape of the ellipsoid structured starship that the lonely detector running alone in the vast universe was sent by this fleet. In the center of the fleet is an extremely large starship. Obviously, it is the flagship of this fleet. The ellipsoid flagship is outlined with arcs full of wonderful charm. It seems that in this civilization, arcs are synonymous with beauty. The arcs are combined with each other to form a huge and charming pattern. But the traces left by the artillery fire destroyed this beauty. The melted armor, exposed circuits, and components glowing with black smoke. All of them showed signs this poor fleet seemed to have just experienced an extremely brutal war. Taladin civilization. This is what this poor civilization calls itself. Flagship interior. Each creature with a round body and fine hairs on its body operates the power-assisted device and glides quickly in a gravity-free environment. The black and white fluff, combined with the round figure, makes people think of a kind of creature. Panda. 
Perhaps it is a coincidence that these taladins are more than 80% similar to pandas. The only difference is that their facial shapes are softer. A pair of bright eyes are set on their heads like gems. And their small feeding organs are hidden under the black and white hair. Let's not talk about the perspective of other races. Just from the perspective of human civilization. These round creatures are mainly cute. Taladin fleet. Flagship. A variety of high-precision instruments are installed in a spacious and bright room. In line with civilized aesthetics. Almost everything in the room has no edges. Even the corners of the room itself have been processed into arc shapes. Even though this will waste some precious space. This is the shipboard laboratory of the Taladin fleet. Its main task is to accept data returned by various detectors and perform corresponding calculations based on these data. Since the escape began, this laboratory has been conducting an important task searching for habitable star systems. Damn intruders! A Taladin complained in a high-pitched voice. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't have to live in such a cramped environment. Yes, Marin, you are right. A gravity-free environment is really not a place for people to stay. I haven't learned to use this power-assisted device yet. In the distance, another Taladin man echoed and responded. I really don't know how long these intruders will be pursued. When? The Taladin man named Marin sneered, shook the black and white fluff on his body, and said angrily, Who knows? Milo, in order to get rid of their pursuit, we have lost 80% of the fleet. Malin stretched out his little paws and hugged his head with some collapse. Those starships have been wiped out. Milo sighed, put down the work in his hands, and murmured in a low voice. Yes, there is not much difference between our technological level and theirs, but the weapons and equipment are too different. Hearing this, Mullen's mood became even more broken. I said it. I said it at that time. We should research some necessary weapons and equipment. But, but no one agrees with my proposal. No one supports my plan. Milo fell silent. After a long time, it spoke slowly and replied in a high-pitched voice. Marin, you know, our civilization has not had a war for a long time. And we've never had contact with an alien civilization. No one could have imagined that the first contact with an alien civilization would have such a result. Before the words could be finished, a low alarm sounded, interrupting the argument between the two. The detector sent back abnormal data. Mullen was the first to react, and he quickly controlled the power assist device to slide towards the computer not far away. Wait! Wait for me! Milo saw this and hurriedly controlled the power assist device on his body. I... I'm not very good at using this thing. After stumbling, it finally managed to reach Mullen's side. What data? It shouted excitedly. Has a habitable star system been discovered? Find a habitable star system and continue living peacefully. This is the belief that supports all Taladin people after the Taladin civilization began to flee. Marin didn't speak. Just stared at the screen blankly. Hey, I have a question for you. Milo gently bumped Marin next to him with his chubby body. Squeezed out an empty space. And quickly looked at the screen. This. Like Mullen, Milo fell silent. Is this true? After a long time, Marin's voice came from beside him. There was a bit of trembling and confusion in the voice, and even a bit of despair and panic. No, it's impossible. Why? How could this happen? Milo shook his head repeatedly. He couldn't believe the data he saw. How could there be a planet suddenly missing? It rushed to the computer in front of it somewhat wildly, and quickly adjusted the calculation program with its little pause. There must be an error in the calculation, Milo vowed. Or there is something wrong with the detector. Wait a minute. I'm going to check the algorithm right now. It glanced at Marin, who was stagnant in place next to him, and shouted in a hurried tone. Don't be stunned either. Quickly retrieve the observation data from other detectors. Oh, oh, okay. Milo's reminder brought Marin back to his senses, and he quickly controlled the power assist device and rushed toward another computer. This string of abnormal data directly plunged the originally peaceful and peaceful laboratory into chaos. Chapter 679 The Disappearing Planet The chaos in the laboratory gradually subsided. Instead, there was an atmosphere of deathly silence. Milo and Marin lead quietly on the cold ground, their eyes filled with extremely complicated expressions. The verification results are out. Mullen was the first to speak, breaking the dead silence in the laboratory. There is no problem with the detector. There is no problem with the calculation results. Milo responded weakly. In other words, the star system we were observing suddenly lost a planet. Mullen said in a panic. This, this is a planet. How could such a thing happen? Milo was silent for a while and whispered. This is certainly not a natural occurrence. 
Nonsense! How could such a thing happen under natural conditions? Malin cursed angrily. Suddenly, Milo stood up suddenly, controlled the power-assisted device, and rushed towards the laboratory door staggeringly. What are you doing? Malin shouted. Go and alert the leader. Milo's shouts were full of anxiety and uneasiness. The fleet needs to change course immediately. Inside the command center. Leader! A high-pitched and urgent chirping sound came from a distance, attracting the attention of a creature standing in the center of the command center. What happened? It asked the visitor in the same high-pitched voice. No! It's not good! The hurried Taladin shouted, while still hurriedly controlling the power assist device, trying to control his forward body. Bang! Obviously, it failed. Having lived in a gravity environment for a long time, it is not very good at controlling these power-assisted devices in a gravity-free environment. Under the influence of inertia, the Taladin was thrown onto the deck in front of the Taladin leader. The rounded body acts as the best protective pad, but wrestling in zero gravity is certainly a dangerous act. Seeing that it was about to fly away elsewhere, the leader of Taladin quickly stretched out his small claws and grabbed the ball to his side. Turn on your stabilizing device! Milo! Leader Taladin said with a headache. Fortunately you are just a scientist. Otherwise, it couldn't even imagine the scene of the commander falling on the deck on the battlefield. That picture is really hard to look at. Thank you. Your Excellency Aldon. Milo, who turned on the stabilizing device, stood firmly on the deck. He saluted the leader of Taladin in front of him and respectfully expressed his gratitude. Okay, okay. Don't worry about these etiquette at this time. The leader Aldon interrupted Milo's movements and asked directly. What happened? Are those damn invaders catching up again? Damn it! As it said, it waved its short claws fiercely. Our fleet size has been reduced by 80%. No matter what, you will die. So why not fight them? No, it's not an invader. Milo waved his paws repeatedly and denied. It was the detector we sent that discovered the abnormal situation. Detector? Aldon's eyes revealed a trace of doubt. What detector? Have you forgotten? When we were escaping, we sent hundreds of detectors to the escape target Starfield. Milo reminded in a high-pitched voice. These detectors can detect the conditions of each star system for us first. Aldon suddenly realized it. And then a touch of excitement and expectation appeared in his eyes. You mean, did the probe discover a habitable star system? No. Milo denied the leader's words again. Deep in its eyes, there was a deep look of fear. The detector sent back a horrifying discovery. It trembled slightly and said again, A planet has disappeared. The planet disappeared? Aldon looked at the scientist in front of him with some confusion. Well, how could the planet disappear? I, I don't know. Milo's round body was constantly shaking like chaff. The detector is still four light years away from the target star system. And our observation methods are not enough to directly observe such a distant planet. We can only estimate the distribution of planets in the star system through various means. Just now, there was an abnormality in the observation data we received. Obviously abnormal. Milo emphasized again with a stronger tone. It took a deep breath and calmed down its inner panic. Originally, we calculated that there should be six planets in that star system. But based on the abnormal data we just received, we found that there are only five planets left in that star system. What is missing? Aldon looked at Milo in front of him thoughtfully. It pondered for a moment and then asked softly, Do you think this is an observation and calculation error? Or, no, 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 it's definitely not an error in observation or calculation. Milo swung his little paws wildly, denying the leader's words. I think there's only one possibility. There is an advanced civilization in that star system. Milo looked directly at the leader and spoke word by word. His, Aldon gasped, and his chubby body began to tremble slightly. What kind of civilization is it that can directly destroy a planet? Aldon's tone was full of confusion. Is there really no safe star system in this universe? Their race has always advocated peace. War has always been an extremely distant word for Taladin civilization. Therefore, they lack war experience and weapons and equipment. And they fell into such a decline in this war. It was this war that ruthlessly shattered their illusions about the universe. The Taladin civilization, which has lost 80% of its fleet, now views alien civilizations like snakes and scorpions, for fear of being tainted with any trace of cause and effect. Behind them is the fleet of invaders in hot pursuit. Ahead is an unknown advanced civilization. It seems that Taladin civilization is in dire straits. Chief, at this point, we can only change the target, Milo said in a serious tone. In the star field in front of us, 
There are hundreds of star systems, large and small. Please give the order to change the sailing direction of the fleet. I have chosen another star system for you that may have habitable planets. As he spoke, Milo pressed a few buttons on the computer nearby, and a new route appeared on the star map. The leader Aldon was silent for a while. Then, it let out a long sigh. Send the order to change the fleet's course. Chapter 680 Tachyon Communication Experiment Kepler 452 Star System When Star Eater arrived in the target star system and successfully mined two of the iron planets, a message came from the Earth Laboratory and spread to the entire fleet at lightning speed. The Tachyon Information Transfer Experiment is about to officially start. Tachyons, due to their own special properties, have caused the entire research project to get into trouble more than once. The control of tachyons was once beyond the level of human technology. The key progress of the entire experiment was, not surprisingly, achieved by Lu Yongchang. He discovered a magical and crucial phenomenon during repeated experiments. When tachyons carrying a large amount of energy pass through a high-intensity gravitational field, their own frequency will change slightly. This creates the necessary conditions for tachyon communication. First, the energy released by a high-energy laser beam is used to slow down the tachyons as much as possible. This is a prerequisite. Otherwise, the gravitational field will not have time to change the frequency of the tachyon, and it will escape to infinity. In addition, in the course of experiments one after another, the Academy of Sciences found that in order to make tachyons change their own frequency, in addition to practical requirements in terms of energy, there are also hard requirements in terms of gravitational field strength. To this end, Liu Yongchang proposed a very creative plan. Control two micro black holes to rotate with each other to create a powerful enough microgravitational field. Then, by controlling the micro black hole, the weak changes in the gravitational field are manipulated, thereby affecting the own frequency of the decelerated tachyons. This is an extremely bold idea and an extremely dangerous one. Therefore, when the plan was first proposed, most academicians in the laboratory expressed opposition. After all, the risk factor of controlling a single micro black hole is already very high. And the danger of two micro black holes cannot be simply estimated by using 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. To put it another way, even if the potential danger is not considered, the technological level of human civilization at that time would not have been able to do such a heaven-defying thing. Because of this, the entire Tachyon communication project research and development has been put on hold indefinitely. Until there is another breakthrough in gravitational field control technology. This Longxi plan was once again picked up by Liu Yongchang. After the first dual black hole system control experiment was successful, the research and development work of the Tachyon communication project was reborn and moved forward at an extremely fast speed. Until today, the first Tachyon communication device in human history was successfully launched. Liu Yongchang stood in the laboratory with a serious expression, looking deeply at the fluctuating data and information in the holographic projection. Have the test results come out? He asked in a deep voice. The third pre-boot test has been completed and no abnormalities have been found. Fong Su swallowed and responded nervously. After speaking, he even raised his hand to gently wipe the cold sweat on his forehead. It seems that the huge, inconspicuous device in the holographic projection is something sinister. When Liu Yongchang saw this, he couldn't help but chuckle. Why are you nervous? Is this thing so scary? Hearing this, Fong Su smiled bitterly. Professor, are you kidding me? When the time comes, there will be two miniature black holes in it. It's just a micro black hole. Liu Yongchang shrugged. You have to believe in our technology. The control methods for micro black holes are already very mature. Fong Su, he said weakly. No matter how mature they are, they are still two miniature black holes. If they collide, the consequences will be disastrous. Can't hit it. Liu Yongchang raised his eyebrows and interrupted Fong Su's words. I said it can't hit it. It can't hit it. This is the power of technology. Besides, it's not all on Earth. What are you so nervous about? Liu Yongchang glanced at Fong Su with a strange look on his face. Boy, are you stupid by staying up all night during this time? The corner of Fong Su's mouth twitched slightly, and the nervous look on his face quickly dissipated. Ahem, Professor. All the tests have met the standards, and the experiment can be started at any time. Liu Yongchang didn't hesitate at all and directly issued the order. Power on! The moment the words fell, in the mobile experimental ship located in the empty universe, the huge energy created by the annihilation of antimatter began to accumulate. Inside the experimental ship, there are two stably operating miniature black holes. 
This is an important part of the tachyon communication device. Due to the limitations of the current technical level, the entire device appears to be extremely bloated. But for a large medium to large starship, it is nothing. Only before there is a breakthrough in tachyon communication miniaturization technology, it may be difficult for small starships to carry such a device. In this regard, Lu Yongchang proposed a simple solution once the fleet needs to enter a secondary curvature state of more than 10 C. Stuff small starships into medium and large starships. Back to business. With the gradual accumulation of huge energy, the experiment officially began. Under Zero's precise control, the powerful gravitational field pulled the two miniature black holes to slide toward the vacuum experimental cabin in the center. The distance between black holes is getting closer and closer. Under the control of the strong gravitational field from the outside world, an extremely subtle distance is maintained between the two miniature black holes. Like a stable binary star system, they began to orbit each other. Twisted and regular gravitational fields and gravitational waves emanate from it. It's like a guccine, playing a charming tune. The next moment, hundreds of high-energy lasers were emitted from the bulkhead of the spherical experimental cabin. These high-energy lasers are fired directly at the centers of mass of the two black holes. Center of mass, the center of mass, referred to as the center of mass, refers to an imaginary point on the material system where mass is believed to be concentrated. Inside Earth, the mobile experimental ship has completed preparations. As Lu Yongchang's deputy, Fang Su said in a deep voice after carefully checking the data provided by Ichiban Zero. Start the warp drive. Lu Yongchang raised his head slightly, stared at the mobile experimental ship in the holographic projection, and said softly, without explaining it in advance, who would have imagined that there are two miniature black holes in such an ordinary-looking starship? Fang Su took a deep breath, calmed down the excitement and anxiety in his heart, and then issued the order in a deep voice. Start the warp drive! Using the first set of sailing plans as the standard. Start the curvature sailing. The whole sailing plan is simple. After the mobile experimental ship enters the curvature state, it will continue to accelerate until it exceeds 10 C. That is, it enters the second level curvature state. During this process, tachyon communication devices and quantum communication devices will continuously transmit information to Earth. Chapter 681, I have left the cabin and feel good. Ling meticulously carried out the orders from Lu Yongchang and Fang Su. With the start of the curvature engine, the curvature bubble was successfully generated, and the mobile experimental ship stagnant in the empty universe instantly disappeared in the picture returned by the detector. They successfully entered the state of curvature and disappeared into the light speed universe. The real experiment begins at this moment. The Earth laboratory quickly became busy. The current sailing speed of the experimental ship is 1.1 C. The quantum communication status is normal, and the tachyon communication device is operating normally. Slightly noisy reports continue to sound in the laboratory. Li Yongchang slowly stood up from a seat. His eyes became sharper. Start compiling tachyon information. After the words fell, inside the experimental ship, under the control of the gravitational field, the rotation speed of the two miniature black holes changed slightly. At the same time, the strong gravitational field created by the micro black hole has also undergone some changes. The tachyon message has been successfully compiled. An academician shouted. The message has been successfully sent. Different from sending out tachyon information. The current way for human civilization to receive tachyon information is relatively simple by observing the gamma ray fluctuations released when the tachyon energy is dissipated. To infer the frequency of the tachyon itself. So as to analyze the information contained in it. Information. After all, unlike tachyons, the gamma rays they release are observable in the slow universe. Although tachyons are present throughout the universe, over a long period of time, the energy carried by these tachyons has long been dissipated, and their own energy is almost zero. Therefore, in observation instruments, the gamma ray fluctuations released by tachyons are particularly conspicuous. It's like a light bulb in a dark room. But this observation method also leads to another drawback. Communication distance is limited. The current range of tachyon communication in human civilization is exactly the range where tachyons dissipate their own energy below the observation accuracy. According to estimates, it is about 1,000 light years away. On the scale of the universe, this distance is nothing. But for today's human civilization, this is vast enough. The method to increase the tachyon communication distance is also very simple. And there are roughly two directions. One is to slow down the initial running speed of tachyons as much as possible. That is, 
to allow them to carry enough energy to support a longer dissipation time. Second, increase the observation accuracy of the fleet itself. Liu Yongchang prefers the second option. The speed of tachyons increases with the degree of energy dissipation. This means that tachyons will fly faster and faster as time goes by. In other words, as long as the observation accuracy is high enough, the communication range of tachyon communication is the entire universe. Almost at the same time that the academician spoke, Zero's electronic synthesized voice also sounded from the speaker. Vacuum gamma ray fluctuations were successfully observed. Message recognition, quad A. Deciphering the message. The information comparison was successful, and it was confirmed to be the tachyon message sent by us. After a short wait, enthusiastic cheers erupted in the laboratory. Don't celebrate in a hurry. It's not a complete success yet. Liu Yongchang interrupted the cheers of the academicians. Continue to increase the speed of the starship to above 10C. As the speed of the starship in the holographic projection continued to increase, the atmosphere in the laboratory gradually calmed down. 9.8C. 9.9C. 10C. 10.1C. Quantum communication has been disrupted. The emotionless electronic synthesized sound sounded and echoed in the laboratory. There was no trace of surprise on Liu Yongchang's face. This situation had been expected by him. And he had already made corresponding arrangements. When the experimental ship enters the secondary curvature state, the experiment will also be maintained by the shipboard computer. After all, humans have only built one tachyon communication device so far. After quantum communication fails, communication becomes one way. Time passed by, and the atmosphere in the laboratory gradually became anxious. Tachyon information successfully received. The electronic synthesized sound once again broke the extremely anxious atmosphere. Message content. The current sailing speed is 20C. I have left the cabin. And I feel good. Looking at the line of text in the holographic projection, Liu Yongchang was stunned. This scene, even in the entire history of mankind, is quite explosive. Who put this information in? Ahem. Professor. It's me. Not far away. He violent raised his right hand with a smile. I wanted to liven up the atmosphere. Liu Yongchang took a deep breath and calmed down his inner desire to complain. It's very good. Don't do it again in the future. In any case, the success of the tachyon communication experiment means that the fleet strength of human civilization has risen to a huge level. Therefore, Liu Yongchang still had a thick smile on his face when he complained. In the laboratory, celebration sounded again. Earth calendar year 3625. After experiencing several interruptions in quantum overdistance communication, Liu Yongchang became deeply aware of a problem. The miniaturization project of tachyon communication devices must be put on the agenda as soon as possible. As an important part of the fleet, small star ships and detectors must not become the fleet's shortcomings. Under his leadership, the Academy of Sciences spent several years successfully breaking through this technical barrier. So far, every starship and detector that has reserved space for tachyon communication modules has been successfully equipped with tachyon communication devices. The speed at which human civilization is expanding its territory has also instantly increased to a new level. So far, human civilization has mastered three star systems around the Kepler 452 star system. Under Zero's control, Gadditer continues to mine the iron planets in these three star systems, providing the human fleet with a large amount of essential mineral resources. What makes Liu Yongchang regretful is that there are no habitable planets in these three star systems. And naturally, there are no alien civilizations. Professor, over there at the School of Sociology. Fang Su smiled bitterly and knocked on the door of Liu Yongcheng's office. Reporting softly, they asked me about that thing again. No. After hearing Fang Su's words, Liu Yongcheng stopped what he was doing angrily. Tell them that there is no trace of any lower civilization. Not to mention civilization. The fleet didn't even see a bug. Oh, by the way. Liu Yongcheng seemed to have remembered something. Well, some single-celled organisms were discovered on a planet. Ask the School of Sociology if they are interested in those things? Fang Su laughed sarcastically and did not answer. That's weird. Liu Yongchang scratched his head vigorously, with a bit of confusion in his eyes. When we first came out of the Earth, we could encounter alien civilizations everywhere. It was really impossible to hide. Now I'm ready to look for them. But they are well hidden. TSK! That's pretty cool. Liu Yongchang looked at the brand new desk in front of him with a depressed look and complained in a low voice. Chapter 682 May Zanka, bless us. Taladin Fleet. After a short period of replenishing energy and necessary supplies, 
The Taladin fleet had left the original desolate star system. There is no way. The intruder who is following closely behind and refusing to give up the pursuit may appear at any time. The longer you escape, the more vitality Taladin civilization will have. Aldon, the leader of the Taladin civilization, controlled the power-assisted device on his body and slid quickly through the gravity-free starship cabin. The black and white fluff on its body trembled slightly, showing its extremely restless mood inside. It's now going to the lab. The findings returned by the detector some time ago shocked too many people, especially ordinary people. There have been some dangerous signals within the civilization many Taladins have chosen to commit suicide in this desperate situation. As the leader, on the one hand, it needs to appease these people with extreme emotions. On the other hand, it needs to go to the laboratory to appease the scientists. And at the same time, it needs to understand the status of the new target. Hello, Chief. His Excellency Aldon. H, low to you. During the taxing process, it met many ship crew members. These black and white dumplings pay respect to it in the air. It deserves it. After all, if it had not been able to withstand all the pressure and carry out the escape plan, let alone Taladin civilization, even the existence of these shabby starships would be a big question mark. The madness of the invader is deeply engraved in its marrow. Every time he thinks about the war scenes in the past, the fur on his body will tremble continuously. Looking at the slowly opening laboratory door in front of it, it skillfully controlled the power assist device and slowed down the airflow behind it gradually slowed down. While a strong airflow was released in front of it, through the opening of the door, it saw the two familiar scientists, Milo and Marin. It was they who discovered that crucial alarm that prevented Taladin civilization from being destroyed. Aldon's eyes gradually moved away from Milo and looked at Marin on the other side. There was a hint of confusion deep in its eyes. Perhaps? Was the decision really wrong at that time? Weapons and equipment seemed to be an indispensable part of an interstellar civilization. If Mullen's suggestion had been adopted at that time, perhaps the Taladin civilization would not be where it is today. Thinking of this, it sighed softly, and its furry body trembled slightly again. After sliding through the laboratory door, Aldon used the power assist device to adjust his posture, and then turned on the stabilizing device. A not too strong magnetic force came from underneath it, pulling its body back to the deck. Leader? Milo was the first to discover Aldon's arrival. It controlled the power assist device, stumbled away from the computer in front of it, and ran towards Milo. Looking at the swaying trajectory, Aldon's big eyes twitched twice. How long has it been? Haven't you learned this yet? Bang. In response, there was a dull loud noise the power of the stabilizing device was too great, and Milo was directly dragged to the deck. Fortunately, the ball-shaped body can absorb most of the impact. This small blow is nothing to the Taladins. Milo struggled to turn down the power of the stabilizing device while awkwardly standing up from the deck. Chief, you know, I'm not good at this thing. Another black and white dumpling landed lightly next to Milo. Hello, Mr. Aldon. Marin. Aldon gestured to the visitor. I'm here to understand the situation of the new star system. You should be aware that since the last incident was exposed, there has been a lot of chaos within civilization. If I hadn't announced the fleet's latest escape target in time, I would probably have. As he spoke, Aldon moved his body helplessly. Chief, Milo, who stood firm, responded first. Based on our observations during this period, there is a high probability that there will be more than 10 planets in the new star system. The probability of a habitable planet among them is about 30%. 30%. Is it that low? Aldon's expression dimmed slightly, and he murmured softly. It's not low anymore, Mullen also said. There were only six planets in the last target galaxy. No. There are five planets now. The probability of habitable planets, there is even lower. Yes. Is that so? After hearing this, Aldon's expression softened a lot. How far away are we from it? 9.37 light years. Leader. Mullen replied without hesitation. According to the current sailing speed of the fleet, it should take another 50 years to reach the destination. Aldon was lost in thought. 50 years. This time is not long for the Taladin people. Their average lifespan is about 500 years. And 50 years is just a blink of an eye. Only. How long can the fleet's supplies last? The laboratory fell into silence again. About 80 years. Milo replied with great difficulty. The last star system was too desolate. And our stop time was too short. So. Hey. Aldon sighed deeply. Walked back and forth in the laboratory with his short legs almost hidden in the down. 80 years. 
I hope it will be enough. As it spoke, it stopped in its tracks, turned its body towards the graceful arcs on the wall, and murmured softly, May Zanka protect us. Milo and Marin looked at each other, and they both saw the surprise in each other's eyes. Since science and technology prospered and Taladin became an interstellar civilization, the previous totem belief, Zanka, has become a decoration. But today, with Taladin civilization facing such a crisis, Aldon still puts his hope on the illusory Zanka. After Milo and Marin were silent for a moment, they slowly closed their eyes and chanted piously, May Zanka bless Taladin civilization. Before he finished speaking, an extremely dull alarm sound came from the distant computer and quickly filled the entire laboratory. What happened? Aldon suddenly opened his eyes and asked solemnly. Milo and Marin looked at each other again. Their eyes were filled with deep horror. The next moment, the power-assisting device suddenly spurted out a stream of air, pushing them towards the computer in the distance. Bang! Milo still landed on his face as always. But at this moment, it no longer cares about these trivial matters. It rolled, quickly stood up from the deck, stretched out its short paws, and clicked a few times on the computer in front of it. Chapter 683 Desperate Situation The moment he saw the text on the screen, the downy hair on Milo's body suddenly stood up, like a hedgehog with exploded fur. Milo's original chubby body also grew in size. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. Milo's eyes were blank, and he murmured softly. When Marin saw this, his heart tightened, and he hurriedly stepped forward to push away Milo, who was in a dazed state, and looked at the small screen. Like Milo, Mullen was furious. Two, two. The performance of the two scientists directly set off the highest alarm in the heart of the leader Aldon. He quickly moved his short legs, came to them, and turned his eyes to the screen, can't read, looking at the dense data and lines on the screen. Aldon felt a deep sense of powerlessness and confusion arise spontaneously. To what? It pulled Marin hard and asked loudly. Two. Malin swallowed hard when he came back to his senses and murmured with a look of horror on his face. Two planets are missing. Before Aldon could react, Milo let out a high-pitched scream. Same as last time. The new star system is missing two planets. Zanka, have you really abandoned us? Milo collapsed on the cold deck and shouted in despair. From the few words exchanged between the two of them, Aldon gradually understood the truth of the matter. It was silent for a long time, and then stretched out its claws to pull up the two limp dumplings. Find the next star system. Aldon's eyes were bloodshot, and he said a little manically, Didn't you say that there are hundreds of star systems in this star field? I don't believe that we can't find a safe star system. Let's hurry up before that damn intruder catches up. The dull alarm sounded again, interrupting Aldon's words. Only this time, the dull, panic-stricken alarm sounded not in the laboratory, but in the entire flagship. Aldon, who controlled the power assist device and quickly slid to the command center, looked at the crew members next to him with an extremely solemn expression. Beside him, Mullen pulled a furry ball and landed it steadily on the deck. Thank you. Thank you. Milo landed smoothly and quickly expressed his gratitude to his companions. Chief, an unknown fleet has been spotted on the rear right side of the fleet. Based on the size and speed of the fleet, it can basically be determined that it is a pursuit fleet sent by the invaders. The crew member said solemnly, The fleet has begun to accelerate, but that would consume a lot of additional energy from our current energy reserves. It may not be enough to get us to new destinations. Aldon's eyes became increasingly gloomy. Change the escape destination again. Two more planets disappeared from the last destination. Blessings come in pairs. And misfortunes never come alone. This continuous bad news is hard for anyone to accept. Especially in this high-pressure escape process. In the vast universe. Without any support. And even the supplies are used a little bit. Everyone's emotions are like a taut string. If you are not careful, you will be it's the tragic situation of broken strings. For these Taladins who have been living on their home planet and advocating peace. This kind of spiritual blow is even more fatal. They have never experienced such a high-pressure environment. And they have no plan to deal with it. Zanka, ah. Sure enough. A crew member wailed. Save your poor people. The sailor's wail was like the fuse of explosives. Instantly igniting the negative emotions in all the crew members. Chief. Let's. Let's turn around and fight them. Another crew member shouted with red eyes. And looked like he was crazy. We have no way to survive. Why not? Nonsense. Aldon yelled. Everyone. Please be quiet. We haven't reached a real desperate situation yet. 
So cheer up. Please believe me. I was able to lead everyone to escape last time. And this time, I can also lead our civilization to survive. The leader Aldon shout temporarily stabilized the soldiers' morale. The voices of crying fathers and mothers quickly decreased in the command center. Milo, you go and choose the fleet's next target star system. Aldon gave the order in a deep voice without any hesitation. Mullen, estimate the fleet's fuel situation after acceleration and assist Milo in screening star systems based on the sailing range. Yes. Milo and Marin responded in unison. It is 4.2 light years away from the Kepler 452 star system. A spherical detector quickly moves across the empty universe at a speed of 0.5 c. The antimatter engine behind it is working at full capacity and spits out extremely powerful gamma rays. It is part of the warning network of human civilization around the star system. Currently, with the efforts of human civilization, this warning network has been spread to an area of 5 light years outside the star system. With such a broad scope, the alert density is destined not to be too high. A detector is often responsible for the detection and warning of a large area. As usual, this spherical detector performed its exploration mission according to the planned route. This should have been a dull and boring thing. At least, it has been like this for the past six months. Dee dee dee. The sensor sent a message, and it seemed that something had been discovered in this empty universe. The computer in the detector quickly analyzed and verified the information. In a very short time, the computer completed the processing and rating of this information. A. Without any hesitation, the computer quickly transmitted the information back to the Kepler 452 star system 4.2 light years away. In the vacuum, tachyons quickly dissipated the newly acquired energy, leaving behind two gamma rays of different frequencies and traveling in opposite directions in the illusory universe. Kepler 452 star system. After several years of steady development, the Kepler 452 star system has become an extremely busy metropolis at this time. From the main star to the boundaries of the star system, Medium and large starships can be seen everywhere. Machinery has become the main theme of this star system. The tachyons that came from a far pass through this area at extremely high speeds, leaving behind two distinctive gamma rays, and then flew towards infinity at higher speeds. The tachyon information receiving point set up near Kepler 452C quickly captured these two special gamma rays. Information processing and translation take almost no time. This information from 4.2 light years away appeared in zeros. Light of sight. In just a few milliseconds, its priority escalated and quickly overshadowed all missions currently being performed within the fleet. The next moment, an extremely harsh alarm sounded inside, Earth. Chapter 684 Yevgeny's Plan Inside the office, at the same time as the piercing siren sounded, the holographic projection in front of Lu Yongchang also turned blood red. At the same time, a piece of highest priority information directly covered all the information and popped up in front of his eyes. Professor. A UFO was discovered 4.2 light years away. Preliminary judgment is that the probability that the aircraft is a probe of an alien civilization reaches 99%. At the same time, an image from 4.2 light years away appeared in front of him. For 0.2 light years? This familiar distance caused a ripple in Liu Yongchang's heart. At that time, the distance between the Earth and the Proxima Centauri galaxy was exactly 4.2 light years. The natural chasm at that time has become a small ravine at the door of our home now. This couldn't help but make Li Yongchang feel countless emotions in his heart. Looking at the slightly worn ellipsoid detector in the holographic projection, he raised his eyebrows slightly and put down the work in his hands. This is, looking at the extremely familiar engine style behind the ellipsoid detector, the joy in Li Yongchang's eyes suddenly became intense. All thruster? What's its flying speed? Li Yongchang asked Zero in a slightly urgent tone. Current sailing speed 0.35 c. Lu Yongchang suddenly stood up from his seat and rubbed his hands excitedly. The sailing speed is quite standard. It should be a detector sent by a second or third level civilization. Yongchang! Fang Su shouted from outside the office. Uh-huh. The office door suddenly opened. Fang Su rushed into the office eagerly and shouted. Yongchang! Did you see it? The wait is here. The wait is finally here. The school of sociology just sent me a message asking me when. Wait a minute. Lu Yongchang interrupted Fang Su's words. Don't be happy too early. Have you forgotten the lesson you learned then? You mean, this detector might be a smoke bomb thrown by a higher civilization? Fang Su asked in a low voice, as the excited expression on his face gradually subsided. Or it's a bait, Lu Yongchang said softly. That's what the original Star Thieves civilization, the Rathor civilization, did. Then what do you mean? 
Lu Yongchan put his hands behind his back and paced back and forth in the office, with a hint of contemplation in his eyes. Prepare for battle. Lu Yongchang's eyes flashed, and he made a decision. Using such a backward detector as a bait, the civilization behind it cannot be much better. Even if there is a fifth-level civilization behind it, today's humans can still touch it. While speaking, Lu Yongchang boarded the robotic arm-type robot with the help of the robotic arm. Then, he waved to Fang Su and said, Let's go! Follow me to the command center. Earth, command center. In the giant holographic projection, the old ellipsoidal detector still maintained its course and sailed forward silently. From time to time, a wiper-like device will gently sweep near several lenses, taking away some of the interstellar dust attached to it. At its right rear, a spherical detector followed it quietly like a ghost, waiting for the capture order from the command center. This quiet and peaceful scene formed an extremely sharp contrast with the tense and anxious atmosphere in the Earth command center. That's weird. Hasn't it discovered our detector yet? He Bilan frowned and murmured in a low voice. Why can it maintain its course so calmly? Is is it really a bait thrown by a higher civilization? He Bilan's words caused a slight commotion. Lu Yongchang raised his eyebrows and explained softly. Our detector is currently in a silent state, and it uses tachyon communication to communicate with us. If the opponent is really a second level or third level civilization, at this distance, it really can't detect our detector. He Bilan's mouth twitched slightly. Then, what if it's bait? Then we'll be in big trouble. Bong Su took over. It proves that the advanced civilization behind it doesn't panic us at all. I'm afraid only advanced civilizations at level 6 or above have such confidence. Unreasonable. Academician Lin Zile from the School of Sociology interjected. A level 6 civilization should not use such petty theft methods. Just like we can't use an ant as bait. The gap between the two is too big. Lu Yongchang nodded and expressed his agreement with Academician Lin Zile's words. Therefore, I prefer that the other party is really a low-level civilization. The key question now is how we should use this detector to locate the opponent's civilization. This question raised by Lu Yongchang caused heated debate. Some academicians believe that one should establish a connection with the other party and gain their trust before proceeding. Most academicians of sociology departments share this idea. After all, if this plan succeeds, humans may soon have a true subsidiary civilization. New civilization? The human fleet has not yet found a suitable planet to serve as their habitat. As of now, the entire new civilization still only has one small tree living in the laboratory. So it cannot be considered a subsidiary civilization in the true sense. Of course, this plan was opposed by many. It's too time-consuming and has too many variables. In short, under the opposition of most academicians, this proposal was the first to be rejected. The plan that survived to the end was proposed by academician Yagini. Lu Yongchang looked at the extremely simple and crude plan in front of him, and the corners of his mouth twitched sharply. He looked carefully at the other proposals and finally sighed deeply. Just this plan. Zero. Start execution. As Lu Yongchang's order was issued, undercurrents began to slowly surge in the peaceful universe 4.2 light years away. The two spherical detectors in the nearby area quickly entered the curvature navigation state and flew towards the destination. Considering the short distance between the two sides, the speed of curvature navigation was kept at 1.01c. When the other two spherical detectors were about to arrive near the target, the spherical detector that had been following the ellipsoid detector also entered the curvature navigation state. As a result, the three spherical detectors disappeared in the visible universe. Only the remaining ripples of time and space can prove traces of their existence. This is one of the key points of Academician Yagini's plan. Using the characteristics of curvature navigation, quietly approach the ellipsoid detector. Chapter 685, the coordinates of the enemy ship have been successfully analyzed. For the detectors of the second level civilization or the third level civilization, this is already a dimensionality reduction attack. After all, they have no way of observing an aircraft entering a state of curvature. The speed of 1.01c is not fast. But at this scale, it is already extremely fast. Therefore, this plan is a great test of Zero's abilities. Fortunately, as a strong artificial intelligence, Zero has never failed to live up to human expectations. Just a few seconds after the three detectors disappeared one after another, under Zero's control, they all appeared next to the stunned ellipsoid detector under the action of the antimatter engine. The three spherical detectors remained relatively stationary with the ellipsoid detector with great ease. At the same time that an electromagnetic wave message with a dictionary was sent out, 
The three robotic arms quickly extended and reached the ellipsoid detector at an extremely high speed. Click! 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 The robotic arm shattered the outer armor of the ellipsoid detector extremely violently and injected a large number of silver-white nanorobots into its interior. Under Zero's control, these nanorobots quickly spread out and invaded various interfaces in the circuit board. The moment the connection was successfully established, Zero's huge computing power surged up like a tsunami, crushing all the defenses of the other civilization with lightning speed. The detector control authority has been successfully seized. The enemy's quantum communication machine is being reverse engineered. As the stiff electronic synthesized sound sounded in the command center, Lu Yongchun also breathed a sigh of relief. The cumulative time from the appearance of the three spherical detectors to the completion of the authority seizure was only a few seconds. But Lu Yongchun still saw some problems. The robotic arm extension and intrusion were taking too much time. And we needed a more efficient way. Lu Yongchun turned to look at academician Chao Liankai beside him and said softly, I'll leave the research in this area to you. Chao Liankai nodded in agreement without any hesitation. The electronic synthesized sound sounded again, interrupting the communication between the two. Deciphered successfully. Warning. The quantum overdistance communication link has been disconnected, and it is initially determined to be a physical interruption. In this regard, Lu Yongchang did not have any surprises. Just unplug the network cable. If it were him, he would do the same thing. Lu Yongchang looked at the bright white text in the holographic projection and raised the corners of his mouth slightly. Enemy ship coordinates have been successfully parsed. The opponent's movements were still a bit slow. Zero still obtained some of the most critical information, such as the enemy ship's coordinates. Another example, the civilization level. The next moment, a huge and detailed star map unfolded instantly, and a red dot was quickly marked with zero on the star map. 9.16 light years? Level 3 civilization? Lu Yongchang's eyes suddenly showed a bit of joy. Great! Send the order! Fleet! Set sail! The originally peaceful edge of the Kepler 452 star system quickly became noisy the moment this order was issued. The gamma rays emitted by the antimatter engine surged several times higher than usual in a short period of time. In order to conquer this small low-level civilization from all aspects, Lu Yongchang sent a fleet that far exceeded the size of a third-level civilization. Golden Crow Battleship, White Tiger Destroyer, Xuanwu, Frigate and Tao Tai, Material Reserve Ship, and the secondary flagship located in the center of the fleet, Titan Mothership. They formed an extremely regular formation, driven by the antimatter engine, and slowly headed outside the Kepler 452 star system. It is no exaggeration to say that the combat power of this fleet can easily sweep away most of the fourth level civilizations that have not yet mastered gravity technology. When they leave the star system, the warp drive starts. Wrapped in the curvature bubble, the huge fleet instantly disappeared into the visible universe. The waves of time and space quickly moved away, and the ripples left behind slowly spread around forming tiny waves on the ocean of time and space. Under the own mechanism of time and space, these remaining fine waves are quickly smoothed away. The Kepler-452 star system has once again returned to its previous tranquility. Taladin civilization. With the joint efforts of Milo and Mullen, the target star system was rescreened. At the same time, the Taladin fleet also slowly completed the course change. This operation not only consumed a lot of energy, but also allowed the chasing fleet behind to take the opportunity to close the distance. Chief, according to past observation data, their maximum sailing speed is only 0.25 c. The fluff on Milo's body swayed slightly, showing his complicated emotions. And the average speed of our fleet is around 0.3 c. And the maximum speed is around 0.3 c. It can even reach 0.4 c. Given time, we will definitely be able to escape this pursuit and find a star system suitable for survival again. Milo's words slightly calmed the crew's fragile emotions. Chief, Marin moved his short legs, walked to Milo with some difficulty, and said to Aldon, The star system we chose this time is 7.36 light years away from us. Although the distance is close, there are only two planets in that star system, so the possibility of habitable planets is greatly reduced. We may need to be prepared to be homeless for a long time. Hearing this, Aldon glanced at the computer screen in the distance with a complicated expression, and then sighed deeply. It doesn't matter. The continued existence of Taladin civilization is the greatest luck that Zanker has given us. We can't ask for anything more. Before the words could be finished, the dull alarm sounded again inside the ship. The peaceful atmosphere just now became tense again. 
Misfortunes never come alone. And blessings never come alone. The talent and civilization, which had been at peace for thousands of years, finally deeply understood the meaning behind this sentence. Several lines of data and text flashed quickly on the large screen in the command center. Milo glanced at the back and his expression changed drastically. And he immediately rushed to a computer and started operating it. Chief, one of the detectors we sent has been attacked. Mullen explained to Aldon while walking towards Milo with his short legs. Milo, stop talking nonsense. The system has detected electromagnetic wave information sent by an unknown civilization. Milo's shout echoed in the command center. It comes with dictionary information. The recognition level has reached level. Similar to the information classification of human civilization. Talent and civilization advocates arcs. 5A corresponds to 5. Which means that the information is encrypted in the language of this civilization. 4A corresponds to 4. Which means that the information comes with dictionary information and can be quickly translated. Upon hearing this, Maling quickly quickened his pace. Chapter 686 Provocation and Declaration of War Under Mullen's operation, the shipboard computer began to quickly analyze dictionary information and electromagnetic wave information. The last piece of image data from the detector was also analyzed and started to be played on the large screen in the command center. A dark, cold, yet familiar universe appears in front of all talented people. The picture on the screen was so quiet and peaceful, without the slightest sign of being attacked. This, Aldon frowned, stretched out his hand to pause the image, and murmured in a low voice with a confused expression. Where is the enemy? I don't know. The faces of the crew members were also full of doubts. One of the crewmen even operated the computer in front of him and carefully looked through various data before the detector was attacked. The results can be imagined. No matter how he retrieved historical data, he could not find any abnormal data. Okay. Don't bother. Aldon stopped the crew's useless attempts. Continue to observe. While speaking, there was a deep look of uneasiness in Aldon's eyes. Years of escape experience told him that the unknown is the most terrifying situation in war. This often means that the enemy's strength far exceeds our own. Just like invaders who have just invaded their star system. The talent and civilization that has lived in a peaceful environment for a long time does not even know what the various weapons do. And the level of danger now is far more than it was then. After all, they didn't even find out where the enemy was. The last image data left by the detector continued to play. And Aldon was staring at the big screen in front of him with all his attention. Suddenly, Aldon only felt his eyes flicker and three silver-white spherical aircraft appeared in the lens extremely abruptly. They were arranged in a Z-shaped pattern surrounding the detector and kept flying side by side with the detector in a relatively stationary state. A high or low exclamation came from beside him. How did they appear? Why didn't the detector detect its flight path? Zanka, ah! Uh, what the H, L is this? Aldon's face darkened slightly. As a leader, he couldn't show too many personal emotions. It suppressed the fear and panic in its heart and carefully looked at the picture frozen on the screen. From a very close distance, it can clearly observe the textures on the surface of these spherical aircraft, although the overall shape of the aircraft is spherical. The textures on its surface are basically squares with sharp edges. This alone made the uneasiness in his heart soar a lot. In the culture of the Taladin civilization, square shapes and edges have no sense of beauty. In the past ignorant times, edges and corners were even regarded as a symbol of evil. Sure enough, the picture on the screen confirmed the strong sense of uneasiness in his heart. The three silver-white spherical aircraft had long mechanical arms extending out from the sides. From the outside, the main part of the arm is very slender, which gives it the feeling that these arms are very fragile. But the next scene told Aldon extremely rudely that everything was just an illusion. The slender robotic arm reaches towards the detector at extremely high speeds. Although Aldon was not a scientist, his basic scientific literacy still made him aware of the problem. A robotic arm that can withstand such acceleration is definitely not fragile. The scene that happened next once again confirmed its suspicion. The robotic arm smashed the extremely hard outer armor on the surface of the detector extremely easily. Just when Aldon thought the detector was about to be completely torn apart, the three robotic arms quickly retracted into the spherical aircraft. The next moment, the screen went black and the video data was interrupted. Chief, it is initially determined that the quantum ultra-distance communication device has been damaged causing the communication connection to be interrupted. Aldon did not respond to the report from the crew beside him, but turned his attention to Milo and Marin not far away. At this time, the electromagnetic wave information emitted by the three spherical aircraft is particularly important. 
although the other party directly destroyed their detector. The huge gap in strength between the two made Aldon feel a little lucky, he hoped that the unknown civilization was just giving a warning. As the translation program started running, information continued to appear on the computer in front of Milo. When he saw the first line of information, the soft down on Milo's body had already exploded. Milo! Has the information content analysis been completed? Aldon noticed something strange about Milo and asked quickly. It turned around with a slight trembling, turned its head to look at Aldon behind it, and whispered in a high-pitched voice with vibrato. It's done! It's done! As he spoke, Milo operated on the computer. The information content was projected onto the large screen in the command center. Warn! This is human civilization. You have invaded the scope of human civilization activities. Please leave immediately. Repeat. This is human civilization. You have invaded our range of activities. Please leave immediately. Please leave immediately. Otherwise, it will be regarded as a provocation and declaration of war against human civilization. Warning is invalid. Enforcement measures are being taken. Lines of strong text were clearly displayed on the large screen in the command center. Deeply shocking every talented person. But more than anything, it was an inexplicable feeling of confusion. This, as the leader, Aldon's chest heaved violently, and the down on his body exploded instantly. From the first warning to the taking of coercive measures, there was not even a second. We haven't done anything, and yet it's being seen as a provocation and a declaration of war? Isn't this human civilization a little too overbearing? Chief, they are qualified to be overbearing. Mullen interrupted the leader Aldon. Before the detector lost its signal, the sensor detected extremely strong gamma rays. This means that the propulsion method for these vehicles is antimatter, and the means for the aircraft to appear. I don't even know how those three aircraft appeared. Aldon couldn't help but frown. Then what do you think we should do? Apologize to the other party. Or, no. Mullen interrupted Aldon again. We don't have to worry about anything. Now the fleet's navigation has changed. As long as we don't make any response, the other party will not be able to find us in the vast universe. After all, our fleet is too small. I don't think that an advanced civilization that has mastered antimatter will spend a lot of energy looking for a lower civilization that doesn't even know the coordinates without any conflict of interest. Chapter 687 Troy 1.0 and the Roundup Plan Mullen's words were like a reassurance, temporarily suppressing Aldon's uneasiness. Just when Aldon was about to order the fleet to remain silent and continue to the target star system, the dull siren once again aroused its extremely fragile nerves. However, this time, before it could ask, Milo's exclamations resounded throughout the command center. The fleet's central computer has been hacked. The next moment, Milo's round body soared into the sky under the propulsion of the power-assisted device. It drew a crooked arc in the air and stumbled toward the communications main control room on the other side of the command center. Milo, who had not yet learned to land smoothly, stopped his forward body with his face as usual. And then, under everyone's gaze, he frantically tore off the cables one after another. The dull alarm sound became louder and louder, and the dark purple warning light began to flash continuously. The entire fleet fell into chaos because of Milo's behavior. No one would blame it for this. And even, after reacting, all those familiar with the matter expressed their gratitude for Milo's behavior. Chief! Milo grabbed a few cables in his little paws, turned around and shouted to Aldon. Conduct a comprehensive inspection of the central computer immediately. After coming back to his senses, Aldon nodded quickly and issued a maintenance order on the premise of ensuring the normal navigation of the fleet. Conduct a comprehensive inspection of the shipboard computer system. A few days later, the comprehensive investigation work has been completely completed. After repeatedly confirming that there were no hidden dangers in the central computer, several maintenance personnel breathed a sigh of relief and left the large computer room where the central computer was placed. The lights dimmed, and the computer room, which had been inspected several times, returned to its former tranquility, with only the slight sound of the cooling system working. Suddenly, a small screen quietly lit up. Lines of characters that did not belong to the talent and civilization appeared on the screen. Trojan 1.0 program. Run successfully. Basic analysis work has been completed. The mother command has not been received and is entering a silent state. The flickering fluorescent screen dimmed again, as if nothing had happened. Inside the Taladin Civilization Command Center, the black and white dumplings exploded slightly and trembled slightly in the air with their body movements, which very intuitively showed the inner state of this group of pandas at this time. Leader, Milo stopped walking back and forth, 
gently touched the bump on his face, and said in a slurred voice, We are not sure how much information was leaked. If the coordinate information is exposed, it is likely to attract attacks from human civilization. Aldon didn't show much emotion on his face, but the slightly swaying down on his body revealed his true emotions. Milo was silent for a while, then gritted his teeth and said, Continue sailing. This is our only way to survive. Next, we need to accelerate at all costs. Accelerate. Accelerate again. With that said, Milo glanced around the crowd and shouted loudly. I have calculated that even if we accelerate at full speed, our energy will be enough to support us to reach the target star system. Only, Milo smiled bitterly and shook his head. We may have a large-scale energy crisis by then, but for the survival of civilization, these are trivial matters. That's right. Aldon's voice suddenly sounded, expressing his agreement. Energy and materials are reserved for survivors. Taladin fleet, accelerate with all your strength. The order was given. The light of the hull thruster at the rear of the starship became a little stronger again. Behind the Taladin fleet, a fleet with strange shapes and fragmented styles drove the hull thruster and followed the Taladin fleet at a leisurely pace. Suddenly, along with the piercing sirens, a crew member's report came simultaneously. General, they're speeding up again. What? Speeding up again? The general sitting in the center suddenly raised his head, narrowed his orange vertical eyes, and looked at the big screen in front of him. When it saw the line of twisted writing on the screen, an extremely strong evil aura suddenly appeared in its eyes. Damn it! Didn't those investigators say that the other party's energy reserves are running low? Why can I still speed up? Facing the officer's inquiry, the sailor's body trembled violently, and he waved his claws covered with fine scales in great horror and shouted loudly, No! No! General! You can't blame me! I am! The general said nothing, but waved his hand impatiently. The next second, the two men waiting aside dragged the speaking crew member out of his seat. Wait! The general suddenly shouted as he looked at the struggling crew members slowly walking away. General! The crew member's orange vertical pupils dilated slightly and the strength of his struggle instantly increased. General, please spare my life. Tisk, it's so noisy. The general glanced at his men with murderous vertical eyes. Bang! There was a dull sound, and the struggling crew member fell softly to the ground. Kill those two investigators as well. The general gently spit out the tip of his forked tongue, then quickly retracted it, with a sinister smile on his face. This kind of trash that lies about military information should be canned. Yes looking at the trail of blood on the deck that was getting further away. It narrowed its eyes again, its erect pupils slowly shrinking. Help me contact the mothership. Tell them that there have been some minor accidents and the roundup plan has to be advanced. The moment the words fell, a strong smell of blood filled the air inside the starship. Kepler 452 star system. Professor, the Trojan 1.0 program has been successfully implanted. Do you need to try to activate it? Electronic synthesized sound sounded in the command center. Lu Yongchang pondered for a moment and asked in a low voice. Zero, are you sure this program will not be detected? Based on the enemy civilization's computer technology, the probability of this program being discovered is less than 0.001%. Zero replied sternly. Please rest assured. What about after activation? The probability of discovery is greater than 99%. Zero quickly explained. Due to hardware conditions, the Trojan 1.0 program can currently only be activated through electromagnetic wave signals. The long communication time and extremely strong electromagnetic wave signals will cause the program to be quickly detected by enemy civilizations. Lu Yongchang nodded thoughtfully. Then just wait. Wait until the expedition fleet finds them. Chapter 688, Tachyon Radar. Earth calendar year 3621. 9.16 light years away from the Kepler 452 star system along with a violent fluctuation in space and time. A huge fleet suddenly appeared in this dark and cold universe. The secondary curvature technology, which is 30 times the speed of light, shortens the entire journey time to less than 4 months. The gamma rays ejected by the antimatter engine and the various rays released by the active detection radar have made this star field lively again, just like 3 months ago. The fleet hovered quietly in the empty universe and sent a tachyon message in the direction of the Kepler-452 star system. Drop! A clear reminder sounded in Lu Yongcheng's office. In the blue holographic projection, a message flashing with yellow light appeared, but Lu Yongcheng behind the desk did not move at all. He was still leaning quietly on the office chair, his eyes closed, as if he was asleep. After a brief wait, 
the wake-up sequence begins with Zero's distinctive electronic synth sound blasting from the speakers. Professor. Professor. In the technology tree space, Lu Yong Chong sat in the air in front of the bright white science and technology tree, staring blankly at the mottled background in the distance. In front of him is a cursor that is brighter than 50%. Tachyon radar. After mastering the curvature technology, a new problem emerged. After entering curvature navigation, the starship's external observation capabilities are greatly reduced. The reason is simple. Existing observation methods are all developed based on the speed of light universe. Therefore, when the speed of movement exceeds the speed of light, previous external observation methods will fail on a large scale. For example, when a person is sailing at the speed of light, the naked eye can only see the starlight in front of you accelerating, while the starlight behind you can no longer catch up with you. The same goes for starships. By calculating and processing the information coming from the front of the starship, the scene of the starship's forward direction can be well restored. Information processing to the rear or side. Humanity currently does not have a good solution. Therefore, today's planet-class battleships have a huge flaw after entering super light travel once they encounter an attack from the rear or the side. The battleship will be like a blind man, with no way to avoid or counterattack. In other words, in order to cope with possible wars in the future, the current human fleet urgently needs a radar that can be used in curvature navigation since this would not affect the normal navigation of the starship. The Academy of Sciences lowered the priority of this research slightly at first. It was not until the rest of the basic research was completed that the Academy of Sciences put this research on the agenda again. The tachyon radar in the technology tree system can exactly meet this demand. Tachyons will undergo slight changes under the influence of the gravitational field and external energy. Tachyon radar is built based on this property. However, due to the nature of tachyons, there is a huge difference between it and previous active detection radars it is a passive detection radar. But this will not affect the detection accuracy and efficiency of tachyon radar. Whether it's a planet-level gravitational field, or a planet-level battleship's gravitational shield or curvature bubble, these will trigger a tachyon radar response. Coupled with the super light speed characteristics of tachyons, within the accuracy allowed, tachyon radar can even achieve passive detection of surrounding areas without delay. Where there are advantages, there must also be disadvantages. Although it has the great advantage of super light detection, it also has a huge disadvantage when the accuracy is insufficient. When the detected object is too behind or too small, it will not have much impact. Big reaction. For example, a small meteorite. Its gravitational field is too small to cause frequency changes of tachyons. Another example is starships of level 4 civilizations and below that have not yet mastered gravity technology. The mass is relatively small and it does not have powerful enough gravitational shield technology and curvature bubble technology. And it cannot induce the reaction of tachyon radar. Even if the detection accuracy is greatly improved, it can easily regard these starships as a star in the universe. An asteroid. This was also the reason why the sweeper civilization was forced to conduct a blanket search for the fleet of human civilization. But is this a problem? No problem. For today's human civilization. Or for higher level civilizations. What is the difference between level 4 or lower starships and asteroids? Professor. Professor. A faint call interrupted Lu Yongchang's thoughts. After a little bit of identification, he realized that it was the sound made by Zero. He stopped his thinking, glanced at the bright white technology tree and the mottled background again. And with a sudden movement of consciousness, he directly exited the technology tree space. Professor. Professor. As consciousness returned, the calling in my ears quickly became clear listening to the stiff electronic synthesized sound that was unchanging and without many fluctuations. Li Yongchan felt a pain in his teeth. He opened his eyes suddenly. Okay. Stop howling. Teach. The electronically synthesized sound stopped abruptly. What happened? Looking at the flashing orange warning message in front of him, Li Yongchan subconsciously frowned and asked. The expedition fleet sent a tachyon message. The fleet has arrived at the coordinate area and the target fleet has not been found yet. Lu Yongchang reached out and clicked on the message, quickly glanced at the content, and said in a deep voice, It's only been less than four months. They can't run far. Tell the expedition fleet to send detectors to conduct a carpet search. In addition, if a war breaks out, let Zhao Zijia do the commanding work. Receive. Chapter 689 Eugene Civilization The holographic projection once again returned to its previous azure color. Lu Yongchang took a long breath and raised his hand to operate the holographic image. He opened the initial tachyon radar plan, 
marked out the obvious loopholes, and corrected and improved them one by one. Then, he recorded the inspirations generated in the technology tree space one by one. The research progress of Tachyon radar is advancing steadily and slowly. The brightness of the cursor in the technology tree space slowly increased with Liu Yongchang's movements. 9.16 light years away. People's Alliance Expeditionary Fleet. When the Tachyon information appeared in the holographic projection, Bai Yixuan, who was sitting in the command center of the Titan mothership, slowly stood up from his seat and gave the order with a serious expression. Attention all units! Start a blanket search! After the words fell, the hatch on the side of the battleship quickly opened, and silver-white spherical detectors swarmed out, flying in all directions driven by the antimatter engine. After leaving the fleet for a certain distance, these spherical detectors started their curvature engines and disappeared into the visible universe. In the silent and dark universe, a scene that goes against common sense appears. A small fleet maintained a steady speed and chased the fleet ahead. Comparing the two fleets, the pursued fleet was not only larger in size than the pursuing fleet, but its flight speed was also much higher. Even from the appearance alone, the pursued fleet looked like a motley crew. The surface of each starship of different styles was filled with traces of war. Among the small and chaotic fleet was a relatively large starship. That's their flagship. Inside the flagship, each intelligent creature with a ferocious appearance was concentrating on completing its own tasks. The orange vertical pupils, the fine scales all over the body, the slender and forked tongue, and the sharp fangs in the eating organ all show the characteristics of their carnivorous race. They once lived on a desolate desert planet, and their ancestors were a group of carnivorous lizards. They are cold-blooded and temperature-changing animals. With the help of lack of resources, they have been further shaped into an extremely cold and cruel race. After evolving wisdom, this group of lizard people built a hierarchical society and successfully lit up aerospace technology. They named their home planet Eugene and called themselves the Eugene Civilization. This civilization, which is still in the feudal monarchy, is a real star pirate civilization. Under the strict and strict hierarchy, the Eugene civilization is filled with a cold and cruel atmosphere. After leaving Eugene, they became active in this star field with a brutal and fearless fighting style. Steel materials from low-level civilizations and steel technology from high-level civilizations. In one war after another, this star pirate civilization composed of lizardmen was successfully promoted to a third-level civilization. Hundreds of years ago, the probe sent by the Eugene fleet targeted a resource-rich star system. But these resources did not arouse the interest of the Eugene people. After all, they were not good at mining and developing technology. Instead, it was a third-level civilization living among them that caught their attention. The Taladin civilization has lived in peace for a long time, causing it to neglect the development and research of weapons and equipment. But in other aspects, the technological level of Taladin civilization has reached the pinnacle of level 3 civilization. They have even begun research on antimatter engines. From the perspective of Eugene civilization, Taladin civilization is like a huge experienced baby. This is simply a gift from the universe to Eugene civilization. Thank you universe for this gift. On the day when the Taladin civilization was discovered, the emperor of the Eugene civilization uttered this sigh more than once. Did the mothership respond? Corey, who was sitting in the central area of the command room, opened his mouth full of fangs and asked, General, the roundup plan has begun. In the distance, a crew member responded hurriedly. The mothership has dispatched ten squadrons, preparing to encircle the Taladin fleet from all directions. General Corey twitched the corners of his mouth and revealed a cruel smile. Very good. I want to see how this unarmed civilization can escape from our encirclement and suppression. Thinking of the advanced propulsion technology of Taladin civilization, Corey's erect pupils shrank slightly, and the rich color of greed was unabashedly revealed from them. With the advancement technology of Taladin civilization, the strength of Eugene civilization will be enhanced as never before, and it will also be commended by the emperor. While imagining various scenarios, Corey exhaled heavily with a breath mixed with the smell of blood, then stood up and left his seat. Arriving at the door of the command room, looking at the rotating corridor in the distance, it loosened its muscles and penetrated into the corridor bridge connecting the corridor and the command room. A faint feeling of weightlessness followed, and continued to increase as it advanced. It calmly controlled its direction with its claws and floated towards the corridor. The command room can rotate on its own and generate a certain equivalent gravity. This is a luxury for a starship of a third-level civilization, but it is also the reason why it chose it as its flagship, with its identity and status in Eugene's civilization. It is worthy of such treatment. 
The guards waiting in the corridor saw it and quickly saluted it to show respect. Let's go to the processing plant with me. Those pieces of waste should be processed into cans. It's just in time to give you a snack before the war begins, Corey said in a matter-of-fact tone. Likewise, the guards nodded as a matter of course, even showing excited and ferocious smiles on their faces. In the Eugene civilization, this has become a well-established tradition. For the egg-laying Eugene people, population size has never been a big problem. Chapter 690 Taladin will never be a slave. Taladin Fleet. The dull siren once again broke the silence that had lasted for a long time in the flagship. Leader! A crew member shouted in a panic. An unknown fleet was spotted in front of the fleet. The communication request from the opposing fleet was received, which is exactly the same as the communication frequency of the Eugene civilization. Another crew member also shouted loudly, Boss, they are the Eugene fleet. Aldon's face darkened, and as he looked at the slowly advancing pursuit fleet behind him, an extremely bad thought suddenly arose in his mind. Connect the communication, it said solemnly. A disgusting and ferocious face quickly appeared on the big screen. Looking at this appearance engraved into their genes, all the Taladins had extremely strong hatred in their eyes. Damn you, gene civilization! What on earth do you want to do? Aldon squeezed out a few words through his teeth. Taladin, you are surrounded. The other party opened his big mouth full of sharp teeth and showed a ferocious smile. Submit obediently and then research technology for us. This is your only way out. Fart. Aldon's eyes became even more angry. And he shouted directly. Change the fleet's course. Prepare to break out. Chief. As the dull siren sounded one after another, panic shouts rang out one after another. An unknown fleet was spotted on the right side of the fleet. Unidentified fleet found on the left. Above. Looking at the big screen filled with deep purple warning messages, the down on Aldon's body suddenly exploded. And his body trembled slightly. Its big eyes slowly closed, revealing a deep despair. The next moment, it forcefully opened its eyes again facing the desperate eyes of all its compatriots and the joking eyes of the Eugene people. It roared angrily and clearly, word by word. Taladin will never be a slave. Fleet, defensive formation. Get ready to fight. Very good. The joking in Eugene's eyes became more intense. As you wish. The silver-white spherical detector spread rapidly in all directions at a high speed of 20C. Just like a fishing net, it quickly unfurls in the ocean. Under a special algorithm. The compressed information in front of these spherical detectors is quickly restored to zero. In less than four months, based on the sailing speed of Taladin's fleet, it could only move forward 0.1 light year. Therefore, the detection tasks of these detectors are not onerous. A conservative estimate is that it will take less than two days to get results from this screening work. Just as Baishwan estimated, 40 hours after the probe left, a tachyon message from the probe was captured by a receiver on the Titan mothership. Baishwan who had already completed the request, looked at the twelve fleets of different sizes in the message, and his expression suddenly became serious. Although it was unclear what exactly happened, he still gave the order without hesitation. The expedition fleet has entered the first level of combat readiness. The entire ship will enter curvature sailing state in 30 seconds. Cruising speed, 20C. Target location. Set off. 0.1 light years away. The relatively large Taladin fleet stayed in the universe in a defensive formation. It can be seen from the narrow distance between each starship that the Taladin civilization is in an extremely dangerous situation at this time. Surrounding it are 11 fleets of varying sizes belonging to the Eugene civilization. The war has begun. Bursts of artillery fire exploded around the Taladin fleet, slightly illuminating the extremely dim starry sky around them. Leader! Milo stumbled to Aldon and shouted in a high-pitched voice with a cry. Run away! Ten lifeboats can carry a total of 10,000 crew members to escape. Escape? Aldon shook his head with a wry smile, interrupting Milo's words. Where can you escape? Don't I know how much supplies the lifeboat can carry? Don't talk about escaping to a nearby star system. If you can't escape from this star field, you will be captured by the cruise fleet of the Eugene civilization. Then, Milo seemed to want to say something else. Okay. The expression on Aldon's face gradually softened. He raised his paw and patted Milo's head gently. Taladin civilization is destined to end. But even so, we can never act as slaves to each other. It said in an extremely calm tone. Even if the battleships explode themselves, I will tear off a piece of flesh from them. A dull siren sounded. Aldon didn't pay attention. From the beginning of the war to now, the alarm had sounded countless times. But this time, 
something seems different. Head, head, leader, Sanka is on top. In the command center, exclamations came one after another. Even Milo, who was beside him, looked straight at the big screen behind it. Chief, how about you turn around and take a look? Aldon turned around with some confusion and looked at the screen behind him. Just one glance, and it took its breath away. The fine fluff on its body exploded instantly. At this moment, it looked like a fluffy dandelion. Aldon took a few deep breaths and murmured in a low voice with trembling pupils. Sanka, ah, oh, what the H, L is this? On the screen, a huge fleet appeared extremely suddenly in this star field with overwhelming momentum. It parked quietly next to the two fleets, silently venting its power to the surroundings without reservation. The gamma rays emitted by the antimatter engine scatter around like waves. In front of it, both the Taladin fleet and the Eugene fleet were as inconspicuous as the small sampan next to the aircraft carrier. The originally fierce fighting came to an abrupt end at this moment. The aftermath of the SH. L explosion slowly dissipated, and the chaotic star field regained a brief period of tranquility. Chapter 691 by 1. Get one free. First, leader. Milo's high pitched voice trembled slightly. This it. Us. Because he was so shocked, Milo's thinking fell into chaos for a while, and he couldn't even speak a complete sentence. After hesitating for a long time, it struggled to express the words in its heart. Chief, what should we do? When Aldon heard this, his eyes twitched sharply. That fleet that suddenly appeared was obviously not a good thing at first sight. It estimates that it should be a powerful fourth-level civilization. Thinking of this, Aldon felt a little tight in the chest and short of breath. That's a level four civilization. What to do? He is a small third-level civilization leader. So he knows. First, Aldon held it in for a long time and the hair all over his body became a lot fluffy. And finally he said, Wait and see what they want to do. After saying that, it silently looked at the huge fleet on the screen. The light from flares and various super powerful searchlights reflected the general outline of the fleet. The exaggerated gamma ray fluctuations indicate that it is equipped with an antimatter engine, coupled with that elusive and familiar appearance, as well as those evil edges and corners on the starship. A guess that frightened the panda suddenly arose in Aldon's mind. Damn it! That's not true. Is it? Aw? Uh? Milo beside him blinked and looked at the leader he always respected with confusion. What did you say? Isn't it just a small detector? It won't use such a large fleet to find us. Right. Aldon said without tears. Where can I go to explain this? Milo continued to blink, and the expression on his face gradually changed. Obviously, he understood the meaning of Aldon's words. And at the same time, he also realized the origin of these huge warships. Zanka, on top. Milo's eyes widened, and his mouth under the fluff opened into an O shape. You're a level 5 civilization. You shouldn't be so petty. Right. How do you know they are a level 5 civilization? Aldon quickly captured a piece of information in Milo's words. Isn't the antimatter engine a technology of a level 4 civilization? Chief, I think you may have made a mistake. Milo swallowed turned to look at the clearly outlined fleet outside the porthole, and said with difficulty, This fleet does not sail using conventional propulsion methods. Our detector had an accident nine light years away. In just three or four months, they caught up with us, and the extremely unexpected way of appearing. I suspect that this fleet uses curvature propulsion technology that is still in the theoretical conjecture of the Academy of Sciences. His! Aldon gasped sharply, and the fur on his body trembled again. At the same time, the look of horror and confusion in his eyes became a little stronger. Leader! Along with a dull alarm sound, Mullen's voice came from the side. Communication request received. The communication frequency is exactly the same as the warning message received by the detector four months ago. Are you connected? Aldon turned his head and looked at the fleet image on the screen, then looked at the 11 Eugene civilization fleets in the distance, gritted his teeth, and said as if he was dead. Connected! In the holographic projection. Electromagnetic wave communication is still not connected. Bai Yishuan, who was sitting in the command seat, frowned slightly. This method of communication is too backward. He shook his head helplessly and said, Fortunately, it's not far away. Otherwise, the delay would be enough for us to wait for half a day. As soon as he finished speaking, Lu Yongcheng's chuckle came from the loudspeaker on the side. Obviously, Lu Yongcheng, who is several light years away, is also paying attention to the progress here. After gaining initial trust, the fleet can send a detector equipped with a tachyon communication device to serve 
as an information transfer station. Baishuan nodded. This is a good idea. Only, Baishuan's expression became a little more solemn. Of the twelve fleets here, eleven fleets gave me a familiar feeling. The Star Thieves Civilization, Lu Yongchan said with a smile. Isn't that what the Rothor Civilization was like at that time? But it seems that the strength of this Star Thief is far inferior to the Rothor Civilization we met back then. Lu Yongchang's tone was full of ridicule. Old Bai, the civilization we were interested in at the beginning seems to have encountered some difficulties. There was a faint smile on Bai Xuan's face. But he quickly hid it. As the commander of the expedition fleet, he must not make the mistake of underestimating his opponents. This should be a good thing for us, he replied seriously. The possibility of accepting it as a subsidiary civilization has increased a lot. Yes, of course it's a good thing. Lu Yongchang seemed to be in a good mood at this time. And his voice was full of smiles. I don't know. This is a buy one get one free promotion. Bai Ishuan was slightly stunned. You mean, these star pirate civilizations will also be accepted as subsidiary civilizations? But the last time we encountered the later civilization. One moment and another. Lu Yongchang explained patiently. Now we have enough power to suppress them. What's more, compared with ordinary civilizations, these star pirate civilizations have richer combat capabilities, and they can provide us with higher benefits. Baishuan nodded thoughtfully, and silently adjusted the originally planned combat strategy in his heart. Drop! A clear beep sounded, and Zero's electronic synthesized sound also sounded. The other party has accepted the communication request. Signal source. Baishuan raised his eyebrows slightly, and said half-jokingly, it seems that our old friend chose to respond first. All done, are you polite? Chapter 692 No one can refuse a panda. Whether it was the expedition fleet or the Kepler star system nine light years away. Everyone put down their work and stared intently at the holographic image ahead. Everyone's eyes were full of anticipation. This is the first time human civilization has come into contact with a low-level interstellar civilization since it became a fifth-level civilization. It is also the beginning of human civilization making its own voice to the universe. This scene is destined to be recorded in the annals of human civilization. The holographic image gradually became clearer. Black and white. Furry. Round dumplings appear in the camera. They blink their big black eyes, looking at the camera with curiosity, panic, confusion, or despair. After a brief pause, there was a burst of exclamations from both the expedition fleet and the Kepler star system. Needless to say, the subjects of the exclamations were naturally the women in the Academy of Sciences and the Expedition Fleet. Ah! So cute! It's so fluffy! I really want to catch one and take it home! There are countless exclamations like this. For a time, the originally tense and dignified atmosphere quietly dissipated. Even the cold looks in the eyes of Zhao Zijia and Bai Yixuan quickly became gentle. As people from the original Xia country, they have a unique feeling towards pandas. Not only them, but also the entire People's Federation has a unique affection for pandas due to the integration of cultures in the past. Come on. That's a pandaren. No one can resist the lure of a pandaren. If so, bring a bunch of pandaren. As for Lu Yongchang, chief scientist of the People's Federation, looking at Su Yutong with starry eyes next to him, he couldn't help but smile bitterly and raised his hand to touch the tip of his nose. Have to. This is just great. He has imagined countless contact scenarios, and what countless alien creatures look like. But I never expected that the first contact that was destined to be recorded in history would turn out to be such a scene. Just as human civilization was in chaos, a high-pitched chirp came from the loudspeaker. The Pandaren has spoken. Everyone be quiet. The Pandaren has spoken. Their voices are so cute. This exciting news spread like a wave among the crowd. In just a few seconds, the chaotic, Seen in the fleet and Kepler star system quickly improved everyone stared curiously at the slightly larger black and white dumpling in the holographic projection. Yong Chang, what are the pandas talking about? Su Yutong's curious voice came from the side. Lu Yong Chang glanced at the holographic image around him and said softly, Wait a little longer. The dictionary information of the other party's civilization is being transmitted, and the translation program will not be online for a while. After a short wait, a string of text appeared below the holographic projection. Dear human civilization, we are the Taladin civilization. First of all, we apologize for the incident where the detector accidentally entered your territory some time ago. Please forgive us for our reckless behavior. Please believe that Taladin civilization is a civilization that advocates peace. And we have no intention of invading your territory. Suddenly, the slightly larger dumpling in the holographic projection froze on the spot. 
staring blankly at the camera. Judging from its gaze, it should be observing some kind of display device, such as a holographic image or a screen. It is conceivable that their translation program should also be working. Gradually, under everyone's gaze, the fluff on the dumpling suddenly exploded, like a dandelion, swaying slightly with the swing of the body. The high-pitched chirping sound sounded again, but this time the chirping sound was particularly urgent, and even contained some anger. Dear human civilization, our talent in civilization is only a small third-level civilization. Perhaps you look down upon us, but please have the most basic respect for our intelligent life that has survived in the universe for tens of thousands of years. We are not some random Pandaren. We are the Taladin civilization. Taladins will never be slaves. Put away your wishful thinking. Otherwise, otherwise I... The body of the black and white dumpling undulated violently. It was obvious that he was very angry. The moment the words fell, the fur of the group of dumplings behind it also exploded slightly, showing the angry emotions of this group of panda people very intuitively. Baishwan's mouth twitched slightly. He turned his head and glared hard at the crew members, who had just exclaimed. The crew lowered their heads unnaturally. This scene made Baishwan's mouth twitch again. He could understand the reaction of those female crew members. What did the group of male crew members with red faces and lowered heads mean? Due to the occasion, he could only hold back his sullen breath. The somewhat fanatical atmosphere in the expedition fleet and the Kepler 452 star system also cooled down a bit. Lu Yong Chang, who was nine light years away, put his hand on his forehead and shook his head helplessly. Yes, something big has happened. In exchanges between civilizations, misunderstandings are inevitable. But he never expected that because of the other party's appearance that far exceeded expectations. The two parties would have such a big misunderstanding in their first contact. Misunderstanding? It's all a misunderstanding. Like the Taladin civilization. Our human civilization is also a race that advocates peace. As for our reaction just now, it is not contempt for you. On the contrary, it is admiration and recognition of your appearance. A familiar voice sounded in the expedition fleet, relaxing the slightly stiff atmosphere in the communication channel. Chapter 693 Becoming Our Affiliated Civilization Lin Shi Wang? Lu Yong Chang, who was nine light years away, was stunned and turned to look at Fang Su. Why did he go to the expedition fleet? You have read? Fang Su shrugged, found a chair and sat down angrily. Professor Lin Shi Wang as a member of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Federation, is naturally qualified to follow the fleet, especially in this matter. Moreover, when the Taladin civilization was discovered, the sociology faculty was in an uproar. Lu Yongchang laughed dumbly. He could even imagine the terrible scene Fang Su had to deal with those academicians. As early as 1,500 years ago, when human civilization was still living on its home planet, there was a creature that was deeply loved by us. Lin Shi Wang's confident voice came from the loudspeaker. Next, I will transmit relevant image data to you. Please feel free to receive it. We have no malicious intent. Looking at the real-time image in the holographic projection, Lu Yongchang smiled and nodded. That's right. This guy is pretty good. Fang Su's eyes moved slightly, and he immediately nodded and said, I'll talk to the sociology branch when the time comes. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Federation has been established for so long. It's time to choose some leaders. Yes. Lu Yongchang nodded with satisfaction and continued to look at the holographic projection in front of him. Lin Shi Guang's remarks quickly eased the tense atmosphere between the two parties. The high-pitched chirping became soothing again, especially after watching the transmitted video data. Everyone can even see a bit of embarrassment in the actions and expressions of these pandas. Dear human civilization, I have caused such serious misunderstandings against you when I did not understand the specific situation. On behalf of the Taladin civilization, I would like to sincerely apologize to you. Lin Shu Wang's eyes showed a somewhat unnatural look, and he coughed lightly. The great change in the attitude of Taladin civilization is naturally related to the content of the video data. It's not considered a fraud. It's just a proper interception of a small part of the harmonious coexistence of humans and pandas. Ahem. Lin Shu Wang cleared his throat, raised his hand and pointed at the distant porthole. It seems like you are in some trouble? Yes. Dear human civilization. They call themselves the Eugene Civilization. They are a group. Interstellar bandits? We classify them as Star Bandit Civilization. Lin Shi Wang said with a chuckle. Earlier, human civilization also encountered similar situations. Hearing this, the alertness in the Pandaren's eyes once again diminished a bit. Under the guidance of Lin Shi Wang, 
the first exchange process between the two civilizations, except for a little surprise at the beginning, seemed extremely harmonious the rest of the time, until a reminder message came. Electromagnetic wave communication request detected. This message comes with dictionary information. Information sources. The moment the electronic synthesizer sounded, the expression of the Pandaren, who called himself all dawn in the holographic projection changed drastically. Under the gaze of Lin Shuang and others, the fur on its body became fluffy again, and the chirping sounds in its mouth became extremely rapid. Dear human civilization, please do not believe the words of that evil civilization. You also said that they are star pirate civilizations and they are evil. There was a bit of confusion in Aldan's eyes, but he soon made a decision. If possible, I would like to ask you to help eliminate this evil civilization. Lin Shu Wang's eyes suddenly showed a bit of smile when he heard this. The fish is hooked. It was not in vain that he spent a long time talking to these pandas. Why should we help you? Lin Shu Wang said unhurriedly. You also know that human civilization is a civilization that advocates peace. We will not attack other civilizations at will as long as it does not infringe on our interests. Taladin civilization. When Aldon heard this, he felt his heart suddenly twitching. I believe you. You won't take action at will. You mean destroying the detector as soon as the warning message is sent, and at the same time hacking into the central computer to analyze the fleet coordinates? It's really yours. But there is no way. The weak strength of civilization is the biggest flaw. It could only follow Lin Shi Wang's words and ask nicely. Then, what price do we have to pay to get human civilization to help? After waiting for a moment, Lin Shi Wang's voice came from the speaker. And at the same time, a line of text appeared on the screen of the command center. Become our subsidiary civilization. Human civilization has the obligation to ensure the safety of affiliated civilizations. The moment this line of text appeared, there was a commotion in the command center. A Taladin will never be a slave. Chief, they, like the Eugene civilization, want to turn us into slaves. Damn it. Fight them. What can a fifth level civilization do? Fight. Aldon shouted loudly with a gloomy look. Quiet. It's noisy. What does it look like? When Calm returned to the command center again, it gathered its emotions and slowed down its tone of voice as much as possible. Dear human civilization, you have also seen it. Our people don't want to be slaves, even if they are slaves of a higher civilization. We don't want to. You misunderstood. Subordinate civilization, not slaves. Human civilization aims to establish an interstellar alliance of mutual benefit, mutual promotion, and common progress. After becoming a subordinate civilization, you still have relatively complete autonomy and can even live as before. At the same time, human civilization will open interstellar trade channels to you. All contributions to human civilization and the interstellar alliance will be discounted into credits. In addition to purchasing various advanced devices owned by human civilization, these credits can also purchase various weapons and equipment. As long as you have enough credits, you can even purchase battleships of the 5th level civilization and some key technological blueprints and theoretical information. Antimatter engine. Curvature engine. Grand unified theory. Black hole manufacturing and control scheme. As long as you become a subsidiary civilization of mankind, these can be purchased. The atmosphere in the command center suddenly experienced some indescribable changes. Chapter 694 Taladin All Civilization Open Voting. Inside Taladin's flagship, everything was quiet. Aldon could even hear the sound of the villi rubbing against each other, as well as a slight swallowing sound. After a few seconds of silence, someone finally couldn't help it anymore. First, leader, there was a slight tremor in Marin's voice. Let's, why don't we agree? Antimatter engine. Think about it. That's an antimatter engine. The Academy of Sciences has been working hard for hundreds of years on a technology that it has yet to master. And the grand unified theory, the curvature engine. Zanker is on top. Malin breathed rapidly and kept chanting. Chief, this is the greatest opportunity since the birth of wisdom in the Taladin civilization. Aldon did not speak, but turned his head and glanced at the group of scientists surrounding him. Seeing the expected looks in their eyes, Aldon sighed deeply. When it saw those conditions, it guessed that this would happen. These technologies and theories that transcend the level of civilization are like poison exuding extreme temptation to scientists. Even though they know it's poisonous, they will risk their lives to taste it. Chief! A slightly hoarse voice sounded. Join! The reason why the talent and civilization ended up like this is because we don't have powerful weapons and equipment. If 
Aldon's expression moved slightly, and he looked at the speaker. He is a senior member of the military. Aldon sighed again. Now, whether they are scientists or soldiers, almost all the Taladins in the command center were overwhelmed by this series of information. Dear human civilization, what specific contribution do you refer to? As the leader of civilization, it has to be cautious. If human civilization wants to make the Taladin civilization become frontline cannon fodder on the battlefield, it will never agree to this proposal even if it is nailed to the pillar of shame in the history of the Taladin civilization. The response from Lin Shuguang quickly appeared in front of it. Resource. Resources of whatever form can be converted into credits. The specific content can be decided by you and your civilization through discussion. Aldon let out a slight breath. Resources. This is an extremely broad answer. Minerals. Manpower and even land. These can all be counted as resources. If it hadn't heard that their civilization had the right to make independent choices, it would have even been ready to refuse. Dear human civilization, this matter is related to the fate of the entire civilization. It is not a decision that I can make alone. Understandable. I can give you seven days. After seven days, I hope to get an accurate answer. As a sign of sincerity, you will not be attacked by the Eugene civilization during these seven days. Communication was interrupted. Looking at the warning sign on the screen, that communication has been interrupted, and the dazzling lines of text. Aldon felt a chill in his heart. Will it not be attacked by the Eugene civilization within seven days? What about seven days later? It understands the subtext of human civilization. At this point, perhaps the only way for the Taladin people to survive is to become a subsidiary civilization of human civilization. With this thought in mind, it turned around and glanced at the crowd with extremely solemn and serious eyes. The noisy discussions in the command center quickly dissipated, facing the gazes of all the Taladins. It took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, I announce that Taladin civilization's fifth civilization-wide public voting will begin now. The referendum deadline is five days. After the words fell, the dull alarm sounded again in the command center. Chief, the fleet is surrounded. One of the crew members exclaimed. Aldon's expression changed slightly, and he quickly drove the power assist device to slide towards the porthole outside the porthole window. At some point, warships with angular surfaces formed a huge encirclement network, tightly surrounding the Taladin civilization. The battleship is not large, not even comparable to the smallest battleship of the Taladin civilization. But Aldon is extremely convinced that these small battleships alone are enough to easily destroy the two third-level civilizations present. Behind them, there was noisy discussion, and the sound was filled with panic and uneasiness. These successive scenes made them realize once again the coldness and darkness of the universe. Aldon's heart became colder and colder. These warships may be performing protection missions within seven days. And seven days later. But that's not necessarily the case. After a moment of silence, it turned around again and looked at the slightly flustered crowd. This time, its tone of voice was slightly gentler. This may be the most important referendum in the history of talent and civilization. I hope you can take it seriously. The results of this vote will determine the future of Taladin civilization. Human fleet. After the communication was interrupted, Lin Shiguang breathed a sigh of relief. Although he received various training and teachings from the School of Sociology, they were all theoretical after all. In actual operations, the pressure to negotiate with other civilizations on behalf of the entire human civilization is huge even if human civilization is now in an absolutely dominant position. Well done. Accompanied by a series of footsteps. Bai Yishuan's voice came from behind. If the Taladin civilization really becomes a subsidiary civilization, you should be first class. Faced with a praise from the expedition fleet commander, Lin Shiguang smiled slightly awkwardly. Commander Bai, this is what I should do. Command, Eugene civilization has sent a communication request again. A crew member hurriedly ran to Bai Yishuan and reported in a low voice. This is the 63rd time they have sent a communication request. Baishuan chuckled and turned to look at the porthole not far away. You should have seen those ship-based drones we sent. Probably they want to find out our attitude. Just in time. Show talent and civilization the sincerity of human civilization. With that said, he turned around and walked towards his seat. Put in the communication. Seeing this, Lin Shiguang quickly raised his hand and rubbed his cheek vigorously, trying to cheer himself up. Just watch from the side first. Baishuan's slightly teasing voice came from behind. The Eugene civilization is not like the talent in civilization. And ordinary diplomatic methods will not work. Lin Shiguang was stunned for a moment and looked at Bai Yishuan, who was already sitting in the command seat in surprise. 
This kind of Starthy civilization is used to living a life of licking blood with the tip of a knife. Even though they are only level 3 civilizations, even if they encounter level 4 civilizations, they still dare to go up and touch them. While Bai Ishwan explained, the expression on his face gradually became serious. Not only Bai Ishwan, but also everyone else in the command center braced themselves and prepared to deal with emergencies. The smell of war gradually spread. Chapter 695 So Ugly. Aren't they afraid of death? Lin Shi Wang was even more surprised. Born on the Dawn Star, he did not experience the war between humans and the Rathor civilization. All the information he knew about the Star Thief civilization came from historical records. So he doesn't know the madness of these star pirate civilizations. Before the communication was successfully established, Bai Ishwan answered some confusion for Lin Shi Wang. These star pirate civilizations are very scattered and have no fixed settlements at all. Bai Ishwan shrugged. Like flies. Once they target a certain civilization, they can launch a persistent offensive from all directions. Even if you can't beat them, they can still disgust you to death. Since ancient times, you can only commit a thief for a thousand days. But there is no way to prevent a thief for a thousand days. With a single oversight on the battlefield, they can get some loot. That's how the flagship of the Rothor civilization came about. Lin Shi Wang's eyes suddenly showed a bit of a bitter smile. Such behavior. A bit like a hyena from Earth's age. Huh? Bai Ishuan was stunned for a moment. Then laughed loudly. Yes. It's a hyena. I didn't expect Senator Lin to be involved in these materials from thousands of years ago. Yes. Yes. In the holographic projection, a line of bright white text flashed. Link established successfully. The next second, the image gradually became clearer. Everyone suppressed the smiles on their faces and looked at the holographic image in front of them with serious expressions. The picture gradually becomes clearer. But the atmosphere of the expedition fleet and the Kepler 452 star system gradually became stiff. The gloomy environment inside the ship formed an extremely sharp contrast with the bright command center of human civilization. At the same time, it left an extremely bad first impression on humans. Under the dim light, large lizards covered with fine gray scales stood upright and looked at the camera. Hack! Hack! It's so damn ugly! Hong Fan, who was sitting next to Bai Ishuan, twitched the corners of his mouth slightly and squeezed out a few words through his teeth quietly. For the first time, Hong Fan felt disgusted with such clear holographic images. In the holographic image, he could clearly see the orange-yellow vertical pupils of these lizard men, the thick mucus secreted from the corners of their eyes, and the dirty lines on their scales. He even watched helplessly as one of the lizard men stretched out its long forked tongue and licked up the mucus secreted from the corners of its eyes. Every scene made Hong Fan feel both physical and psychological discomfort. If it hadn't been for Professor Lu's order, I would have really wanted to shoot him. Regarding Hong Fan's remarks, Bai Yishuan beside him nodded silently in agreement. Of course, his face didn't show much exaggerated reaction. It still had the original extremely serious expression. The two senior leaders of the expedition fleet had this attitude. Not to mention the crew members below. In the command center, there was a slightly chaotic discussion. Quiet! Bai Yishuan coughed lightly and reminded softly. I'm going to turn on the microphone. Yes, the People's Federation Expeditionary Fleet, which experienced the last lesson, shut down the microphone beforehand. Facts have proved that closing the wheat is an extremely correct decision. While a chirping sound came from the speaker, the translation subtitles provided by Zero also appeared at the bottom of the holographic image. Dear human civilization, we are the Eugene civilization and pay our respects to you. You can call me Cory. Baish one nodded slightly still maintaining his original sitting posture, and looking down at the other party in a condescending manner. But Bai Yishuan's style did not arouse Eugene Wiming's disgust. Or in other words, his apparent disgust. Quite the opposite. Whether it was the Expedition Fleet or Kepler 452C, which was nine light years away, whether it was Bai Yishuan, Lu Yongchang, Zhao Zijia and others, they all clearly noticed that the other party's attitude had become more respectful and humble. What? How did you get it? The leading lizard man even gave up his standing posture and crawled to the ground with his whole body. Isn't this respectful and humble? Unless in their civilization. Crawling on the ground is used to express anger and contempt. This has to be said separately. But this possibility was so small that everyone simply threw it out of consideration. Professor, this Eugene civilization may have an extremely profound psychology of seeking power. Nine light years away, academician Lin Zile of the School of Sociology said to Lu Yongchang. Not only that, they probably have a very strict class system within their civilization. Lu Yongchang nodded. 
with a trace of solemnity in his eyes. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Lin Zhao thought for a moment, then nodded in agreement. That's right. If we can subdue them completely, they could be high-quality cannon fodder on the battlefield. But what if... There was a hint of fear in Lin Zhao's eyes. The combination of the strict class system and the strong mentality makes it entirely possible for these lizard men to commit extremely crazy suicidal attacks, coupled with its identity as a star pirate civilization. Lin Zhao suddenly felt a pain in his head. Lu Yong Chan naturally knew the meaning behind Lin Zhao's words. He stretched out his fingers, tapped lightly on the armrest of the chair, and considered it carefully. Zijia, Professor, what's wrong? Xiao Zijia responded quickly. Lu Yong Chang's expression was very serious. Tell Bai Yishuan that if there is a problem with this Eugene civilization, give up the subsidiary civilization plan and eliminate it as quickly as possible. Xiao Zijia's expression tightened, and he immediately nodded and sent a message to Bai Yishuan, who was nine light years away. Ahem! Bai Yishuan's cough came from behind. Lin Shiguang quickly turned to look at Bai Yishuan, who was sitting in the command position, ready to learn some diplomatic experience from him. This is the experience of the practical school. It's definitely more useful than those theoretical groups in the school of sociology. At this moment, Lin Shiguang was thinking so. Facing Lin Shiguang's curious gaze, Bai Yishuan raised the corners of his mouth slightly, revealing a slightly confident smile. Then, he slowly spoke. Is something wrong? Lin Shiguang? What the H, L? Is this the confidence Bai Yishuan has as a conductor? He turned his head sharply again and looked at the holographic projection in front of him. Looking at the slowly rising lizard head and the ever-expanding, Shinzi. Lin Shiguang couldn't help but raise his hand to his forehead. It's over. He has to come to the rescue again. Just as he was doing some mental preparation and preparing to stand up to save the situation. The low grunt sounded again. Dear human civilization, can you tell us your purpose of coming? With your strength. You don't have to participate in the farce between ants. Chapter 696 We have protected the Taladin civilization. Are there any problems? Lin Shiguang looked at the holographic image in front of him in shock. What's going on? This Eugene civilization and the Taladin civilization just now are completely two extremes. Just when Lin Shiguang was shocked, Bai Yishuan's voice came again. Within seven days, we will ensure the safety of Taladin civilization. His tone was as arrogant as ever. And at the same time, he said with a hint of indubitability. As for the reason, I don't think it's necessary to tell you. Do you have any other questions? Lin Shiguang? Is there such a way to communicate with extraterrestrial civilizations? This is completely different from the courses taught in the School of Sociology. Before Lin Shiguang could recover, a series of chirping sounds came from the speaker again. Dear human civilization, as you wish, the Eugene fleet will retreat 100 million kilometers. 100 million kilometers? For a third level civilization. It is not a far distance. But this is the attitude by each one wants. And it is also the safety proof Taladin civilization needs. Baishwan nodded slightly, and the expression on his face softened slightly, but he still did not slow down his tone. Just do it, and let me see your sincerity. The communication channel was silent for a moment. The prostrate lizard man stood up without hesitation and muttered a few words to the crew member, who was also prostrate on the ground behind him. After a while, the eleven fleets surrounding Taladin's fleet withdrew towards the rear. The light emitted by the hall thruster clearly conveyed this information to the frightened Pandaren and relieve their fragile hearts a little. However, the communication with Eugene's civilization did not end. After the lizard man who called himself Kore gave the order to retreat, he returned to the camera again and crawled on the dark deck, making a series of ups and downs grunting sounds. Dear human civilization, please allow me to ask the question. After seven days, you are ready. Is this what you should ask? Baishwan directly interrupted Kore, stood up from his seat, and waved casually. After a few seconds, a vague fluctuation of time and space flashed in this star field and rushed towards the Eugene fleet at an extremely high speed. Accompanied by the flash when the magnetic field shield was overloaded, an extremely brilliant explosion light lit up in the Eugene fleet that was retreating the slowest. Powerful gamma rays spread from the center of the explosion like a storm, sweeping through the surrounding battleships like a violent storm. As a star pirate civilization, the development route of Eugene civilization is different from that of ordinary civilization. A large amount of war experience makes them pay special attention to various protective measures. Therefore, the Eugene battleship, equipped with a thick radiation protection layer, did not suffer much damage from the impact of this round of gamma rays. In a sense, 
the psychological impact on them is far greater than the actual damage suffered by the fleet. Looking at the alarm-ridden Eugene fleet in the holographic projection, Bai Yishuan snorted coldly. This is the first warning. The plan of human civilization does not need an ant to interfere. In the midst of the chaos, Corey's scaled body trembled slightly, and he lay down carefully on the ground. It whispered and begged Bai Yishuan for forgiveness in an extremely respectful tone. Eugene Fleet. The communication link was severed. But Corey and the rest of the crew still prostrated themselves on the ground respectfully. After a long time, Corey stood up from the deck of the starship tremblingly. Human civilization! A trace of evil flashed in Corey's eyes, and he raised his hand and knocked hard on the console next to him. The hard scales collided with the metal table, making a crisp and loud sound. Damn human civilization! If it weren't for them, we would have returned triumphantly with the spoils of war. General, seeing this, a crew member cautiously approached Corey and whispered, What do you mean? Abandon this operation? Fart! Corey was furious when he heard this. He rounded his arms and slapped the sailor hard on the head. The sharp claws were like blades, easily cutting through the fine scales on its head. A gurgling blue blood gushes out from its wound and slowly flows on the deck. Give up? What a joke! Corey spit out his slit letter quickly and gasped. The talent and civilization must be captured. This is an order from the Emperor. If we fail to do so, there is only one dead end for us. But, human civilization has just said that it will protect the talent and civilization. The bruised crew member crawled on the ground and whispered. Their strength. Corey subconsciously turned his head and looked at the side window. Outside the porthole, the fleet under attack was quickly evacuating. As for the unlucky battleship that was selected as the target of the attack, there was no trace at this time the tiny, shapeless wreckage flew towards the outside of the fleet at extremely high speeds under the impact of the explosion. By chance, these debris may one day fly to a star system inhabited by intelligent creatures. Perhaps, the local indigenous civilization will worship these wreckage falling from the sky, perhaps. They will flee from their own star system as soon as possible as if they are faced with a formidable enemy. These are not within the scope of Corey's consideration. At this time, in addition to the deep confusion in Corey's eyes, there was only a sense of fear rising from the bottom of his heart. Judging from the reaction to the explosion, the other party should have used antimatter weapons. For advanced civilization, this should be the most basic weapon. It's just... Corey's body trembled slightly. I don't know how they launched the attack. More than that, none of the warships present found the weapon's flight trajectory. Not far away. A crew member lowered his head slightly and reported. It was like appearing out of thin air near the warship. General. With all due respect, we have no means of defense against this kind of weapon. A hasty attack will only lead to the annihilation of the entire army. Corey took a deep breath to calm down his inner fear. Of course I know. Its gloomy eyes stared directly at the fleet that was surrounded by layers of protection. And a sinister smile appeared at the corner of its mouth. Seven days. Although it is unclear at what price the talent and civilization paid for seven days of peace. After seven days... But human civilization didn't tell us their plans in seven days. The crew member lying at Corey's feet secretly raised his paws and wiped the blood on his face. What if? The ferocious smile on Corey's face became more obvious. No response is the best response. It stretched out the letter, licked the mucus from the corner of its eyes, and said in a hoarse voice, Order all battleships to launch an attack in seven days. I don't believe that a small third-level civilization can be protected by a fleet of a high-level civilization forever. Chapter 697 Voting Ends Taladin Civilization Aldon's furry, chubby body was squeezed above the transparent porthole with the help of a stabilizing device. It didn't care about its slightly deformed face and just stared at the scene outside the porthole from afar. Seeing the 11 fleets originally surrounding the Taladin fleet turning on the hall propulsion device and slowly leaving, a hint of joy suddenly appeared in its eyes. Success! Eugene's civilization retreated. Aldon broke away from the porthole, raised his short paws, and loudly announced to the people around him this exciting news for the Pandaren. The next second, cheers came one after another from all around. Each Taladin dances its round body and draws beautiful arcs in the air with the help of power-assisted devices They use this to express their joy in the aftermath of the disaster. Except Milo. Milo, who still hadn't learned how to use the power-assist device, could only rely on the stabilizing device and stood silently on the deck looking at his companions around him with envy. Suddenly, a voice broke the joyful atmosphere inside the ship. After seven days, 
Can we disagree with the requirements of human civilization? The command center filled with cheers quickly fell silent. Yes. Now that the Eugene civilization has retreated, they can survive safely even if they lose the protection of human civilization. At this moment, these panda people, who had just left their home planet and had not had much contact with alien civilizations, began to have this naive idea in their hearts. After all, who wants to be a subordinate civilization of other civilizations if they can live freely? After a brief silence, everyone turned expectantly to Aldon standing by the porthole. Unlike them, Aldon, as the leader who led civilization to escape danger several times, is more able to appreciate the darkness and coldness between civilizations. So, facing everyone's expectant eyes, Aldon slowly shook his head. Just as it was about to speak, a strong burst of fire came from a distance, through the porthole, reflecting on its black and white fur. The exclamations of the tribesmen also came to my ears. Aldon didn't have time to think, and quickly turned his head to look at the porthole behind him. The fire came from a fleet of Eugene ships. It was a brilliant explosion. The gamma rays produced by the explosion have passed over the Taladin fleet like a tsunami. Fight! Started a fight? Aldon only felt that his mind went blank. Is the Eugene civilization crazy? Do they dare to do this? But soon, it realized its mistake. Eugene civilization did not take action, but accelerated its retreat under the explosion. This scene did not bring much joy to Aldon. On the contrary, at this time, the anxiety in its heart increased a lot again. Noisy discussions gradually started to sound behind him. That's enough. Aldon, who was dizzy, turned around suddenly and shouted sternly. Quiet! Do you think human civilization is kinder than Eugene's civilization? Look what they just did! Without any warning, a warship of the Eugene civilization was directly destroyed. The purpose was just to speed up their departure. Aldon's words were like a hammer, striking hard on the hearts of these innocent pandas. If I guess correctly, the fleet of Eugene's civilization will never leave. Human civilization will not let them leave either. Aldon waved his little paws and shouted with a red face. Everyone, watch carefully. The Eugene civilization will stop retreating soon. Leader, a rapid, high-pitched voice broke the dead silence in the command center. Eugene's fleet has stopped. Sure enough, Aldon closed his eyes in despair. How far is it? One hundred million kilometers. Aldon took a deep breath, opened his eyes again, and looked at everyone. Have you seen it all? There are only one hundred million kilometers. You guys, it said sadly. The understanding of the universe and civilization is still too shallow. The pandas in the command center looked at each other with a hint of shame in their eyes. Chief, what should we do now? Milo asked softly. Become a subsidiary civilization of human civilization? According to your opinion, it seems that this is the only way we can go. Who says it's not? Aldon took a deep look at Milo, who was looking at him, and responded softly. The voting continues. The life and death of civilization should not be decided by me alone. If you would rather die standing, then I respect your choice. As the words fell, the atmosphere in Taladin's fleet became increasingly silent. Five days flew by. Taladin's fifth civilization-wide referendum has come to an end. On Arden's orders, a central computer began tallying the vote results. The Taladins in every starship stared nervously at the large or small screens in front of them. There are only three options for voting, yes, no and abstain. Looking at the rapidly increasing numbers after each option, Aldon subconsciously held his breath. The voting results are out. 76.3% of Taladin people agreed. 23.1% of people chose to abstain. Only 0.6% of Taladin people chose the no option. The moment he saw the voting results, Aldon breathed out suddenly, and there was a bit of joy in his eyes. No one wants to die. If it is true, as humans say, that subordinate civilizations are not slaves and can even be exchanged for various technologies and equipment then he is willing to become a subordinate civilization of a higher civilization. At least, the inheritance of civilization has not been interrupted. In the vast universe, there may be a place for Taladin civilization in the future. Milo! Aldon waved and called softly. Initiate a communication request to human civilization. So fast? Milo's eyes showed a bit of surprise. We still have two days. No, we can't wait until the last day. Aldon smiled gently, raised his hand, and touched Milo's furry head, and explained softly, If we haven't become a subordinate civilization on the seventh day, what do you think the Eugene civilization will do once human civilization removes its protective measures against us? Milo's eyes widened slightly, and he took a breath. 
I, I understand. As he spoke, he turned around and controlled the power assist device and slided staggeringly towards a computer. I'll initiate a communication request right now. Chapter 698 Civilization Risk Value 5. Dear Human Civilization, As of today, the voting of all members of Taladin Civilization has been successfully completed. Taladin Civilization is willing to become a subsidiary civilization of human civilization and provide various resources for human civilization. The compiled electromagnetic wave signal flew towards the huge human fleet in the distance at the speed of light. Different from the previous exchanges. This time, the information from human civilization came extremely quickly. As if the signal delay effect caused by distance disappeared. Aldon glanced out the window at the small battleships from the human fleet. With a look of surprise in his eyes. It is estimated that the electromagnetic wave signals sent by the Taladin fleet were intercepted by these battleships. Several lines of Taladin text appeared on the large screen in the command center. Taladin Civilization. Welcome to join the Milky Way Metahuman Federation. Human civilization will protect your safety in accordance with the agreement. Aldon breathed a sigh of relief. And the burden in his heart quietly fell. What do we need to do? Aldon calmed down and asked loudly. Please open access to your fleet's central computer. To ensure your safety, human civilization will temporarily take over the control of your fleet until the fleet returns to the main star system of human civilization. Aldon looked at the text on the screen and was silent for a while. Then, it nodded with a bitter look on its face. As you wish. Milo struggled to control the power assist device and followed Aldon to the engine room unsteadily. In the computer room, the central computer, the most important core component of the Taladin fleet, is installed. Milo! Open the permissions of the central computer. Aldon glanced around the computer room for the last time and said softly, This is the last free time of the Taladin civilization. Milo stood firm and walked towards the console with dull eyes. Under his operation, the control authority of the fleet's central computer was opened. Nine light years away. In the Kepler 452 star system. In the Earth Command Center. Lu Yong Chong was sitting in his seat, looking calmly at the bright white text that slowly appeared in the holographic projection. Trojan 1.0 program is waking up. Wake up successfully. Successfully obtain control authority over the central computer of Taladin civilization. Data collection and collation is ongoing. Risk assessment completed. Current risk value of Taladin civilization, 5. This is the scientific research result of the School of Sociology some time ago, the Affiliated Civilization Risk Assessment Model. Simply put, it can evaluate the risk value to human civilization in real time based on various information within the affiliated civilization. The risk value calculation method is a percentage system. It should be noted that civilization risk does not usually increase slowly. An affiliated civilization that originally had a risk value of May 20th have its risk value rise to over 70 in an instant after committing certain actions. In order to ensure the safety of human civilization, when the civilization risk value is between 30 to 50, the School of Sociology will take various gentle measures to reduce the risk to human civilization between 50 and 70 years old. The School of Sociology will take coercive measures once the value exceeds 70. Sorry, the School of Sociology does not need to intervene in the following matters. Zero will directly lock all the computing equipment of the affiliated civilization. At the same time, the People's Alliance fleet will eliminate this potential threat as quickly as possible and the affiliated civilization with a risk value below 30. According to the School of Sociology, those are the great citizens of the Panhuman Federation. As for the risk value, it is 5. Anyway, when he saw this evaluation value, Lu Yong Chan couldn't hold back the smile on his face for a while. Professor, your reaction is very rude. Lin Zhao coughed lightly and said to Lu Yong Chan as seriously as possible. The lower the risk value, the more beneficial it is to human civilization. How can you? Sorry, I remembered something happy, Lu Yongchang said while suppressing a smile. After the words fell, the group of old people from the Earth era in the command center all showed knowing smiles on their faces. What? Lin Zhao looked at Lu Yongchang in confusion. My wife is giving birth. Lu Yongchang suddenly caught a glimpse of Su Yutong's face not far away from the corner of his eye. He trembled slightly, straightened his expression and said, Ahem. No. No. I mean. I am happy with the development of human civilization today. Lin Zhao scratched his head in confusion. Born from the Dawn Star, he didn't know what these old timers were laughing at. So he could only explain it again. Professor, the risk value is 5. 
which proves that Taladin civilization not only does not have a complete armed force, but also has almost no aggression. Lu Yongchan looked at the number in the holographic projection, couldn't hold it back, and laughed again. Professor. The smile in Lin Zile's eyes gradually grew stronger, but he still looked helplessly at Lu Yongchan in front of him. Ahem. Lu Yongchan raised his hand and rubbed his face vigorously. If you don't laugh, don't laugh. Tell Bai Yishuan that after solving those troubles, bring those war scum directly to Kepler 452. Taladin Fleet. The next second Milo pressed the confirmation button. The data on the side of the screen had undergone earth shaking changes. First, leader. Looking at the rapidly changing data in front of him, Milo took a sharp breath. The starship's propulsion power increased by 10.3%. Energy consumption rate dropped by 12.6 percentage points. The energy conversion rate of the fusion reactor has also improved a lot. Zanker is on top. What the H L happened? A line of Taladin text appeared on the screen in front of him. Central computer control has been successfully transferred. Hello. I am the artificial intelligence of human civilization. You can call me Zero. Next. I will fully take over the calculation and management tasks of your fleet. Preliminary optimization of the power system has been completed. Optimizing the ship's life support system is now underway. Please wait. Milo stared blankly at the words in front of him. His little mouth slightly opened. At this moment, it suddenly realized the huge gap between Taladin civilization and human civilization. Like a chasm. The original melancholy and sense of loss that a civilization felt when it lost its freedom completely disappeared. It smells so good. Chapter 699 The Power of Level 5 Civilization In a short period of time, with Zero's help, the overall performance of the Taladin starship was directly improved to a higher level. Such an obvious change naturally cannot be hidden from the rest of Taladin. After learning this information, surprise and joy instantly dispersed the dense haze within civilization. Is the fifth level civilization really so powerful? This atmosphere reached its peak ten minutes later as silver-white ellipsoid-shaped aircraft came from afar and parked outside the flagship's port gate. At Aldon's command, the Taladin flagship opened its doors to welcome him. The ellipsoid-shaped aircraft followed the passage and slowly entered the Taladin flagship. Mullen looked at this silver-white ellipsoid-shaped aircraft curiously. The surface of the aircraft is covered with arc-shaped lines, and these arc-shaped lines combine with each other to form a complex pattern. In Taladin culture, it symbolizes friendship and peace. Under the gaze of everyone, the hard SH. L of the aircraft slowly opened, revealing its internal structure. Not only the exterior, but also the interior is full of curved structures that make them feel comfortable. A physical transmission interface commonly used by Taladin people stretched out from it and hovered in front of Aldon. Chief, this is... Malin was stunned and asked in a low voice. Tachyon Information Transfer Station. Milo answered the confusion of Mullen and everyone for Aldon. The first gift given to us by human civilization. It is said to be a real-time communication device that is more advanced than quantum ultra-distance communication. It allows us to better exchange information with the main civilization. As he spoke, Milo carefully stretched out his little hand and stroked the smooth and textured aircraft SH. L. With a look of deep shock and intoxication in his eyes. It's unimaginable. It murmured to itself. Whether it's the exterior decoration or the interior structure. The appearance of all visible equipment is built in accordance with our aesthetic standards. How much time has passed? Milo asked himself and answered. It only took a few hours from the time the central computer access was open to the time we received this gift. In just a few hours, human civilization has completed the interpretation of talent and culture and also completed the transformation of these high-precision devices. Is this the power of level 5 civilization? Listening to Milo's mumbling, Marin swallowed hard. Since it became a subsidiary civilization of human civilization, the power that human civilization has inadvertently displayed has deeply shocked it. Even in its heart, a bit of admiration developed unconsciously. Two days flew by. The seven-day agreement originally made by human civilization has come to its last hours. Taladin civilization has already completed all the procedures and officially became a subsidiary civilization of human civilization. Under Zero's control, the carrier-based drones escorted this dusty fleet and slowly sailed towards the huge and bright fleet not far away. According to the instructions issued by the Academy of Sciences, the Taladin fleet will follow the human fleet into the warp state and head to the Kepler 452 star system nine light years away. As for the way to enter the curvature state, naturally, the starships of the Taladin civilization were directly loaded into the battleships of the human civilization one by one. Fortunately, 
the battleships of the third level civilization are not large. And the human expedition fleet can easily complete this operation. In Taladin's flagship, Milo stood by the porthole, looking at the huge fleet that was getting closer and closer. And some complicated emotion suddenly arose in his heart, feeling lost and confused. But it's more about expectation and joy. As a scientist, it can't wait to see the power of level 5 civilization with its own eyes. 100 million kilometers away. Eugene Fleet. As a sharp siren sounded in the command room. Corey, who had been sitting in a chair waiting silently, suddenly stood up. And a strong murderous aura suddenly appeared in his orange vertical pupils. Time is up! It spit out its long tongue. Gently licked the mucus secreted from the corners of its eyes. And said in a hoarse voice. All fleets. Set off immediately. I want to see where else the Taladin civilization can escape to. With that said, it turned and shouted to a crew member. Turn on the canning processing device. When this operation is successful, I'll invite everyone to try the freshly baked Taladin cans. Corey's words immediately aroused cheers from everyone. In the command room, every lizardman had a bit of bloodthirsty cruelty in their eyes. General, something happened. An exclamation came from not far away. And at the same time, a lizard man stood up from his chair in a panic. The Taladin fleet is heading towards the human fleet. The smile on Corey's face disappeared instantly. It narrowed its eyelids slightly. Its vertical pupils became more pointed. And the bloodthirsty aura within them became more intense. Toward the human fleet, what is the reaction of human civilization? Corey's voice was extremely dull. The crew member trembled slightly, crawled at Corey's feet, and responded in a low voice. They seem to be escorting the Taladin civilization. Damn it! Corey's strong, scaly arm slapped the console beside him hard and made a clear sound. Damn human civilization! It took a few deep breaths, calmed down its inner anxiety, and said again, You report this situation to the mothership immediately. And you continue to send communication requests to human civilization. General, where is the fleet? Another crew member asked. What should the fleet do? The fleet? There was a bit of ruthlessness in Corey's eyes. The fleet continues to move forward. Just pretend that you don't know about this. Damn it. Isn't it just a level 5 civilization? Today, I must snatch a few starships from this 5th level civilization. Cheer up. Everyone, if this vote is made, the Emperor will never treat us badly. You can think about how I became a general. After hearing Corey's words, the eyes of the crew members in the command room suddenly changed a bit. From the initial worry and timidity, to the later excitement, bloodthirsty and madness. It only took a few seconds. Corey is a veteran general. At that time, when the Eugene civilization was still a second level civilization, Corey's fleet encountered a fleet of a third level civilization. It just relied on its persistent fighting style that was not afraid of death and snatched several third level battleships from that fleet that were not very damaged. Benefiting from this, Eugene civilization opened the door to the third level civilization. The reputation of Eugene civilization has completely spread in this star field. 